The heavens collapse, and there are no more saints in the world, and as the last powerful saint in the human race, I, however, in the battle against the dragon ten years ago, burned my essence and blood using the forbidden secret technique, Din Shin, which resulted in the shattering of my Dantian. The cultivation path of the practitioner fell from the ninth level of the sage to the first level of body refinement. My fiancé is even more of a sham, as the neighbor Wang has cuckled at me, but I choose to live in a rundown small town, every day, either teasing the little maid or getting drunk on peach blossom wine before resting, living a carefree and leisurely life like drifting clouds and wild cranes. Cough, there's nothing good in this world, except for Xiaodao's legs. At this moment, in the peach blossom town of the eastern wilderness, it is the end of spring, and the ten-mile peach blossoms are in full bloom. A captivating scent of peach blossom wine wafted from the end of the peach blossom road. The last pot of peach blossom wine is brewed. Don't miss it when you pass by. A sweet voice emanated from a small tavern, instantly causing pedestrians to stop in their tracks. But after feeling the empty pockets, I could only leave in disappointment. Xiao Tao stomped her feet in anger as she watched the departing guest. Two black shadows on the ground were jumping back and forth. At the same time, a lazy voice came from behind the shop. Xiao Tao, you're dazzling my eyes. On the reclining chair in the backyard of the shop, there is currently a lazy young man lying with his face covered by leaves, hearing the muttering of their young master. Xiao Tao obediently moved aside a little. I stared blankly at the sky. After a long time, suddenly a relieved smile. Time and destiny. Not understanding. The young man clearly had the appearance of an 18-year-old, but there was a strong sense of dusk in his footsteps. I am the owner of this peach blossom liquor store, but soon I won't be, because I am about to die. Today is the end of my life. Over the years, I have indeed made efforts. In the end, I placed my hope in Kendo. This swordsmanship is different from the one in the Han Dynasty. Nowadays, the prevailing trend is to prove the way through skills. But it is the way of the sword that I presented 10 years ago with a determination to die. Sword rises from the heart. When wielding the sword, one must have intention. But goodwill. The intention to protect. Or even malice. The intention to kill. I call them the meaning of the mortal world. I have been comprehending the meaning of the mortal world for 10 years in the town of Peach Blossom. As long as one can comprehend the sword heart of the mortal world, the backlash of life force within the body will naturally disappear. But in the past 10 years, I still haven't been able to figure out the final layer. How can one be both in the world and yet transcend it? This seems to be an unsolvable problem. But now I don't have time. Mr. She, you said, when in doubt, seek advice from the wise. Then I will use this last bit of time to say a few more words to this girl who has been with me for 10 years. After all, there isn't much good in this world. Only Xiaodao's legs are decent. I saw myself smiling at Xiaodao. Little Peach, I have long said that selling alcohol like this is not acceptable. We need to talk about strategy. Buy two get one free, buy five get two free, so that others will buy more. Xiaotao's mouth pouted when she heard the words, and she said with a sense of grievance, Young master, selling like this will cause us to lose money. If we lose money, we won't be able to buy rouge. I looked up and saw a slight twitch at the corner of my eye. This girl is good at everything, but she can be a bit stingy. In theory, something so magnificent should have a large capacity for milk. Young master, how did you come out? Have you recovered from your illness? Xiao Tao asked worriedly. In recent years, I have been suppressing the backlash, so I can only make excuses and say that I am treating an illness. I was slightly stunned, then burst into laughter. Cured will never relapse again in the future. A smile instantly appeared on Xiaodao's face. This is a heartfelt joy. Has the young master recovered from his illness? Can he spend more time with Xiaotao in the future? In the past 10 years, I have been either brewing wine or practicing swordsmanship. There is rarely time to spend with Xiaotao. I heard the words, and my lips slightly pursed, softly saying, Yes, I will be able to accompany Xiaotao all the time in the future. But I'm afraid Xiaotao will get tired of me then. Xiaotao's face tightened when she heard the words. No, I want to drink more of the fine wine brewed by the young master. After speaking, a look of intoxication appeared on her face. Xiao Tao has never told me something. She secretly tastes a little bit of newly brewed peach blossom wine every night. However, this girl's figure has improved the more she drinks. Although she has been secretly drinking for 10 years, she has never grown tired of it. Xiao Tao feels that the sensation of drinking is different every time. When consumed during sadness, it feels like a burning knife, causing coughing. When consumed during happiness, it tastes as sweet as honey. So, she doesn't want to give it away. If she can't sell it, she can just keep it for herself to drink. During the conversation, Peach Blossom and finally welcomed its last guest of the day. This is an old man, nearly 80 years old, carrying a cardboard box. The old man's surname is Lee, and he makes a living by fishing. 
very frugal, will not come twice in a year. I don't know what happened today, but I suddenly had the idea of buying alcohol. Shopkeeper, give me three liang of peach blossom wine. All visitors are guests. After Xiao Tao brewed the peach blossom wine, she returned the gourd to the old man. I joked, Mr. Li, are you not afraid that your spouse will find out that you bought alcohol to drink? Mr. Li was greatly shocked and turned pale upon hearing those words. You, as a shopkeeper, are very bad. Why do you speak so loudly? The money I used to buy this wine is the extra payment I received today in exchange for a pound of fish. I'm keeping all the money that is supposed to be turned in, as usual. After speaking, old master Li proudly patted the cloth bag at his waist. Not satisfied after saying it. Can that old lady control me? That's just me giving her face normally. Otherwise, hoof. As soon as the words fell, a pair of hands full of wrinkles grabbed Grandpa G's ear from behind. Oh, be careful, old lady. There are still young people here. Later, I saw Mr. Lee, who was seven feet tall, bowing his head, dragged away by a short old woman with one head. As he walked, old Master Lee kept searching for excuses to say, Wife, let go. Isn't it just that I handed in the public rations a little late? Tonight, I will compensate you doubly. All right? Originally, I thought that Mr. Lee would definitely suffer a beating. Unexpectedly, the old woman beside them, upon hearing these words, actually let go of the hand that was pulling her ear. Can you really hold on for an hour? Absolutely. Make sure to watch out at night. That's fine. Xiao Tao looked at Mr. Li's actions with a shocked expression on her face, turned his head and looked at me. Young master, I also want to. At this moment, I stared blankly in the direction the couple left. Upon hearing this, he stood up. Xiao Tao, tidy up the shop. The young master is going out for a while. After speaking, without waiting for Xiao Tao's response, I left the shop. What ordinary people cannot see is the self leaving the liquor store. With each step, a wisp of black energy emanates from the body, which is the backlash energy of casting secret techniques. The degree of difficulty is no less than the traces left by the heavenly Tao. In the past 10 years, I haven't really let go much. Today, however, step by step, I walked towards the mouth of the sea with a gloomy mood. This is the confluence of the Chintang River and the East China Sea. The closer I get to the mouth of the sea, the slower my footsteps become. When there were only nine steps left to the seaside, the counterforce within the body had completely dissipated, and the body suddenly felt lighter. Seven steps, a long lost sharpness appeared in my eyes. Five steps, the entire eastern wasteland cultivators heard a loud noise. Taking two steps forward, the sword intent surges beside me, and all the sword cultivators in the eastern wasteland feel that the sword in their hands is uncontrollable, intending to break free. Dong, another step, and suddenly the world fell silent as if everyone was frozen in this moment. Then, there was another soft sound coming from the bank of the Chintang River. At the same time, a genderless and ethereal voice resounded in the ears of all sword cultivators in the entire homing continent. Red dust meaning, innocent heart. Today I finally realize that I am myself, unique in the mortal world, the finest in this realm. As the words fell, the long swords in the hands of the eastern wilderness sword cultivator were uncontrollably released. In an instant, the eastern wasteland sky was filled with inverted flying swords. In the entire eastern wasteland, when one looks up, all that can be seen are suspended flying swords. In addition, southern Xinjiang, central earth Daozhou, western region Buddha state, and northern Ming sword continent, all the sword cultivators, after a moment of confusion, transformed into fanaticism. Excited voices resound in every corner of the homing continent. This is the moment when 10,000 swords bow down. Someone has entered the realm of the sword immortal. I, Dong Huang, have a stunning sword cultivator who has reached the realm of sword immortal. Ha ha, who says I, from the eastern wilderness, have no sword? You little rabbits from the central plains, let's see if you still dare to say that I, from the eastern wilderness, only know how to dance with sticks and play with guns. In the enlightened continent, there hasn't been a sword immortal for a full 90,000 years. I have no regrets in this lifetime. All sword cultivators in the eastern wilderness aspire to soar into the sky displaying the elegance of a sword immortal. The feet can be tens of meters away from the ground, with a gravity force pressing down like a mighty road. The collision came suddenly, and some unprepared cultivators were instantly pressed with minor internal injuries. A cultivator wanted to use divine consciousness to explore, but was injured by sword intent before approaching Peach Blossom Town. At the same time, powerful individuals within the Yin Yang Dao sect in the eastern wilderness continue to emerge. But even the powerful Mahayana cultivators can only rise to a height of 70 to 80 meters in the air, unable to ascend any further. This height is like an insurmountable barrier. And at this moment, the town of Peach Blossom was surprisingly calm. 
Only within a radius of ten Zhang around me, the sword intent lingers, as profound as the vast world, making people awe-inspiring at first sight. Sword intent center. I feel a decade of depression and annoyance dissipate completely, and my heart is filled with boundless heroism. Take out a jar of freshly brewed peach blossom wine that I brewed only yesterday. A mouthful of peach blossom fermented in my stomach, and I suddenly felt that the vast blue sky had shrunk by three points. I will swing the wine jar and laugh heartily. I have been practicing swordsmanship for 18 years, understanding the sword for 10 years, but until now I do not know how many layers the sky has, nor have I seen what lies beyond the starry sky. The heavens collapse, and I, Yi Qingchen, have only one sword capable of moving mountains, cutting rivers, and slaying gods. Now borrow this sky sword with me to open the gate of heaven. Sword, come. In an instant, the flying sword soared into the sky, flying towards the sky above the East Sea. I rise with a wisp of spring breeze, ascending the nine heavens on the path of swordsmanship. The entire Qiming continent saw a stunning red light shooting up into the sky. A strong will sweeps across the entire continent. Suddenly, a loud shout came from deep within the North Binjian Island, and I, a North Binjian sword cultivator, am willing to follow the sword immortal and wield my sword. Immediately after, a series of loud shouts erupted. Xingcheng Mountain Sword Cultivator Chui Mingji, willing to accompany the sword immortal to ascend to the stars. 5,000 years of sword cultivation. Lu Yuan Ping, can ascend to the ninth heaven with the sword immortal. Knife Cultivator, though not a sword cultivator is willing to wield a sword alongside the sword immortals and assist them in opening the gate to the heavens. Shouts resounded. Vows were made. Countless cultivators soared into the sky. The overwhelming pressure of the grand path seems unable to suppress the swordsmanship will. Break. In the next moment, a golden light flashed, and the legendary ethereal heavenly gate was truly opened. But the white light is only a moment. The next second, the sky returned to normal. Immediately afterwards, all the cultivators who followed me in drawing their swords felt a gentle force pushing them back to the ground. After a moment, their flying swords, regardless of their quality, seem to have acquired a spiritual essence and returned to their scabbards. The sword trembles, the sound of the sword never stops, and the entire continent has also lost the aura of sword immortals. Where have the sword immortals gone? After coming to his senses, someone in the crowd asked. That must be the gate to heaven leading to the immortal realm. Some speculate that upon hearing these words, a man's face immediately flushed, unable to contain his excitement. I must strive to practice the way of the sword and follow in the footsteps of the sword immortal. No one laughed at him because it was the shared desire of everyone, especially the sword cultivators. Do you know what this swordsman is called? Suddenly, a voice of confusion arose from the crowd. As soon as these words were spoken, the crowd fell into silence. After a while, a loud sound came. Senior sword immortal said it himself. He is unparalleled in the mortal world. Let's just call him the Red Dust Sword Immortal. Red Dust Sword Immortal. Very good. I will go now and carve the Senior Sword Immortal's name at the forefront of the Ancestral Shrine. After hearing the answer he wanted, a sword cultivator hurriedly ran towards his home. Someone recognized this as the second wealthiest person in the Eastern Wilderness. The young master of the Chai Wei Chamber of Commerce. On the same day, in the Central Ascension Hall of the Qiming Continent, another faceless sculpture was added. Looking at the figure, it is a man holding a three-foot red sword standing tall as if reaching for the sky. Every statue here is a person from the Qiming continent who ascended to the upper realm. This is the 99th statue, and among the 99 statues, there are only five sword bearers. From then on, the Red Dust Sword Immortal became the fifth sword immortal of the later Ming continent, and also the last human sword immortal in this world for the past hundred years. On the other side, I lazily gazed at the half-dark sky. I asked myself, have I transcended the realm? I feel as if there is boundless sword intent in my hands. In an instant, it feels as if the sky is just three inches high in the palm of my hand. So he borrowed a sword and wanted to open the heavenly gate. It is important to know that the heavenly gate has always been something that exists in legends. Throughout history, almost all the ascendants in the later Ming Dynasty mainland have either been accompanied by a long rainbow in broad daylight or have ascended on a crane. No one has ever witnessed a true celestial gate. I just wanted to try my luck, but I didn't expect it to actually work. I didn't even feel how I exerted force and passed through a thin film arriving in the midst of a galaxy. I vaguely saw a river surging continuously above the horizontal Milky Way. I exerted all my strength with a single sword strike. In an instant, I broke through countless layers of constraints. Finally, I arrived in front of a bronze gate, just as I was about to cleave open the door with my sword. Suddenly, I saw groups of cultivators behind me, each wielding a sword alongside him. They don't have the strength to withstand the pressure from the stars. In an instant, I turned around and returned to the place where the heavenly gate was opened. With a single sword, 
I sent many cultivators back to the ground, then let the flying sword return to its sheath, but I forgot that I only have the sword intent, but not the slightest realm. Simply put, without a sword, he can't fly. Thus, a generation of sword fairy changed this into the sea, fairy, fresh. Yi Qingxuan sat up and glanced around and let out a sigh of relief. It's a good thing no one saw it. Yi Qingguan didn't know what his situation was right now. His swordsmanship didn't seem to be quite the same as normal swordsmanship. He had previously realized the answer to the last layer of the red dust sword intent from elderly. How to be in the red world, but out of it? Masterly half of the person into the ground but can still be like a teenager when the general state of mind, because there is a through the red dust does not age the heart of the red sun. Only with the heart of a bare heart through 10,000 feet of red dust can be out of the red dust, just as the lotus out of the mud without dying general. This is Yi Ching Suen's 10 years of hard searching for the heart of the sword out of the red dust, but also the heart of the red sun. So according to the division of the sword Tao, he should now be at the stage of sword mind enlightenment. The general sword Tao realm is divided into subtle, sword power, sword intent, sword mind, human sword unity, and celestial unity, sword immortal. But his sword went off the beaten path sword intent into the Tao, and he didn't know which realm he belonged to, and if he was divided by realm because he had just opened his heavenly dantian and completely shattered it, the last bit of his aura had dissipated as well, now he is equal to a mortal, but as far as the battle power is concerned, it is no exaggeration to say that Yi Qingguan now if he meets himself 10 years ago, a sword 10,000 should not be a problem, a smile surfaced on Yi Qingdao's face, no matter what, Yi Qingdao was still very happy, after all, the backlash was gone, and he no longer needed to constantly endure the pain caused by the backlash, and with the longevity order in place, One's longevity should be unhindered. Only some of the beauty was that when he fell into the water Yi Qingxuan accidentally lost the sword-shaped jade pendant that his master had given him. Twisting his clothes, Yi Qingguan walked towards the peach blossom wine shop. If you haven't gone back so late, Xiao Tao should be waiting anxiously, right? Sure enough, before he even reached the peach blossom wine shop, he smelled a strong aroma of wine, and a light snoring. As he approached, he saw a silhouette slumped over the counter, her breath steady, beside her. A pot of peach blossom brew that hadn't yet been finished flowed slowly on the counter, with the drool at the corner of Peach's mouth, mixed up, full of peach blossoms. The next morning, the peach blossom wine shop opened as usual. Xiao Tao looked at Yi Qingxuan who was constantly busy in front of the wine store, his eyes filled with curiosity. What did the young master go to yesterday afternoon? Today's young master seemed like a different person, feeling younger. Xiao Tao felt that today's Yi Qingxuan truly looked like a 25-year-old youth. Before, his temperament was too mature and stable. Young master, did you make new wine? Little Peach looked at several different colored wine jars and asked playfully. Yi Ching Suan's head didn't return, and his magnetic voice came out. Yes, we added two kinds of wine today. The green altar is called Fresh Breeze Drunkenness, and the red altar is called Mistaken Red Dust. Wow, young master, what a nice name you've chosen. Can I taste it first? Looking at the expectant little Peach, Yi Ching Dan smiled lightly and said, You can try the Ching Fong drunk. But the mistaken red dust is better to wait until you're older to drink it. It's not big enough. You can't even see it. Muttered Peach with her head down in dissatisfaction. Yi Qingduan. Finally, the counter of the wine store had been set up with three kinds of fine wines. The people of the town also began to take to the streets one after another. Yi Qingduan set up a sign at the door. Which read, Today, the new wine Qingfeng drunk and mistaken red dust. Each kind of four cents per altar. Buy one altar of Qingfeng drunk with one altar of mistaken red dust to send one altar of peach blossom brew. As soon as the sign was released, the entrance to the peach blossom wine shop was crowded with people. To know, Yi Qingxuan came to peach blossom town for 10 years although he himself had little fame. But the reputation of peach blossom wine shop had long been famous for 10 miles in 8 townships. If it weren't for the fact that a jar of peach blossom brew costs 5 cents, the wine would be sold out every day without waiting until noon. And the people who bought the wine today noticed that the little girl who used to sell the wine was accompanied by a handsome young man with a handsome face. Yi Qingdan was dressed in a red robe, handsome in appearance, and always had a faint smile on his face, like a spring breeze. Some of the two eight girls who came to buy wine for their elders actually blushed as they watched. Without realizing it, I bought a few more jars. At that moment, the smile at the corner of Yi Qingxuan's mouth became even more intense. Before noon, the wine Yi Qingxuan brewed last night was already sold out with a total of 400 jars sold, feeling the longevity enter the body without being stripped away. Yi Qingdao had the urge to cry out. In the afternoon, Yi Qingxuan was not going to sell any more wine. He was going to take Peach out for a stroll. After all, he promised yesterday. There were few people on the 10-mile Peach Road in the late afternoon. 
except for a few fishermen who were in a hurry to get to their boats in the afternoon. But the good thing is that there are still diligent people in the various stores. Otherwise, he was going to be muttered at by Peach again. Young master, this sugar gourd looks so delicious in the past. Boss, two bunches of sugar snaps. Young master, young master, come over here. There's a flying gourd. How much? Boss, young master, I haven't bought a new rouge in a long time. Bye. Yi Chingsuan bitterly smiled as he carried a bunch of miscellaneous objects. It was true that a woman's fighting strength was horrifying when she was shopping. Even he who was a sword immortal was completely overwhelmed. It had been 25 years since he crossed over to the Qiming continent, and before he was 7 years old, he was physically weak and spent most of his time at home. After the age of 7, he joined the Yin Yang Dao sect and topped the name of the first genius to study hard in the Yin Yang Dao sect for 8 years. The next 10 years were spent in a wine store to realize the sword, and there was really no time to properly experience the 10,000 feet of red dust. However, he would probably have to spend the rest of his days in this 10,000 foot red dust. After all, his sword intent is the red dust intent. Not through the red dust how can achieve the sword road. This was another reason why he hadn't split the bronze door and ascended. His path is not in the pure land, but among the red dust. Peach Blossom Town was a small town in the lower Tian Yuan state of the Sunset Empire, with an area of just a hundred hectares. So even though little Peach was strong in battle, in just two hours, they returned to the entrance of the Peach Blossom wine shop. And just as he arrived he heard two fishermen walking past discussing something. They didn't avoid the two either. Their voices unmasked. Alas, for some reason today, the sea has suddenly flooded with red robes. Yeah, that's not a good sign. I heard it started once ten years ago. Shortly thereafter, all the townspeople were forcibly sent to Tianyuan City, a hundred miles away. And then what? The slightly younger fisherman asked, who hadn't been in Peach Blossom Town ten years ago. And then, and then when we come back. The whole peach blossom town is gone. What? Then now this peach town. The older fisherman sighed. It was rebuilt afterward. Oh, ugh. I wonder what the mayor will do this time. Let's hope we're overthinking it. Maybe it's just some dead sea creatures. Listening to the words of the two men. Yi Qingdao frowned slightly. Up with the red robes? It's hard not to. If it was really the demon race invading again, with the experience of the last time, I'm sure they wouldn't give the human race time to react. And peach blossom town was just a seaside town with the strongest person being nothing more than a foundation builder. Most of them were still just body-tempering realm cultivators with slightly stronger physiques. It must have been nothing but slaughter. Meanwhile, in the Peach Blossom Town's mayor's mansion, a fat-headed middle-aged man was walking back and forth with an anxious face. He was the only foundation establishment realm cultivator in Peach Blossom Town, the town's mayor, Yuan Bu Xiu. Suddenly, a guard came in through the door. Yuan Bu Xiu hurriedly asked in a hurried voice, How is it? What did the Lord City Lord of Tianwu City say? The guard stammered. The steward of the City Lord's mansion said that we are scared out of our wits by the demon race, and that we are completely worrying over nothing. Yuan Bu Xiu sniffed and slapped his palm on the solid wood table on the side. The fat on his face kept shaking. This group of them only knows how to eat, drink and have fun. And when the demon clan really invades, each one of them runs faster than anyone else. No, we can't wait like this any longer. Notify the folks in Peach Blossom Town. Within a day. Quickly evacuate Peach Blossom Town. If nothing happens, come back in a few days. Yes, I'm going to inform the folks. After the guards left, Yuan Bu Xiu squinted his eyes and looked in the direction of the estuary. Damn it, I haven't enjoyed a few years of happiness here yet. If it really comes, I'll have to pull two demon clans to my back even if I fight for my life. Yi Qingduan also stood on the mouth of the Chintang River at this time for a long time. He wondered what the purpose of this demon invasion was. Expanding territory? Or invading the human race? Shaking his head, Yi Qingsuan no longer thought much about it. Anyway, this time, as long as the demon race dared to come, he would definitely treat them well. It is not too late for a gentleman to take revenge. Ten years is not too late for a sword cultivator to settle the score. This is the right time. At the bottom of the East China Sea, I'm afraid that those who have never been here can't even dream of imagining what it looks like. The palaces are lined with big fish and the elixirs are all over the place. Even an ordinary coral plant was a rare treasure that was hard to find in the outside world for $10,000. And among the many palaces was the deepest one that was the most prosperous. Immortal gold for the walls, night pearl for the lamp. Even the bed is made of thousand-year cold jade. This is the palace of the Lord of the East Sea, the Dragon King of the East Sea. Legend has it that the Dragon King of the East Sea had heavenly cultivation and was already a cultivator of the transition realm many years ago. Since the Battle of Dragon beheading 10 years ago, it had been sleeping deep under the sea. No one knows what kind of realm he has reached today. However, on the day of Yi Qingzuan's enlightenment, the dragon king, 
who had been sleeping for a long time, suddenly opened his eyes. A pair of eyes several times larger than the largest lantern stared above the sea. Come on man, who started the commotion? Reporting to the Dragon King, it's the human sword immortal who raised his sword to open the heavenly gate. A human sword immortal, then why is it in my East Sea territory? The grandiose sound continuously echoed at the bottom of the sea, and the surrounding tens of miles of seawater looked like it was boiling. It shook the breath of the turtle old man who was reporting from the side to be turbulent. Dragon King, this sword immortal should have attained enlightenment in the human town of Peach Blossom on the seashore. That's why it looks like it's within the East Sea. The Dragon King's huge dragon head pondered for a moment before suddenly saying in a deep voice, It seems that my East Sea demon clan has yet to produce a sword immortal, right? Dragon King is perceptive. My demon race has always preferred physical strength, and there are very few who have interest and talent in the sword path. Then there's the fact that there's no sword Dao inheritance. The upper limit of my demon race's sword cultivators is too low. Sword Dao inheritance. That's not it. The sea turtle old man was slightly stunned at his words, and then his expression changed drastically. The Dragon King thinks twice. In the battle ten years ago, my demon race was greatly wounded. Am I not that reckless? Besides, I wouldn't have been so impulsive ten years ago if it wasn't for that guy. The Dragon King let out a cold snort from his huge nostrils, frightening the old sea turtle to prostrate himself on the ground. It's just a town on the seashore. I don't think those human powerhouses will care. A trace of realization flashed across the turtle's face. It turned out that the Dragon King was looking at the inheritance of the sword immortal who had just ascended a few days ago. Let a few dragon sons handle this. Don't make too much noise. Yes, the turtle elder retreated. The dragon king's huge body slowly squirmed. And in an instant, it triggered a small undersea earthquake. On the docks of Peach Blossom Town, Yuan Bushio came to the docks at first light. Beside him were some cultivators of the chi practicing realm that he had gathered from the town. As much as he wanted to run, if he ran without fighting, he would be executed even if he escaped. Just as Yuan Bushio was fidgeting, all of a sudden, a few sea turtles appeared on the surface of the sea not far away. On the sea turtles stood a few ordinary sea demons with tridents in their hands, looking arrogantly at Yuan Bu Xiu's several people. The leader was a fish demon with thick lips and a head covered in fish scales. At this moment, Yuan Bu Xiu's few people had already drawn their swords and were ready for a battle. Human cultivators, our family's highness has said that all of you are restricted to get out of this town within today, or else when our demon army descends tomorrow, none of you will be able to escape. The fish demon's exit was to tell Yuan Bushio to get out of Peach Blossom Town. Yuan Bushio's face was a bit ugly as he questioned. Is the demon race trying to have another dragon beheading battle? Unbridled. The fish demon shouted angrily. The battle ten years ago was a disgrace to the entire East Sea demon race. Two of the ten demon kings died and one was seriously injured. The five demon saints had also fallen by one. The entire East Sea demon race suffered a great loss of energy and has yet to recover. Now that someone else's race had even mentioned it. It was equivalent to slapping the entire East Sea demon race in the face. Men, take down this mouthy human race and return to listen to your highness. At that moment, several sea demons on the sea turtle's back jumped down and came towards Yuan Bushio and the others to kill them. Brothers, kill these demonic races that don't know the sky and the earth. Kill one. Reward 50 tails of silver. The two sides became entangled in the blink of an eye. Yuan Bushio was worthy of being a foundation stage cultivator. Although he couldn't deal with the big demons. He could deal with these shrimp soldiers and crab generals with ease. Within moments, the sea demons that came ashore were slaughtered. The fish demon on the sea turtle's back shouted hysterically at the sight. You're finished. You're completely finished. Our highness won't let you go. After saying that, the turtle quickly sank below the surface of the sea. And Yuan Bushio's side didn't have the slightest look of joy. He knew that Peach Blossom Town was probably untenable. And all he could do now was to complete the transfer of the town's residents to the best of his ability. I hope it's in time. The next day, early morning, countless huge whales and sea turtles swarmed from the East China Sea into the mouth of the Chintang River. The whales and turtles were densely packed with sirens on their backs. At the head of them were nine step carriages pulled by scaly dragons, in each of which sat a figure, the nine sons of the Dragon King. The luxury of the lineup was completely unlike having to face a town whose highest cultivation level was only at the foundation establishment stage. Rather, it was more like facing a lineup taken out by a big power like the Sunset Empire. Big Brother. Isn't this lineup of ours too much for those humble human races? Mocking Wind looked at Prisoner Bull and asked, his tone full of disdain. Third brother, don't take it lightly, this is the place where a sword immortal witnessed his ascension. There must be something extraordinary about it. At those words, Jarius sneered between the two. Big brother, but the district sword immortal is just a sword immortal, just the human race blowing so god, he is not touching us, otherwise I will break all his flying swords. 
second brother is right. At once, the remaining few dragon sons agreed. Prisoner Bull looked at his several younger brothers somewhat helplessly. The young people are still lacking in eyesight after all. However, he had never seen a sword immortal either. He had only heard that it was the strongest in killing power among all the cultivators of the human race. I don't know if the sword of the human sword immortal would be able to break through his own body of copper skin and iron bones. Suddenly, Jail on the 8th Augur carriage gave a light eep. I didn't realize that there are still mortals in this town who aren't afraid of death. A few dragon sons watched and saw that not far from the shore an old man of the human race was desperately rocking the oars. Let's go. Let's go tell tell these human races what it means that the weak don't deserve to survive in the world of the strong. Basha said in a jarring voice, in Peach Blossom Town. Yi Ching Tsuan looked at the town that had been emptied of people overnight. In his heart, he could not help but feel some emotion. In this world where the strong are honored, the weak and ordinary people do not have the opportunity to decide their own destiny. Suddenly a sea breeze with a strong fishy odor blew from the sea. Yi Ching Dan's eyes stared slightly and muttered. They're here. On the side, Shao Dao said. Young master, who's here? And why does it seem like everyone in the town has disappeared overnight? The officials only told Yi Ching Tsuan about the evacuation. And in order not to let Shao Tao worry, he didn't tell her. Upon hearing this, Yi Ching Tsuan let out a light laugh. I guess he went to visit his relatives. Little Pichu brew well in the store. Young master goes out to meet some deceased people. Good. Then young master you come back early. Aha. After Yi Ching Duan left, Shao Tao suddenly slammed her head. How can you go to visit relatives together? Young master lied to me again. Yi Ching Duan walked along the street towards the pier. Unsurprisingly, there was no one on the streets. But just as he passed the door of Master Li's house, he noticed an old crone hovering anxiously at the door. Auntie Li, why haven't you left yet? Dame Li glanced at Yi Ching Tsuan. Although she didn't know what Yi Ching Tsuan's name was, she knew that he was the owner of the Peach Blossom wine shop. Sobbing, he said, Old Li too said he wanted to take advantage of the fewer people to shoot more fish, and that life would be better after he left the town. And he went out last night and hasn't come back yet. And my grandson went to the dock early in the morning to wait for his grandfather. And he hasn't returned yet. Yi Ching Suan's heart was in awe, but a reassuring smile appeared on his face. Don't worry Auntie Li, they'll be fine. I'll help you to see if their grandparents and grandchildren are back yet. Okay, little brother. The wife thanks you. After bidding farewell to Damsel Li, Yi Ching Suan finally arrived at the pier after traveling forward for a few more moments. He immediately saw Elderly and his grandson, only to see that the two were currently surrounded by a group of demon clans. The breath exhaled by the nine augurs at the head caused the two to stand a little unsteadily. However, the young man still stood firmly in front of his grandfather, holding a mahogany sword in his hand and pointing it at the many great demons. Only the hand holding the sword trembled slightly. You bad people go away. Don't hurt my grandfather. The quoted on the dragon carriage looked at the master and grandson with a playful face and said to Master Li, Old man, I didn't realize your grandson had some courage. However, do you think a teenager with no cultivation and a wooden sword can stop us? Today, I'll let you taste what it's like to be sent away in vain. No, Master Li wailed, but all he could do was watch as the siren's trident next to him was raised high. The teenager also closed his eyes in fear. Suddenly, the siren felt as if the trident in his hand had been cast to fixation. No matter how hard he tried, it did not move at all. At the same time a bright voice came from behind the teenager. What else can you demons do besides bullying mortals? When the teenager turned around, he realized that at some point there was an older brother beside him. The figure was erect, the face was handsome, and a faint smile at the corner of his mouth was warm and moving. Young man, may I borrow your sword? A faint voice sounded from beside the teenager. The teenager sniffed and unconsciously loosened his grip on the sword. As soon as he let go of his hand, the mahogany sword seemed to have a spirit and flew to Yi Ching Suan's hand by itself. The nine dragon sons on the opposite side were also startled when they saw Yi Ching Wan's appearance. But after realizing that Yi Ching Tsuan was nothing more than an ordinary person with a broken dantian without the slightest bit of spiritual power, the disdain and mockery at the corners of his mouth became even more obvious. Oh, so it's a loser. Second Highness Jarius scoffed, his voice not hidden in the slightest. Some of the great clans of the sea behind the nine dragon sons, such as the seahorses, mermaids, and hooked snakes, also spoke out to insult Yi Ching Tsuan. Rubbish, did you come here to die? Without a bit of cultivation. You still want to learn how to save people? Just you dare to scold our honorable sea race? Yi Ching Duan turned his head to look at Jarius and grinned. For some reason, Jarius' heart skipped a beat. Immediately afterward, Yi Ching Dan spoke out. If I remember correctly, your uncle's head was beheaded by my own hands back then. At those words, not only Jarius, but even the other eight dragon son's faces changed. Then Yi Ching Suan's eyes drifted to a young man of the Hippocampus clan behind the prisoner bull. 
Among the sirens who had just insulted him, he was the one who had cursed the hardest. I'm sorry, I'm responsible for the death of your family's old man. The words were an apology, but the tone was one of bragging. When the young man from the seahorse tribe heard this, he immediately snorted. Who do you think you are? My grandfather is a demon saint, equivalent to your human's transition stage, and you deserve it. At this point, the young man from the seahorse clan's words came to an abrupt end. His grandfather was none other than the demon saint who had died in the dragon beheading battle ten years ago, listening to the elders of the clan. Originally grandfather was able to escape back to the East China Sea, but was stopped by a Yuanning junior of the human race to the death, before he finally died under the siege of the human cultivators. You, were the one who stopped my grandfather from returning to the sea in the first place? Yi Ching Tsuan nodded gently with a very calm expression. Instantly, the eyes of this young man from the seahorse race looked at Yi Ching Tsuan with red eyes. I want you to pay for my grandfather's life. If it wasn't for the fact that his grandfather had passed away, he wouldn't have been reduced to being a small follower behind the prisoner bull. Even their entire seahorse clan had changed from a first-rate great clan to a second-rate power among the sea clans. But before he could strike, a broad palm stopped it. Prisoner Bo looked at Yi Qingxuan and said coldly, I think I know who you are, the former Yin Yang Dao sect's first genius in Sword Dao. Yi Qingxuan, the word ex-prisoner bull specially paused heavily, wanting to see what Yi Qingdan's reaction was. Yi Qingxuan did not admit or deny it, and the atmosphere in the scene was suddenly thrown into an awkward situation. Suddenly, a cold laugh from Basho broke the silence. So what if it's the first genius? If it was you ten years ago we might still have some admiration for you, but now, with all your cultivation wasted, what courage do you have to stand in front of us? Don't forget, you and our East Sea clan can have a blood feud. Yi Qingduan swept a glance at the group of great demons and casually said, Then what are you waiting for? As the words fell, Yi Qingduan walked directly towards the prisoner bull's carriage. If you want to compete with his highness, you'll have to go through me first. A Jindan realm snake demon stood out and bit straight towards Yi Qingduan. But unfortunately, the head and tail separated under one sword. With the help of the snake demon's corpse that was still in the air, Yi Qingduan took one step and crossed over to the carriage that Prisoner Bull was sitting on. A sword slashed down, and the huge scaly dragon became two halves, startling a sea wave. Yi Qingxuan took one step towards the Prisoner Bull, while his mouth said in a cold voice, Do you demon race really think that we human race are easy to bully? Today, I will beat you so much that you won't dare to think of invading the territory of the human race again. The Prisoner Bull looked at Yi Qingxuan who was walking over with a heavy gaze. It also saw that Yi Qingxuan was not simple, but it had enough confidence in its own flesh. The prisoner bull dodged to Yi Qingxuan's side and blasted out a fist. Yi Qingduan held a three-foot peach wood sword still lightly stabbing out with a sword. Uft. Giggle. The prisoner bull felt a stabbing pain coming from it, only to see that its copper skin and iron bones that it had always been proud of were instantly cut out with a deep gash. The prisoner bull's face changed drastically as he yelled, Brothers, come and help me. At that moment, eight figures came to the prisoner bull's carriage in unison. Prisoner Bull didn't believe that their nine dragon sons, nine cultivators of the god refining stage would not be able to take down Yi Ching Suan, a person who didn't have the slightest cultivation. A faint red light surfaced on the three-foot mahogany sword, which wasn't much conspicuous. But with just this one sword, the nine dragon sons' defenses were broken. At this moment, a mermaid woman at the back hurriedly said quietly to the demon race behind her, This person is too extraordinary. Quickly go to the dragon palace and invite the old ancestor to come. Nine dragon sons besieging a single youth had not been seen for ages. The demon race has a strong physical body, which is already stronger than the average human cultivator in the same realm. Not to mention the dragon son whose bloodline is very strong in the demon race. Yi Qingduan held his sword in his right hand and wandered between the nine dragon sons, and every step he took had a stabbing sound. It was the sound of flesh and blood being cut through. After just one incense burner, the nine dragon sons had to reveal their demonic bodies to deal with Yi Qingduan. In the distance, Elderly and his grandson looked at the scene on the seashore with shocked faces. Grandpa, this big brother is so powerful. I want to become a cultivator like him. Elderly lovingly looked at his grandson, whose face was red from excitement, and laughed. I'm sure Xiao Yuan will be able to do it. Yi Qingduan didn't know that his dusty and overwhelming back had already been deeply imprinted in a teenager's heart. At this moment, he wandered between the nine gigantic demonic beasts as if he were strolling idly. The mahogany sword in his hand turned into a sharp weapon to claim his life. The countless small demons that surrounded him were swept away by his sword. Suddenly, the prisoner bull that had transformed into its original body pressed one of its huge iron hooves towards Yi Qingduan. Pu Wan let out a loud roar attempting to shatter Yi Qingdao's will. The Qi dragons opened their bloody mouths wanting to swallow Yi Qingduan alive. Basha used his hard shell to meet Yi Qingsuan's sword, trying to buy some time for his other brothers. However, 
A sword intent far more condensed than before struck from in front of it, and it flew backwards for tens of miles at once. At the same time, dozens of sword intent erupted as nine figures flew backwards in unison. Monstrous waves rolled up around them, and the grandparents and grandchildren of elderly in the distance didn't dare to continue watching, pulling the reluctant, three-stepping teenager away from the dock. For a few moments, the wind calmed down. Yi Chingsuan utilized his sword intent to levitate on the surface of the sea, and the red light of the three-foot wooden sword in his hand flashed, just like the exiled immortal's presence in the world. The nine huge figures not far away reluctantly stood up. The eyes of the nine dragon sons were filled with scorn and incredulity as they looked at Yi Chingduan. Is this really the battle power that should be expected from someone whose Dantian is completely wasted? The prisoner bull's heart was filled with horror, even though it didn't know much about the geniuses of the younger generation of the human race. But it was certain that there was absolutely no one who could beat all nine of their dragon sons at this age. One by one. And it's still a one-sided crushing thrashing. Since I can't beat them with nine, I'll have to use that move. All the sea races listen to the order. Launch an attack for me and kill this human demon. After saying that, the prisoner bull couldn't help but feel flushed. This was too unlike what the hallowed dragon clan's grand hallkeeper had done. But today, it was all he could think of. The moment prisoner bull gave the order, densely packed black dots appeared on the water's surface. The number is so large that I'm afraid the entire mouth of the Chintang River can't accommodate it. Looking at this situation, Yi Qingduan smiled. He who had become the Dao of sword intent was the most unafraid of group battles Ah, Ever since his enlightenment Yi Qingdao had always wanted to create his own sword stance. Today's battle was not enjoyable, but it was very enjoyable. Suddenly, he had a flash of inspiration, and his three-foot mahogany sword was raised above his head. A loud laugh came out from Yi Qingdan's mouth. Young man's boldness, matched with this blooming peach blossom, is a perfect match. At once, a wisp of ethereal red light rose from the mahogany sword. In the next moment, the ten miles of peach blossoms that were in full bloom in peach blossom town came off as much as they could and flew towards the mouth of the sea. Flower petals continuously flew from the town and hung around Yi Qingdao. Yi Qingxuan said to himself, This sword, I name it, Wen Dao. In an instant, the city was full of flower petals hanging above the surface of the East China Sea. Regardless of their strength, each demon clan had a flower petal hanging above their heads, which was very spectacular. But under the petals of each of the demon race at this time but feel the sword hanging over their heads, the slightest carelessness is the head to the ground. Yi Qingdan's faint words resounded over the sea, if you dare to take another step up, you will die. The sky above the estuary is filled with peach blossoms, and underneath the peach blossoms are countless demon heads. Prisoner Bo looked at Yi Qingxuan in horror. He could only think of one word to describe Yi Qingxuan right now. Jedi, under this move of smelling the Tao, not only could they not move their physical bodies, even their divine sense could not be released outwardly. In other words, at the moment they couldn't even call for help. Even in his father's prison cow he had never felt such a terrifying aura. He could only pray now that the next sea tribe powerhouse that came along would speak properly, or else he was sure that with just one thought, the uncountable number of demon tribes here would all fall head over heels. But the more you fear something, the more it will come. An earth-shaking roar came from the distant seabed, humble human race. If you dare to touch a hair on the head of several highnesses, I will slaughter your whole clan. Prisoner bull as well as the eight dragon sons, my life is over. A huge figure with a human-like upper body and a fish-like lower body leapt out of the water. The aura of the transition realm emanated from his body. Human Junior, did you not hear the words of this saint? Do you know how valuable the bodies of the several highnesses are? If anything goes wrong, even the beheading of your entire family won't be enough to kill you. Yi Qingxuan smiled faintly. How golden is it? Try it if you dare. Before the words fell, the peach blossom petals on the surface of the sea instantly dropped by three points. The faces of the nine dragon sons immediately turned pale. The blood chi of countless low-ranked demon races churned, and some even directly exploded to death. Prisoner bull, if I succeed the throne, the mermaid clan will go to guard the endless abyss. You seek death. The mermaid race demon saint shouted angrily. He then killed towards Yi Qingduan with a silver blue lance in his hand. Yi Qingduan looked indifferent and just cupped a peach blossom petal in his hand and threw it at the mermaid race demon saint. Ah ah ah. Angry old man. Human junior. You will pay for your frivolity. The mermaid race demon saint was instantly angered by Yi Qingxuan's contemptuous behavior. In his heart, he secretly decided that he must not let Yi Qingdan die so painfully later. The peach blossom left his hand and instantly transformed into a pink sword. Meeting the lance, in the blink of an eye, a huge figure flew backwards between them. Peach petal followed close behind until the mermaid saint hit a small hill. The peach blossom petals continued to come closer, eventually resting three inches in front of the demon saint's forehead. Sensing the deadly threat, a long whistle came out from the mouth of the mermaid great sage, deep under the sea, 
A huge figure moved slowly, the surrounding sea water instantly boiled, and there were also three figures in the depths of the dragon palace that broke out and flew straight towards the water. Stepping on the high platform paved with peach blossoms, Yi Qingtsuan hung above the sea. Suddenly, he felt a pressure far superior to that of this human demon saint coming from beneath his feet. The pressure came on strong, as if it wanted to press Yi Qingtsuan to kneel down. Yi Qingtsuan raised between his eyebrows. It's not over? All like to use their power to suppress others, right? Fine. Then I'll let you all have a good experience of what it means to have a great power in heaven and earth. A man of clay still has fire in him, let alone, now that I'm a sword immortal. Only Yi Qingtsuan held a three-foot mahogany sword in his hand, and the sword pointed to the bottom of his foot, slightly pressing down, at once, with the top of his feet as the center, the seawater quickly receded to the sides. With that, Yi Qingtsuan let go of the sword in his hand, and the mahogany sword fell down in a smooth manner. A wisp of purple chi came from the sky, and a great momentum of heaven and earth poured down that was visible to the naked eye. The entire sea at the mouth of the Chintang River suddenly sank tens of feet. At this moment, all the demon clans could see that a mahogany sword had fallen from the surface of the sea. Wherever it passed, the sea water evaporated and the demon race perished. Suddenly, a large dragon head met the mahogany sword. The two violently collided together. Tens of thousands of tons of seawater suddenly disappeared, and a vacuum appeared between the two in the blink of an eye. At the same time all the peach blossom petals on the surface of the sea dropped down another three points, and all the demons could touch them if they raised their heads. Some weak demon clans were instantly pierced through their bodies by the sword chi, letting out oozing screams. Human sword immortal, my clan does not mean to offend, but I hope we do not hurt the weak. Yi Qingduan snorted, do you think they are weaker? Or the thousands of mortals in Peach Blossom Town who have no cultivation to speak of are weaker? Yi Qingduan did not hide the anger in his tone at all, and after a few seconds of silence, the voice underneath threatened, you're just a loose immortal who hasn't ascended successfully. Do you really want to be the enemy of my entire East Sea clan? So what if it is? Yi Qingdao's reply was simple and dry, and his movements were the same. He slowly raised his right hand, then steeply reversed it downward. The mahogany sword that was originally in a stalemate with the Dragon King suddenly surged out with a strong force, and the Dragon King of the East China Sea retreated. Human sword immortal. You forced me. I, A.O. defeat. The 67th Patriarch of the East Sea Dragon Clan. Use my essence blood as a guide to invite the return of my ancestor's spirit. A whirlwind rose from the sea, and a beam of light came from an unknown distance. The many sea clansmen only felt a suppression coming from their bloodline, and immediately their already lowered heads pressed even lower. A transcendent aura began to converge where the beams of light shone. Yi Qingduan snorted coldly. If the young ones can't beat them, they call the old ones, and if the old ones can't beat them, they call the dead ones, right? I won't let you have your way. A sword intent gathered from Yi Qingdao's fingertips and lifted his hand to chop out. The whirlwind was only supported for but a split second before it directly dissipated. This caused even Yi Qingduan to be slightly stunned. But in an instant he figured it out. Sword intent was originally aimed at the soul. And Ying Ling naturally belonged to a type of soul. Nature has a natural restraint. And the East Sea Dragon King and the Nine Dragon Sons at the bottom of the sea looked at this sight. And the people were dumbfounded. Ancestor? No more? No. It's like the original one is gone, but this time it's gone without even showing its face. After Yi Qingduan decimated the ancestral spirits of the dragon race, his eyes looked deeper into the seabed. Ao defeat's body suddenly trembled. Lord human sword immortal. We can discuss this. My clan is willing to retreat on this and promise not to invade the boundaries of the human race for a hundred years. Ao defeat in his heart is certainly not so think. The nine times of the tribulation realm. Nine tribulations. If the last tribulation did not cross will not be able to ascend to the upper realm. As for the scattered immortals who stayed on earth, their lifespan was only a hundred years at the most, and when Yi Ching Tsuan died, they then would still be able to do whatever they wanted to do. Of course, in addition to this situation, there were also strong people who did not ascend to the upper realm in order to serve as a family base, but Ao Defeat didn't think that Yi Ching Tsuan was such a person. At such a young age, it was impossible that he didn't want to go to a wider world. So that leaves only the possibility that the ascension was not successful. Although Yi Qingtsuan didn't know what was in Ao Defeat's mind, he wouldn't easily believe the words of such an old monster who had lived for tens of thousands of years. At that, he didn't reply, just continued to press his fingers down slightly. At once, another scream came out. Live. No, 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 no. Lord Sword Immortal please be merciful. We can give you whatever you want. Just never let the sword chi fall again. The humble voice came out from the mouth of the titular Dragon King of the East Sea, making the hearts of the crowd of sea demons feel bad, especially the nine dragon sons. 
In their eyes their father was supposed to be the existence that said nothing, but I didn't realize that I would now have to grovel and pray for forgiveness from a human. They couldn't help but look at the source of it all. The red-robed man. He was seen forming his right hand into a sword finger, standing on top of the peach blossom paved high platform, looking down at the entire East Sea. It's like an exile fairy on earth. Only then did Ji Qingduan's fingers stop, and his faint voice was transmitted through the sword chi to the ears of every demon race member. Those who are not of my race will have different hearts. Unless you recognize me as your master, I cannot trust your promises. Hearing this, a flash of humiliation flashed across the eyes of the numerous demon clansmen, but they didn't dare to say anything more, and Ao Defeat's face was filled with despondency and gloom. His father, the previous dragon king, named it Ao Defeat, originally wanting it to remain undefeated and lead the pack to the mainland. But not only did he himself fail to do so, but now, because of a moment of greed, he has provoked the Manchu tribe to be about to fall into the slavery of the human race. But at this moment, people were the chopping board. I was the fish. He had to be soft. Otherwise today could be the day of the dead clan. I answer. Suddenly a roar of anger came from the distant island. Dragon King. You can't promise him. Submitting to the humble human race. This is a shame that my clan can never wash away. The words came. And immediately not only the prisoner bull and other demon clans whose lives and deaths were only at Yi Ching Suan's whim changed their faces. Even Ao Defeat's face turned ugly. This stupid bastard. Two such big eyes are blind. Can't see the situation. Yi Qingduan didn't say much. Treating the East Sea demon race. Excluding racial grudges. As far as himself was concerned. He also had a grudge against them. So there was no talk of being soft hearted at all. Only to see that the peach blossom petal that stood in front of the great sage of the mermaid clan not far away suddenly moved. The petals passed through his skull with lightning speed. And the demon pearl in the sea of consciousness shattered. Since then five East Sea Demon Saints, only three remained. I've always admired people with courage, so if anyone else has any objections, feel free to bring them up and we'll discuss them together. Grrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrr
at that AO defeats ice flashed with a flash of disappointment. He was still thinking of giving the beautiful princesses and dragonesses born in his family to Yi Qingduan. Wouldn't this bring himself one level closer to the sword fairy? In case you have another little sword fairy, don't dare think about it. Not at all. In the middle of the conversation, rows and rows of extremely luxurious palaces had appeared in Yi Qingdao's line of sight. Even though Yi Qingtsuan had lived in a wealthy family since he was a child, he was still subdued by the sight before him at this moment. 10,000-year-old night pearl can only be used as lighting. Thousand-year-old cold jade can only be used to make ordinary tables and chairs. Even the fruits placed on the table were third-order treasure medicine flame fruits that were worth thousands of dollars. In the Qiming continent herbs are graded according to the year of the elixir. Those within a hundred years are called mortal medicines. Those between 100 and 1,000 years old are precious medicines, divided into nine orders. For example, the flame fruit from a 360-year-old flame fruit tree was a third-order treasure pill. The herbs that are more than a thousand years old and less than ten thousand years old have begun to take on a spiritual nature and are honored as the king of medicines. This was already the most precious spirit medicine that most cultivators could see. Further up between ten, zero 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 and one hundred, zero 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 years is the holy medicine, with the miraculous effect of living death, flesh and bones. This is the place where the great powers have their heritage, and the elixir that really reaches the age of one hundred. 000 years of medicinal age is known as the immortal pill of immortality by the cultivators. Already fully possessing a spiritual intelligence no less than that of a normal human being, it has always been an existence that comes and goes without a trace. There were only legends that some monks had glimpsed them in various human forbidden zones. Just inhaling the medicinal scent from afar will prolong your life. When Yi Qingsuan was in the Yin Yang Dao sect before, the most precious spirit medicine he had seen was a 30, 000 year old sacred medicine on the top of the back mountain. It was regarded as important as his lifeblood by the head of the Yin Yang Sex Medicine Garden. Once he accidentally trespassed into that territory and almost triggered the sect's grand formation. This was the closest Yi Qingguan had felt to death within the Yin Yang Dao sect. I still can't help but cold sweat when I remember it. Along the way, Yi Qingtsuan was already numb. If it wasn't for AO defeat being by his side, he would have been somewhat unable to control his excited heart and trembling hands. Soon, Yi Qingtsuan and AO defeat finally arrived in its palace. Yi Qingduan looked at the pillar that stood in the center of the palace. For the first time, a stunned look appeared on his face. The mouth won't close for a long time. Look at the towering pillars in front of you. Yi Qing finally knew what the immortal mountain that went straight into the sky was that the fishermen of Peach Blossom Town were talking about. Ao defeats eyelids jumped as he watched Yi Qing Suan's expression. This lord wouldn't have taken a fancy to my dragon palace's top man, would he? This is the root of my East Sea clan survival. No, I have to think of something. Then Ao Defeat's voice sounded in Yi Ching Suan's ears. Lord Sword Immortal, why don't I take you to see my Dragon Palace's treasure trove? Yi Ching Duan nodded. The pillar or rod was certainly precious, but it was not suitable for him. Yi Ching Duan's current strength strength only depended on whether he was willing to use his sword or not. The stronger the intention to come out of the sword, the stronger his sword would be. Don't call me Lord Sword Immortal, I'm only 25 this year. Call me Duke, it's nicer. Yes. Your Excellency, Ao Defeat's heart was turning over at this moment. He's actually only 25 years old. He had originally thought that even if Yi Ching Suan's talent was good, he would have to be a hundred years old before he could step into the Ascension Realm and achieve Sword Immortal. It should be known that although the demon race had a long lifespan, their relative cultivation speed was slower than the human race. He was now in the ninth heaven of transition, with a lifespan of 36, 000 years, but he was almost 10, 000 years old. Just like him, he was already a rare genius of the demon clan for 10,000 years. At this moment, Ao Defeat couldn't help but birth an absurd thought in his heart. Perhaps recognizing such a young sword immortal as the master is not a bad chance for the East Sea clan. Yi Ching Suan followed Ao Defeat to a large door made of extraterrestrial meteorite iron. Under the gazes of awe and curiosity of the guards on both sides, the two entered the middle of the treasury together. The wide array of treasures made Yi Ching Duan somewhat unable to open his eyes. It took a long time to get used to it. When he was in the Yin Yang Dao sect, as the first genius of the younger generation, he had naturally entered the Dao sect's treasure pavilion, but nowhere near comparable to this. The two are nothing compared to each other. My lord, if you see anything you like, just take it, Ao Defeat said proudly, these are the savings of their sea tribe for millions of years. Even though Yi Ching Suan was a sword immortal, he was only 25 years old after all. Even if the talent for swordsmanship was outstanding, surely the insight hadn't caught up yet. Yi Qingdan nodded slightly. He hadn't opened his mouth on this journey, just waiting for these words from Ao Defeat. In that case, I'll just look around. Yi Qingduan flowed between the many treasures, and for a while, 
he really didn't know what he needed. After turning around in a small half circle, he had only picked out some spirit herbs or immortal syrups for brewing. Seeing this, the smile on the face of Ao Defeat, who was following behind, became even more intense. However, when Yi Ching Suan arrived at the area of the spirit medicine treasure house, his movements instantly paused as a shaking sensation came from within his body. Yi Ching Suan's internal vision found that the eternal life order, which had been silent for several years, had finally moved again. At the same time, a touch of green appeared on every single spirit medicine in the spirit medicine treasure trove. In just an instant, the greenness surged madly towards Yi Qingdao. Ao defeat, who was on the side, only felt relieved, and all the dark wounds on his body disappeared at this moment. And after the second longevity token inside Yi Ching Suan's body shook slightly, the chaotic aura that surrounded it dissipated, revealing a row of small letters. The essence of all medicines are united, and can cure all diseases in the world, Taoist medicine inheritance. Enlightenment, a ray of essence flashed in Yi Ching Dan's eyes, and a vast and everlasting immortal intent emanated from him. It was only for a moment, though, and then it tightened back up. Ao defeat looked at Yi Ching Suan with a horrified expression. Gongzi, what are you? No harm done, just a slight realization. A huge amount of information instantly surged into Yi Ching Suan's sea of consciousness. He gained the second occupational inheritance, Taoist medicine. As the name suggests, this profession is the equivalent of a monk's doctor. Although the Qiming continent was mainly immortal cultivation, it was impossible for cultivators to never be injured. Naturally, they need someone to heal their injuries, and if it's a simple injury it's fine, they can heal themselves. However, if it is a serious injury, or a near-death injury, this will require a professional healer. As a result, the profession of Taoist medicine rose in response to the trend and became a profession with a highly respected status. The existence value of a healer second realm Shenguan realm Dao healer was not at all lower than a Yuaning realm cultivator anymore. The higher the medical skill, the higher the status of the Taoist doctor naturally. It was even rumored that Dao healers who had reached the fourth realm of the realm of the rising dead were treated with courtesy even by powerful people of the transitional succession realm. Yi Qingguan hadn't known what spirit medicine to pick, but now he had a target. And so a round of supersized robbery took place in the treasury of the Dragon King, the overlord of the East Sea. However, any spirit medicine that had some medicinal value, or poisons with intense toxicity did not escape Yi Ching Suan's poisonous hands, all in his pocket. And behind him, Ao Defeat had to keep taking out his storage ring to categorize the medicinal herbs for Yi Ching Suan while his heart was like a knife. However, he could also see that Yi Ching Suan wasn't taking it randomly. So despite the heartache, it's not to the point of heartfelt complaint. Half an hour later. Well, just take these for now. Yi Ching Duan clapped his hands with satisfaction. Looking at the treasure trove of spirit medicines that was nearly a quarter less without the slightest embarrassment, the guest follows the master. This is what Ao Defeat told him to take casually. You can't blame him. Luckily, it was in the treasury of the Eastern Palace in the Eastern Sea. If it was anywhere else, it was estimated that even in the Yin Yang Dao sex treasure trove, he wouldn't be able to find such a complete collection of medicinal herbs. These herbs were already enough for him to use for a long time. Although the occupational inheritance contained in the Order of Eternal Life was very superior, it was not instilled into Yi Qingdao's head. He's just starting from a higher base, but how far he ends up going depends on his own talent and level of hard work. Like his first legacy, Brewmaster, which was in his more specialized field. So in just three years, he has reached a very high level of brewing. According to his estimation, I'm afraid that the entire Qiming continent could no longer find a few winemakers who could match his winemaking skills. After leaving the spirit medicine treasure trove, they arrived at the last treasure trove area. Treasure trove area for magic treasures and weapons. To be honest, Yi Qingdao wasn't very interested. Because ever since enlightenment, there were only two types of magic treasures in his eyes one that can be cut with one sword, and one that takes two. So he just picked out a few self-defense magic treasures suitable for women for Shao Tao, as well as three women's flying swords and left. After exiting the treasure vault, Ao defeat led Yi Ching Tsuan to visit various marvelous places of the East Sea Dragon Palace, such as the secret realm specializing in physical body training, the Mercury Tower for practicing martial arts, and so on. There are also baths cast from the finest spirit springs. Yi Ching Dan could only use four words to describe it. Trenchless. It was an eye-opening experience for Yi Ching Suan, who had come to the bottom of the sea for the first time in his life. Next, he led this Yi Ching Dan to meet the remaining three demon saints and seven demon kings. Under absolute strength, all the demons recognized this act of Yi Ching Suan's entry into the East Sea. But then Yi Ching Suan's words caused the faces of all the demon saints and demon kings to change. Since you have recognized me as your master, it is better to explain some things in advance. First rule, without my permission, 
You great demons above the harmonized realm cannot enter the human race's borders at will. Upon hearing this, several demon race pillars nodded their heads. This was to be expected. The second rule is that if ordinary mortals come to fish, as long as they are not driven to extinction, they cannot be sent out to suppress them. AO defeat immediately replied, We will inform our subordinates of this point, and at most we will only drive them away. We won't kill them. Good. There's one last rule. As long as I'm still in the Enlightenment continent for one day, I shall not take the initiative to provoke a great war between the human and demon races. Yi Qingduan really didn't want the scene from 10 years ago to reappear once more. It was really a life like grass and a river of blood. Both the demon race and the human race were greatly injured. Even the demon clan, which had such a tenacious life force, had lost two demon kings and a demon saint. The human race on the other side of that war naturally suffered more casualties. Ao defeat glanced at the three demon saints and nodded when he saw no objections. With Yi Qingduan around, even if they started a big war, the one who would lose would be on their demon clan side. There's no need to destroy yourself. Okay, that's all I have to say. Do you guys have anything else to add? After a long time of silence, just as Yi Qingxuan was about to get up and leave, a demon king of the hooked snake clan asked in a low voice, My lord, isn't there a need to brand us with a slave mark? Yi Qingxuan only laughed lightly at the words and walked to the center of the hall, standing with his hands behind his back. I trust you not to break your promise, and of course, I trust my sword even more. As the words fell, an extremely strong pressure rose steeply within the hall, but it dissipated in the twinkling of an eye. The gazes of several demon saints and demon kings looking at Yi Qingxuan were filled with admiration. Half of it was because of Yi Qingxuan's strength, and the other half was that Yi Qingxuan did not treat them as slaves. Unconsciously, the balance in their hearts tilted most of the way toward the side of voluntary recognition. Suddenly, Yi Qingduan, who was standing with his hands folded, raised a doubt. This doubt had been there since he entered the East Sea. Why is it that this underwater world of yours is so beautiful and strong, and yet you are always trying to take over the boundaries of the human race? Is it hard not to just want to expand the demon race's territory? Upon hearing this, a touch of thick bitterness surfaced at the corners of the mouths of Ao Defeat and the many demon saints and demon kings in the hall. Your Excellency doesn't know. My East Sea demon race is not like the continental demon race, although I can also live on land. It's ultimately not as comfortable as being in the water. And the reason why we have repeatedly attacked the human race's territory is because we really have a last resort. Yi Qingwan sniffed and frowned lightly. This was something he had not expected. Can it be that the battle 10 years ago was something else? And what is it that compels you to stay away from your homes? After Ao defeat and the three demon saints glanced at each other, they said in a deep voice, My lord, please follow me. Afterwards, Yi Qingxuan stood on Ao defeat's dragon's head, and the three demon saints transformed into their own bodies followed closely behind, swimming towards the depths of the seabed. Originally, the dragon palace is already very close to the bottom of the sea, so only a moment. A person four demons will come to the bottom of the East China Sea. However, the sight in front of him caused Yi Qingdao's pupils to shrink violently. How? Only to see, deep under the sea, there was an abyss that was about a hundred miles wide and tens of thousands of miles long crossing half of the ocean floor. Yi Qingxuan had heard the elders of the clan talk about some of the places in the Qinming continent that were only known but not seen since he was young. Among them, there is the East China Sea returning to the ruins. Rumor has it that in the depths of the endless waters of the East China Sea, there is a sea mouth that can swallow everything. Every day, tens of thousands of tons of seawater are swallowed by the sea mouth. Whether it is a cultivator or a demon race but if they go in, they will never come out again. Yi Qingxuan didn't believe it when he first heard it, but now that he was looking at the abyss, he instantly thought of the legend. Ao defeat did not stop and directly flew into the abyss with Yi Qingxuan. Some small fish in the abyss that couldn't be named were trying to swing their tails upwards but they could never get out of the three inches. The further down you go, the less light there is. At the back, even Ao Defeat and the others could only use their spiritual power to see the road ahead. And Yi Qingduan at the head of the dragon also opened his sword eye. The years in the abyss were unmarked. And after an unknown amount of time, Yi Qingdan finally saw a ray of bright light coming from the front. It was a sea mouth of no more than a hundred feet. And the light was coming from the other side of the sea mouth. Yi Qingduan narrowed his eyes. Is that really the returning ruin? The place where everything returns to its source, which has been rumored since ancient times. And the closer he got to the mouth of the sea, a sound like the beating of a heart came from the seawater. It actually caused Yi Qingxuan to feel a pang of discomfort. The Ao defeat underneath him and the three demon saints behind him were also having their chi and blood churning at this time, and it was obvious that they weren't doing well either. My lord, this is the reason why my East Sea demon clan has been trying to escape the East Sea for generations. Upon hearing this, Yi Qingxuan inquired. 
We are also only close to the sea mouth to hear the ringing sound. The place where the East Sea Clan lives is tens of thousands of miles away from here, so it's not so bad that we can hear this ringing sound, right? At this time, the hooked serpent clan great sage behind him spoke out to explain. Your Excellency doesn't know. This sea mouth isn't always this calm. When it's raging even the surface of the sea has an effect, not to mention my East Sea Clan's habitat is in the depths of this sea floor. Yi Chingsuan's face showed understanding. Then have you tried what the consequences are of hearing this sound like a beating heart for a long period of time? At this time, Ao defeat snatched a step ahead and spoke. That was naturally tried. After all, this was discovered when the fifth generation of my clan's patriarch was in power. How did it turn out? The results are as short as a few days, and those with high cultivation can support it for anywhere from half a month to half a year, all of which go off the deep end and die violently. Yi Ching Tsuan was silent. He guessed that it was this consequence. And how did you get through these millions of years in peace? Passing through peacefully? Ao defeat smiled to himself. The lives of my clan today were all traded one by one by our forefathers. How has the heavenly Tao ever given my tribe any semblance of favor? Behind him, the water Chilin clan's demon saint, said with pathos, Do you know, your excellency, how my clan has continued to this day? Yi Chingduan shook his head, although he didn't know the full picture, but seeing the look of several demons was certainly not an unusual method. Those are the corpses of generations of my East Sea clan, blocking this sea mouth. Yi Chingduan's complexion shook as he waited for the following. So far, the demon saints of our clan buried within the sea mouth have long been no less than a hundred, and the demon kings are even measured in thousands. Every late year, the strongest of our demon kings and above are forced to go inside the sea mouth to calm the agitation. Yi Qingdan said with a serious face, have the successive generations of patriarchs not found a way to solve this problem? The words fell silent for a long time before Ao Defeat's voice came quietly. The first 66 patriarchs of my East Sea clan, except for the first four generations of patriarchs who never discovered this place, Two others died overseas in battle. One is still unknown. And the remaining 59 patriarchs are all inside the seaport. Yi Chingduan was shaken inwardly and could not calm down for a long time. I didn't realize that this East Sea clan seemed to be incredibly prosperous. But it had endured such torture for generations. At the same time, this also made Yi Chingtsuan very curious in his heart. What exactly was inside this sea mouth? Surprisingly, it has caused generations of East Sea demon clan patriarchs to reclaim the sea with their bodies for this reason. Immediately afterward, a brilliant light flashed in Yi Ching Suan's eyes. Did you just say that one of the clan leaders is still unknown? Ao defeat transformed into a human body at this time and smiled bitterly. That is precisely my father, the previous generation of Dragon King. That's why I desperately want to go to the human frontier after my reign, because there's no telling when this seaport will have another accident. As clan leader, I cannot treat the lives of the entire clan as child's play. Speaking here, Ao fail was full of solemnity. If the seaport erupts at that time, then I will be the first one to go in and fill the seaport. Matriarch, the three demon saints behind him showed pathos on their faces and let out a cry in unison. And Yi Qingduan also looked at Ao Defeat with some appreciation. Since the time of subjugation he knew that Ao Defeat was definitely a good leader. Because he would put his people first, which is hard to do. Just as Ao Defeat and the few others were immersed in despair over the future, Yi Qingzuan's soft laugh broke the heavy atmosphere. It seems that you guys still haven't sincerely recognized me as your lord. At these words, Ao defeat hurriedly and hurriedly said, Gongzi, we don't mean this. Yi Ching Tsuan waved his hand. This Haikou is so powerful by you guys. I really want to go in and take a look. Ao defeat and a few others' faces changed drastically. Your excellency mustn't do it. The successive patriarchs of my East Sea clan have never come out again after going in. I am afraid that you will go in. Ao defeat wanted to say, the various patriarchs of the East Sea Clan were all the most gifted and strongest among the Sea Clan's children of a generation, or even several generations. There was no lack of amazing people who had crossed the nine heavenly robberies to achieve the realm of ascension, but it went in and still didn't come back out. Therefore, even though Ao defeat knew that Yi Ching Tsuan's battle power was heavenly, he still didn't think that Yi Ching Tsuan would be able to return safely. Yi Ching Tsuan smiled slightly. His originally handsome face looked a bit more domineering at this time. Do you, uh, Know who I am, the first genius of the Yin Yang Dao sect, the original Dao sect's heavenly pride, the current lord of the East Sea? Yi Qingduan all but shook his head and spoke, the few of you really have no eyes. With that, he lifted his head, and a confident smile curled up at the corner of his mouth. Proudly, he said, Now, I'm a sword immortal eh? After saying that, Yi Qingduan turned around and entered the seaport while a few demons were frozen. Only a slightly light-hearted voice was left to come out of the sea mouth. Since I am a sword immortal, I should, by all means, be invincible. Outside the seaport, only the messy AO defeat 4 remained. He, 
just like that, went in, the demon saint of the Xian turtle clan still couldn't accept this fact, isn't this human sword immortal a little too crazy? The water Qilin clan's demon saint was a bit dissatisfied, it had clearly made its words clear, but Yi Qingxuan just wouldn't listen, it's better this way, we don't have to submit to him either. Hook Snake, who was in the middle of the two, said with slight relief, only Ao defeat stood aside, facing the sea mouth, silent, not long after, the three demon saints also discovered his abnormality, matriarch, what's wrong with you, after a long period of silence, Ao defeat's low voice slowly resounded in the deepest part of this dark and sunless seabed, if he comes out, I, the east sea clan, will treat him with the honor of a clan leader, the water chilin sniffed and asked offhandedly, and what if he can't get out, at those words, Ao defeat slowly turned around, if he can't come out, his longevity tablet will be placed on the tablet of the 66th patriarch of my East Sea clan, and he will be worshipped by my Sea clan for 10,000 generations. Several people immediately changed their faces, but after pondering for a long time, they fell silent one after another. A few moments later, three incoherent voices rang out in the darkness, as it should be, Ao defeat face is full of relief. Although the East China Sea clan has suffered from the torture of this weird heartbeat sound for generations, no peace but this also made them more united and heartfelt than most of the human clans. Inside the mouth of the sea is a fantastically high waterfall. A red-robed figure encircling a red sword circle appeared steeply in the uppermost part of the waterfall. The waterfall is unending at your feet, and the sky is white when you look up. Strangely enough, it was as if the heartbeat had stopped since Yi Qingdao came in, making it so that he had no idea which way to go now. Yi Qingxuan followed the waterfall downstream, and it took a long time before he reached the bottom. Into the eyes was a red sea. The water was incredibly red, and the surface showed only some skeletons that had yellowed. I think these are the corpses of the ancestors of the East Sea clan. Yi Qingduan slightly counted. Only the bottom of the waterfall within a hundred miles of the corpse found has been no less than a hundred. Treading forward on the water, there was nothing iconic on the surface of the sea, so Yi Qingxuan could only follow the direction that the corpses extended. But just as he had traveled no more than a mile ahead, a soft thud came from the skeleton next to him. A black shadow suddenly flew out of the skeleton and flew into Yi Qingxuan's divine sea at an extremely fast speed. Yi Qingxuan only felt as if his forehead was gently stabbed by a needle, and then a miserable scream came out from the divine sea. Hostile. The sound was not like a human or any kind of animal's cry, and it was very oozy. Yi Qingdao's heart sank into his divine sea, only to see a mass wrapped in black shadow being penetrated back and forth by the sword intent in his divine sea. He had noticed a change in the divine sea since his enlightenment. The divine sea that was originally a golden ocean had now turned into a red sea of swords. The sea of swords was filled with sword intent raging, but a closer look was also able to reveal that the movement of the sword intent was regular. Before this he didn't even know that he had any special features in this sea of swords, but now Yi Qingxuan seemed to have found one. It seemed that his current divine sea had a natural restraint on the soul body. In order to verify his suspicions, Yi Qingxuan began to manipulate the sword intent in his sea of consciousness. Left, right, up, again. Hostile, hostile, hostile. After a quarter of an hour, Yi Qingdao stopped, as the black shadow was no longer even ash. Exiting the divine sea, Yi Qingdao frowned slightly. These black shadows were not strong in battle, but they specialized in targeting divine souls and were so tenacious in their vitality that it was really a bit bizarre. But now that he knew that these black shadows were not a threat to him, his footsteps quickened a bit. After an unknown amount of time again, Yi Qingdan entered a withered yellow ocean from the Red Sea. There is a clear distinction between red and yellow, one step back is the red sea, one step forward is the yellow sea, the entire sea water emitted a foul odor, and even some broken bones could be seen floating on the surface. Just as he entered, Yi Qingxuan felt countless life breaths reviving in the sea water under his feet. Sure enough, in the next second, countless black shadows flew up from under the sea water. In the blink of an eye, most of Yi Qingxuan's field of vision was shrouded in black. Yi Qingduan's sword moved, and with a flash of sword light, a red light poured out like a rainbow, a glimmer of bright light sprinkled back onto the surface of the sea, which grew larger and larger, and then the entire black curtain broke right off, taking the place where he stood as the origin, no black shadow dared to stay for dozens of miles ahead, however, Yi Qingxuan's face showed some gravity because his sword swing, although unstoppable, did not kill many black shadows, there were even more and more black shadows in the sky on both sides due to the black shadows that kept popping up on the water, since sword chi doesn't work, Let's try sword intent. Yi Qingduan lightly drank, and then endless red dust sword intent was scattered from the mahogany sword. The entire sky above the withered yellow ocean was filled with sword intent. A miserable scream went on and on, and in less than a moment the black shadows in the sky above emptied into a large blank mass. 
But then something shocking happened. Yi Ching Suan watched as the black shadows above his head were unexpectedly converging violently towards one spot at an extremely fast speed. The convergence turned into a huge creature, shaped like a bat, but with an extra long barb at the tail. The bat-shaped creature swooped towards Yi Ching Duan after a stern cry, and Yi Ching Duan did not avoid it. With a chop of the mahogany sword in his hand, Yi Ching Suan only felt as if he had chopped on a half-solid, half-imaginary object. The sword intent on the sword was rampant, causing the bat creatures to constantly scream, and black shadows kept falling into the withered seawater. Suddenly Yi Ching Suan felt a strong wind coming, a long barb coming from below. Fuck you. You play dirty. Yi Ching Dao lashed out, breaking free of the bat-type creature in front of him in a flash and dodging away. But the barb could no longer gather force, and a hook lodged itself in the entire head of the bat. At once, the entire legion of black shadows scattered. The sea was full of black shadowed corpses deep in unknown toxins. He who shits on people. People shits on people all the time. Yi Ching Suan performed a Buddhist salute with one hand and stepped on the black shadows of many unknown creatures to continue walking forward. Something was muttered under his breath. It's not much use if you can't even stomp on it. Walking over the withered seawater. Enduring the stench. Yi Ching Suan's footsteps became faster and faster. He had a feeling he was getting closer to the center of these waters. After another long time, Yi Ching Duan left the Yellow Sea region. But the sight before him caused a hint of surprise to appear in his eyes. The water under his feet had by now returned to its normal sky blue color. And the sky overhead had white clouds and what looked like sunlight rays. But what surprised Yi Ching Suan the most was not the sky and sea water that was the same as the outside world. Rather, it was the two rows of figures standing motionless in front of them. A human fish, a dragon, and a water unicorn. There were also some sea races that Yi Qingdao couldn't even recognize. These two rows of figures stood on the sea like two rows of guards, guarding their king, and at the end of the line of sight, a bronze ancient coffin was quietly suspended there. It's like a sea pin for the whole waters, as if sensing the entry of a living person. The bronze ancient coffin gently trembled. A small wave was raised around the area. At the same time, the two figures standing motionless on both sides, the two at the very edge actually slowly raised their heads. It was a hooked serpent in water chilin, and from the aura emitted it should be a bit lower in cultivation than Ao defeat, probably about the same as a few demon saints. While the demon races parties above the transition realm were qualified to be called demon kings, only those above the transition five heavens were qualified to be honored as demon saints. That meant that the demon race that could act as similar guards here were at the very least strong individuals above the fifth heaven of the transition realm. Then who is in this bronze coffin? Can it be that it's really an immortal? Yi Qingduan could not help but secretly guess in his heart that the immortals known to the world were generally ascension realm cultivators. As to whether there are realms above it who knows. It was because the ascension realm cultivators had either already gone to that legendary immortal realm or were sitting in the deepest part of the power. How can a regular person see it? Yi Qingduan also roughly estimated his own strength through these few battles. Nowadays, he had only just realized the true heart of the red dust sword intent and achieved the sword immortal realm. However, the battle power far exceeded that of a normal ascension realm. Exactly how much stronger without reference, he was not very clear. He also wondered if it was because sword cultivators were generally stronger in battle. After all, he had never seen a second sword immortal until now. The two demon race powerhouses stepped on the seawater towards Yi Ching Tsuan. Each step they took could set off a small wave of waves, but the movements were very wooden, like marionettes. It was only then that Yi Ching Tsuan noticed that the eyes of the two demons who had turned around were dull and very empty. Not like a living thing, more like a walking corpse. Yi Qingduan gently swung a sword light over, and sure enough, the two great demons of the transitional succession realm did not even dodge. A huge gash was directly cut open by the sword light. However, there was no semblance of blood coming out, and Yi Qingdan sucked in a mouthful of cool air, because through the wound caused by the sword light, he could actually see the bronze ancient coffin directly. That is to say that not only was there not a single drop of blood in the bodies of these two such huge demon clans, even the internal organs and these were also missing. What the hell have they been through? This was the biggest doubt in Yi Ching Suan's mind at this time. And to know the answer, he had to see what was in that bronze ancient coffin. With a flash of sword steps, Yi Ching Duan bypassed the two demon clansmen and flew straight towards the bronze ancient coffin. Immediately afterward, the demonic figures on both sides of the bronze ancient coffin moved. A loud sound rang in Yi Ching Dao's ears, but he didn't care in the slightest. The attacks that can be dodged are dodged and the ones that can't be dodged are just picked off with a sword. In just a few moments, he entered within 30 feet of the bronze ancient coffin. There was a moment of silence. This range seemed to have a special significance. And anyway, these long-dead demon clans didn't dare to enter this range, and it was as if this area was isolated from the world. Even though Yi Ching Tsuan had just exchanged blows with many great demons, 
setting off countless huge waves, but here, it was as if nothing had happened. Even the water was still as clear and flawless as ever. Yi Qingxuan slowly approached towards the bronze ancient coffin, the mahogany sword in his hand turning slightly. Twenty fathoms, ten fathoms, five fathoms, five steps, three steps, clang. Yi Qingxuan's left hand rested on the lid of the coffin, and a mellifluous metallic ringing sound traveled down the seawater to an unknown distance. Yi Qingduan stroked it while looking at the lines and patterns on the lid of this coffin. It wasn't obvious from a distance, but up close, one could only feel a metaphysical aura lingering. Among the patterns on it were human races, demon races, and even the black shadow clan he had seen earlier. And at the bottom of the pattern there are some small words that indicate the names and profiles of these groups. Yi Qingduan found the answer he wanted under the black shadow pattern. The abyssal nightingale clan, preferring to eat human souls and often active at night, was sent by the saints to quell the evil spirits of the abyss due to their ancestors' touching of taboos, and could not be separated from the abyss for generations. The abyssal nightingale? Saints. Yi Qingduan's gaze was aghast. Was the saint the realm above the ascension realm? As his gaze moved down, Yi Qingdao felt his palm touch a large depression. Lifting his hand, eight large letters in gold filigree carved out of a prismatic instrument came into view. Ancient coffin of evil suppression. Living beings retreat. Yi Qingduan looked at the eight ancient texts and was silent for a long time before a light humming came out. Ha! What evil spirits am I afraid of other than untimely death? Let's see who you really are. The lid of the coffin opened in response and hung in the air without collapsing. Yi Qingxuan fixed his eyes on the coffin and saw that a deadwood full of Dao lines was lying in the center of the coffin. After scanning for half a day, Yi Qingxuan didn't find anything else in the coffin. It was as if the coffin had been built just for this one deadwood that didn't even have half a leaf left. Just as Yi Qingxuan was a bit disappointed, a pain suddenly came. I only saw that at some point the mahogany sword on his right hand was too close to his thigh, and the sword energy accidentally cut the flesh on his right leg. What a living hell. Yi Qingdan let out a low cry. This would not make the world laugh if it was spread out. A great sword immortal. But he couldn't even hold his sword steady and hurt himself. Suddenly, Yi Qingdao froze. A trace of bone-piercing coolness rose from his back. Yi Qingxuan had never felt this kind of coldness before. Stepping on his sword steps, Yi Qingdan quickly left within a ten-foot radius of the bronze coffin. In his hand, the mahogany sword, with its silky red dust sword intent lingering, was ready to strike. Come out. As the words fell, a burst of black gas rose from the dead wood inside the bronze coffin and transformed into a human face. The features of the human face were not clear, non-human and non-ghostly, very evil. Ha ha ha. As expected of a sword immortal, his spiritual sense is really sharp. A man's voice came out from the human face, causing Yi Qingdao to frown. Who are you? Didn't you just see it already? I'm the saint who suppressed the nightingale clan here. Looks like you're not going to tell the truth. Yi Qingduan sneered and raised the sword in his hand. With this ghostly appearance, he can't even be counted as a person. And he still says that he is a saint. A three-year-old child wouldn't believe it. When the human face saw Yi Qingxuan's actions, he hurriedly said, Don't be angry, sword immortal. I'm really a saint, and there's no need for me to lie to you. Yi Qingxuan stopped the movement of his hand. How do you prove it? The human face let out a faint smile. Yi Qingxuan, before he was seven years old. He was weak and sickly and recuperated at home. After he was seven years old, he joined the Yin Yang Dao sect to cultivate swordsmanship. His talent in swordsmanship was strangely high, and at the age of only fifteen, he became the number one person in the house in terms of battle power at the Yuaning realm. In the Human Demon War ten years ago, he performed the secret art of breaking the army and forcibly raised his cultivation to the harmonization realm, resulting in the exhaustion of his cultivation and the doubling of his lifespan. And three days ago, he realized the supreme way of the sword and became the youngest sword immortal in the entire Qingming continent. I wonder if I'm right. Lord Kenshin? Yi Qingdan pursed his lips and was a little surprised in his heart, not realizing that this human face still had this ability. These are things that have already happened, and Taoist celestial masters who specialize in deducing heavenly chances can do the same. Looking at Yi Qingchen who still didn't believe in it, the human face didn't look flustered in the slightest and said confidently, Okay, then I'll say something that hasn't happened yet. Yi Qingxuan became a sword immortal at the age of 25, liked his own senior sister for many years, and turned on her at the age of 30. You do not speak of martial virtues. The painting style suddenly changed, only to see an incomparably condensed sword light wrapped in vast sword intent slashing directly towards the human face. With just one sword, the human face collapsed. Yi Qingxuan quickly bullied his way up, and with a pick of the sword tip put the bronze coffin lid back on. The palms of his hands pressed firmly against the lid of the coffin. The voice of the human face came out from the coffin. Why, doesn't this prove my ability? Yi Qingduan faintly said while increasing the strength of his sword intent. 
What's it to me whether you're a saint or not? Then take me out. I can give you anything you want. Sorry, I'm not used to having a roundworm around. What do you mean? This time, Yi Qingxuan did not respond to him. Only a vast red dust sword intent poured down. The entire bronze sarcophagus was trembling slightly, and the voice of the human face did not come back. However, very soon, Yi Qingdao realized that something was wrong, only to see that the sky blue sea water under his feet had become pitch black at some point, and the blackness was covering the entire sea with the copper coffin as the center. A sorrowful voice came from all directions. Just an ascension realm. Do you really think that calling you a sword immortal makes you really an immortal? If you won't take me with you, stay with me. The lid of the coffin flew up, revealing strips of dead wood inside that had long since changed in appearance. Only the dead wood in the coffin slowly stood up, and vein-like veins emerged on the dead wood. A streak of blood-like red liquid flowed slowly over the wood. The wooden strip was like a dead tree growing a purple-black leaf. A strong heartbeat came from the coffin. It was as if there really was a god or demon about to awaken lying inside. At the same time, Yi Qingxuan felt endless pressure coming from heaven and earth. Countless dark shadows that he had encountered before flew up from the bottom of the sea and flew at him like moths to a flame. Unlike before, this time it was no longer a cloud of black gas, but a nightingale with clear features. So these are the abyssal nightingale clan recorded on the bronze coffin. Ha! Huh? Just after making contact, Yi Qingdao discovered another difference. These nightingales were no longer between half virtual and half real like before, but were completely solid. It was like a real animal nightingale, and the battle power was dozens of times that of before. Yi Qingduan's eyes were filled with essence. Since I have been clearing my mind, I have never had a battle to my heart's content. Good timing. As the words fell, a sword intent that far exceeded that of the previous suppression of the East Sea clan emanated from Yi Qingduan. The pressure of the heavens and earth that pressed down on him was suddenly empty. The seawater within a hundred mile radius suddenly rose up into the air and flew into the sky. When it reaches the top, it disperses again as a small droplet with a pointed head and rounded tail, the tip facing down. Yi Qingduan smiled brightly and spoke loudly towards the ancient coffin. As the ancients said, if you can die in the morning, you can die in the evening. And today there is a sword to smell the Tao, and I invite you to die. The water droplets fell, and Yi Qingxuan's mahogany sword slashed at the strip of dead wood where the blood flowed. Ah, you're not in the ascension realm. A hysterical roar came out from the dead wood. Yi Qingduan ignored it, and with a single sword, heaven and earth cleared. In the middle of the sea, the blackness faded but the trembling in the bronze coffin grew stronger. Yi Qingxuan stared at the copper coffin with a grave gaze and swung out another sword. The sword intent struck the dead with through the coffin and a miserable scream rang out. But then a scoffing voice rang out. You can't kill me. That person refined me for 3,000 years and didn't even kill me. How can you possibly kill me? That's not necessarily true. Yi Qingduan kept swinging his sword, but the result was still the same. The coffin was only silent for a moment before the eerie laughter came out again. Don't waste your efforts. At most three years, I will come out of the world. When that time comes, I will personally go to look for you, and not a single person in the entire continent that is related to you will be able to escape. Well, suddenly, a faint voice rang out from the uppermost part of the bronze coffin. Sword formation. Rise. At that moment, the ten-foot radius centered on the bronze coffin was transformed into a sword domain. It's useless. Once you leave, I can break the sword formation with my hand. A faintly disdainful voice sounded and the corner of Yi Qingdan's mouth hooked into a cold smile. I'll use peach wood to suppress the evil chi, and the sword formation to seal the spirit. Spirit sealing sword formation. Done. At once, a mahogany sword was inserted into the bronze coffin as if it were nothing. A horrified voice rang out. No, no, what have you done? It's nothing, it just makes you come out of the world 500 years late. Yi Qingdan's words were like a shot of stimulant, instantly causing the voice in the bronze coffin to instantly agitate. Ah. Sword immortal boy, I won't let you go. I curse you. I curse everyone who is close to you and who is close to you to have no good end. The sound suddenly disappeared, and Yi Qingdao landed on the surface of the sea, panting slightly. He also didn't have as easy a time as he had seen in the past. The spirit sealing formation inhibited the evil spirit from emitting another eerie heartbeat so that it couldn't draw power from the outside world. But he was equal to locking 30% of his battle power in this formation. Within 500 years, Unless someone with a cultivation level exceeding that of Yi Qingxuan stepped in to help it, it would definitely not be able to break through the sword formation on its own. As for what happens when the evil spirits break out of the formation in 500 years, let's talk about it then. At least now, he had 500 years to enjoy life. Besides, 500 years had passed. One sword Dao couldn't remain in the same place. After Yi Qingduan once again made sure that there was no problem with the spirit sealing sword formation, he turned around and left in style. Hands in sleeves, 
muttering something under his breath. I was quite interested in you, but, alas, blame it on the fact that you know too much. Outside the sea mouth, the pale-faced AO defeat four were still struggling to hold on. Wow, what sort immortal senior doing in there? I can't stand it anymore. The Water Chilin clan's demon saint said with a somewhat grimace on his face. Just a short while ago, the otherwise calm heartbeat suddenly rioted with a pounding heartbeat. It caused the four demon's divine souls to tremble violently, as if they were being torn apart by a sharp weapon. Yes, matriarch, let's go up some, or else we won't be able to wait for Lord Sword Immortal, and we'll go see our ancestors first. Ao Defeat's face showed hesitation, just as he was about to decide to retreat first. Suddenly, the heartbeat stopped, and the bayou became silent. Ao Defeat froze, and then a flash of ecstasy surfaced on his face. The male has succeeded. The sound of the heartbeat stopped, which had never happened since he succeeded the clan leader, which meant that at least Yi Qingdao had found the source of the heartbeat, and should have the upper hand. Just then, a red figure stumbled out from the sea mouth. It was none other than Yi Qingduan who had taken a lot of effort to climb up. Your Excellency, Ao Defeat hurriedly supported Yi Qingsuan, his expression filled with joy. But Yi Qingsuan's first words were like a pot of cool water pouring down causing his heart to go wow cold. Patriarch Ao, prepare a fine graveyard. Ao defeat was shocked, and a touch of bitterness appeared at the corner of his mouth. Can't it be that there's nothing that the Gunzi can do? Ugh, I thought. Your ancestors, I suppose, wanted to go back to their homeland to sleep for a long time. Two, that's natural ah. Not right. Gongzi you, what did you say? Ao defeat's face, which was originally ashen, suddenly gained a flush of excitement. Yi Qingchen raised his eyebrows. Do you want your ancestors to become wisps of ghosts without a home? At those words, Ao defeat and the three demon saints behind him had their bodies shaken and their eyes slightly red. Immediately afterward, four knees sounded in the darkness. The words came in a lurch, but the tone was unmistakably firm. We are here, on behalf of the 370 races of the East Sea Demon Race, to thank you for bringing our ancestors home. From now on, what your excellency says, I, the East Sea Clan, will follow with my death. If this oath is violated, I, the East Sea Clan, am willing to be punished by heaven. Yi Qingdao was a bit moved and sniffed and turned his back. It's too dark under the sea for me. Go up. On this day, the entire East Sea demon race was abuzz. Countless cries were let loose. Cries of grief and relief, but only no elation. This was a day of epical significance in the history of the entire East Sea demon race. No matter how high or low their cultivation level was, no matter how old or small they were, all the sea people gathered in front of a huge mountain in the sea behind the dragon palace. At the forefront was a pile of demonic corpses that were either intact or only skeletons. Some were not even recognizable as belonging to any race. Ao defeat dressed in a white suit stood in the forefront of the demons. His expression solemn. All sea people on command. Kneel. One worship to my sea race ancestors, who exchanged their own flesh and blood for the survival of my sea race for 10,000 lifetimes. Heavy kowtowing sounds rang out and all the sea clansmen hit the ground hard without fail. Worship again. This obeisance, obeisance to my sea tribe is free of worries from now on, and can reside in the East Sea with peace of mind. Three worships. This worship. I pay my respects to your excellency for opening the sword for my sea tribe and sending my ancestors home. Three times the head was worshipped, and the sound of the rattling spread over the whole bottom of the sea. Since then any of the sea clans knew of Yi Ching Suan's name and honored him as the duke, treating him with the manners of a clan leader. Just as the sea tribe held a grand kneeling ceremony, a red robe stood over a metaphysical turtle with a thousand years of Tao, slowly leaning towards the water. Yi Qingduan's mouth was tinged with a smile, which could now solve a problem for the human race that had been a problem for tens of thousands of years. Little Xian Turtle. How long has it been since I entered the sea? Although the Xian Turtle was older than Yi Qingsuan by years, not only was there no dissatisfaction on his face when he heard this name, but he was very jumpy instead. What does this prove? It proves that I'm naturally close to Lord Sword Immortal. He even calls me Little Shin Turtle. Reporting to the Sword Immortal. Five days have passed. What? It's over. The Little Shin Turtle sent Yi Ching Tsun to the pier and left. With apprehension, Yi Ching Tsun took one step in the direction of the Peach Blossom wine shop. A few days ago, when Yuan Bushio saw that nothing was happening, he thought that the Demon Clan was just a lot of thunder but not much rain. So he gathered the residents to come back. Peach Blossom Town resumed its usual bustle, with people coming and going on the streets as usual. Only the peach blossoms in the city have all disappeared for some reason. Just a few sightings by fishermen near the inlet eventually came to the conclusion that perhaps the wind and waves were so strong that the peach blossoms were blown into the sea. Many of the residents wanted to get some alcohol to settle their nerves after the false alarm, but I didn't expect to find another strange thing. 
The Peach Blossom Wine Shop, which always opens on time, has been closed for three days in a row. This can make some good drinkers, a good beating of the chest. Not far in front of the Peach Blossom Wine Shop were two peach trees as thick as three men, the largest in the entire Peach Blossom town, and the ones with the best peach blossoms. In the past years, the beauty of peach blossom with freshly baked peach blossom brew, but I do not know how many young men, girls and travelers drunk. But unfortunately the peach blossoms faded too early this year and I didn't get to see enough of this beauty. It was midday and very hot. A human head poked out from behind the peach tree, after two sweeps to the left and right. Yi Chingguan let out a long breath. Then he looked at the target to the peach blossom wine shop which had long been closed, and after seeing the store door close tightly, his face changed. Yi Chingsuan didn't care about hiding his figure anymore and took out the key at the secret door to open the store door. Going in, she softly shouted, Little Peach, young master is back, are you in there, Peachy? Shouting as he walked, Yi Qingdao walked into the compound, and what he saw in his eyes was exactly the same as when he left. Even the clothes that had been drying for days were still hanging on the knotted rope in the courtyard, pushing open Xiaodao's room. The objects were all still there, but no one was to be seen. Walking out of the room, Yi Qingsuan's face was a bit gloomy. Yi Qingdao turned to his room door. He was ready to pack up and go out to find Xiao Tao. It would be best if he could find it in Peach Blossom Town, but if he couldn't he would go out and look for it. He couldn't stay in this Peach Blossom Town anyway, and for the next period of time, this would definitely be the place where the storm clouds gathered. Yi Qingduan didn't want to be surrounded by people as a statue, so how could he experience the red dust? Suddenly, Yi Qingdao sensed a very faint aura within his room. As soon as he pushed open the door of the room, Yi Qingsuan smelled a peach blossom fragrance. Raising his eyes, he saw a silhouette curled up in a corner of the bed. The eyes were closed tightly. The lips were white. The forehead was covered with fine sweat. And a dreamy ringing sound kept coming out of his mouth. It was only when he came closer that Yi Qingduan heard it. Young master, young master, I'm afraid. Don't leave Xiao Tao alone. A flash of strong guilt flashed through Yi Qingduan's eyes. He also did not expect to be gone for so long. Should have talked to this girl first in the first place. Little Peach was what he found in the peach forest not far outside of Peach Blossom Town at first, and was no more than a little girl of 11 or 12 years old when he found it. It was also as weak as it is now, and he took her with him when he saw that she was kind of in the same boat as he was. Ten years have passed, and Xiao Tao has grown surprisingly watery, and is the only beautiful woman in Peach Blossom Town. There were even people who came to find Xiao Tao to propose marriage in the previous two years, but they were all strictly rejected by her. The reason was also simple. Young master still needs me to take care of him, and I don't want to leave young master. Over time, no one has ever come to the door to propose marriage. Yi Qingdao's hand gently rested on Xiao Tao's shoulder, slightly exerting force. Peachy, peachy, whom, after a soft murmur, Peach's tightly closed eyes opened slightly. The eyes were slightly red, the whites of the eyes were full of blood, and the eyes that were originally full of aura became a bit dull. Yi Qingdan had some heartache in his heart. Little Peach, I'm sorry, young master came back late. These words seemed to give Peach a new lease on life, and a sparkling light emanated from her eyes, only to see Xiao Tao grabbing Yi Ching Suan's arm. The strength was so great that it actually made Yi Ching Suan feel some pain. A slightly sobbing voice then sounded in the room. Young master, you, how come you've been seeing your late friend for so long? I, I thought you didn't want little Peach anymore. Yi Ching Duan touched little Peach's head. How could that be? Little Peach is so good. How could young master leave little Peach behind? That, that s good. Peach's tone still had a few chokes in it. Then why did you run to the young master's bed? Little Peach? Yi Qingduan asked softly. If he hadn't wanted to come and pack up some things, I'm afraid he would have lost touch with little Peach. At those words, a blush flashed across Peach's face. She didn't want to tell Yi Qingsuan. These days Yi Qingsuan wasn't there. She was scared every day and didn't dare to go out. Only by smelling Yi Qingdao's scent could he barely fall asleep. Young master, I'm dizzy. Then little Peach. You rest first, young master will go out first. Yi Qingchen stood up but was pulled by Xiao Tao's sleeve. Young master don't go, just stay here with Peach, okay? I'm afraid. Yi Qingsuan thought about it, and he didn't seem to have a lot of things to pack. So softly, okay, I'm right here. Looking at the sleeping Peach, Yi Qingdan pondered for a long time and murmured softly. This ratio, it's not normal ah. Little Peach slept until the next morning, while Yi Qingsuan was now fine even if he didn't rest. Early the next morning, at the side entrance of the Peach Blossom Wine Shop, two figures each carried a bundle toward the town's entrance. At the entrance of the small town Yi Qingsuan, who had changed into a white dress, and Xiao Tao, who was dressed in a pink dress, appeared. With this farewell, there's no telling when we'll be back. Yi Qingsuan sighed in his heart. People's lives are always full of partings, 
Partings with people, partings with things, and partings with themselves. Cultivators have long lifespans, and this phenomenon manifests itself more and more clearly. This was why mortals always felt that immortal cultivators were cold and unfeeling, devoid of any human feelings, because their human touch has long since worn out in one life and one death. Yi Qingduan and the others went far away along the only road out of the town. In the midst of people coming and going, a voice suddenly called out to Yi Qingzuan, this little brother, wait, only to see an old man with white hair and a young man blocking the front of the two. The one who spoke out was the old man, who asked very politely, this little brother, I would like to ask, is Peach Blossom Town ahead? Exactly. Follow this road, and in less than 10 miles ahead is Peach Blossom Town. Oh, thanks a lot little brother. Dare I ask little brother if anything big has happened in the town recently? Nothing major. Just everyone moved out for two days for no reason. Why is that? I heard the mayor say that he was afraid of an attack from the demon race. So for insurance purposes, all residents will leave Peach Blossom Town for a few days first. Yi Ching Tsuan answered the old man's question with a half-truth. At those words, a brilliant light flashed in the old man's eyes. Good. Then the old man will not disturb little brother and madam on their outing. So I'll take my leave. When Xiao Tao heard the word madam, her face blushed slightly and she just wanted to explain, but the old man and the youth had already turned their backs on them. It's been that far, so you can leave it unexplained. Little Peach turned her head to look at the calm Yi Ching Tsuan. The corners of her mouth curled up slightly, not knowing what happy thing she had thought of, causing Yi Ching Tsuan to be puzzled. What is it that Xiao Tao is so happy about? Oh, no, nothing, young master where are we going after we go out? I've heard there are a lot of bad people out there. Just in case, what are you afraid of? Even if there are any bad guys, you were born so good looking and you can't outrun the young master. I'm sure they won't give me a hard time. Yi Qingduan said jokingly, but this caused Xiao Tao to blush. Young master don't be ridiculous. Where am I good looking? Besides, I can't run. The last few words were tangible and silent. Even Yi Qingduan, who was in the realm of the sword immortal, did not hear them. Just gave a big smile and said, Don't worry, little peach, young master will definitely protect you unharmed. Well, I believe in the young master, and on the other side far away from the old man and the youth. At this time the youth also respectfully sent a question. Teacher, don't we know that Peach Blossom Town is ahead of us, why do we have to ask the bystanders? The old man let out a light laugh. Fifth Highness, those two just now were very interesting. The student still doesn't understand, so please ask the state master to explain. The old man paused before continuing. That man's head is born with purple chi. If it is not an absolute powerhouse, then it is from an extraordinary and honorable origin. That woman is also very interesting. The life wheel is in the form of wood, but she is not a human? And the most interesting thing is that the man didn't know anything about it. Don't you think that's an interesting combination? The youth frowned at his words and asked, since that woman is not of the human race, I'm afraid that she is also up to no good by that man's side. Why didn't the state master just arrest that foreigner? Upon hearing this, the old man's expression became slightly more serious and he said to the youth in a somewhat serious tone, Zi Xian, you have to know that all races coexist in the Qiming continent. It's not the world of any one of them. It's just that there are some forces that rely on their ancestors Shei to act as a bully. In other days, if you become a king, you must remember one thing. This world is the world of the people of the world. It never belongs to a certain person or a certain side of power. The youth's face changed slightly as he listened, and he nodded heavily. What the state master has said, I'll keep it in mind. All right. The Peach Blossom Town is just ahead. I'm curious about what's so extraordinary about the place where the sword immortal attained his enlightenment. The old man narrowed his eyes, and a brilliant bright light flashed in his eyes. Yi Ching Suan did not know the identity of the two people just now, but he could tell that they were not mortals, especially that old man. With his heavenly Tao aura surging through his body, he was at least a heavenly master with accomplished cultivation. I heard that the Sunset Dynasty had a new master of state ten years ago, who is a master of the arts. I wonder who is more skillful compared to the old man just now. Yi Qingduan could not help but think darkly in his heart. The Qiming continent was filled with 10,000 clans and forces, and could be roughly divided into five regions. East Wasteland, South Border, West Region Buddha State, North Underworld Sword Continent, and Middle Earth Dao State. There were many forces in the Eastern Wasteland, but the top one would have to be the Yin Yang Dao Sect. It is the unquestionable hegemon of the Eastern Wasteland with no less than 10 powerful people of the transition realm within the sect, and the patriarch is even a powerhouse of the 8th heaven of the transition realm. There were even immortal soldiers suppressing the clan's chi, overlooking the entire eastern wasteland from the highest point. The second tier consists mainly of the two countries. One sect refers to the bastard sword sect that specializes in sword techniques, 
and the two countries refer to the Sunset and Feiyu empires. Although these three forces didn't have immortal soldiers to suppress their chi, they also had countless strong men under their command, and the sovereigns of the three forces were all cultivators above the fifth heaven of transition. The rest are just some small sects that can't catch Yi Qingzuan's eye. Yi Qingduan and the others were currently in the Sunset Empire in the Eastern Wasteland. As a large power in the second echelon of the Eastern Wasteland, the extent of its territory was self-evident. The entire empire was divided into six states, Yuzhou, Qingzhou, Shuzhou, Tian Yuanzhu, Kangi Wanzhu, and Huizhou. Peach Blossom Town then belonged to Tian Yuan State, a town under Tian Wu City. Tian Yuan Prefecture was bordered by the East Sea to the east and Shu Prefecture to the west, and was the land of fish and rice for the entire Sunset Empire. At this moment, on a fork in the road outside of Peach Blossom Town, Yi Qingzuan looked at the two roads in front of him that were about the same size and fell into deep thought. Shouldn't I? On the side, Xiao Tao had a somewhat worried look on her face. Young master, we're not lost, are we? Ahem, how could that be? We've always chosen the main road. How could we go wrong? Then why are there fewer and fewer people as we go along? Maybe, probably, it should be that they're going the wrong way. Oh, Yi Qing Dan had a bit of a headache. He forgot to buy a detailed map of the Sunset Empire before he left the house causing him to rely on speculation to find his way now. Peach Blossom Town was located on the shores of the East China Sea. It was already remote, and in the past 10 years, he and Peach had never been outside. Naturally, not very familiar with the road. All right, I know, take the right one. Yi Qingduan suddenly said with certainty, Young Master why? Peach was like a curious baby, always asking why. Peachy, which hand do you usually use to eat and work? Right hand. Then I think when they built the road they should have favored the right side as well. Think? No no. It's okay, I'm sure they do. Thus, Yi Qingzun and his duo chose the right path to go in. Not much farther. Peach had a new problem. So, young master, what if the guy is a lefty? Talkative, Yi Qingduan gave a popping chestnut to Xiao Tao's head. In Peach Blossom Town, the local residents only felt that there were many more unfamiliar faces these days. Some came with swords, some flew with cranes, but all of them landed at the entrance of the town without exception. Walk into town. These people were richly dressed and very generous with their money. The genus has brought a considerable amount of income to the residents of Peach Blossom Town, who could only rely on peach blossoms to attract tourists in previous years. But at this moment, in the town lord's mansion, Yuan Bushio's fat face was already crowded with beads of sweat, only to see a huge figure, kneeling on the ground. Lord State Master, Your Highness, this is really all I know. Any more than that I really don't know a thing. What sort immortal senior? I've never seen it before. An old man on the main seat sniffed and laughed lightly. All right, get up. Look at how scared you are. I did not come here this time to ask for your pardon. On the contrary, I came to commend you. Citation? Yuan Bu Xiu froze, turned pale, and pressed his body even lower. I would never dare to ask for a reward. I only ask to serve the empire for a few more years. The old man sniffed, a flash of appreciation in his eyes. Yuan Bu Xiu. Bone Age 85, Foundation Establishment Realm Cultivator, his grandfather had been the Tianwu City City Lord, but unfortunately, his family's fortunes have fallen, and now he is the Peach Blossom Town's Town Lord, am I wrong? The State Master's wise eyes are not far off, Yuan Bu Xiu replied, holding back the fear in his heart, I also know that you've always wanted to return to Tianwu City and restore your ancestor's honor, Yuan Bu Xiu's kneeling body trembled violently as he raised his head to look at State Master Qi Tian Yuan, the fifth prince on the side, after glancing at his teacher's wink, instantly understood and took a step forward to stand out. Yuan Bu Xiu listened to the order. Remembering that you have been meritorious in protecting the people this time, saving them from the scourge of the demon race, and according to the inspection, you are compassionate to the people in your day-to-day -day life, and are deeply loved by the people. You are hereby promoted to be the lord of Tianwu City. Leave for Kyoto in a few days. No mistakes. Yuan Bu Xiu only felt a stream of hot tears come out of his eyes filling in the regrets of his father's dying. I, Yuan Bu Xiu, accept the order to thank his majesty for his great favor. Thank your highness and the state master for their knowledge and honor. Half an hour later, Qi Tian Yuan and the fifth prince left the town lord's mansion. They have a more important news to return to the capital to report to the saint face to face. This news if confirmed. From now on the East China Sea no trouble. Teacher, do you think this could be the work of the sword immortal? The fifth prince asked as he looked at Qi Tian Yuan with a burning gaze. Qi Tian Yuan smiled mysteriously, regardless of whether it is or isn't, the result will just be in favor of my sunset, the place where the sword immortal attained his enlightenment, the Yin Yang Dao sect, as the overlord of the eastern wasteland, naturally wouldn't give it up, 
Not long after Qi Tianyuan and the others left, a Taoist priest with a half-white beard and hair and a stunning woman with an imperial sword also arrived in Peach Blossom Town. The black and white Taoist robes on the two were instantly able to let others know who they were. In front of the Peach Blossom Town gate, the two of them similarly landed. The old man's face carried a touch of reminiscence, while the stunning woman's face was a bit pale, and there was a touch of sorrow that could not be dissolved under her eyes. Xing er, let's go into the town and take a look. The woman shook her head. Master go by yourself. I don't want to enter this place. Alas, as you wish. My master still hopes that you can look forward and not let down this superior cultivation talent of yours. The woman was silent, and the old man didn't try to persuade her more. He knew the nature of his own disciple. Most things can be seen through, but no one can be persuaded by what is truly recognized, including him, the master. Oh no, there may have been one person who could be persuaded ten years ago, but now that person. Ugh. The old man turned to leave. Only in the moment he did so, his head was a few moments further away from the three large letters on the city gate. The stunning woman simply stood in front of the gate without moving, which also attracted frequent side glances from the pedestrians. Lu Qingqing looked at the three big words on the Peach Blossom Town's door. Her eyes were a bit dazed, and her face showed a few moments of pain. Ten years ago, she stood as she does now, waiting for the wind to rise, but then she had him with her. Suddenly, a breeze blew in from the sea. Picking up a few strands of green silk, a low, inaudible whisper scattered on the wind. Senior, where are you? Two days and nights had passed since Yi Qingxuan had chosen his path for the last time in the first place. Early in the morning, Yi Qingdao was awakened by the dewdrops on the leaves. Turning his head slightly, he saw Peach, who had woken up long ago, sulking on the side. Yi Qingdan was annoyed by her questions last night and accidentally told the truth. Young master, why do I feel that this road is eerie? Are we really going the right way? I don't know, randomly picked. After saying that, Peach's face changed. It was like a young girl full of ambition to see the world was abducted into a ravine by a bad uncle. Having been sulking until now, Yi Qingdan couldn't be coaxed well no matter how he tried. Oh little Peach, come serve young master to wash up. Yi Qingduan's lazy voice rang out, but it only attracted a cold whisper. There's water in the mud puddle over there, and in the fine grass. Yi Qingduan, outrageous, contrary? Suddenly, Yi Qingduan, who had just gotten up, heard a sound of horses' hooves. Immediately afterward, a carriage appeared at the end of his sight, and from a long distance away, he could smell a scent of medicine. He was just about to go forward and stop the carriage to ask about it, but a red shadow was faster than him. Stop, please. The driver didn't expect someone so unafraid of death to rush out to block the road. In a hurry, he could only tightly clutch the reins backward. Finally, the carriage stopped three meters away from Xiaotao. The violent bumps caused a few weak coughs from the woman to come from inside the car. What's going on out there? Little fuzzy? Miss, someone is blocking the road. Immediately after that, the curtain of the car picked up and a young woman with a pale face got out of the car. The driver of the car, who was called Little Fuzzy, hurriedly assisted the woman to get off the car. And in the process, the woman coughed a few more times. Lok Ching Shui looked at the two of them in front of her. Is there something wrong with this girl and the gentleman? Little Peach looked at the woman in front of her who looked a little older than herself in the past and said in a playful voice, Pretty sister, I'd like to ask if Tianwu City is taking this road? We've all been on this trail for two days. The woman's appearance was considered to be clear, and she couldn't help but let out a soft laugh at her words. Little sister, this road is not the one to Tianwu City, but the one to Tianyuan City. Yi Qingdan only wanted to find a crack in the ground to drill into at this moment, and in the face of Xiaodao's furious glare, he could only smile back and say, it's just a difference of one word. A small error. A small error. Lok Ching Shui looked at Yi Ching Suan who was dressed in white on the side with a flash of color in his eyes. These days go out. Women do not have cultivation even if. How even the men are not the slightest cultivation. Will not be which landlord's son of a fool out to wander the world. Right? Then sister. How far is this from Tian Yuan City? Lok Ching Shui pondered for a moment. If it's on foot, I'm afraid it'll still take more than 10 days. At those words, Xiao Tao's mouth suddenly deflated, and a few teardrops hung over her eyes. Then sister, can you give us a ride? My son and I can pay for the journey. Upon hearing this Lok Ching Shui's face flashed with a look of embarrassment and looked at the sweet looking Xiao Tao and the dusty Yi Ching Duan. After a slight hesitation, he agreed to Peach's request. When he got into the car, sure enough, Yi Ching Tsuan found that there was a strong scent of medicine in the car, and there was a freshly used medicine jar on the table. As the carriage slowly traveled, a fluctuation of spiritual energy came from the bottom of the carriage. A ray of light flashed in Yi Ching Wan's eyes. So this is still a spirit car. It seems that this Miss Lok is not a woman from an ordinary family either. 
As soon as she got on the bus, Little Peach pestered Lok Ching Shui with questions, and Lok Ching Shui also felt very much in tune with Little Peach. The two of them chatted non-stop. Yi Ching Chen could only pretend to sleep on the side, just when Yi Ching Suan was all about to fall asleep. A violent coughing sound woke him up, only to see that Lok Ching Shui, who was originally talking freely in the last second, was now covering her mouth with one hand and her chest with the other, coughing violently. The coughing startled even the driver outside, and a worried voice came from outside the carriage. Are you okay? Miss, do you want to take a break? No. Cough. No. Cough. No. Yi Ching Suan looked at Lok Ching Shui's uncomfortable appearance and took out a snow white herb from the storage ring in his bosom. With that, the two hands combined to knead it into a ball and handed it to Lok Ching Shui. Put this in your mouth and it will temporarily relieve your cold. Dancing Ching Shui took the herb handed over by Yi Ching Suan and put it into her mouth after just a moment's hesitation. The coughing stopped. The chill in his chest also seemed to be slowly receding. A flash of amazement flashed through the eyes of Yi Ching Suan that Lok Ching Shui was looking towards. Gongzi, is he a Taoist doctor? Yi Ching Suan nodded slightly. With your illness, it's better to talk less. However, when Lok Ching Shui saw Yi Ching Suan nodding, a glimmer of life emerged in her heart. The hearse traveled very quickly, and what was originally a 10-day foot journey took only a day and a night to arrive. Tian Yuan City, the main city of the state and county of Tian Yuan Prefecture. At noon that day a carriage rushed straight into the city under the hot sun. Originally, the pedestrians who were disturbed on the side were still dissatisfied, but when they saw the falling signboards on the wheels, they subsided. This was one of the largest clans in Tian Yuan City. The tea industry spread throughout the entire Sunset Empire, and it was even rumored that the Locke family had dealings with the palace. Can't mess with it, can't mess with it. After the carriage entered the city, it drove all the way to the Locke family residence. After burning incense, the carriage stopped in front of the gate of the Locke mansion. The head of the Locke family, Lok Chianchan, who had been waiting for a long time, stared at the mouth of the car curtain with nervous eyes. However, when a man was the first to get down from the car, the face of Lok Chianchan, a businessman who did not change his face when in tea, Tai crumbled in front of him, suddenly became incredibly ugly. The gaze that looked at Yi Ching Suan was filled with scrutiny and hostility, but then a light cough rang out, but it caused a flash of intense worry to appear on his face. Xiao Tao helped Lok Ching Shua out of the carriage. Share. Father. Why are you waiting for me at the door? Father is worried about you. Has that divine doctor from the bastard blade sect cured your cold? La Ching Shui lost her head and shook it. My daughter hasn't even seen his face. A hint of ruthlessness flashed in the eyes of La Xianshan, but it passed in an instant. Turning her head to comfort La Ching Shui, she said, It's alright, Shui. -er. It just so happens that there is a person from a family of Taoist healers who was a guest in the mansion these few days, so I'll let him take a look at you later. Lok Ching Shui nodded obediently and turned her head to start introducing the two of them to Yi Ching Suan. Father, these two are friends I made on the road. This is Miss Xiao Tao, and that one is Mr. Yi Ching Duan. Don't look at Mr. Ye's young age, but he's a Taoist doctor. It's thanks to Mr. Yi who was suppressing the cold for me on this journey. Lok Chien Shan was unimpressed with the previous words, but after hearing that Yi Ching Suan was a Taoist doctor, the light in his eyes suddenly skyrocketed. Mr. Yi? I'm here at Qianshan. Thank you for taking care of my daughter along the way. Yi Qingduan smiled lightly and said, There's no harm. Miss Lok is a kind person. Lok Qianshan also looked at Yi Qingchen with a joyful face when he heard this. Then please also ask Mr. Yi to stay at your residence for a few days to help my daughter eliminate her cold. If it comes to fruition, I will be grateful. Lok Qianshan did not ask Yi Qingsuan if he was able to relieve the cold. In his thoughts, Yi Qingsuan's ability to become a Taoist doctor at such a young age was remarkable and his medical skills were probably not yet learned. He had now pinned all his hopes on the air to the family of Taoist healers in his residence. Yi Qingduan agreed to Lok Xianshan's request, even if he didn't need to rest. Xiao Tao always needed to rest. Thus, the master and servant duo, who had been rushing for a few days, stayed in the compartment of the Lok Mansion. As for the question that Little Peach always asked Yi Qingdao, where exactly were they planning to go? Yi Qingsun had already thought it through. He had thought it through after coming out from the returning ruins. Although he hadn't figured out where the tour of the Red Earth would end, there was no doubt as to where the starting point was. Go home. The next morning there was a flying pigeon that took off from the fall house and headed west. In Yi Qingduan's courtyard, Yi Qingduan got up early. This was a habit he had formed over the past 10 years, and with the backlash, he couldn't even get a natural waking night's sleep, constantly digesting the Taoist medical inheritance in the order of eternal life these days. Yi Qingxuan finally found a way to repair the Dantian. The other herbs were fine. It was the three main medicines that sounded like a headache for Yi Qingdan, 
Ten drops of essence blood from a demonic beast of the ascension realm, petals of the immortal pill, and a strand of thunderbolt origin. Essence blood was to wash away the debris in the Dantian, while the petals of the immortal pill had a regenerative effect that could reorganize the broken Dantian. The last strand of the thunderbolt origin was to make the chi of the Dantian supremely masculine and free from in and evil. The three together would be able to reorganize the broken Dantian, even far more than in the past. But which of these three things can be easily obtained, let alone owning one? The people who have seen one of them are a rarity in existence. After reading it, Yi Qingdao could only smile bitterly. Originally, he thought that he was considered to be rich after strolling through the East Sea treasure trove, but compared to these few items, it was completely insignificant. Yi Qingxuan had just finished his breakfast when an underling came forward to say that Lok Chen Shan had asked him to come to the backyard. Following the subordinate, Yi Qingduan arrived at a place where a crowd gathered, only to see, in front of a room door, a group of people were gathered around muttering about something. Lok Chien Shan stood at the front, and next to him was a middle-aged man in a green robe. Behind the man was a young man carrying a medicine chest. Both middle-aged men and young people have an undisguised arrogance about them. Lok Chien Shan's afterimage saw Yi Ching Tsuan arrive and immediately welcomed him. This behavior immediately caused the middle-aged man to frown. Mr. Yi, you're here, so we can begin. Humph, before Yi Ching Tsuan could reply. A cold snort sounded abruptly in the center of the field. Only the young man behind the middle-aged man looked at Yi Ching Tsuan with a questioning face. You're a Taoist doctor, you say? Yi Ching Tsuan touched his nose. Barely. Yi Ching Tsuan's tone was not very certain. After all, it seemed that he had not really used the means of a Taoist doctor so far. And he wasn't very clear about whether or not he was considered a Taoist doctor anymore. But came a snort. Joke, there's not going to be anyone these days who thinks they know a little bit of medicine to be a Taoist doctor. Is there? After saying that, the young man looked at Yi Qingduan, the arrogance on his face even more obvious. You are, there's no need for words, what's false can never be true. The middle-aged man slightly glanced at Yi Qingduan and faintly said. The face of Lok Qian Shan in the middle of the two men was filled with embarrassment. He naturally believed in his own daughter's words, but the reputation of the Taoist medicine family was known to the entire Tian Yuan state. In contrast, he already had a choice in mind. Don't be angry, Divine Dr. Lu. Mr. Yi is just young and doesn't know the depths. Please don't blame him. As a matter of urgency, it is still more important to cure my daughter Ching Xiu's coldness earlier. With that, Lok Chi and Shan and the divine doctor surnamed Lu entered the room. The doorway only left behind Yi Qingduan who was alone. Yi Qingduan did not care much about anything. He was more interested in seeing what means this divine doctor Lu would use to cure Lok Ching Xiu's cold than proving himself. Let him take a good look at what kind of level the medical skills inherited from the order of eternal life were. Yi Qingduan also followed the crowd into Lok Qingxue's boudoir. Just as they entered, some of the ordinary people in the mansion couldn't help but shiver. Yi Qingduan felt the chill in his heart could not help but feel a sense of awe. The aura seemed to be more than simply a cold condition. It was more like the symptoms of another cold poison attack. At this moment, that young man from the family of Taoist doctors looked at Yi Qingxuan who had also followed him in and wanted to say something. But he held it back after glancing at the middle-aged man. Just quietly made a small thumbs-up gesture to Yi Qingxuan. And Yi Ching Tsuan also stuck out his thumb with a calm face. That young man thought Yi Ching Tsuan was praising him, and his face was once again full of smugness. But suddenly, Yi Ching Tsuan turned his thumb downwards, and then he turned away from looking at him. The young face froze, then flashed a blush as she angrily stared at Yi Ching Duan. But in the way of the middle-aged man and the presence of the fall of a thousand mountains can only forcefully endure did not attack. Dr. Lu was taking the pulse of Lok Ching Shue through an ice wire. Not to mention, just looking at this hand does have some strength. A moment later, Divine Dr. Lu put back the ice wire. With a relaxed expression, he said to Lok Chan Chan, Lok family head need not worry. Your Qin Jin is only a sudden outbreak of coldness accumulated since childhood. You only need to use to consume to Yang spirit medicine, and then supplement it with spiritual qi to force out the coldness. Upon hearing this, Lok Chan Chan was instantly relieved. Then please also ask Divine Dr. Lu to quickly prescribe medicine. In less than a quarter of an hour, Divine Dr. Lu wrote the prescription. And Lok Chien Shan sent an underling to rush to the pharmacy to grab the medicine. Right at this moment, that divine Dr. Lu suddenly turned his head to look at Yi Ching Tsuan behind the crowd. In a tone of voice that lectured his juniors, he said, Why don't you take a closer look at it? It's hard to believe that you'll have to rely on something moot in the future to woo people? Yi Ching Duan ignored divine Dr. Lu and turned his head to look at Lu Chien Shan. House Master Luke. Miss Luke isn't suffering from a cold attack, but has been struck by a cold poison. When these words came out, the room was in an uproar, and a hint of hesitation flashed in the eyes of Lok Shan. The young man finally found a chance to expose Yi Qingdan. 
I knew you weren't a Taoist doctor, how else would you not know even the simplest sign of poisoning? Blocked meridians? There's clearly no trace of half a blockage in Miss Locke's meridians. Yi Qingguan did not see any panic at all when he heard this. His expression was calm. That's because what Miss Drop has been hit by is not an ordinary cold poison, but one that specifically targets the divine soul. The divine soul poison. Now not only could the young man not help himself, even divine Dr. Lu on the side let out a cold laugh. Brat, I don't know what I'm talking about. Do you know how precious divine soul poison is? That kind of poison even the entire Sunset Empire may not be able to find someone who can refine it. Are you going to say could someone use such a precious poison on a little girl who was only in the foundation establishment realm? That's ridiculous. The other people in the room also looked at Yi Ching Tsuen with dissatisfied faces when they heard this. The only one whose face changed slightly was Lok Xianshan, not knowing what he had thought of. And his face became whiter and whiter as time passed. Soon, the subordinate brought over the decocted medicine. On the side, Lok Xianshan picked up Lok Ching Shui and fed the medicine down. In less than a moment, a burst of heat rose from the exposed skin on Lok Ching Shui's arm. The original snow white skin also had a touch of redness. All the people in the room looked joyful. There was an effect so soon. It seemed that Shui's disease was really going to be cured this time. Lok Qianshan helped Lok Qingxue sit up, and Divine Dr. Lu sat cross-legged behind Lok Qingxue with his hands on her back. But the sight that immediately followed startled everyone. Only to see that just as soon as Divine Dr. Lu transfused his aura into Lok Qingxue's body, the unconscious Lok Qingxue instantly let out a loud scream. A mouthful of dark blood spurted out and landed on the ground, hissing the ground with corrosion. Divine Dr. Lu and the young man's faces changed drastically. The blood is lumpy, dark and foul-smelling, which is a typical symptom of poisoning. The gazes of the two men coincidentally looked toward Yi Ching Suan, who resided in the back. Divine Dr. Lu's face quickly returned to normal and forced himself to calm down. Don't be alarmed. This is just a bruise from years of coldness. When I give it another shot, I'm sure there will be more bruises to spit out. It was only after Lok Chen Shan sniffed that he resisted the urge to push Divine Dr. Lu away. But as Divine Dr. Lu continued to input spiritual energy, not only did Lok Ching Shui not continue to spit out bruises, but her face became more and more ugly. By the end of the day, even a smudge of black appeared on his face, obviously a precursor to toxins invading the Divine Sea. Divine Dr. Lu was completely flustered, cold sweat constantly breaking out on his forehead. Lok Xian Shan wasn't a fool, and when he saw Divine Dr. Lu in this state, his heart sank. Divine Dr. Lu, didn't you say it was just a simple cold? Upon hearing this, Divine Dr. Lu's face paled. It might be a cold syndrome with a bit of cold poison. Then cure the poison. Lok Xian Shan completely couldn't suppress the anger in his heart and roared. He had no children at his knee. And Lok Ching Shui was his only child. And had always been a collection of thousands of favorites. But at this moment, looking at Lok Ching Shui's face which was full of pain, Lok Xian Shan was really a bit unable to control his emotions. I, I don't know how to cure the divine soul poison. Divine Dr. Lu didn't dare to lie anymore at this moment and could only tell the truth. And Lok Qian Shan only felt the sky spinning and nearly fell. What? What did you say? I'm only in the second realm of Taoist medicine. The Xian Guan realm. And the poison of the divine soul requires at least a Taoist medicine practitioner of the third realm or above the Hui Chun realm to be able to cure the poison. Where is a Taoist doctor of the rejuvenation realm? As soon as he grabbed divine Dr. Lu's collar, his harmonization realm cultivation poured out. Just where could the Yuaning realm divine Dr. Lu stand it? His body was trembling unceasingly and the young man on the side had long been scared out of his wits. At that moment a young male voice rang through the room. All of you, get out of the way and let me take a look. And as if grasping the last straw, the young man hissed. A poison that even my uncle couldn't cure. Who do you fake Taoist doctor think you are? The Taoist doctor of the rejuvenation realm? Don't get a swollen face here and pretend to be a fat man. A cold light flashed in Yi Qingqin's eyes and he said in a cold voice, What should you do if I solve this poison? The young man let out a snort. If you can solve it, I, Lu Yu, will cut off my own medical vein and never touch the path of Taoist medicine again. A healing chakra is a spiritual chakra that stores the aura of Taoist medicine that is formed by each Taoist doctor when he first enters Taoist medicine. As the realm of Taoist medicine rises, the number of medical veins increases. The medical vein is different from ordinary spiritual veins. And if it breaks, it is irreparable. When these words came out, Divine Dr. Lu immediately changed his face. You are, don't talk nonsense, uncle. Don't worry, this person must be a fake. He just happens to know some of the symptoms of the onset of the divine soul poison. Lu Yu said with certainty, and his look returned to his previous arrogance. Yes, after answering the question, Yi Ching Suan walked straight towards Lok Ching Shue on the bed. The people on both sides made way, and the eyes of Lok Xian Shan looking at Yi Ching Suan were filled with hope. 
Yi Qingxuan did not take Lok Qingxue's pulse. He just swept his eyes over her face and the black lines that appeared on her arms. Are there any silver needles in the mansion? A faint voice came. Yes, I'll send someone to fetch it. Lok Qian Shan hurriedly answered. But Yi Qingxuan's voice stopped him. What I want is a silver needle made of the metal of Supreme Yang, with a tip no bigger than the size of a human body's orifice. Do you have one? A flash of difficulty appeared in Lok Qian Shan's eyes. They weren't studying medicine. How could they have silver needles with such harsh requirements? Right at this moment, Lu Yu, who was watching from the side, voiced out, I have this kind of silver needle here. I'd like to see what kind of tricks you're playing. With that, Lu Yu took out a set of gold and silver needles and handed them over to Yi Ching Tsuan. If it was an unusual means, Yi Ching Tsuan had only finished digesting the inheritance not long ago. So how could he enter the third realm, the rejuvenation realm, so quickly? But the Taoist medical inheritance of the Order of Eternal Life recorded several magical means that had nothing to do with the medical realm. And what Yi Qingduan was going to use now was one of them. Yi Qingduan cupped the silver needle in his hand and recalled in his mind one of the nine supreme needling techniques recorded in the Taoist medical inheritance. The nine revolutions of returning Yang needle. This stitch and even the Yang stitch not only targets the physical body, but also the soul, restraining all cold poisons and diseases. Suddenly, Yi Qingduan's eyes opened. And then he placed eight golden needles on the upper half of Lok Qingxue's body at an extremely fast speed. Then, letting Lok Qianshan help Lok Qingxue up again, Yi Qingxuan held the last golden needle in his hand and quickly dropped it on the hundred club point. The needle fell, and Lok Qingxue's body trembled violently. A shocking coldness then emanated from her body. Immediately after a mouthful of chilling black blood was spat out, Lok Qingxue's body went limp and leaned back. At the same time, the black lines on Lok Qingxue's body quickly faded and the look on her face became peaceful. Lok Qianshan let out a long breath and looked at Yi Qingxuan with a few more points of respect in addition to gratitude. Divine Dr. Lu, on the other hand, looked at Yi Qingxuan with a face full of shock. He froze when Yi Qingxuan applied the needle just now, because he recognized this needle technique, although he hadn't seen it with his own eyes. But looking at the effect, he was sure that this must be the legendary kind of needlework. A breath of fresh air. Nine turns to return to the sun. This is the supreme needle technique of the Taoist medical lineage, the nine revolutions of rejuvenation needle. The people in the room also looked at Yi Qingxuan with surprise when they saw this, not expecting that a young man who was only in his twenties would dare to be so skilled in medicine. Only Lu Yu, who was on the side, had a very pale face. No, it can't be. How could you possibly be a true Tao doctor? I don't believe it. I don't believe it. After saying that, Lu Yu wanted to run outside, but Yi Qingxuan stopped him with a flash. Mr. Lu, have you forgotten something? Lu Yu's eyes flashed with a hint of fear and a dash of ruthlessness as he suddenly struck out straight at Yi Qingxuan's left abdomen. This is where the first medical vein of Taoist medicine is located. Adverse sun. Stop. Divine Dr. Lu saw Lu Yu's movements and let out a shout. But it was too late to stop it. The sight of the fall of Qian Shan also did not expect Lu Yu to be so heartless. Want to make a move, but the time is too short. A cold color flashed in Yi Qingdan's eyes as he blatantly struck out. Striking after him. A finger pointed at Lu Yu's left abdomen. Ah, you, you wasted me, my uncle won't let you go. After saying that, Lu Yu fainted due to the intense pain of the broken medical vein. Yi Ching Tsuan turned his head to look at Divine Dr. Lu and blandly said, You want to seek justice for him? Divine Dr. Lu looked at Lu Yu's eyes full of disappointment. Lu Yu's parents died early. He has always been very indulgent to this talented nephew. I didn't realize that I had cultivated a person who was arrogant and rude and nearly tarnished the reputation of the entire Taoist medical family for a thousand years. Divine Doctor Yi still please leave my nephew a life. My Taoist medical family will definitely bring gifts to the door in the last two days to make amends. Divine Doctor Lu bowed to Yi Qingdan at this time. His posture had long since lost its previous arrogance. Although he was a bit of a bully, he was not a fool. A Taoist doctor who knew the nine quarters returning sun needle. The power behind where he was located was not something that his own small Taoist doctor family could mess with. Afterwards, Divine Dr. Lu pulled the unconscious Lu Yu out of the house. The two had just left when Lok Ching Shui on the bed woke up. Falling Ching Shui felt a warmth that she had never felt since she was 10 years old, and tears instantly welled up in her eyes. Father, I, I finally feel the heat. As soon as Lok Ching Shui hugged Lok Qian Shan's neck, Lok Qian Shan was almost brought directly to the bed without paying attention for a moment. Ahem, share, there are others. It was only then that Lok Ching Shui noticed Yi Ching Suan on the side. Her eyes filled with gratitude. Although she wasn't very conscious, the general situation felt Ching Shue was still able to perceive. Mr. Yi, your saving grace, the little woman is unable to repay. Or, originally, when he heard the four words of no reward, 
Lok Qin Shan's face changed. This was exactly the same situation as when he married Lok Qing Shui, her mother. Lok Qin Shan just wanted to stop Lok Qing Shui, but Lok Qing Shui's words had already left his mouth. Or my father still has a few packs of three. Zero 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 year old enlightenment spirit T hidden away. I know where it is. Take it. Yi Ching Tsuan froze, then smiled faintly. Then I'll take it with a grain of salt. Lok Qian Shan's face stiffened, and his outstretched five fingers trembled slightly, then slowly moved to his face. Money is nothing. It's good that my daughter is still here. Still. Good. Another two days of small stay at the drop house. Yesterday, that divine Dr. Lu came with many precious elixirs to make amends, and Yi Ching Tsuan accepted all of them and didn't make things difficult for Lu Yu anymore. Then the medical skills. The medical pulse is gone. Unless there is a heaven-defying transformation, it is impossible for Lu Yu to become a Taoist doctor again. As for preventing him from taking revenge, it wasn't that Yi Ching Dan looked down on Lu Yu. So what if he let him have two hands? During these two days, Lok Qing Shui had also completely returned to her normal self. At the same time, Yi Ching Tsuan also gained a month of longevity. Lok Qing Shui came to play with Little Peach every day at first light, and only went back when it was dark. As a result, Yi Ching Tsuan was pulled over for tea by Lok Qin Shan for various reasons every day just after eating breakfast. One drink was all morning, and the afternoon was spent pestering him with conversation, chatting about everything from world events to patriarchal secrets and oddities. The first and foremost is naturally not long ago. The Red Dust Sword Immortal from the East China Sea Coast Enlightenment Ascension. Nowadays, all the major forces are rushing to Peach Blossom Town in a bid to find the Sword Immortal's inheritance. Yi Qingduan also took the opportunity to inquire about the Yin Yang Dao sect situation over the years. The Eastern Wasteland hegemony Yin Yang Dao sect had suffered a great loss of energy after the dragon beheading battle 10 years ago, and many of its talents had withered. However, it is good that there are immortal soldiers to suppress it, and that there are one or two heavenly prides under the door to stand alone. To this day, it is still a unique existence in the Eastern Wasteland. As for the other continents, after talking to Yi Ching Suan, he realized that a lot of things had happened in the 10 years that he had been enlightening his sword. 10 years ago, shortly after the Battle of Dragon Beheading, a large piece of chaos resting soil was inexplicably missing from the Dao Palace's greatest treasure in the Middle Earth Dao State. 8 years ago, the Gangjin Immortal Sword, one of the three great immortal swords of the Northern Underworld Sword Continent Sword Pavilion, was accidentally lost. 5 years ago, the third Buddha Dao dispute was held in the Western region's Buddhist state, and it ended in a bad situation. Nowadays, the two schools of Buddhism and Taoism are like water and fire, closer to home. A year ago the Feiyu Empire suddenly saw the appearance of a scourge-looking woman. The Feiyu Empire's king was so mesmerized that he was immersed in his children's love day after day, and was not interested in the government, and now he relied on the national teacher Tsong Yuanzi to support him. And when Yi Ching Tsuan asked about the state of the Sunset Empire in the last 10 years, Lok Qianshan was silent for a long time but let out a long sigh. Does Mr. Ye know how much tea my Lok family sold in Sunset last year? Yi Qingduan shook his head, not knowing why Lok Qianshan suddenly chatted about his tea industry. Lok Qianshan raised his left hand, just under 50,000 tons. Yi Qingdao's gaze stared. This was indeed too little for a country with a population of hundreds of millions. Then does Mr. Ye know how much I sold in the Feiyu Empire again? This time, Lok Qianshan directly stated the answer. A full 1 million tons were sold. Yi Qingduan was shocked and doubted. How could it be possible? My sunset people have always been most fond of tea and wine. How could the sales be so low? Lok Qian Shan had a bitter smile and a hint of awe on his face. Lord Yi must also be aware that I, sunset, have practiced the vassal system since the founding of the country, and vassal kings can hold the power of life and death in their own fiefdoms. Yi Qingduan nodded. This he was aware of. The current generation of emperors had set up four vassal kings after the great battle at Jiaolong Pass 30 years ago. Three princes, one king of a different name. Three princes were fiefdoms of Qingzhou, Yuzhou and Huizhou, and one king with a different surname was fiefdom of Shuzhou. It is because of these feudal lords. Lok Qi San drank a mouthful of tea and ran through his thoughts before continuing. For vassal kings, excluding the king of Shu sitting on the border, the other several vassal kings can be said to be in their own territories as a bully, raiding the people's fat and wealth, so that the people under the rule of the people suffer awe. Last year, I went to the capital to sell tea, and when I returned, I passed through Huizhou, but I never thought that I would just run into the prince of Huizhou, who preferred other people's wives. We saw with our own eyes a beautiful woman in the merchant caravan in front of us being pulled directly out of the line by the soldiers of the Prince Huey's residence and brought in front of the Prince Huey's son. That beast is simply not human. Speaking of this Lok Qian Shan's eyes were filled with contempt and disgust. How dare he abuse that beautiful woman in public in front of her husband and children. 
the cold light in Yi Qingguan's eyes skyrocketed, causing the opposite side of Lok Qinshan to feel a chill. And then what? Then, that honorable prince we finally killed all of that beautiful woman's husband and children, one by one. In the end, the beautiful woman was so overwhelmed by the humiliation that she killed herself as well. After saying that, Lok Qinshan let out a long breath and his heart was incomparably glad that he specially did not carry any women with him when he went out that time, and after listening Yi Qingdao fell into silence, perhaps angry, perhaps speechless, the night is bright with stars, Yi Qingduan stood alone in the compound looking into the distance, his gaze wandering, this world has always been one where the strong make the rules, the weak follow them, and the stronger break them to establish new ones, and so the cycle never ends, then in what capacity should I experience the red earth? Strong men who make the rules, the righteous who follow the rules, or the high and mighty immortals? For an hour, Yi Qingdao did not have the slightest clue. Two hours and he was still confused. I don't know how long it took. But suddenly, Yi Qingduan moved. A gu, my waist is sore. Yi Qingchen rubbed his waist and walked to the courtyard wall. Suddenly, he shouted towards the next courtyard. The moon is pleasant tonight. Will little Peach come out and have a small drink with young master me? Young master I'm sleepy. Why don't you drink by yourself tonight? I'll drink with you another day. Okay. A slightly weary voice came out from within Xiao Tao's room. All right. Yi Qingduan took a small drink of spring breeze drunk and barred his mouth. Yi Qingduan didn't shout a second time. Even though Yi Qingduan knew that if he had a tougher attitude, Xiao Tao would definitely come out to accompany him. Because it was Peachy's freedom and the rules he wanted to make. Early the next morning, in front of the main gate of the drop house, a large group of people led by falling thousand mountains gathered around. Sien nephew this trip to the west but be careful ah. Shu State Folk Martial Arts, but far from my Tianyuan State Peace, is it true that you don't need me to send someone to escort Xian Nephew for a while? Yi Qingdan nodded slightly. The goodwill of the Lok Family Lord Light Dust is appreciated. Thank you for the hospitality of the Lok Family Lord in these few days. Where where where? Virtuous Nephew saved Qingxiu's life, even if it takes my life I'm willing to do it. Yi Qingduan sat at the front of the hearse, and Xiao Tao picked open the curtain in the carriage to look around for it. After waiting for a few moments, Yi Qingduan rushed the hearse and set off. The speed of the hearse was really not comparable to ordinary carriages, and in only half an hour, it was out of the range of Tianyuan City. Tianyuan City was originally located in the western part of Tianyuan Prefecture, and was only two small cities away from Shu Prefecture. According to this speed, Yi Qingdan estimated that by waiting until early tomorrow morning the two of them would be able to arrive in Shuzhou. In the midst of his delirium, Yi Qingxuan actually didn't realize that a person had suddenly appeared in front of him. It was Peach's cry that woke him up. Yi Qingdao hurriedly pulled the horse's neck, but such a fast speed couldn't be stopped in one go. Seeing that he was about to crash into it, Yi Qingsuan tightly pulled on the saddle rope and violently lifted it upwards. The carriage leapt over the people and traveled another dozens of meters before slowing to a stop. Yi Qingchen looked back at the figure behind him with some anger on his face. Are you crazy? A few moments later, the carriage changed from two to three people. Little Peach looked at Lok Ching Shui, who still looked a bit excited with a delighted expression. Why are you following me up, Sister Lok? For her part, Lok Ching Shui didn't care about this and turned to Little Peach with an excited face. Wow, Peachy stopping a car is really exciting. You really didn't lie to me. That's not true. Let me tell you, the most exciting part of stopping the train is when the carriage is about to hit you. That's when the whole thing feels like your soul is going to fly. Yeah, yeah, next time we'll both try to find a bigger wagon. Yi Ching Tsuan outside the carriages. Even if his heart is like him to hear the words of tigers and wolves inside the mouth corner is also slightly twitching. Miss Locke, do you know that you followed the Locke family head? Yi Qingduan suddenly asked carelessly. I don't know ah. Uh. Breaking into the world this kind of thing. Of course it is to say go ah. Uh. Which have time to tell my father. Yi Qingduan. Tian Yuan City. Locke Mansion Study Room. For some reason, Locke Xian Shan felt extraordinarily irritable today. Butler. A rounded figure trotted in hurriedly. What is the order? Master? You will go to the territory of the hegemonic blade sect in the next two days to do an errand. With that, Lok Xian Shan whispered a few words in the butler's ear. After saying that, Lok Xian Shan didn't know what he remembered and calmly asked, By the way where's miss? Why aren't you up yet when it's almost noon? Butler Lu froze, then lost his voice and said, No, miss took a thousand mile horse out early in the morning? Lok Xian Shan's face changed. What? Where did miss go? Miss was in quite a hurry, and I didn't dare to ask. Then in which direction did the young lady go? Lok Qian Shan frowned, having some bad premonitions. Heading west, Lok Qian Shan violently got up from his chair. His face was gloomy. He said how come Lok Qing Shui didn't come to see Yi Qing Chen and the others off? So you were planning to follow along. 
Lok Chien Shan's face became very gloomy, but he regained his composure after a moment and sat back in his chair. It's just, it's just, it's always time to go out and practice. Suddenly, Lok Chien Shan's eyes narrowed into slits, revealing a dangerous glint. It couldn't have been that brat's idea, could it? Good. No wonder he wouldn't let me send an escort. So he had this in mind. Thinking Lok Chien Shan, who understood the whole story, unexpectedly had a meaningful smile appear on his face. Boy, you managed to get my attention. Butler Lu had rarely seen his own master reveal this kind of expression even after many years in the Lok Fu, which made him not feel a chill all over his body. After a star-studded rush, Yi Ching Suan's trio finally left the border of Tianyuan State when a ray of sunrise pierced through the night. One step away, two states apart. Xu Zhou, the fiefdom of the King of Shu. As the only fiefdom of a king with a different surname ever in the entire Sunset Empire, Xu Zhou could be considered a rowdy place to live. Among the six large states in the Sunset Empire, the area is second only to the inner hidden prairie. Yu Zhou, however, it was such a large state, but the resident population was less than half of Tianyuan state, not even comparable to the population of a city in Luoyang. Kyoto, Shu state is adjacent to the Feiyu Empire. The flow of years of conquest, the fire of war is non-stop. I do not know how many loyal bones are buried under the yellow sand. The people of Shuzhou, 9 out of 10 households are empty. Unlike other places, the people of Shuzhou have traditionally not had a fixed day for the big year. The day of the army's triumph is the end of the year. That's why almost every home has a small cellar. The first floor of the cellar often holds some sun-dried bacon and rice wine, and the next floor is a jar of yellow water wine sealed in white paper. The former washes away the dust, as does the latter. The carriage stopped at the dividing line between the two states, and three pairs of eyes simultaneously surveyed the somewhat dry and cracked yellow soil in front of them. The yellow sand in the sky caused several people to only squint and observe. Is this Shuzhou? Yes, this is my hometown. I've decided that Shuzhou is the first stop for this warrior woman to break into the world. Ahem, the wind is so strong that sand is getting into this warrior woman's mouth. Stepping on this land that was both familiar and unfamiliar again, Yi Qingxuan had an indescribable joy and fear in his heart but it was all soon hidden from him. Slightly clutching the reins, Yi Qingdan let out a soft shout. Go! Thus, a wanderer returning to his hometown. A woman warrior fighting for the end of the world and a little peach blossom full of yearning for the outside world stepped into the yellow sand together. But the Jiang Hu was really dangerous. This is not. Yi Qingxu and three people just out of the yellow sand, and then met the roving bandits. This is another great feature of Shuzhou. Because of its location in a border state, Many criminals fled to Shu after committing crimes and became a major force in Shu. Roving Bandits The leader of the Roving Bandits, who only had one eye exposed, was a bit confused as he looked at these people in front of him. They were but a small band of Roving Bandits, only dozens in size, and had always been able to drink only clear soup. On weekdays, at most, they robbed some pocket money, at most a hundred tails. But today, they seem to have turned a corner. The two women and one man in front of him, dressed in luxurious clothes, extraordinary temperament, but also driving a hearse traveling, it seems to be a big family, but the three either had low or even no cultivation, there wasn't even a shadow of a guard around him, this is not pure sheep into the tiger's mouth, little goat ah no, kid, today I'm in a good mood, as long as you leave the two beauties and money behind you can go, the leader of the roving bandit said as he walked towards the hearse, before Yi Ching Sun could make a move, La Ching Shue couldn't help herself, she had been poisoned by the divine soul poison since she was 10 years old, and she had rarely fought anyone since then. Now that he's recovered, of course he can't help but want to do it. Falling Ching Xue's sword art was very magnificent. The sword came out to condense frost, and flying snow arrived in an instant. That mid-foundation establishment stage roving bandit leader was actually unable to defeat him for a while and frequently retreated. After stabilizing his stance, that leader revealed a lecherous smile. I like that spice. Guys, go! All of a sudden. A dozen or so roving bandits launched an attack towards the two of them, Yi Ching Suan, and this chieftain then went straight towards falling clear snow. But what the chief didn't expect was that not only was falling clear snow harder to deal with than expected, the two remaining Yi Ching Dan were not to be messed with, and he realized something was wrong as soon as they exchanged hands. One rogue fainted for no reason with every step Yi Ching Wan took, and in just three or four steps, most of the dozen rogues fell. A light black color emerged on the lips of the fallen stragglers. While Little Peach was holding a peachwood branch and following Yi Ching Suan to mend his sword, it was not daring to hit Xiao Hao towards the head, so he could only take another blow towards the middle of the fallen rogue's legs. In less than a moment, Yi Ching Suan arrived at the place where Lok Ching Shue and the chief were fighting. Under the chief's horror, there was a slip in his defense, and falling Ching Shue's sword move landed directly on his chest. But, 
blood spurted out from the sword. At that moment, the other three people standing apart from Yi Qingduan all froze. The leader of that roving bandit trembled, and then fell down with the backlash. And after Lot Ching Shui who made the move came back to her senses, she looked at the blood stained on her hands her face turned white, and surprisingly, she also collapsed on the ground and fainted. Yi Ching Suan skimmed his lips at the sight. Just like that and you still want to be a warrior woman? Afterward, Yi Ching Suan went to pull the hearse while not looking back. Little Peach, go and help your sister lock up. Let's continue our journey. But after a long time of not seeing a response, Yi Ching Suan turned his head and raised his eyebrows, only to see that Peach, who was wearing a pink dress, was lying on the ground like an octopus. By the look of it, it should fall straight down, without bringing any hesitation. Yi Ching Duan shook his head, then turned towards the two women and threw one hand up. A few moments later, the hearse continued to head towards the center of Shuzhou, Peach Blossom Town, on the shores of the East China Sea. It's been getting more and more crowded over the past few days. Some people even rented the residents' houses for a long time, vowing not to rest until they found the sword immortal inheritance. And that old man from the Yingyang Dao sect came to the last place after turning around the town for a few days and finding nothing. The mouth of the Qin Tang River, Qian Yuanzi stood on the seashore with some bitterness. As the patriarch of the Yingyang Dao sect, with a cultivation of the eighth heaven of the transition, he hadn't had a good sleep for a whole decade. For the past ten years, he's been thinking about two things non-stop. One was when his own little apprentice who always liked to piss him off would be back. The other was when the demon race would make a comeback, and how the entire eastern wasteland should respond then. This time, he came to Peach Blossom Town. On the one hand, he wanted to see if the place where the sword immortal had attained enlightenment had any chances that belonged to him and could help him ascend to the nine heavens. On the other hand, it was rumored that the East Sea Demon Clan had made another move, so he had come to take a look just in case, but a few days of spinning resulted in nothing on both counts. Ugh. A long sigh. This was the trouble that belonged to the top powerhouses, compared with the mortal's parents. Firewood, rice, oil and salt. The difficulty is not inferior, and the sorrow is not less than half a point. In a sudden glance, Chen Yuanzi was attracted by a sword-shaped jade pendant floating on the surface of the water. With a wave of his hand, the jade pendant reached Chen Yuanzi, touching the lines on it. This Dao patriarch, who was called the immortal mold by the elders of the Yin Yang Dao sect, couldn't help but tremble violently with his hands. A cloudy tear rolled from his eye and flowed into the sea. Chen Yuanzi raised his head violently, and a divine sense of the eighth heaven of the ferryman's tribulation encompassed the entire Tian Yuan prefecture. It was only after a long time that he withdrew his divine sense. A flash of disappointment flashed across Chen Yuanzi's eyes, then he steeped his gaze forward. The jade pendant was picked up at the mouth of the sea, most likely beaten back by a big wave. That follows this route forward. There was a sharp stabbing pain in Qian Yuanzi's heart, and an indescribable sense of suffocation enveloped him, looking at the sometimes calm, sometimes small waves churning into the sea inlet, killing intent in his eyes. Instantly, an overwhelming sword power gushed out, startling the cultivators in the entire Peach Blossom town. With that, Qian Yuanzi swept to the surface of the East Sea in one step. A loud shout came out through the spiritual energy. Dragon King Old Man, get the hell out of here. I have to end this East Sea Dragon Palace of yours today. The originally calm sea surface suddenly rose a hundred feet of waves. Someone wants to challenge the Dragon King of the East Sea. Who's so bold? Go, 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 go. The voice was transmitted through spiritual energy, and the entire Peach Blossom Town could hear it clearly. On a mountaintop a hundred miles away from the town, Lu Qingqing, who was cultivating, changed her face. Senior brother was already gone, and if something happened to master again, then the Yin Yang Dao sect would really be plunged into a place of no return. Lu Qingqing immediately rose up with her sword, turning into a long rainbow and flying towards the sea. At the speed of the seventh level of the god refining realm, a hundred miles was nothing more than a matter of one, two breaths. When Lu Qingqing arrived at the mouth of the Qin Tang River, she found that the place was already crowded with people, and where the line of sight converged, Qian Yuanzi, who was filled with rage, was confronting a middle-aged man with a double-horned head. No one dared to approach within a ten-mile radius of the two people as the center. The entire void was slightly distorted, enveloped by sword shadows on one side and filled with monstrous demonic aura on the other. Lu Qingqing really couldn't figure out how the always good-tempered master could be so angry. She remembered that the last time her master had been this angry was when her senior brother had used a secret method without authorization to keep the demon saint. Then what is it about this time? Lu Qingqing's face was thoughtful. Then as if she thought of something, Lu Qingqing's eyes gradually froze. 
At the demarcation point between the demonic aura and the sword shadow, Ao defeat looked at Qin Yuanzi with a displeased expression. What's gotten into you, old Taoist Qin Yuan? Do you want to go to war with my East Sea clan? I've been in a good mood lately, so if you back off on this I'll leave you alone. Ao defeat was originally very annoyed as well, but thinking of the agreement with Yi Qingzu and he was also unwilling to cause more trouble. I'll be damned. You think you don't count? You don't want to leave this dragon palace in one piece today. Qian Yuan Zi, who had always been extremely well cultivated and would only break his defense in front of his disciple, had directly exploded in foul language today. Then, without waiting for Ao defeat to answer, a sword shattered the air. The sky sword shadow arrived in a flash. Ao defeat could only raise his hand to resist. Instantly, a huge aura overflowed from the center of the collision. The range of the sword shadow expanded once again. All the onlooker cultivators had to retreat another 300 feet, and a huge vortex floated underneath the feet of one person and one demon. Everyone heard a dragon roar. Immediately afterward a super strong aura fluctuation surfaced over the East Sea and dispersed outward of Peach Blossom Town at an extremely fast speed. The first one to sense it was the Sunset Empire's state lord Lu Xuanzhen. Lu Xuanzhen, who was thinking about how to solve the system of vassal kings, suddenly changed his face drastically and disappeared into the palace in the blink of an eye. The next moment, he appeared in Tianyuan City, and with another step, he had already reached the East Sea. Immediately after that, an immortal old man appeared beside Lu Xuanzhen. The two of them looked at the two figures in the center of the vortex with a grave expression, some cold sweat coming out from their palms. As the battle intensified, the aura of one person and one demon was unreservedly declared, except for the cultivators above the fairy realm. All of them retreated to the Peach Blossom Town. On top of the East Sea, besides the two opposing sides, there were only seven figures standing, three of the human race and four of the demon race, the seven were only a hundred feet apart, seemingly watching the battle, but their breath had locked onto each other early on, as long as one side made the first move, that one-on-one -on -one duel would instantly turn into a melee at the transition realm, at that time, Peach Blossom Town would have to go through the scene of ten years ago all over again, old man Qian Yuan, you're eight heavens and I'm nine, you can't beat me, a smug laugh emanated from the center of the battle, causing the faces of the three cultivators of the human race at the transition realm to change slightly. State Lord, what if Patriarch Qian is undefeated? Qi Tianyuan stood beside Lu Xuanzhen with some worry in his expression. Lu Xuanzhen glanced at a demon saint and three demon kings across from him. The corner of his mouth gently skimmed as he blandly said, Don't worry, I brought the demon suppressing pagoda by the way. Qi Tianyuan, the swirls on the surface of the sea grew bigger and bigger, and boo, a crunching sound came out. In the next second, the two figures retreated in opposite directions from the center, and where they passed, the void shattered. After stabilizing his figure, the originally blurred figure became clear and the sea returned to calm. The sword shadows behind Qian Yuanzi became a bit messy, while the demonic phantom behind Ao defeat was only slightly dimmer. Obviously, Ao defeat was better in this fight. Although there was only a difference of one heavens, there was still some gap in strength. Even if Qian Yuanzi was a sword cultivator known for his killing power it would be difficult to make up for it. After all, Ao defeat was also the best of the demon race, old Taoist Qian Yuan. Am I right? You're still almost on fire. In the face of Ao defeat's cold mockery, Qian Yuanzi's face was very calm, unable to see any joy or anger. Really? Then do you dare to take my next sword? As the words fell, a crimson three-foot long sword steeply appeared on Qian Yuanzi's side. Qian Yuanzi's right hand gently gripped the red sword, and a wail was immediately emitted from the long swords in the hands of all the sword cultivators in the arena. All the cultivators who saw the scene couldn't help but think of a phrase at the same time in their hearts. Immortal swords come out. Ten thousand swords roar together. In a split second, the faces of both demon and human powerhouses on the field changed. Old Taoist, are you playing for real? Ao defeat looked at the crimson immortal sword on Qian Yuanzi's side with a scornful expression. And for the first time, his tone took on some panic. Red sword shocking. One of the four great immortal swords of the Qinming continent. The immortal weapon of the Yin Yang Dao sect for suppressing Qi. The sword is bloodstained and the main killing. It was important to realize that each immortal soldier was the ultimate backbone of this power. And every time it was used, it was at a moment of great danger. Although there were few ascension realm immortals in the Qiming continent, they could still produce one every 10,000 years on average. But it's different with immortal soldiers. You don't see a single immortal soldier come out for tens of thousands of years. Because the conditions for the formation of immortal soldiers are extremely harsh. In addition to the forging material being non-immortal gold and the need for the combined efforts of several top-notch forging masters to create it, it also has an extremely perverse condition for its formation. That is, 
It must have been dyed with the heart blood of no less than three Ascension Realm Immortals before it was activated. In other words, the user must personally kill three Ascension Realm Immortals before the Immortal Soldier is activated. This is tantamount to a fool's errand in whimsy. Surprising sword around the body of the wisps of red sword awnings as if the silver snake spitting letters ready to fire. The surrounding void are appearing a little crack. Not only were the faces of the demon race terrified, even Lu Xuanzhen's trio looked a little alarmed. Lu Xuanzhen, state master, have you brought the void mirror? No. Is the state lord trying to cast the scene here to the entire Qiming continent? No. I haven't settled on the prince yet, and I want to talk about it now. In the middle of the field, Ao defeat looked at Qin Yuanzi with a grimace. Old Taoist Qian Yuan, what deep hatred is there between the two of us that deserves you to use a secret method to move an immortal soldier to kill me? You're brazen. Qian Yuanzi let out a cold cry. Ao defeat was exasperated and laughed by Qian Yuanzi. You hit me at my doorstep without saying a word and called me brazen. You old unashamed man have the nerve to talk about me? The brawl between the two froze the crowd watching from afar. Are the quarrels of the Jedi as grounded as this? The way is simple. Back to basics. The ancients honestly don't deceive me. Chen Yuanzi's face remained unchanged as he angrily rebuked. Then return my disciple's life. The Lu Qingqing below who had originally had her lips clenched tightly suddenly turned snow white, and not a trace of blood could be found on her entire pretty face. I've killed many human cultivators. What's your disciple's last name? Chen Yuanzi spotted the pretty snow white Lu Qingqing in a glance, and cried out in his heart that it was bad. Forgot the girl was still here. Chen Yuanzi waved his hand a boundary to cover the two, then his finger in the air a little. A silhouette appeared out of thin air. Ao defeat looked at the familiar silhouette in front of him, and his hanging body suddenly lurched, almost failing to stabilize his body. Although the image had a much more childlike face, he recognized the figure instantly. Thus, under Qian Yuanzi's shocked gaze, Ao defeat directly stepped forward and held his hand. A slightly bitter voice resounded in the boundary. Patriarch Qian has misunderstood. I didn't kill your disciple. It's just that he was just a guest at the Dragon Palace some time ago. Light. Light dust he is still alive? Chen Yuanzi's right hand loosened slightly as he looked at Ao Defeat with a shocked expression. Of course, Ao Defeat's gaze towards Chen Yuanzi was also a bit puzzled. It seemed that this old Taoist didn't know that his disciple had become a sword immortal. The stunning sword in Chen Yuanzi's right hand was loosened and he directly put his hand on the back of Ao Defeat's hand. Dragon King, where is that lightning dust now? Is his life in danger? Ao Defeat shook his head. I'm not sure where Yi Gongzi is. As for his life that is of course. Ao Defeat originally wanted to say that of course there was no fear for his life, but once he thought of what would happen to the Lucy Mortals in the end, he changed his words to something else. Lord Ji is free of worry for the time being, so I'm sure he'll definitely come to Patriarch Qian soon. A soothing smile finally surfaced on Qian Yuanzi's face that had not smiled in 10 years. Then, seeing the posture between himself and Ao Defeat, he slightly withdrew and pulled away some distance. Infinite Heavenly Father. The stunning woman beside him thought that he was still going to fight. So she slowly leaned over, but was pushed away by Qian Yuan Zi's palm. The entire sword froze in the air, letting out a soft chant as the hilt continued to rotate. At the same time, the boundary between the two disappeared, and Qian Yuan Zi's voice slowly came out. Thank you, Dragon King, for informing me of this news. But I still want to say that humans and demons are the same cheeming beings and should live in harmony with each other instead of killing each other and competing for territory. I hope the Dragon King will think twice. Ao Defeat's expression also became quite serious. I swear on the honor of the 67th generation patriarch of the East Sea Clan. As long as the human clan doesn't take the initiative to invade my East Sea Sea Clan, my East Sea Clan will never take the initiative to stir up trouble. One word stirs up a thousand waves. Lu Xuanzhen and Qi Tian Yuan had a touch of ecstasy on their faces, and the one who would benefit the most from this would be the Sunset Empire. Since then, the East China Sea has been unharmed, no matter if it was a human or demon cultivator's face. A smile appeared on all of them, with the exception of one person. Lu Qingqing's eyes stared at Ao Defeat with a deadly stare, eyes full of red, and underneath them was a touch of lifeless despair and thick killing intent. Chen Yuanzi had been paying attention to Lu Qingqing's state. Seeing this, he took a step out from the East Sea and appeared beside Lu Qingqing in the next second. Lu Qingqing tilted her head and looked at Chen Yuanzi, biting her lips, which already had some blood on them, and did not speak. But Qian Yuanzi's next words caused all of Lu Qingqing's defenses to crumble. Girl, that kid is still alive. Tears slid across Lu Qingqing's stunningly beautiful face and dripped onto the ground. Tick tock, tick tock, tick tock. It doesn't matter if your lover is far away. As long as there is hope for your return. A great battle occurred on the shores of the Eastern Sea. But because the leaking aura was blocked by Lu Xuanzhen, Yi Qingxuan, who was far away in Shuzhou, did not know about it. On the hearse, 
Yi Ching Suan looked back at the two young girls who were weak and powerless and collapsed in the carriage. If it wasn't for the fact that the two women were very pale, others would have thought that they had done something to them. It's just killing a roving bandit. Why such a big reaction? At those words, Lot Ching Xuan Little Peach shuddered in unison. Young, young master, I really can't do it anymore. In the future, don't let me see things like killing people. Okay, I'm blood sick. Yi Ching Duan, where is this warrior woman afraid? It just takes a while to get used to it. Falling Ching Xue said with a stiff upper lip. Yi Ching Suan didn't poke holes in what he heard and smiled faintly. A woman's whole body is made of water. Only her mouth is not. Suddenly, Yi Ching Suan's voice faintly sounded from outside the car. We're here. As the words fell, two teenage faces filled with youthfulness poked out from both sides of the hearse. As far as the eye could see a not-so-tall wall stood ahead. Looking through the gates of the city you can see the stark contrast between the green brick paved ground inside and the crack land outside the city. Is your home in here, young master? That's not true. But this is one of the best cities in the entire Shu state in terms of environment now. And it's also the way for us to move forward. Zee City, the easternmost city in the entire Shu state, was far away from the war, and also did not have to face the rolling yellow sand outside the city, making the conditions very pleasant. It was also a necessary route for people from the eastern states and counties to go abroad, and commerce and trade were also very well developed. It was a city built by the King of Shu 20 years ago specifically for the widows of soldiers killed in battle. This is also an important reason why the people of Shuzhou are willing to go to join the army. If one person dies in battle, the whole family will not go hungry. It's a deal that isn't a loss for the average family. It's been two days of rushing. Take a rest. Yi Qingduan proposed. Cultivators below the Yuaning realm were unable to dispel the grain, let alone not having to rest. Cultivators at this stage merely do not need to eat three meals a day and sleep every night as mortals do. Yi Qingzuan led the carriage into the city, but as soon as he entered the city his brows were furrowed. Although there were stores on both sides of the street, the bosses inside were all men in expensive clothes. The two women entered the city as if they had regained some of their vitality, and got down from the hearse, their faces regaining some of their redness. Let's go find an inn first and let the horses rest, Yi Qingduan proposed. But after looking for a few inns, the three were surprised to find that the prices here were actually higher than those in Tianyuan City. You have to know that Shuzhou has never been a prosperous place, and prices are lower than other states and counties. When did such sky-high prices occur? Although the three people have money on hand, but really do not want to be the wrongdoer, can only go all the way along the street to find. Steeply, a gasp caught the attention of several people. You bitch. It's your good fortune that my son has taken a liking to you. Don't be insensitive. Go serve if you want to serve. I'm not willing to do such a thing. Immediately afterward, the sound of a whip beating and a woman screaming came out from the crowd in front. Young men and women have always been most fond of lively activities and the three of them went towards the crowd without a second thought. Yi Qingduan took a lot of effort to squeeze in with the hearse. After seeing the scene in the field, Yi Qingzuan's gaze suddenly condensed. On the ground, a beautiful woman holding a baby was half lying on the ground, and opposite the woman was a fierce man, a man with a whip in his hand. The beautiful woman's hands were full of red marks, her lips were white, obviously not lightly injured, and a bright red slave character mark at her wrist was very eye-catching. But what moved Yi Qingzuan was a copper coin that the beautiful woman wore around her neck. This copper coin, unlike the trading currency in circulation today, is round in shape and has a large shoe character engraved in the center. It was a transportation currency unique to Shuzhou, mostly popular among the military. As the beautiful woman dodged the whip, Yi Qingzuan saw the other side of the copper coin. There were two small characters engraved on it, Wang Battle, and there was a white underline underneath the two small characters. Yi Qingzuan's heart was suddenly shaken. This kind of copper money would only be used in the military, originally to identify the generals. However, if a general dies in battle and dies without a body, it will be returned to the family as a token in order to avoid being unacceptable to the family. Only a white line would be added to the back of the coin to indicate that the general to whom the coin belonged had died. In other words, the beautiful woman in front of her and the child in her arms were the widows of a certain general. According to the decree of Xu Zhou, all widows of soldiers killed in battle were sent to Zai City and given a store and a three-person house. So how did this general's widow get a slave seal carved into her? Yi Qingduan had already guessed a certain possibility in his heart, and a wave of anger rose from his heart. The woman was no more than a mortal, while the man was a cultivator of the body-tempering realm. So naturally, he could not escape the whip. Just as the fierce man raised the long whip in his hand again, two voices came out at the same time. Stop! Unbridled! Before Yi Qingduan could strike! A sword chi directly chopped the whip. Lok Ching Shui took a step forward and looked at the evil servant with a cold expression. This sister has already said she is unwilling. Why are you people still imposing? 
When that servant-like man saw that Lot Ching Shui had cut the whip with a single stroke of her sword, shocking her right hand into paralysis, some fear welled up in her heart. But then, thinking of his identity and the people behind him, his face returned to its condescension. You little lady want to mind your own business? I'm telling you, I'm a member of the city lord's mansion. If you dare to touch me the entire Zai city will have no place for you. Seeing that this little lady of yours was born very beautiful, since you want to save her, why don't you go and accompany the young master? This servant spoke more and more boldly, and in his words, he even hit on Lok Ching Shui's idea. Lok Ching Shui could not bear it anymore when she heard that, and there was no need to bear it any longer. So she swung her sword and slashed over. Where was that servant and opponent of the foundation establishment realm? He was restrained by Lok Ching Shui with just a single sword strike. After the man was restrained, a look of fear appeared on his face and his legs kept trembling. Woman I was wrong. This is all because my young master told me to do it. It's none of my business. Rubbish. Don't say you're from the city lord's mansion in the future. Suddenly, a male voice came from the distance. A stone then hit falling Ching Shui's long sword with lightning speed. The sword bounced off, and the evil servant rolled and ran in the direction the voice came from. As he ran, he shouted, Young master, they're the ones disrupting the security of the city. Yi Ching Dan raised his eyes only to see a youth with an arrogant demeanor and a weak step slowly walking towards them. Beside the youth was an old man who hid his breath. Upon seeing Little Peach and Lok Ching Shui, the youth's eyes lit up and he slightly accelerated his pace to come in front of the trio. My name is Wang Chang. I'm the young city lord of Zai City. I wonder if I have the honor of inviting the two fairies to the city lord's mansion as guests. Shao Tao frowned at the words and hid behind Yi Ching Suan. Lok Ching Shui didn't pay attention to Wang Chang but instead looked at the old man beside Wang Qing with a grave expression. This person's aura was deep, and although she didn't know the exact realm, she was far from being an opponent. Yi Qingduan crossed to the front of Lok Qing Shui in one step, his eyes cold as he looked at the youth in front of him who called himself the young city lord. Why did you do this to her? Yi Qingduan's slightly angry voice rang out. Wang Qing glanced at Yi Qingchen and asked rhetorically, It's just a lowly slave woman. What reason do you need to bully her? Yi Qingdan took a deep breath his tone carrying a piercing coldness. And do you have any idea what that round copper coin around her neck represents? Wang Chang snorted. I know. I just have a husband who is a soldier. It's not dead. What's wrong with me letting her come with me now? And what are you, boy, that you dare to question me? Wang Chang's tone was filled with disdain and contempt for Yi Ching Suan. Upon hearing Wang Ching's words, the beautiful woman on the ground stared at him with hard eyes and covered her lips tightly with her one free hand. Though tears flowed, no sound came out. She would not, and would not, make any cowardly cries in front of such a person. You beast. Lok Ching Shui just couldn't watch anymore, especially after knowing the identity of the beautiful woman. Even Xiao Tao, who was on the side, stood out looking at Wang Ching with disgust in her eyes. Yi Ching Dao's eyes had calmed down at this point. He was no longer planning to directly kill Wang Ching at this point. Death was too cheap for him, and now he had one last question. How many times have you done this kind of thing? And how many people in Zai City have the same behavior as you? Wang Qing's eyes showed a fierce light, and he said in a fierce voice, I said, what are you, and are you worthy to ask me? But just then, the old man beside him attached himself to Wang Qing's ear and said a few words. Wang Qing turned his tone and laughed, it's fine to give you the answer, but I'll tell you again when I get to my mansion. Yi Qingduan nodded with an indifferent face, and then in the gaze of the surrounding people who felt sorry for him. The three of Yi Qingduan and the beautiful woman who had fallen on the ground came to the public hall of the city lord's mansion together. On both sides of the public hall were the city lord's houseguards, and above the public hall, Wang Qing laughed indulgently. Ha ha, this young man has never seen someone as stupid as you, to actually follow me. Lok Qing Shui's face was filled with anxiety, while that beautiful woman's face was filled with despair and guilt. Yi Qingzuan's face did not change in any way. He just said in a cold voice, where is the answer I want? Upon hearing this, Wang Qing's laughter only stopped and he looked at Yi Ching Suan with a playful expression. Seeing as you've brought two beauties for this young man, I'll give you the answer. I like beautiful women. I change them every day. And I've never liked my women to be occupied by anyone else. So I basically kill them every time I enjoy them. As for how many people like me are in this Sai city, that's certainly countless. You see the stores on both sides of the street. Every one of them has done this more or less. Or how do you think they got the stores? It's just that none of them are as good as me. This young man is the only one who exists here. Ha ha ha. Speaking of this, Wang Qing was even a bit proud, laughing like no one else. After laughing, Wang Qing became even more mouthy. It's all thanks to that king. Ah, sending all these widows over. Otherwise how could we enjoy so many women? Upon hearing this, Yi Qingdao's body trembled slightly. But Wang Qing thought that Yi Qingdao was afraid. 
So he continued to speak to himself, and I whispered to you an insight, those who merit the higher the widows of the generals, the better the taste, the temperament is even better, that play up, ah, before the words were finished, a miserable scream rang out abruptly, only Yi Ching Tsuan took advantage of Wang Qing's speech and a pill was thrown into his mouth, Wang Qing only felt a wave of pain coming from a broken meridian and couldn't help but fall to the ground and scream, this was a poison from the Taoist medical legacy that could corrode the strange meridians in a cultivator's body, toxicity is not strong, but the victory in lasting, can last a full 779 hours, and finally make the poisoning in the liver and guts and died, bold, the old man following Wang Qing's side changed his face drastically as his aura of the Yuanning realm erupted, but it only lasted an instant before disappearing, in the public hall, the old man of the Yuanning realm lowered his head, his eyes filled with shock, right after he released his aura just now, he only felt that the youth's gaze was like a sharp sword, disintegrating his momentum in an instant, this is definitely a powerhouse above the god refining stage, the old man said in his heart, then he heard a voice, within half a quarter of an hour, have his old man come see me, Yi Qingduan pointed at Wang Chun who was rolling on the ground and said in a faint voice, yes, yes, I'm on my way, the guards on both sides were chillingly forbidden, not even daring to raise their heads to look at Yi Qingchen, after the old man left the public hall, Yi Ching Tsuan slowly walked to the beautiful woman, his voice trembled a little as he gently hugged the young baby in the woman's arms, his long hair slightly falling to cover his face, I'm sorry, it's me, Xu Zhou, who has wronged you all, it's Yi Xiao, that king of Shu, who didn't do a good job and made you suffer, I'm sorry, I'm really sorry, towards the end, Yi Ching Tsuan's voice took on a hint of crying, Xiao Tao's eyes were also red as she looked at Yi Ching Tsuan's appearance, she had never seen her young master in this state, suddenly, an aura of the third level of return to void steeply rose from the deepest part of the city lord's mansion, in the next second, a middle-aged man in an official uniform appeared beside Wang Qing, looking at his beloved son on the ground who was constantly rolling over due to the pain, Wang Li looked at Yi Ching Tsuan with murderous intent in his eyes, quickly give me the antidote and I'll spare you from death, Yi Ching Duan also turned his head to look at Wang Li at this moment, holding the last trace of expectation in his eyes, do you know what Wang Cheng has done, Wang Li snorted coldly, so what if you know, hand over the antidote, although just now when Wang Qing's personal guard came to report, he said that Yi Ching Tsuan was at least a cultivator of the god refining stage or above, however, Wang Li did not think that he was just a low-ranking cultivator who had practiced the secret method of restraining breath, he himself was at the void returning realm, so he didn't put Yi Ching Duan in his heart, I see, Yi Ching Dao slowly nodded his head as he heard this, Wang Li, do you still remember what King Shu said to you when he first asked you to come to Zai City to become its lord? Upon hearing this, Wang Li's face changed slightly, and his mind could not help but recall the only scene where he met with the king of Shu, that only king with a different surname and the entire Sunset Empire looked at himself with a solemn expression and said solemnly, from today onwards you are the lord of Zai City, the people who come to Zai City are the families of the heroes of my Sunset and my Shu Zhou, I hope you will treat them well, and you mustn't allow them to be aggrieved, so that the generals under the ground will not be able to die in peace, Yi Ching Duan's voice continued to ring out, so what do you do now? that's what you call being kind, a flash of shame flashed in Wang Li's eyes, but then as if he realized something, his face changed drastically, his legs couldn't help but shake a little, who are you and how do you know all this, Yi Qingdan's temperament steeply changed, his hands behind his back, and he asked sideways and rhetorically, what do you say, Lieutenant Wang, Yi Qingdan's aura skyrocketed in an instant, becoming imposing and lofty, Wang Li then softened his knees and directly fell to the ground, his, highness, the moment these words came out, the faces of everyone in the arena except for Yi Qingduan changed drastically, Wang Cheng's originally agonized face became paler, and the pain became even more intense, Xia Tao looked at Yi Ching Suan's back and fumed, young master is really a young master, Lok Ching Shui, on the other hand, looked at Yi Ching Suan with a face full of shock, she had expected Yi Ching Suan's status to be extraordinary, but she had not expected it to be so noble, the son of King Shu, this status was already no less than a prince of the Sunset Empire, and the eyes of that beautiful woman looking at Yi Ching Tsuan were very complicated, with a few points of complaint and a wisp of expectation. Greetings, your highness. In an instant, the only person standing in the public hall was Yi Ching Duan. Yi Ching Duan looked at Wang Li coldly. Wang Li, what else do you have to say? Wang Li's body trembled as he listened to the screams of his son beside him. A flash of ruthlessness flashed in his eyes. Suddenly, Wang Li stood up fiercely. Bold thief. How dare he disguise himself as the son of the world and pretend to be his highness to deceive me. His highness has disappeared for ten years. Come on, take this thief down for me. The guards on both sides hesitated. 
but still surrounded towards Yi Qingsu and several people. As Wang Li had said, no one could guarantee right now that the young man in front of him was the Prince of Shu, but Wang Li, the city lord, was a real one. Yi Qingduan's expression was calm, but his eyes were bone chillingly cold. How could he not have imagined that less than 20 years could turn a loyal and good man into such a treacherous one? Wang Li, open your doggy eyes for me and see who I really am. Yi Qingduan let out a loud cry, invoking heaven and earth. Above the public hall, a great force of heaven and earth poured in, and the crowd only felt their shoulders sink. All the guards, including Wang Chang who had just been helped up by Wang Li, were immediately pressed down again. Only Wang Li, who was at the return to Void Realm, was running his aura to frantically resist. But in just a few breaths the spirit mask shattered, and the entire person knelt on one knee, blood flowing from his seven orifices. Your Highness, Your Highness, my subordinate knows that I'm wrong. I know that I'm wrong. Please give my subordinate a little time to confess my sins. Wang Li's humble voice resounded in the public hall, and at the sound of his words Yi Ching Suan gently waved his sleeve the great power in the field suddenly dissipated and disappeared. Speak, and if you dare to speak a word of falsehood, your Wang clan will be decimated. Yes, the world sun is unaware that this situation is not only occurring in my Zi city in Shuzhou now. Basically there are more or less such situations in every city. The widows of the generals were reduced to slavery and were bullied and abused. Wang Li's words made Yi Ching Suan's heart go cold. The situation in Shuzhou has been so serious to this point, so the state officials up there don't care about these things at all? Yi Ching Duan questioned. Wang Li looked agitated as he took two steps forward. Your Highness, this matter is far from simple. In the beginning, there were indeed many loyal officials who stepped forward, but in less than half a year there was no more such movement. Yi Ching Duan's sword brows lightly frowned. Can it be that someone has bribed them? Wang Li smiled bitterly at the words, some fear in his eyes. Your Highness does not know. Just half a year my Shuzhou officials reduced the number of nearly 30% off, all of the violent deaths or assassination death, and finally the government cannot find the murderer can only be unsettled. What? A cold light appeared in Yi Qingqin's eyes. Did my father not notice the slightest thing? Did the Shu royal family not take the slightest measure? Wang Li smiled to himself and spoke a shocking secret. It has been a full 10 years since my humble servant has reported to Shu City, and it has been 12 years since Zai City has had an official make a tour of duty. What is the reason for this? Lok Ching Shue, who had been listening to the conversation between the two on the side, couldn't help but ask when she heard this. This was because even though their Lok family was not an official, because they belonged to a large clan in Tian Yuan State, they needed to go to the state capital of Tian Yuan State every year to report on the situation. And now Wang Li actually said that he hadn't been to Xuqing to report on his duties for 10 years. Wang Li had been hanging his head low since he finished speaking, and he did not immediately answer when he heard Lok Ching Shue's question. Reason? Reasons you can ask yourselves in your next life. Suddenly, Wang Li, who was close at hand, suddenly stormed up and struck a palm toward Yi Ching Suan. But at the same time an angry cry came from outside the mansion. Wang Li, you deserve to die. A long spear wrapped in the aura of the harmonization realm struck back and passed through Wang Li's shoulder. It was eventually nailed to the plaque above the public hall, along with the gun. In the next second, a general in fiery red armor appeared on Yi Ching Suan's side, one of the four guards of the royal family. Red Tooth Commander Xiao Yuan Shan, see your highness the world prince, my subordinate is late to save the ship, I hope your highness the world prince will forgive me. Yi Qingguan looked at Xiao Yuan Shan and let out a faint smile, I originally thought that the person coming would be Zia, but I didn't expect that it would be Commander Xiao himself, but since Commander Xiao has come, I'm sure he's brought some Red Tooth guards with him, right? Xiao Yuan Shan rose and respectfully said, my subordinate only brought 50 red teeth in order to conceal his movements, enough. Yi Qingdan said softly, waste Wang Li and bring him out, the people of Shuzhou haven't seen the dawn for 10 years. With that, Yi Qingxuan left the city lord's mansion with the three women, and for the next three hours, screams and cries for help kept resounding in Zai City. I didn't do it, wrongfully accused. Your Highness, you son of a bitch, I'll fight you. Ah, outside Zi City, Yi Qingxuan stood on his horse with a calm expression, not caring about the hissing sounds within the city. The two Xiaotao people had already sat in the hearse, and the one who drove the car was replaced with Lok Qingxue, as one of the four guards of the royal household. Red Tooth's lowest cultivation level was at the Jindan realm. How could these traitors in the city be their opponents? As the day wore on, the cries for help from the city faded, followed by a chorus of women's cries. The cries were not mournful, but full of relief. A few moments later, the sound of hoofbeats came from within the city, and fifty steeds were neatly arranged at the city gates. Behind each horse was tied a raggedly dressed merchant, and behind Yi Qingduan's horse were the two people tied up, Wang Chang and Wang Li, who had wasted his cultivation. 
Yi Qingduan swept a glance at these people, his eyes filled with coldness, seeing that all the people had arrived. Xiao Yuanshan looked at Yi Qingsuan's face and issued a marching order. All red tooth guards on command. Go! When they came to pick up Yi Qingchen, Xiao Yuanshan and the others had specially bypassed numerous cities in order to avoid attracting the attention of people with malicious intentions. But on the way back, Yi Qingsuan not only specialized in the official route, he even had Xiao Yuanshan set up a flag that belonged exclusively to the house of the King of Shu, with a red face and white characters, which was very conspicuous. So along the way, the many people of Shuzhou were treated to a spectacular sight. A group of steeds marched in neat unison, with a figure only covered by cloth strapped behind them. Even the foremost steed had two men tied up behind him in a row. Two great heads clashed against each other. The crisp sound still vaguely audible even over the rush of hooves. Some sharp-eyed cultivators who had been to Zai City could not help but exclaim in shock when they saw the situation. Heavens, aren't those two the city lord and young city lord of Zai City? And who are those people up there who dared to tie them behind their horses? Someone off to the side asked, are these two famous? The person who voiced out before revealed a wisp of disgust and said in a vicious voice, of course it's big, there's no one in the entire Zai City who doesn't know about the evil deeds of these two beasts. Oh, brother in detail, horses and silhouettes galloped together on the official road. At every city, Yi Qingdan ordered all the red tooth guards to maximize the commotion, striving for everyone in the city to be able to hear them. On top of that, he told Xiao Yuan Shan to say a word every time he arrived at a city. Master of Zai City has humiliated a general's widow. He has been caught with all the evidence and will be beheaded in Shu City in three days. The sound traveled far with the aura, and the entire Shuzhou was caught in the most shaking moment since the battle at the Jialong Pass 30 years ago. There were a total of 13 large cities in Shu State from east to west, and the state capital, Shu City, was in the center. Six cities in a row in one day. The sound of horses' hooves and shouts of applause were also frequent. By the time Yi Qingduan and his party arrived at the outskirts of Shu City, Nearly half of the 50 traitors were already dead, and the remaining half were also dying. Wang Cheng, on the other hand, had long since died halfway, having been run over alive by Wang Li. Although Wang Li, who had lost his spiritual power to protect his body, was in a little better condition than Wang Cheng, he also had less air in and more air out. Yi Qingduan looked at the city wall that had long been refurbished once more, and his eyes narrowed slightly. Yi Xiao had prioritized the big and small things in Shu State after becoming the king of Shu. The best thing is the border affairs. All Shuzhou officials and people are not allowed to disobey. The livelihood of the people of Shuzhou is placed second in importance. Down the line, things like repairing the city have long been placed in the top 10. At that time, some officials raised their opinions, saying that repairing the city was also a major event that should be prioritized. But it was immediately dismissed by Yi Xiao. I can't even hold the border pass. What's the point of having these cities? Can't they be stronger than the Jialong Pass? But now that the first two articles have gone so wrong, it's amazing that something like this repairing the city is doing so well. Commander Xiao, my Shuzhou is really rich. After saying that, Yi Qingxuan rode ahead and took the lead into the city. Xiao Yuanshan froze, and then a drop of cold sweat flowed down from his forehead. But in a few moments, the green shirt under the armor was all wet. And just as Yi Qingdao was but a few moments away, a loud shout traveled from inside the city to the outside, and Xiao Yuanshan hurriedly followed. Seiji is back. This bully is back, and people with teenage kids at home are rushing to take their kids home. On the carriage, Lok Ching Shui and Xiao Tao looked at Yi Ching Tzu and riding on the horse without faces. Originally Fall Ching Shui looked at Yi Ching Duan's behavior should be a deeply loved by the people of the world son of his highness. But look at this situation. Not quite. Yi Ching Tzu and looked at the crowd that was fleeing in all directions. His face was a little stiff and he could only barely squeeze out some smiles. Gentlemen, I'm 25 years old. The people who had been fleeing lurched and then a louder scream exploded through the crowd. An old man on crutches shouted at the crone who was swept away by the crowd not far away. Child's mother, hurry up and tell our family's newly married oldest to hurry up and run away, or he'll be approached by his highness the world prince again. Aya, don't worry about Lao San's daughter-in-law. The world's son is only looking for men, and Lao San is even more dangerous. The crowd in front of Yi Ching Tsuan suddenly dissipated at the fastest speed in his life. When the fifty red tooth guards behind them heard these words, they covered their mouths and noses with their brown hands, and their faces swelled up on both sides, living like a toad. But Peach on the hearse didn't have so many scruples and laughed outright. In this way, Lok Ching Shui, who was bitterly holding her breath, couldn't help herself. Ha ha, young master still has such a funny and embarrassing story. In an instant, Yi Ching Tsuan was as good as behind the front yard of the hall, a quiet and a quiet. Yi Ching Tsuan's face was a bit gloomy, living like a picture of a wrong son of the world. Instead of taking the avenue that passed through the state capital, 
Yi Qingdan and the others chose a small path to go directly back to the royal residence. At this time, the entrance of the royal residence has long been a group of people waiting, warbling and swallowing, very lively. At the head of the group was a woman with a full head of green hair, with only a strand or two of gray hair on her temples. The woman is wearing but ordinary silk, no gold and silver jewelry dress, but the body temperament is very different from ordinary women. There is a kind of graceful attitude. Yi Qingguan did not ride over directly, but dismounted when he was still 20 to 30 meters away from the woman. The footsteps were getting closer and closer. Looking at the face in front of him that he hadn't seen for more than 10 years, it was obvious that he hadn't seen it for a long time, but Yi Qingdao felt that it was even clearer. Knock, mother, light dust is back. At that moment, the others in front of Yi Qingzuan unanimously avoided, leaving only Wang Qingyan alone. The move was both rationally chosen and divinely inspired. They didn't dare to accept the kneeling of His Highness the World Prince, they couldn't afford to accept a single kneeling of the Sword Immortal. A gentle smile surfaced on Wang Qingyan's face, her hand gently rested on Yi Qing Chen's head, slowly stroking over his face. It's so much taller than the last time I came back. Wang Chengyan stretched out her index finger and thumb, feeling that it wasn't enough to fold her palm halfway up again. Tick, 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 tick. Yi Qing Tsuan, who had his head lowered, had his mouth slightly opened, but no half sound came out. Wang Chengyan's palm was on the small side, about five inches long, while Yi Qing Chen this last time he went home was a year before the dragon beheading battle. In 11 years, the increase in height was exactly 7 inches in 5 minutes. All right, it's time to go inside or the food will get cold. I made your favorite saucy pancetta. Yi Ching Tsuan helped Wang Qing Yan into the gate of the royal residence. And after this gate was all about parents. But at this time the state capital was cold and quiet behind its single door. A group of officials had been waiting for a long time in front of the gate of the Chao Mansion. And at the head of the group was Lu Chang, the assassin of Shu State. A third ranked official. Lu Chang was a royal relative. But it was said that because he contradicted Lu Xuanzhen, he got so angry that he was instantly relegated to Xu Zhou as an assassin. This can be said to be the last 30 years sunset counted the number of relegation of people. It is important to know that the assassin of Xu state is not a beautiful job. Neither can it be like Tianyuan state, which generally has the power of state and county administration. Nor can it be like Qingzhou state, which generally sits on the affluent land. The real thing is a chore. But surprisingly Lu Chang had a great political record after arriving in Xu Zhou and even Yi Xiao had praised him, you kid was born to be an official material, when the royal relatives for nothing, but now this person who Yi Xiao had praised as the most skillful official was frowning at the empty street, according to the time, Prince Xu should have arrived a long time ago, but now there was not the slightest movement coming from him, and he understood Yi Qingdan's meaning, disperse, the world prince won't be coming, faint words came out, Lu Chang led the way into the middle of the single door, Lord Assassin, what does his highness mean by this, behind him, an official hurriedly chased after him, with a somewhat anxious look on his face. Lu Chang waved his hand and yawned. I don't know. I'm sleepy. Leave me alone. After Lu Chang gave the expulsion order, a few officials' faces became very ugly and gathered together to quietly mutter something. Soon after, they left in two separate directions. One to the west, one to the north. A household round table sits under the window in the king's compartment, with six stools arranged at equal intervals. Yi Qingchen looked at Wang Qingyan and asked suspiciously, Mother, where is the second sister? And is the youngest sister also not at home? Upon hearing this, a hint of despondency flashed in Wang Qingyan's eyes. Your little sister's cultivation talent is so good that she was taken in as a disciple by a passing senior from the Pengxian Cave Heaven, and is now practicing in the Pengxian Cave Heaven. Pengxian Cave Heaven? Yi Qingduan was slightly stunned. He had heard of this power. Rumor has it that the Qiming continent had gods and devils in parallel during the ancient times, and the aura was so rich that it couldn't be melted away. So naturally a lot of heavenly paradise was born in such a situation. Rumor has it that there are a handful of spiritual herbs and sacred medicines inside, and even sacred beasts such as the phoenix and the unicorn live inside for a long time. It is written in ancient books that there are 36 caves and 72 blessed places between heaven and earth. It is a place of creation and divine beauty, which cannot be encountered by those who are not blessed with deep fortune. However, with the exhaustion of spiritual power, since a million years ago, the cave has not been visible and the blessed land does not exist. And according to what Yi Qingduan had learned in the Yin Yang Dao sect, nowadays, the cave heavenly blessing land had not disappeared into thin air, but rather, it was unable to be fixed into shape. That is to say, in addition to the richness of spiritual qi, the other terrain is no different from ordinary mountains and rivers. Many big forces in the selection of the site in fact pick the spiritual energy as thick out perhaps once as the cave heaven blessed land. However, 
The reason why the Pangxian Cave Heaven could still be solidly formed was due to its special characteristics. This force is located in the underground and is constantly moving. Outsiders cannot find its location. Very mysterious. Few people set foot. Secondly, it is said that Pangxian Cave is the legendary road of the dead to the hell, connecting the two realms of yin and yang, nourished by the aura of the two realms. The aura can be said to be very abundant. It was the combined effect of the two that made it possible for Pengxian Cave Heaven to still exist in the form of a heavenly paradise when the spiritual chi was so thin nowadays. A touch of joy surfaced between Yi Ching Don's eyebrows. He did not expect his little sister to have such a fortune. This is the only cave of heaven known to exist in the world. Only to Wang Chang Yen, perhaps even the greatest creation was not as important as Yi Ching Ro being able to grow up happily by her side. Wang Chang Yen looked at the empty round table and thought that Yi Ching Chen felt cold, and could not help but softly say, Mother has already sent a message to Lightning, and I've heard that she's asking Master for permission to go home and visit her family. I've also sent someone to pass the news over from your big sister's side, so I'm sure that according to the schedule it should arrive in the next few days. As for your second sister, she went to the Capitals Academy the other day and turned the academy upside down. I heard from the person who reported the news that several of the school palace's teachers were so talked out of by her that they wanted to hang themselves from the beams, so you might as well be thankful that you can have a few days of peace and quiet to live in these days. When he mentioned his second sister, a rare hint of awe appeared in Yi Ching Suan's eyes, and he couldn't help but rub his head with his hand. Then a helpless smile appeared on his face. Mother is absolutely right. Suddenly, Yi Ching Suan's hand rubbing his head lurched. By the way, mother, what about father? Will he come back too? Yi Ching Dan finally remembered at this time why there were six stools under the table, so he had counted one more person. Humph, he'll just keep that male vixen. Speaking of Yi Xiao, Wang Ching Yen's tone was full of grievances. Male vixen? Yi Ching Dan looked a little stunned, and the chopsticks that were holding the food fell down by one. It's that Fei Yu Kingdom's one word side by side King Gu Xian Yi. Light dust you know. Ten years your father did not return home once ah, you say this family your father still want it? Yi Ching Suan silently picked up his chopsticks, his hand grabbed his sleeve and wiped it off, and quickly took a bite of pancetta into his mouth. Smooth but not greasy, the soup is flavorful. Mother, your pancetta is still so delicious. With a single word, Wang Chang Yan's attention turned around, her complexion filled with pride, that's for sure, I cook it once a day, just in case my hand is rusty by the time you get back, Yi Ching Suan's wolf swallowing action slightly stalled, and then slowly chewed, but actually found that there was actually a hint of bitterness in this full of flavor, spicy flavor of the five flower meat, it's not too late, and the bitterness is just right, early the next morning, Yi Ching Duan woke up under the ministrations of little peach, it's a vice, but it's been raised for 10 years and I don't want to change it. Last night, Yi mother saw Xiaodao and dropped Qingxue two girls eyes flashing, pulling the two people ask questions, almost turn over the genealogy of others. In the end, it was Yi Qingxuan's explanation of his relationship with the two women that helped them out of their misery. As soon as he stepped out of his room, Yi Qingduan learned a piece of news from the housekeeper. All the officials above the fifth rank of the state capital were concentrated in front of the king's residence early this morning and without making any noise or asking for a summons, they stood quietly in front of the door. If an underling delivering food passed by, they would also make way for passage, just like a guard at the door. Is Lu Chang here? The butler pondered a little and affirmed. Assassin Lu is not here. My father was right. This kid is a natural born to be an official. Yi Qingdao sneered, but there was a hint of celebration and appreciation in his tone. Don't worry about them. Bring breakfast over. I've been craving Su Ma's big buns for a long time. Today Yi Ching Suan surprisingly slept a natural wake up. Wang Qing Yan had long gone to the cold mountain temple outside Chu City to pay homage to Buddha. Originally, the Yi family does not believe in Buddhism, but since the eldest sister Yi Hong Yan married far away after Wang Qing Yan every day after breakfast the first thing is to go to the cold mountain temple to worship Buddha. It hasn't stopped for over a decade. A few moments later, in Yi Ching Duan's small courtyard, Yi Ching Duan was sitting on a stone bench, with little Peach standing behind him. Yi Ching Suan held a small book in one hand and picked up the bun with a slightly raised top and put it in his mouth. Juice gushed out in one bite. The book Yi Ching Duan was reading was a folklore novel of gods and ghosts, which was another way he had discovered to sense the red dust. Sense the meaning of the red earth by watching the experiences of the characters in the book. Perhaps the content of the book was too exciting. A large bun Yi Ching Dao finished it in a few bites. Yi Ching Suan was still holding the small book and reached forward with his right hand, but he didn't touch the bag even after groping for half a day. Moving away from the small book, he saw that the plate on the table had long been empty, and behind her, Xiao Tao has long been bloodless when she saw the situation. Young, young master, there are ghosts in the house. A wisp of surprise flashed in Yi Ching Duan's eyes, 
ghosts were impossible to have. Spirit bodies had the most sensitive perceptions. Unless it wanted its soul to fly away, it wouldn't come close to Yi Ching Tsuan. Suddenly, a brilliant light flashed in Yi Ching Tsuan's eyes and the corner of his mouth picked up a faint smile. Little sister, come out. In the middle of the day, the wind passed by and left a sound, and there was not a single noise coming out of the courtyard. If you don't come out, Sango is going to tell the story of how you peed your pants when you were a kid. Brother, you're still so bad. A slightly angry voice rang out from beside Little Peach, and then a half-virtual, half-real figure emerged. How are you this sister? My name is Yi Shinrua. Shoutao turned around and looked at the somewhat blurry and uncertain Yi Qingrua. The corner of her mouth pulled up a forced smile. You you. Well, followed by a stiff body straight down. Bang. Brother, this is? Yi Qinglu looked at Shoutao, who had collapsed on the grass, and her eyes widened. What a special way for the sister to say hello. The corner of Yi Qingchen's mouth twitched slightly. Some time ago Shoutao said that she was bloodsick. Now it seemed that she was not only bloodsick but also ghost sick. How come I didn't realize in the previous 10 years that this ninny had so much swoon? Hearing Yi Ching Rua's inquiry, Yi Ching Tsuan said indifferently, a maid that I picked up 10 years ago, she has been the one who has been taking care of my ups and downs for the past 10 years. Hearing this, a flash of heartache flashed in Yi Ching Yin's eyes as she looked at Yi Ching Yin. As soon as she came in, she had already discovered that Yi Ching Tsuan's dantian was still in a broken state and did not even have a single bit of aura all over his body. Brother, you're Dantian. Yi Qingyuan waved his hand and said lightly, It won't hurt. Maybe before long you'll realize that I'm actually far stronger than you think, and your brother will always be your brother. Yo, my little dust is still so awesome. A gentle voice came from outside the door, and then a yellow figure holding a child came in from the doorway. The visitor was but the face of a young woman, with a pretty figure and a knowing temperament. Yi Qingdao got up and replaced his face with a gentle smile. Big sister, when did you get here? Just when the fourth sister asked you what this woman was, unfortunately, I thought I had a sister-in-law. Yi Hongyan's tone was filled with regret. Her gaze swept over little Peach who was lying on the ground, and a trace of satisfaction flashed in her gaze. Enough is enough. It's just gutsy. Yi Qingduan. Yi Qingtsuan hastily changed the topic. This is big sister's second child. Right. What's the name? Her name is Daryl. And she's a girl. Yi Qingduan somewhat nervously hugged Ruashi, and his hands didn't know where to put them. The whole person was as stiff as a small peach just now, causing Yi Hongyan and Yi Royo to burst into a light laughter. Yi Qingrua belongs to the small family type of woman. The face is clear. The body is small and exquisite. Is the nature of some naughty? Yi Hongyan, on the other hand, was a lady of the house at first glance, with a dignified demeanor and a calm demeanor. Even in front of Yi Ching Tsuan and the others, she was hiding her mouth and smiling lightly. In the evening in the king's mansion, five people were already seated at the round table for six. In addition to Wang Ching Yan and Yi Ching Chen's three siblings, there was also Yi Ching Chen's brother-in-law, Lu Boming. In Yi Ching Duan's opinion, it was really a bit of an aggravation for Big Sister to marry him. Lu Boming ancestry in Qingzhou, where the family but an ordinary family of books, just heard that his ancestors had a Sunset Empire prime minister, but that also do not know how long ago, on his own, although the talent is very good, but will not be the way of the official, but also no good cultivation of martial arts talent, so far. But a seven-person Hanlin Academy editorial, cultivation is only Jin Dan one. Since Yi Hongyan married far away, Yi Xiao had mentioned the need for him to open the way for Lu Boming, but was flatly rejected by Lu Boming and Yi Hongyan. Lu Boming said that he wanted to rely on his own talent to earn fame and glory to restore the glory of his ancestors, otherwise he would be ashamed of the saint's teachings for many years. Yi Hongyan, on the other hand, said that she wanted to live a peaceful life, not asking her husband to be rich and famous but only to be clothed and fed, making Yi Xiao only stop. However, because of this, Yi Ching Tsuan had a few high regards for this brother-in-law, and because both of them were so low-key, the wedding day in the first place was only organized with the specifications of an ordinary people's house. Apart from the families of both parties, there were hardly any other outsiders involved in the wedding reception. Therefore, until now, almost no outsiders knew that the husband of the princess of Shu Wanfu was only a seventh-grade editor. At the dinner table, Lu Boming raised his cup to Yi Ching Suan. Dusty brother has come back this time with thunderous measures to fix the evil officials. It's really gratifying to the people. Brother-in-law toasts you. Two cups of wine a drink. Lu Boming is again spoke. Dust brother act must be very careful. Some officials face good heart evil. Seem to comply with the law. But secretly but harbor evil intentions. Intentions of misbehavior. Such a man must never be trusted with his verbal promises. Yi Ching Tsuan nodded at his words. He was well aware of this truth which was why he first hung out these mouthy, 
honey-tongued people. He was waiting for someone, someone who would be the most reasonable of the Yi family. Second sister, Yi Runin. Inside the royal residence, the wine had passed three rounds and the dishes were at the bottom. Wang Qingyan pulled the hand of Yi Qing Ro beside her and asked softly, Qing Ro, your master didn't promise you to go home to visit your family. Why did he promise later? At the words Yi Shen Ruo's face was slightly red, and she stammered for half a day before saying the reason. My master had a holy beast named Shimmy, mischievous by nature, always wanting to play on earth, but my master wouldn't let me, so I took off the circle that bounded when I saw it was pitiful. And then, Yi Hongyan asked, ran, then master had no time for me. Table crowd, Yi Qingduan, how can you child tease your elders like that? When the time comes, you must apologize to your master. Yi Hongyan's eyes were also slightly reproachful. Yi Qingdan's eyes were slightly condensed. The shimmy beast was a legendary holy beast of the hell, with the ability to listen to heaven and earth. I didn't expect Yi Qingruo's master to be so extraordinary that he had the shimmy beast with him. Yi Qinglu propped her hands on the stool and nodded her head repeatedly, looking good-natured in the past. But only Yi Qingsuan knew that Yi Qingruo's appearance was mostly a response to her master's discovery that she had escaped. Two more days passed in peace, and in the blink of an eye came the day of Wang Li's beheading. Yi Qingduan was currently teasing Ruoshi, who had just learned to walk, with Yi Qing Ruo in the courtyard. Come on, Daryl call uncle, whatever you want, uncle will give it to you. Daryl don't listen to third brother, call auntie first, auntie will give you something delicious to eat. Not far away Yi Han Yan and Wang Qing Yan sat opposite each other. Their gazes looking this way were filled with softness, but this cozy scene was broken by a guard's announcement. Your Highness, Wang Li has been escorted to the execution ground, and Commander Xiao has asked me to inquire when you will go over? Without a coincidence, just as the words fell, another black shadow quietly appeared at the entrance of the small courtyard. This is one of the four guards of the royal household shadow guard, specializing in collecting and spying intelligence for the royal household. A very good stealth kung fu. World Sun, the second county lord has already arrived in Qingzhou and is estimated to arrive at the residence tonight. After the low voice finished, the black shadow disappeared with it. The corners of Yi Qingxuan's mouth revealed a smile that was slightly chilling. In that case, let's open the hall. In the center of Shu City was a high platform, and at this time, the surrounding area had long been crowded with people. A prisoner clothed Wang Li looked forlorn as he knelt in the middle of the high platform of the martial arts arena, surrounded by a guillotine door stained with the aura of heavenly thunder. This is a special guillotine for cultivators, because cultivators cultivate their souls, and there is this heavenly thunder breath in order to ensure that both the physical body and the soul are destroyed. While the crowd under the high platform was excited, there was silence in the judgment hall not far away. Because it was long past three minutes past noon, His Highness the World Prince had not yet arrived. Lu Chang quietly moved over to Xiao Yuan Shan. Commander Xiao, how has His Highness the Son of the World been feeling in recent days? No comment. Xiao Yuan Shan glanced at Lu Chang indifferently. If it was a normal day when he was on good personal terms with Lu Chang he would naturally answer. But now that Yi Qingxuan had already cautioned him a bit, how could he dare to get close to these state officials again? Lu Chang didn't get annoyed when he heard this. He just swept his sleeves and returned to his original position. His eyes narrowed as he looked into the distance. Suddenly, Lu Chang's demeanor changed, only to see his hands quickly straighten his official clothes, and then righted the black hat on his head. Immediately afterward, a shout wrapped in spiritual energy came out from the hall. Lu Chang, the assassin of Shu State, greets his highness, the son of the world. The crowd was horrified, their bodies moving before their eyes, their legs kneeling down, their mouths shouting after them. Greetings, your highness. The official's eyes looked in the direction of the voice, only to see a young man dressed in white walking from outside the crowd, and even the dust didn't stir up half a bit where he passed. Xu Zhou had seen more frequent changes in officials over the years, and Yi Qingxuan was rarely at home after he turned seven, so not many people had actually seen Yi Qingxuan's face. Looking at the handsome youth in front of him with a smile at the corner of his mouth, the many officials at once found it hard to connect him with his highness the world son who had performed a feat some days ago. Get up. Even without the boost of spiritual power, Yi Qingxuan's voice reached the ears of everyone present. The people got up one after another, and some of the older people looked at Yi Qingxuan, who was dressed in white, with a slight trance in his eyes. The little bully who was chasing after kids his own age seems to have grown up a lot. However, none of the officials in the hall dared to get up, and Yi Qingxuan slowly moved towards the main seat in the hall. The route was unchanged, and without ever looking at his feet, he went straight ahead. On the way, he inadvertently stepped on the palms of several officials, and the officials who were stepped on did not dare to show the slightest color, while pathway Lu Chun Yi Qingxuan said in a voice that only the two could hear, these eyes of yours are better than that arsenic. Lu Cheng's face remained unchanged, 
Only his head was slightly lowered. Yi Ching Suan landed on the main seat before the many officials dared to slowly rise. Assassin Lu, it's time, isn't it? Back to the world sun, it's long past three minutes past noon. Oh, wouldn't that be the best time to miss the execution? Lu Cheng looked up at Yi Ching Suan and saw that the corner of his mouth contained a smirk that seemed to be there. But his heart could not help but rise a bit of coldness, slightly wiping the cold sweat on his forehead. Lu Cheng's expression became very serious. Your Majesty, Wang Li was a general in the army, but he did such things that are contrary to heaven's law. It's really the behavior of beasts. This kind of person can't die at noon when the sun is shining. Some praise surfaced in Yi Ching Suan's eyes, and his face was filled with the color of Qi Chang. Then when does assassin Lu think is the most appropriate time to execute the sentence? Lu Chang swept a glance left and right, snapped forward, bowed and said loudly, I have discussed this matter with various officials of the state government earlier, and have long since determined an hour. At once, the state capital, regardless of civil and military nearly half of the officials are pale. The original bloating was long gone, replaced by a sense of trepidation. When and how many moments? At this time? At this moment? Yes, a token fell heavily to the ground with the voice. In the blink of an eye, the guillotine sank, blood stained the three-foot high platform, and the whole room was silent. Not to mention the people. Even the executioner who carried out the execution had rarely seen a beheading where the situation became so fast. A few breaths later, Yi Qingdan's voice once again resounded in the martial arts arena. The widows of the generals suffered such treatment I Shu Wangfu has a responsibility that cannot be shirked. It is really a dereliction of duty. Today, in front of the king's residence to set up the people's grievance drum, Shu City, every alley set up to lift the hair of the drum, guarded by the red teeth guards, no matter when, as long as the drums are sounded can be reported to the grievances. At these words, there was an uproar among the people. The officials in the auditorium are also looking at each other, and there is already a little panic in their expression. Suddenly, a military general stepped forward. Your son, the red tooth guards are scarce in number and have the important task of guarding the royal residence. So why don't you leave the matter of guarding the drums to your subordinates? Yi Qingduan looked at the martial general, only to see that he had a rugged and square face, and his cultivation was as high as the third level of harmonization. But he looked a bit strange. Lu Chang introduced, Your Highness, Shi Tzu, General Su was deployed from the Northern Army in recent years, and now he is in charge of the guards all over Shuzhou. Upon hearing this, a brilliant light flashed in Yi Ching Suan's eyes. General Su doesn't have to worry. Even if there are fewer red tooth guards, if I don't want you to enter the door of my king's mansion you don't even want to take half a step in. A wisp of ruthlessness flashed across Su Yu's eyes, but it passed in an instant. What his highness said is true. It was my subordinate who was overly concerned. Slightly back a step, Su Yu rejoined the team, and since then, Shu City has been greatly open to raise the drums, and the great trial of Shu Zhou. At night, a line of carriages slowly entered the city from the north gate of Shu City, passing through the streets and alleys and finally stopping in front of the king's residence. Immediately afterward, a woman dressed in Confucian robes and more than seven feet tall stepped down from the carriage. The woman's face was heroic, but there were also a few moments of femininity in the woman, which made her look very durable. Yi Runan looked at the empty gate entrance in front of her, gently frowned and murmured under her breath. Not a single one? Mother goes to bed early. Big sister has to take care of the children. Little sister is still young. But what makes Dusty absent? Looks like we're going to have to talk some sense into Dusty. Early the next morning, Yi Ching Tsuan was driven out of his room. It's already three rods past sunrise and you're still sleeping. What a shame. A woman's scolding voice immediately followed from within the room. Second sister, I really wanted to pick you up. I just slept too heavily. Yi Ching Tsuan's face was filled with sincerity. Ha! Yi Runin hummed lightly. Then why do you sleep stuffed with cotton? The wind is so loud at night that it's hard to sleep. Yi Ching Dan said the light of the face does not change at all. Joke. If really caught by this Confucian saint handle, even if there are 10 pounds of cotton in the year and what is the use? Well, don't try to hide. In the morning filial piety and fraternal duty of elders and children. And in the afternoon the book of etiquette. I'll tell you one by one. Looking at the indifferent and resistant woman in front of him and listening to the icy words coming out of his mouth, Yi Ching Dan could not do anything even if he was a sword immortal. Yes, Yi Ching Duan didn't think about who could save him. The Yi family's strength ranking had always been that women were strong and men were weak. One Yi Xiao plus half of Yi Ching Dao was roughly equivalent to one Wang Qing Yan. A Yi Xiao plus a Yi Ching Duan was roughly equivalent to Yi Ching Lu or Yi Hong Yan. And on top of that, there was still one left, Yi Runan who could only barely match the strength of three even if the father and son were firing on all cylinders. Of course, Yi Qingduan wasn't the worst in terms of strength. After all, there was still a cheap old man behind him to bully.
But suddenly a drum sound rang out from the front door of the royal residence, and Yi Qingdan's spirit was shaken. God help me. Yi Runin couldn't help but let out a long sigh in her heart as she listened to the drums. Shuzhou over the years she is not completely unaware of the situation, but after all, he is a woman in long in the palace of learning, so has not been hands clean up just. Plus, she had caught a whiff of something unusual during her years of studying in the capital. This made her even more afraid to dispose of Shuzhou at will, in case she was caught by the one in the capital with a legitimate handle. Dusty, tell second sister what you want to do. Yi Qingdan's expression was slightly solemn. Second sister don't worry, I have my own plans, but when the time comes, I have to ask for second sister's help. Oh, what do you need me to do? Yi Runin was a bit puzzled. She had neither high strength nor any political talent. What could she do to help? Yi Qingduan sold a secret. You'll know when the time comes second sister. It's just a matter of moving your mouth. Please also ask second sister to go and call lightning. And then, Yi Qingdan came to Yi Runin's ear and said a few words quietly. Since the first sound of drums from the royal residence, the drums sounded one after another in the streets and alleys of the entire Shu city. The number of complaints received in one morning was as high as more than 30. But unfortunately, the denunciations were all small fry. Surprisingly, there wasn't a single state official. The officials who were denounced were all sent by Yi Qingxuan to invite them to the royal residence. But not to one place. There were two butler-like servants standing on both sides of the main entrance of the royal palace, responsible for leading the way. The military generals entered and went to the right, and the civil officials entered and went to the left, entering the east and west courtyards respectively. Within a few moments, the first to pass on the results of the battle was the east courtyard, only to see a small martial arts arena in the east courtyard. A powerfully dressed Yi Qingrua stood in the arena with a gun full of impatience. Under his feet stepped a dozen or so stacked military generals. Every single military general's face was bruised and swollen, and Yi Qinglu lightly grunted, her disdainful voice coming out from above the heads of the military generals. Don't you guys like to get rough? Are you still coming? Not coming. Not coming. Little sheriff we know we're wrong. Then why don't you quickly tell us who is behind you? At the sound of this a group of panda-eyed military generals flashed a hint of hesitation in their eyes. But before it could persist for a moment it was replaced by a flash of fear. Only to see that Yi Qinglo's lance, which had originally stopped swinging, was slightly raised again at this moment. I say, I say, in the middle of the center hall, listening to the screams coming from the east courtyard, Yi Qingdan, who was drinking tea, let out a light laugh. Treating the country is like treating a disease. The right medicine is the key. Yi Qingdao glanced slightly to the west. There was no movement coming from him, and a hint of bloating flashed in his eyes. It looks like second sister is playing pretty consistently. In the west courtyard, if compared to the scene in the east courtyard, this side could be described as incomparably elegant and peaceful. Numerous officials were seated in the courtyard, and right in the center sat a woman who stood out even in Shuzhou, where height was generally on the tall side. Yi Runin's mouth was full of words, and one by one, the most holy quotes and truths of the ancestors kept popping out of her mouth. At first, the civil officials in the courtyard were able to greet each other with smiles, but as time passed their faces gradually changed. It was because they realized that this second sheriff lord was not only knowledgeable, but that she didn't even need to take a sip of water when she spoke. After two hours had passed, a slight look of bewilderment appeared in the eyes of most of the civil officials. After four hours had passed, there was a constant stream of officials covering their faces with their sleeves, whimpering sounds coming out of them. We have been studying the holy books for dozens of years but we have done something worse than a dog or a pig. In vain we are disciples of the saints. I can't stand it anymore. I'm going to expose the 18 sins of Luo Cheng, the secretary of Shuzhou. I will testify that Lord Governor of Shuzhou has misappropriated military funds, repaired his private residence, and taken 13 concubines. The East was miserable and the West was shouting, but Yi Qingdan sat in the middle hall with a normal expression. He never thought that he could pull out the big fish by relying on ordinary people because they had no access to high-ranking officials, but the small officials at all levels throughout Shuzhou can. And Yi Qingdan does not believe that there is no one in this secretly left a hand of backstabbing smart people. Coupled with the fact that when Wang Li was executed earlier he forced Lu Cheng to pull the entire state officials onto his front. I'm sure the officials below must have scruples in their hearts. Anyone who is afraid that these superiors have used them to take the blame might as well make the first move themselves. Yi Qingduan was not sitting in the center hall because he wanted to be lazy. He was waiting for someone here. Waiting for the most difficult person to deal with. Yi Qingduan believed that with that person's mind. He would definitely make a trip to himself today. As the sky grew late and twilight began to appear, a figure in a green shirt entered from the gate of the royal residence. When I met people along the way, my face was also full of smiles, and there was not the slightest trace of a frame at all. Yi Qingxuan's eyes, 
which were originally slightly closed, abruptly opened at a certain instant. The one who came into the eye is the fawning face of Lu Chang, the assassin of Shu State, who just entered the center hall. Lu Chang, pay respects to His Highness the World Prince. Lu Chang gave a slight salute and then made a move that Yi Ching Tsuan did not even expect. Lu Chang took out an official uniform from his storage ring, a large seal as well as a few papers and letters, after which he violently knelt down on both knees. Your Highness, Lu Chang is guilty and should be beheaded. Yi Ching Dan sat upright, his complexion obscure, his face showing killing intent for the first time since entering Shu City. Of course you deserve to die. What assurance did you make to my father when he traveled far to Jiaolong Pass? Lu Chang's face was unchanged. I said that as long as I, Lu Chang, am serving as an assassin for one day. The political affairs of Shuzhou do not require your majesty to worry about half of it. And do you think you did? In 10 years Shuzhou officials of all sizes didn't even come to Shu City for a single debriefing. Is this what you mean by not needing to worry about half of it? Lu Chang, isn't it true that if the Shitsi doesn't come back this time, when my father comes back in a few years he won't see a single general's widow? Lu Chang was dumbfounded, or perhaps he did not dare to speak. After a long time, Lu Cheng slightly bent down and low words came out from his mouth. Seiji, please read these letters first. Yi Ching Tsuan picked up the letter paper on the table and suddenly his pupils shrank violently. The letter paper can be roughly divided into three categories according to its content. One is a list of corrupt officials in Shuzhou, and the other is the correspondence between some Shuzhou officials and others. The last one is two letters with almost the same date of signature, from Qingzhou and Huizhou respectively. It said much the same thing with a few large words at the top that stood out like a golden sun in the mist. After Jia Shuzhou, what conditions did they give you? Yi Ching Suan's words came out faintly. Although it was slightly mentioned in the letter, he was more interested in hearing Lu Chang say it himself. An official appointment as a minister, a million tales of gold, plus an upgrade in cultivation to the Mahayana stage. Lu Chang did not hide anything and told the conditions one by one. Each of the three articles could be said to be a goal that an ordinary person could not reach in a lifetime. And yet those few people had offered such generous conditions at once. And the purpose is simply to make the entire Shu state's popularity collapse, so that there will be no more people who are willing to join the army. You did what they said? Done. Yi Ching Suan did not get furious as Lu Chang had imagined. Instead, he was calmer than before. Tell me your reason. Otherwise no matter if you are a third-ranked officer or a royal relative you definitely won't be able to walk out of the king's mansion tonight. Lu Chang was still kneeling on the ground, but his waist was slowly straightening. The words that came out of his mouth were, His Highness is not a qualified feudal lord. What is the meaning of this statement? Yi Qingguan asked with a frown. His Majesty has been the King of Shu for more than 30 years, but except for the one or two years at the beginning when he was personally in charge of the political affairs, he basically has not inquired about the situation in Shu State since then, and he has not even been to the state capital once in the last 10 years. Not only that because of the delayed release of the Imperial Court's military silver, we also have to ship large sums of silver and grain to Jiaolong Pass every year, which makes the already unforgiving economy of Shuzhou even more stretched. Dare I ask the prince, whether the prince is the prince of Shuzhou or the prince of Jiaolong Pass? The loud voice was heard in the center hall for a long time, a flash of crystal in Lu Cheng's eyes, and a trace of guilt surfaced in Yi Ching Tsuan's gaze, but immediately after that, Yi Ching Tsuan raised a question, then why would there be money to refurbish the walls of Shuzhou? Lu Cheng took a deep breath and replied, that's just a blindfold. I'm sure your highness already knows from Wang Li's mouth what happened in Shuzhou 10 years ago since your highness disappeared and your highness went to Jiaolong Pass. Half a year's time my state capital of Shuzhou was nearly bloodied. Yi Qingguan nodded. Wang Li had told his son that in half a year's time my Shuzhou officials had plummeted by 30%. Isn't this an intentional suppression by the state officials? Yi Qingguan's gaze carried a hint of coldness and doubt. Bullshit. Lu Cheng's face was a bit grim. In half a year's time my Shu State's officials on staff have been reduced from 779 to 393, that's nearly 50%. Does your highness think that this is my hand in suppressing and killing this group of loyalists? This is all the tactics of those two princes. Lu Cheng said here after a slight pause, his tone easing. Does your son know what was said in the reply when I reported this speculation to his majesty? Frontline war urgency, take care of it yourself. Lu Cheng smiled to himself, I Lu Cheng think I still have some ability. But in the suppression of the two feudal lords what can I do? The subsequent years of the state government officials are changed and changed. Until now I do not know their names under the name of the last name. Therefore, I can only act according to the instructions of the two princes at the smallest possible cost during these ten years, and be a solidly treacherous minister. In order to preserve me, the assassin, from a sudden and violent death. After Lu Cheng stated the number of deaths and injuries of the officials in Shuzhou in half a year, Yi Ching Tsun couldn't sit still and stood up. When Lu Cheng finished speaking, 
Yi Ching Tsuan was already standing under the eaves of the center hall, and at this time, with the light of the royal residence, one could see silk silver thread sliding down from the air. Why don't you go to the king of Shu's residence to inform my mother and second sister of the situation? Yi Ching Duan asked the last question. Lu Cheng smiled bitterly, there was no chance to say it, much less dare to say it. Yi Ching Duan's heart was clear. If according to the second sister's temperament maybe when Lu Cheng finished the first one to kill is him, and at this time, Yi Runin and Yi Ching Ruo, who had been busy all day, also appeared in the center hall, each holding a thick letter paper in their hands. Although the two did not hear the full conversation, they did hear the last few words. Yi Runin walked in and wrinkled her eyebrows at Lu Cheng and said coldly, I'm not that stupid. After saying this, Yi Runin seemed to add another sentence as if she was still not relieved, but you do deserve to be killed. Lu Cheng, who was kneeling on the ground, had even more bitterness at the corners of his mouth, only that a touch of celebration for the aftermath of the robbery flashed in his eyes. Yi Ching Suan's palm slightly stretched out of the eaves, letting the fine rain hit his hand, and said in a ghostly tone, What a night rain! The shame of my Shu Wangfu, the misfortunes of my Shu Zhou are all too much in need of such a heavy rain to wash them away. Lightly, give the list to Commander Xiao he knows what to do. Second sister, have the Shadow Guards and Dragon Guards blockade the entire Shu state, and none of the people on any of the lists should be allowed to leave Shu state. The two women answered and left the middle hall, and then a sound of armor came out from the royal residence. While the entire Shuzhou constantly had shadowy figures getting up from all over the place and swept towards the border of Shuzhou in a hurry, while Yi Ching Tsuan, who had waited for the two women to leave, flashed a trace of gravity in his gaze. The grass is cut and the spring breeze blows again. He can't be in Shuzhou all the time. He has to find a way to fix the source. How about a sword for one person? Yi Ching Duan shook his head. He had to make all those who had evil intentions towards Shuzhou not dare to hit Shuzhou's attention anymore. This needs to be an opportunity, not a matter of killing a few people. One hour later the originally silent Shu city instantly lights up the sky. A roar came from everywhere. A cleanup is underway in the great land of Shuzhou. In the mansion of Sima Luo Chang, Luo Chang was reprimanding a minor official under his command who had been cited by the people. You punk, you can't even do a little thing right. Keep your mouth shut or none of your family will live. But suddenly the door to the mansion was kicked open and several heavily armored generals barged in, subduing the guards with just one move. Luo Qing's face was white. It's over. The new general of Xu Zhou, Su Yu's mansion is now organizing a banquet, which is filled with state officials, although it is a military general. But Su Yu's delicate mind even civil officials can rarely compare. Ever since Yi Ching Suan said about the opening of the drum yesterday, he knew that even though the ones cited today were some minor officials but if he followed them down the line sooner or later they would be traced back to the state officials, that's why he has to stay back in advance. Gentlemen, please believe me, the world sun is just on a whim, and will still be just as dashing when the wind blows over in a few days. Besides, his highness is only a sun after all. I've also heard that I don't know what the reason is that the sun is now an invalid with a broken dantian. How do you guys think an invalid could possibly be able to fight the two princes? So colleagues must think clearly about their own path. Sometimes the choice once wrong that is no matter how much money cannot make up for it. Su Yu paused at this point, a playful smile on his face. The state officials on the field are not fools naturally know what Su Yu means, and have raised their glazed wine glasses. We naturally know the score. And we asked General Su to put in a good word for us in front of the king. A smug smile surfaced on Su Yu's face. Well said. Well said. It's all about working for the king. Just as the crowd was clinking glasses, a sound of clashing swords came from outside the door. Su Yu's face changed in a hurry to open the door, only to see a team of people just from the door into the courtyard. The leader is precisely the assassin Lu Chang. What are you doing? Assassin Lu? General Su, I should ask you this question. It's not a holiday or a happy occasion at home. Why are you inviting guests? That's naturally a liaison contact. Assassin Lu wouldn't even want to be in charge of such a thing. Would he? Su Yu snorted coldly, completely disregarding Lu Chang in his words. Bold Su Yu. Colluding with outsiders to murder my officials and people in Shuzhou and yet you still have the face to have fun here. Take him down. Lu Chang, how dare you, though you are the assassin of a state. I am only half a rank below you. What authority do you have to arrest me privately? Lu Chang's face was filled with a cold smile. I don't have it, but doesn't his highness the world prince have it too? Upon hearing this, Lu Chang's face changed. His own close friends are obviously here. Could there be others who have a handle on him? Suddenly he snapped to attention. It's you. Lu Chang did not answer this question. The dragon guards behind him took a step forward with the breath of the seventh level of the Harmony Realm pouring out. Su Yu's face flashed with a wisp of unwillingness, but with only the second level of harmonization. He was completely powerless to resist with a difference of five minor realms. This didn't just happen in Shu City. 
but in all parts of Shu State. Fong Ding, the chief historian, who is galloping on his concubine, and Fei Wu, the lord of Yulong City, who is enjoying the revealing dance of the dancers. All of the officials had their crimes determined by the people of the two guards before they did it, so these officials were not brought back to the royal residence. Yi Qingxuan's order is that except for the officials above the fourth rank, they will be brought back to the royal residence for interrogation, and the rest of the officials above the list will be killed on the spot if they are sure of their crimes. For a while, the entire Shuzhou was flowing with blood, and the sounds of fighting didn't stop until early the next morning. Two days have passed since the night of the bloodbath in Shuzhou. The busiest person in these two days will belong to Lu Chang. Killed so many officials he had to hurry to fill the empty seat. However, it was good that the appointment and dismissal of officials below the fourth rank could be decided by the assassin of a state and did not need to be reported to the Ministry of Appointments. Otherwise it would not be easy to explain. In addition to Lu Chang, there is another person who is also very busy, and that is Yi Qingxuan who stays in the mansion all day long. Near noon, Yi Qingxuan walked out of Yi Runan's courtyard with a haggard face. Face to face will run into the king's residence and the guest of the fall of Qing Shui. At this time just finished lunch must be in the digestion of food. Lot Qing Shui naturally saw Yi Qingxuan and a smile bloomed at the corner of her mouth. Mr. Yi, you've been studying extraordinarily hard these past two days. Although he seemed to be praising Yi Qingxuan, the teasing implication in his tone was very obvious. Yi Qingdan's face was a little dark. He thought that his second sister was just talking about letting himself study, but he didn't think that he really had to study hard day and night. The word is not an exaggeration. It is true that it is red morning and night. In the morning, elderly, young, filial and fraternal. In the afternoon, the complete book of etiquette. And in the evening, there was an additional one. All those years I was the son of the world. And do not go to bed until you finish reading. Even when I was a child private school teacher is not so strict ah. Yi Ching Tsuan then adjusted himself and changed the topic. Is Miss Locke still accustomed to living in my house in recent days? Naturally, I'm used to it. But today, Qing Shue was planning to come and ask the world prince to resign. Yi Qingchen's eyes flashed. Oh, why? Falling Qing Shue lifted her quiet face gaze superbly at Yi Qing Suan. Qing Shue dares to ask if Shi really does not have the slightest realm just an ordinary mortal? Yi Qing Suan smiled faintly. The realm is indeed not there, but knowing a bit of sword, it's still not a problem to fight some small fishes and shrimps in the sea. As if she had found the answer she wanted, Lok Qing Shue asked Yi Qing Suan a second question. Does Shitsi know about my dream? Yi Qingduan shook his head, while a dazzling light flashed in Lu Qingxue's eyes, and his entire person exuded an aura that belonged uniquely to that small group of powerful people. I've been tortured by illness since I was born. I've never been honored as a strong man, and I've been belittled by people everywhere, now that the illness has subsided. I want to become a strong man that the world admires. So, I'm going to become a sword immortal. I want to tell everyone in the world that men are not the only ones who can become sword immortals but that women can also be the masters of the sword Dao. Yi Qingwan looked at Lo Qingxue who did not seem to be joking. The smile on his face gradually disappeared and turned serious. With that, the left hand was stretched out flat, the right hand over the left, and the body was slightly tilted forward. Sword cultivator Yi Light Dust wishes Miss Lu to achieve the sword immortal realm soon. Lo Qingxue returned the salute, the light in her eyes unabated. So today, Qingxue came to ask for my resignation. I want to be alone to experience alone and break into my own sword path. After saying these words, Lok Ching Shui's entire body suddenly exuded a pure aura, which was a sign of a clear state of mind. This showed that there wouldn't be much of a blockage between Lok Ching Shui's first realm of the sword Dao, entering the subtle, and the fourth realm of the sword mind. It was almost like a waterfall. Lok Ching Shui left without taking anyone with her, and Yi Ching Tsuan did not open his mouth to give her any protective magic treasures. This was the pride of a sword cultivator not to be tarnished by any person or object. Happiness often comes singly, while partings always come in packs. On the second day after the fall of Qing Shua left, Yi Hong Yan also proposed a return trip. The reason is that Lu Boming will soon be going to the capital to participate in the imperial examinations have to go home to prepare some things. In front of the royal mansion, the blazing sun was in the sky and the breeze was not dry. Hong Yan, be sure to take care of yourself when you get over to Qing Zhou. Don't let mother worry. All right mother. You say this every time you return, my daughter has long been familiar with it, and now that third brother is back, I'm sure you won't be able to clear your mind at home. Afterwards, Yi Qinglu and Yi Runan also went up to say goodbye to Yi Hongyan respectively, and Yi Qinglu sent some spirit fruits unique to the cave to Yi Hongyan, causing Yi Hongyan to praise them, and Yi Hongyan came together in Yi Runan's ear and did not know what to mutter, which actually made Yi Runan's heroic face actually appear a wisp of redness, when it was Yi Qingzuan's turn. Yi Hongyan's expression was very gentle. Dusty, 
Do you know what was the first thought that surfaced in Big Sister's mind when she saw you punishing the evil officials of Shuzhou? I was thinking that my Dusty must have suffered a lot during these 10 years, or else how could he act so much older? Yi Ching Tsuan was silent. Yi Hong Yan gently hugged Yi Ching Tsuan, enough to hug for nearly half a quarter of an hour. Yi Ching Tsuan only felt that the shirt behind him was a little wet, and was very cool when blown by the breeze. Afterwards, Yi Hong Yan loosened her hands and said in the gentlest tone, All right Dusty, sister has sucked all your pain and worries over, so you must live happily in the future. The carriage slowly started in the gaze of the four members of the Yi family, traveling further and further away. In the car, Yi Hong Yan and Lu Boming sat opposite each other. Yi Hong Yan looked at the carriage full of objects and couldn't help but pout. Mother is also really mean. Every time she puts in so many things, I told you we can buy them in Qingzhou. Lu Boming sniffed and teased. Aya, I wonder which family's dainty maiden is crying with these objects when she returns home again and again. What's it called? I think it's called Yi. Sunga, you're making fun of me again. If you go back like this again you'll go sleep in the study for half a month. Alas, make no mistake. Make no mistake. For my husband was wrong. And my wife can't bear the thought of my husband not being able to sleep every night. Yi Hongyan let out a pout and turned her head to suddenly see a pouch. When he unwrapped it, there were strings of copper coins inside. Lu Bo Ming lightly eeped at the sight. Can it be that Lord Mother-in-law is afraid that we don't have enough coils on the way back? And has specially put some money in? Ha ha ha. Husband, don't you claim to be well read in ancient books? Don't you know what this means? Yi Hongyan covered her mouth and laughed lightly, looking at Lu Bo Ming somewhat provocatively. But even Lu Boming has not heard of the meaning of sending coins for many years, and can only beg Yi Hong Yan to tell him with a bitter smile. In Shuzhou, there is a custom that every ten years after a woman marries far away, her mother's family sends a bag of copper coins home to the woman. One of the actions is to show that the mother's family has always been attached to remember the woman who married far away, and the other is to bless the woman's family happiness, health and safety. The number of coins is based on the age of the woman who marries, and each year there are ten coins symbolizing ten perfections. Under Yi Hongyan's explanation Lu Boming also came to a sudden realization, and turned to be more focused on picking up books and reading hard. This year's autumn exams, he must be high school, otherwise sorry Yi Hongyan all these years to marry himself suffered, and Yi Hongyan boredom is counting up the copper coins in the bag. 1, 2, 10, 70. If you can't fit it in one hand, put the coins in your lap at the long skirt. 370, 380, 390. 399. Eh? Yi Hong Yan let out a petulant cry. This year she is 40 years old. She should have 400 coins, but the number of coins in her bag is still missing one. What's wrong? Lu Boming thought Yi Hong Yan was uncomfortable somewhere and threw down the books to inquire. Yi Hong Yan just froze for a moment, and when she heard Lu Boming's inquiry a smile returned to her face. It's nothing. Maybe mother is old and counting wrong. Sunset Empire, Kyoto Luoyang. Today's Luoyang is extraordinarily lively especially the joy on the faces of many scholars and talented people can't be hidden. This morning at the morning court Lord Lu Xuanjin proclaimed something, to open a new academy in the already crowded academy palace. This academy specializes in training the pillars of the Sunset Empire, and the lecturers are all the most proficient in this dynasty's learning, Taoism, and the way of war, and remove a part of the quota designated by Lu Xuanjin. The rest of the quota regardless of identity, regardless of cultivation can be free to fight for the students. The only point of hard requirement to enter the academy is the age. Must be under 50 years old young cultivators can apply. In the Qiming continent, even the lowest body tempering realm cultivator had a lifespan of 200 years. And further up the ladder were 300, 500, and 1, 000, 000, 000 respectively. After the realm of the first baby life is calculated in thousands of units, a normal cultivator of the first day of the tribulation is 16, 000, 000 years of life. And for every heavenly tribulation, one's lifespan would increase by a thousand years. So in the Qiming continent all cultivators under the age of a hundred could actually be considered young cultivators. This news spread throughout the entire Sunset Territory in just three days, and was still spreading to the entire eastern wasteland at an extremely fast speed. Inside the King of Shu's mansion, Yi Ching Suan was lying on the free chair leisurely enjoying Xiao Tao's massage. Oh, Peach you're getting more and more on point with this maneuver. Yi Ching Suan couldn't help but sigh in admiration as he felt the sourness coming from his back. But behind him, Xiao Tao was as if she hadn't heard, her eyes were as if she hadn't realized it. Yi Qingguan called Xiao Tao one more time before responding. Ah, is young master squeezing too hard? No, what's going on with you lately? Little Peach, why do you feel like your whole body has become mopey since Miss Locke left? Is it because you want to find someone to chat with you to relieve your boredom? You say how many you want, young master will go and find them for you, 
At this little peach's face emerged a touch of despondency and shook her head. Then her lips parted slightly and she asked with some frustration, Young master, isn't little peach very useless? Look at sister drop now that she has her own goal of wanting to become a woman sword immortal and is already working towards it. The grand county lord knows her books. The second county lord is well read in poetry. And the little county lord is also skilled in martial arts. I'm the only one in the royal household who has nothing to do. And I'm also very stupid. I can't do anything. And I'm always afraid of this and that. Young master when the time comes will you think I'm useless and send me to the laundry room? At the end of the sentence Shoutout's face has brought a little panic. So analyzed. As if this possibility is very big alas. Yi Qingduan was slightly stunned as he looked at Xiao Tao's helpless appearance. So this little girl was bored and wanted to find something to do. No wonder she was absent-minded all day. So what do you want to do? Peach? Practicing and reading? Hearing all of this Xiao Tao shook her head fiercely. Cultivating her blood sickness. Reading words looking at the young master's appearance a few days ago was not a good job. Suddenly, Xiao Tao's eyes lit up. Young master why don't you teach me how to make wine? Yi Ching Tsuan froze, then a smile surfaced on his face. Of course there's no problem. So, that afternoon Yi Ching Tsuan taught Xiao Tao how to make wine by hand in the courtyard of the royal residence. I don't know if it was because of the reason of being by Yi Ching Dan's side during these 10 years, or if little Peach was exceptionally talented. Peach is making great progress in brewing. In just less than 2 days. Xiao Tao had learned dozens of methods of brewing wine, and even brewed wine with a flavor that was far superior to that of the average winemaker. Looking at this one tank full of wine and the increasingly competent peach in front of him, Yi Qingduan, you call this stupid? Yi Qingdan sucked in a mouthful of cool air. This could no longer be described as a genius. This was completely someone who was born for the wine path. The corner of Yi Qingdan's mouth revealed a bitter smile. It was true that people were more angry than people. I'm afraid that no one would believe this if it was spread out. Suddenly, a strange movement came from the Dantian. Now that Yi Qingsuan's Dantian had long been completely shattered, to say that there was a strange movement coming out, there was only one object over there, the order of eternal life. Sure enough, Yi Qingsuan's mind sank into the shattered Dantian, only to see that the order of longevity belonging to the brewmaster was trembling violently. Yi Qingduan's pupils shrunk slightly and hesitated for a moment, then released the force that was suppressing the eternal life order. Suddenly a token shadow flew out from that eternal life order and drilled between Xiao Tao's forehead in a flash. Being struggling to stir the big stick little peach movement violently stalled. At the same time Yi Ching Su and mind a message surfaced. The inheritor of the brewing immortal order has been found and is receiving the inheritance. After that, several pieces of information surfaced in Yi Ching Suan's mind one after another, causing a brilliant light to flash in his eyes. It turned out that the role of the order of eternal life was not only to give the host an inheritance but each order of eternal life also corresponded to a predestined person. Only when the host finds the person of his destiny will all the inheritance of this longevity token appear in full. There was some surprise on Yi Qingdan's complexion, and at the same time, there was some relief in his heart. It was only after a long time that little Peach came back to her senses, her eyes filled with excitement. With one jump, she jumped onto Yi Qingsuan's body, her hands and feet sticking to his waist like an octopus. Young master, young master, just now so many. Many ways of making fine wines appeared in my mind, and some of them smelled so good just by looking at them. Great, I must try all the fine wines in here. After saying that, Peach even swallowed her saliva, her face filled with a mesmerized look. The corners of Yi Qingduan's mouth twitched slightly. He perhaps somewhat understood the reason why the order of eternal life chose little Peach. Food is the only thing that matters to people, and Peach likes to drink if she doesn't like to eat anything else, so naturally she has an instinctive love for brewing wine. This love comes without any interest and is entirely heartfelt. Ahem. Suddenly, a cough sounded in the courtyard. Two figures came in side by side, and it was none other than Yi Qinglu and Wang Qingyi. Wang Chengyan looked at the two of them and couldn't help but frown. Xiao Dust what's wrong with you? You still don't use your hands to drag Xiao Tao. What if Xiao Tao falls? On the other hand, Yi Qinglu was looking at Yi Qingzuan with an ambiguous face, her eyes full of encouragement. Xiao Tao ah. Under the shock and shame for a moment the limbs are weak really want to fall from Yi Qingzuan body. With a quick eye and a quick hand, Yi Cheng Dan dragged little Peach in one go, and between his five fingers was as soft and slippery as he could be. With that effort Xiao Tao left Yi Ching Suan's body in a flash and stood aside with her face filled with a blush of shame. Yi Ching Chen looked at Wang Qing Yan and the two of them. Mother, are you looking for me for something? Wang Chang Yan pointed at Yi Ching Ro. It's not mother who is looking for you it's Ching Ro who is looking for you for something. With that, Wang Chang Yan beckoned to Xiao Tao, and the two of them left the courtyard together, hand in hand only for a few broken voices to come from around the corner. Little Peach, tell Auntie what you grew up eating. How come you are so? Yi Qingduan looked at Yi Qingruo. Little sister, 
What is it that you are looking for me for? Yi Qinglu hesitated for a moment before looking at Yi Qingsuan with a determined face. Brother, I want to beg my master to help you restore your Dantian. Hearing this, a warmth surged in Yi Qingdan's heart. Although Yi Qingrua seemed to be big-headed, but the delicacy of her mind was not inferior to any woman with a blue heart. Yi Qingdan did not immediately refuse. The goodwill of family members was the purest and naturally the least deserving of a cold rejection. If you want to refuse the goodwill of your family, you should at least find out what's going on before you refuse. Otherwise it's just personal heroism. Where is your master? Yi Qingduan asked back. He'll be coming to our house tonight, and I'll be going back to the Pangxian cave with him first thing in the morning. A trace of reluctance flashed across Yi Qingnu's face. She had been closest to Yi Qingnu since she was a child, and this time she was going to be separated again before she had the chance to have a good talk when she came back. I don't know when I will see you again next time. If Yi Qingsuan's cultivation is still there Yi Qinglu certainly won't be afraid. However, the current situation when Yi Qingsuan had already shattered his Dantian and lost all his cultivation, as if he was a mortal. As for Yi Qing Lu herself, she was now a peak Yuanning cultivator, just one step away from being in the god refining realm, enjoying a lifespan of 3000 years. In case, Yi Qingduan was also silent for a long time when he heard this, then spoke softly, then let your master come, I also want to meet this lord of the cave. Yi Qingno's face was delighted as she nodded her head repeatedly, what she was most afraid of was Yi Qingno's direct refusal, okay, I'll send a message to master to tell him to hurry over. Yi Qingduan looked at Yi Qinglo's back as she left with a bounce and laughed softly, his eyes full of favor. At the junction of the eastern wasteland and the middle earth Dao prefecture, a ripple rippled in the void. Immediately afterward, a handsome looking Taoist priest appeared in the sky above the eastern wasteland with a beast with a tiger's head, a unicorn horn, canine ears, and a dragon's body and lion's tail. The Taoist priest looked past his prime, but the most difficult thing to recognize in the world of cultivation was age. Perhaps it was possible that a young girl who appeared to be in her twenties or eighties could be an old monster who had been practicing for thousands or tens of thousands of years. Little Shimeji ah, next time you dare to sneak out I'll break your third leg. At those words, a cold shiver ran down the body of the fey beast on the side, and if one took a closer look one would realize that the beast's body was covered in bruises, as if it had just been abused. This man and beast were none other than Pengxian Cave Lordly Yufang and the Cave Heaven's Sacred Beast Shimmy. This time, after Yi Shinrua released the Shimeji, this Shimeji even ran to the ancient land of reincarnation all of a sudden and almost fell in the ancient land of reincarnation. Enlightenment continent has been formed for an unknown number of years, only to know that since the beginning of the data records can be divided into about four periods, the timeline can be categorized from distant to recent, ancient, ancient, middle age, and present day. Most of the events of millions of years ago are untraceable, and only a few words are recorded in the ancient mythological books, and this period is called the Age of Myth. No one in this era knows when it began and exactly when it ended. The ancient period was between 500, 000 years ago and a million years ago, a period in which all races coexisted, so it was called the age of the 10,000 races. This era is different from the age of mythology, and there are some very old ancient texts that still have records of events from this period. From ancient texts it is deduced that this era ended around half a million years ago or so, between 100, 000 years ago and 500. 000 years ago was the Middle Ages, during which time the Qiming 10,000 races were invaded by foreign races, and the entire Qiming had been in a state of war. During this long period of 400, 000 years, a group of great masters had risen up, and most of the original bodies of the sculptures in the Ascension Hall had been born during this period. However, due to the war, many races were annihilated in this period of history, and therefore this period is called the Age of Spirit Fall. The fourth period started from when the last sword immortal of the human race, the Tianming Sword Immortal, ended the chaotic war 100, 000 years ago, and the human race occupied most of the territory of Qiming until now. This period ended at an unknown time and was opened by the human race, and was therefore tentatively referred to by the world as the human race era. And in these millions of years there are five ancient places that have survived since the beginning of time, always the same. They were the forest of demons in the southern frontier the endless sea mouth in the eastern wasteland, the ancient temple of Yin spirit in the western region's Buddhist state, and the valley of sword scars in the sword continent with the ancient land of reincarnation in the central region. These five places were forbidden areas of life that all races dared not go deep into, because but no one who had gotten lost in these places had ever come out. Therefore, these five ancient places are also known as the five forbidden areas of the Qiming continent, and everyone talks about them. Li Yufang glanced back in the direction of Zhongzhou with some gravity in his expression. Those guys have gotten a lot more active in the last hundred years. Is this a sign of things to come? 
Shimeji whimpered a few times when he heard Li Yufeng's words, but he was selectively ignored by Li Yufeng. Li Yufeng's gravity only lasted for a moment before it disappeared, turning his face to bring on a hint of an unruly smile. So what if there's some kind of disaster? It's supposed to be underground anyway. Big deal. Just bury it deeper. Hey, get to work and hurry up and find the culprit who let you out. Li Yufeng gently kicked Shimeji, and Shimeji sniffed and closed his eyes, silently reciting in his heart, Xiao Roer can't blame me, can't blame me. The moment he closed his eyes he only saw that with Shimakazu as the center, an endless amount of nothingness that resembled aura but was not aura poured into Shimakazu's ears from all around. In just a few breaths of time, Shimeji opened his eyes, and then the one man and one beast set their direction and continued on their way. Li Yufeng sat on the body of the Shimeji who was full of grudges, and the Shimeji slowly disappeared with every step, and when he reappeared, he was already thousands of miles away. This is one of the Shimeji's native aptitude, ignoring any formations and boundaries to disappear at will, although the distance is not far, but the victory is not blocked. This was also the reason why a sacred beast like the Shimeji had little combat power yet almost no one could catch it. This time, if not to the reincarnation of the ancient land inside the suppression of the laws of the forbidden land, Shimi simply could not be in deep crisis. Of course, would not have been captured back by Li Yufeng. In the evening, a man and a beast appeared over the royal residence. Just as soon as it appeared Yi Qingduan detected it. And sure enough the next moment two figures appeared in front of Yi Qingduan. Li Yufeng looked at Yi Qingzuan with some suspicion in his eyes. This person is so weird. He could neither see the height of Yi Qingzuan's strength nor the strength of his chi. Yi Qingduan looked at the handsome looking, still young 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 Taoist priest in front of him, and was slightly stunned in his eyes, but he got up in a hurry. May I ask if you were lightning's master, cave master Li of Pengxian Cave Heaven? Li Yufeng nodded his head slightly. You are the brother whose Dantian was broken as mentioned in Xiao Roar's letter, right? Little Zoe? Yi Qingduan frowned slightly. Yi Qingduan looked at the young and handsome Li Yufeng in front of him and his eyes narrowed slightly. At once, a faintly eerie atmosphere permeated the field. Li Yufeng was originally a person of cultivation, and was particularly sensitive to the feeling of breath instantly noticing the abnormalities of the atmosphere. The corner of Li Yufeng's mouth rose slightly, deliberately dragging out his accent. Yeah, that's what I've always called Xiao Roar, and she kinda likes to hear it. Taoist master as a cultivator should clear his mind of all desires, right? Yi Qingxuan asked after slightly restraining the hostility in his eyes. That's not true. Little Zoe was born but she's very beautiful. I'm very happy. Before Li Yufeng could finish his sentence, he found a long sword across his neck. Yi Qingdan's slightly angry voice resounded in the courtyard. Old Taoist, you damn well want an old cow to eat young grass, don't you? The scene fell silent, and Shimakazu's hairs blew up on the sidelines. Crap, crap, how many years has it been? And the grass on the grave of the last person who did this to his master must be growing. Fight, I'll grab and run. The corner of Li Yufeng's mouth hooked into a playful smile. Junior boy. Teaching a lesson to someone requires strength to match. Yi Qingdan's expression remained unchanged as he stared at Li Yufeng's face. I have long wanted to see the strength of my little sister's master. The smile at the corner of Li Yufeng's mouth stagnated slightly, and then a flash of anger surfaced from his eyes. You're too arrogant. Yi family brat, I'll discipline you on your father's behalf today. Li Yufeng threw out his Taoist robe, and the two men and one beast suddenly disappeared into the royal residence. Shimeji, crap, don't take me with you. In the next second. Three silhouettes appeared simultaneously in a desert 10,000 miles away. Li Yufeng took the lead and a pressure surged towards Yi Qingdan. While Yi Qingdan was not willing to show weakness and directly invoked the great momentum of heaven and earth to meet it, two raging auras instantly filled the entire desert. Li Yufeng narrowed his eyes slightly. It seems that you haven't lost all your cultivation. What are your intentions in lying to Xiao Roer? If you want an answer ask the sword in my hand first, and no calling my sister Zoe. Ha! The two rays of light, one blue and one red rapidly approached and collided together in the blink of an eye. The yellow sand flew up in the sky, and the yellow sand turned into pieces in mid-air. Li Yufeng's gaze was filled with shock, while Yi Qingxuan's gaze also flashed with a ray of surprise. How did you get such strength? Yi Qingguan did not respond to Li Yufeng. Just now he had exchanged hands he detected Li Yufeng's strength. Ascension Realm Cultivator Yi Qingguan didn't expect that this Pengxian cave master was actually an Ascension Realm Cultivator. This strength was indeed qualified to teach Yi Qingruo. But Yi Qingxuan just looked at this young Taoist monk and said that he would beat him up first no matter what. Yi Qingguan swung out another sword, and a wisp of red dust sword intent appeared. Li Yufeng's face changed drastically as he took out a copper mirror with his right hand, and a blurry mirror image surfaced behind him. The sword light struck the copper mirror at once, and Li Yufeng instantly retreated thousands of miles. Surge of spiritual qi around, 
Li Yufeng body beside the divine Taoism constantly emerges. Wherever he passes the void is shattered. Behind him, I do not know how many heavy mirror images broken. It finally crashed into a hill before barely stopping. The original ethereal and dashing aura was gone at this moment. Yi Qingxuan raised his sword to strike again. But Li Yufeng in the distance suddenly raised his hands. Stop. I'm not going to fight. I can't. You can be whoever you like. Yi Qingdan pointed his sword at Li Yufeng and said indifferently. Then what should you call my little sister? Zoe. No. Gently. Neither is right. Good apprentice. Seeing Yi Qingxuan finally put down his sword. Li Yufeng let out a long breath of relief. Since he had become the Pengxian cave lord for these 100, 000 years, it was the first time he had experienced the threat of death. Even Li Yufeng felt that this was similar to him going to the deepest part of the reincarnation ancient land and breaking through at once. Half a quarter of an hour later, the two men and one beast re-entered the royal residence. Yi Qingduan and Li Yufeng both looked a little embarrassed. Looking at each other for a long time Yi Qingduan took the lead to speak. Daoist Li is really sorry. I didn't know that your Pengxian cave heaven seniority is called in such a peculiar way. Li Yufeng also had a bitter smile on his face. It was Yufeng who had the eyes to recognize the high mountains and belittled fellow Daoist Yi. Please don't blame fellow Daoist Yi. Ha ha, it's nice to meet each other without a fight. Li Yufeng also smiled brightly at his words and grabbed one side of Yi Qingxuan's sleeve. His eyes filled with sincerity. So is Mikado. Right at this moment, Yi Qinglu came in through the front door. Just as soon as she entered the door Yi Sheng Yu saw Li Yufeng grabbing Yi Qingxuan's sleeve with one hand and her brows furrowed violently. Li Yufeng, you bullied my brother, didn't you? The guests and hosts were happy at the royal dinner. Only Yi Qinglu always had a touch of unrelenting sadness on her face. And from time to time, she looked at Yi Qingduan. After the dinner, Yi Shinrui used Pingxian Cave's exclusive body technique and secret technique two worlds pass. Quietly, he followed Yi Qingxuan. This stance is modeled after Shimeji's original aptitude. Not only can it conceal its form but also move over short distances without regard to boundaries. Such a stance is a unique existence in the entire continent. Yi Qingduan naturally noticed Yi Qinglo's stalking. So he turned left and right to the east courtyard. Yi Qingrua only had Yi Qingxuan's back in her eyes. The back of her elder brother when he left 11 years ago was also as erect as it was at that time. Due to paying too much attention to Yi Qingxuan, so much so that she waited until Yi Qingxuan stopped his footsteps before Yi Qingrua realized where she was standing at this moment. It was the very same martial arts arena where she had taught those military generals of Shuzhou a lesson not long ago. Little sister, come out. Yi Qinglo's exquisite figure slowly emerged and gradually solidified. Brother, how is it that you can guess that I'm behind you every time? Yi Qingduan knocked Yi Qinglo's head. Because I'm your brother. Tell me, why have you been a picture of bitterness all evening? There were faint tears flickering in Yi Xingyo's eyes, not knowing whether it was from pain or pain. Brother, my master said that your dantian can't be cured, is it? Yi Qingguan interrupted Yi Qinglo's words. How big a deal. I've found a way to repair the dantian now. And even if I don't repair the dantian, your brother and I are still very powerful now. Brother, you're still lying to me. Yi Xinrua suddenly roared. Tears in her eyes could no longer be controlled. One hand covered her mouth to prevent her crying from waking up the others, and she whimpered out at the same time. My master said you only have a year or so of life left. Upon hearing this Yi Qingdan touched his nose and muttered, This new busy old Taoist is really something. Little sister. Ah, you have to believe that I will definitely be able to gather the materials for repairing the Dantian within a year. And when I have the cultivation, won't the longevity problem be solved? But you don't have the slightest aura. How are you going to find things that only exist in legends? Yi Qingxin froze and asked, Did your master not tell you about my strength? A wisp of bewilderment appeared on Yi Qingno's pearly face, and the corner of Yi Qingno's mouth twitched slightly. This old man is really good at picking up on situations. Li Yufeng, just ask which master doesn't want to leave a perfectly good image in his disciple's mind? Now Yi Qingxuan didn't want to explain too much and directly hooked his hand towards Yi Qingruo. Come on, hit me. After a momentary flash of confusion in Yi Qinglo's eyes, she bullied her way up and touched Yi Qingxuan's forehead and then touched her own. No fever. Why are you talking nonsense? Yi Qingxuan didn't talk nonsense and directly attacked Yi Qingrua with his two fingers together as a sword point. Yi Xinrua subconsciously summoned her weapon to block. The result naturally did not need much guessing. In just an instant, the lance came out of his hand, and Yi Qinglu retreated directly to the edge of the martial arts arena. Playing the lance inverted on the martial arts field and let out a soft chant. Yi Qinglu lifted her head, although a bit wretched but her face was full of surprise. Brother. What's going on? Could it be that you have more than one Dantian? Yi Qingdao walked over and helped Yi Qinglu up, and gently knocked on her head again. Hey Gu, brother you'll knock me silly if you keep hitting me like that. It's true that my brother's cultivation is now completely wasted. 
but your brother I'm not completely devoid of any strength, so feel free to follow Taoist Li to cultivate, there's no need to worry about me. Hearing this a hint of curiosity flashed through Yi Ching Ruo's eyes, then how strong are you now, brother? Yi Ching Duan originally did not want to tell Yi Ching Ruo, fearing that she would be overly ambitious and not be restless in her cultivation, but then on second thought, he couldn't let that old Taoist priest live too comfortably, it's not so bad, just a little bit better than your master, just a little bit oh. Looking at Yi Ching Tsuan who opened his arms to demonstrate to himself, Yi Ching Ruo was amused and laughed, and a wisp of worry under her eyes dissipated with it. Early the next morning, Li Yufang and Yi Ching Duan stood side by side, not far away from the duo were Wang Chang Yan, Yi Ching Ruo and Yi Runan, Daoist Li, my sister will get rid of Daoist Li, Yi brother polite, small, my good disciple cultivation talent that is extremely good, although not as good as Yi brother this appalling, but in the entire Qiming continent can also be said to be the existence of a phoenix and a linchpin, so Yi brother can rest assured, rather, it's the matter of this lifespan of yours, brother Yi? Yi Ching Tsuan waved his hand, I have my own methods, last night, he told Yi Ching Nu that she should not tell Wang Ching Yan and the others about this matter, and that he would definitely be able to find a way to repair his Dantian within a year, even if he didn't repair the Dantian Yi Ching Tsuan also had a longevity order to renew his life, but Yi Ching Tsuan felt that the longevity order was too strange or the fewer people knew the better so he didn't tell Yi Ching Ruo, Yi Ching Nu and Li Yufeng left, leaving together in Shimeji, Yi Ching Nu felt that this was Li Yufeng's deliberate act, but there was no evidence. Yi Ruoxiao's departure signaled one thing, and that was that second sister Yi Runan now had only one person to preach to. In Yi Qingduan's courtyard, Yi Qingduan and Yi Runan sat opposite each other. Are you saying that you are now a Taoist doctor? Yi Runan asked lightly as she gently sipped the spiritual tea brewed with water made from snow from the snowy mountains. Aha! In that case, then one really shouldn't spend so much time on these books, so there's no need to read them from today. A flash of ecstasy flashed across Yi Ching Suan's face but it passed in an instant and was then replaced with an expression of utter disappointment. Recently read the book, listening to the words of the sage's little brother deeply touched, now abandoned the book little brother 10,000 reluctance, but a thought of their own still have to study the medical way. Fish and bear's paw cannot be both, even if the 10,000 do not want to give up but also have to make a choice. But the second sister to rest assured that I must bear in mind the second sister's teachings of this period of time. From time to time to reflect on the constraints of their own words and deeds, Yi Runan nodded with satisfaction. The fact that Xiao Dust can think like this means that the reading during this period of time has been effective. In this way sister is relieved. After not reading, Yi Runan also didn't care about Yi Qingdan, which made Yi Qingdan actually live a few days of comfort. And the affairs of Shuzhou Luchang also dealt with more or less. To fill the empty seat are in accordance with the strict selection process to fill. The copy of the family are also copied. The widows of the generals who should be resettled and given land and money were also resettled. The only thing I regret is that those officials in prison never dare to give up the person behind them. However, Yi Qingduan does not care. If everything will be evidence. What do I practice sword? Might as well be a constable. Overall Xu Zhou is moving in a good direction and the people are gradually getting better. And Yi Qingsuan was doing one thing these days. And that was to set up an estate. Yi Qingduan thought that Xiaodao's talent for brewing wine was so good that it would be too wasteful for the two of us to drink it. So a liquor store was set up for her on the street not far from the royal residence, and it has been open for several days. At first, he just wanted to find something for Little Peach to do, but since the first day of business when he found out that the wine sold by Little Peach could actually increase his longevity as well, Yi Ching Suan's thoughts changed. Although it takes two jars of wine sold by Peach to get a day's worth of longevity, it's better than not having to do it yourself. And Yi Ching Duan realized that Xiao Tao's brewing speed was quite a bit faster than his, and a small store was simply not enough for her to build. So today Yi Ching Suan re-bought a big store and prepared to open a winery, sending more than 10 people to help in the winery. Xiao Tao had originally refused, but after looking at such a large winery it really wouldn't work for her alone. Besides Yi Ching Suan also had his own considerations. These people were there to help Peach out for one thing, and for another, to protect her. Otherwise, it was inevitable that Xiao Tao, a mortal without any cultivation to do business, would take some unexpected risks. After arranging many matters, Yi Qingduan left the winery. Just as he walked through the gate of the royal residence, he met Yi Runan who hurriedly arrived. And as soon as Yi Runan saw Yi Qingsuan, she pulled him outside and ran. As he walked away, he lowered his voice. Dusty, go out and hide first. Don't come back. Yi Qingdan looked at Yi Runan, who looked a little anxious, with a bewildered expression. Second sister. What happened? Yi Runan's footsteps paused slightly, biting her lip with some hesitation. Little dust. That man in the capital has sent an imperial decree to say that you should enter the capital to study in that academy. 
Now the eunuch who passed the decree is still inside the king's residence. Yi Qingchen broke away from Yi Runan's hand. Scared me. I thought father led the army to Luoyang City. Just this matter what's there to hide. Saying this, Yi Qingxuan headed towards the mansion. And Yi Runan pulled him back with another hand. The beautiful eyes were filled with anxiety. Little dust do you know what the consequences of entering the capital are? Yi Qingxuan let out a light laugh and comforted. Second sister. I know. I promise not to cause trouble. Yi Runan couldn't argue with Yi Qingxuan. And the two of them came together in the middle of the royal palace lobby. As soon as he entered the door Yi Qingxuan smelled a strong rouge odor. But not from Wang Qingyi, but a red-robed eunuch sitting in the lower seat on the side. Wang Chengyan's face changed when she saw Yi Qingxuan come in. And there was a slight reproach in her eyes when she looked at Yi Runan. Yi Qingxuan sat next to Wang Qingyan with a big grin and picked up the grapes and the fruit plate and put them in his mouth. Not caring in the slightest about the eunuch Wu Huai on the side whose face became a bit ironic. Wu Huai was not an ordinary eunuch. Every emperor of the Sunset Empire would be followed by several eunuch chiefs. Not only do they have great power, but their cultivation is also very high, specializing in handling some unseemly things for the emperor. Your Highness, Your Highness, the slave side is courteous. M. These grapes are so sweet. Would second sister like one? Your Highness, the old slave. All right, all right, got it. Don't talk too much if you know you're a lackey. Wu Wai's face had become completely gloomy at this time. Not to mention that it was just a Shitsi, even if it was a prince. He wouldn't dare to do this to him, a close minister beside the emperor. Wu Wai cleared his throat and prepared to raise Lu Xuanjin to shock Yi Qingduan. His majesty has decreed. Bring it. Wu Wai froze. His face turned from iron blue to red. It was a hard feeling, but one is a slave and the other is the master. Even if the slave is bigger, he wouldn't dare to bully the master openly. Wu Huai presented a golden invitation with both hands. The word academy on the cover was very conspicuous. And there was also an engraved seal in the lower right corner that belonged exclusively to Lu Xuanjin. Yi Qingxuan took it over with one hand and just casually swept it and threw it on the table. Clunk. The eyelids of the three people in the room jumped straight up. And Wu Huai even took a step forward. Your Highness. This is written by His Majesty's own hand. Yi Qingxuan's expression remained unchanged as he continued to slowly eat the grapes. Then I'd like to trouble the eunuch to read it to my son. His Majesty's true dragon handwriting I'm afraid I'll be too scared to sleep at night if I read it. Wu Wai's hands, which were gathered in his sleeves, trembled slightly. Even as his facial muscles twitched slightly. It's not fear. It's anger. Taking a deep breath, Wu Huai calmed down. When this kid arrived in the capital he had plenty of ways to clean him up. Say ho. His majesty has ordered you to enter the capital to study among the academies. And you will depart in a few days. This son of the world is sick. Don't go. Yi Qingduan's words were blatant. And this was intentional on his part. He just didn't believe that these 10 years with Lu Xuanjin's means to know nothing about what happened in Shuzhou. At least he knew the general situation. But he acquiesced to this behavior. This made Yi Qingxuan feel diabolical in his heart. This shouldn't be done by a monarch of a dynasty. Wu Huwei couldn't help but think of Lu Xuanjin's instructions to him before his departure at this moment. That day, Lu Xuanjin left him alone in the Hall of Imperial Harmony with a wisp of admonishment on his face. Wu Huwei, Yi Qingxuan has not returned for 10 years with a lot of suspicion. Once he came back to act in a thunderous manner, I'm afraid that this 10 years have been met with a big change. You go this time no matter what means must let him come to the capital. I want to take a good look at what Yi Zhao's son has become today. Your Highness, just now it was my slave's poor memory in his old age. His Majesty had asked me to invite His Majesty's son to the capital. After saying that, Wu Huai's body bowed forward. Upon hearing this, Yi Qingxuan's movement with the grapes slightly stalled. But in an instant, he took another one and threw it into his mouth. Just when Wu Huai thought that Yi Qingxuan still wouldn't agree, Yi Qingxuan's faint voice resounded in the lobby. Your Majesty is so generous. Of course lightning dust will not refuse. Tomorrow I will leave for the capital. A touch of anxiety surfaced on Wang Qingyan and Yi Runan's faces while a touch of joy appeared on Wu Huai's face. But before Wu Huai's joy lasted long, Yi Qingxuan's words caused his smile to freeze on his face. May I ask the eunuch, can I bring all four guards of the royal residence? Wu Huai's eyelids jumped. Bring them all over? You're afraid you want to rebel. Wu Huai only felt that today's mood could be described as ups and downs making him a Mahayana first heavenly cultivator, somewhat unable to cope with it, and barely managed to squeeze out a smile. Your Highness, his majesty has said that this time is only for learning and exchange, and there is no need to use force in any way. That's why the world son only needs to bring two or three guards to keep his highness safe. Yi Qingxuan's face surfaced a touch of disappointment. All right, you next words Qingxuan took note. Since that's the case, then the old slave will leave first. Please make sure that the world son arrives at the capital within a month. 
Wo Huai turned around and left the lobby without waiting for Yi Qingxuan's reply. Walking on the green brick road, breathing in the air outside the lobby that did not have the feeling of heights and lows, Wu Huai felt that the environment of this place in Shuzhou did not seem too bad. But as soon as he stepped out of the lobby door a strong wind will come, Wu Huai full palm each other immediately fell back dozens of feet. Commander Xiao, what do you want? Xiao Yuan Shan stood up and laughed. So it's Yuna Huai. I'm out of line. The eunuch's pace is so light I thought it was a female assassin who sneaked into the residence. Wu Huai's face also slowed down a little when he heard this, and this explanation made sense. Then Commander Xiao should look carefully next time, so that he doesn't accidentally injure his highness, who doesn't have cultivation. By mistake, Wu Huai continued to walk towards the outside of the mansion, but as he passed a long corridor, his sharp intuition from years of walking in the night told him that this place was not right. Suddenly, a silver sword from the left side threw. The angle is tricky out very ruthless. Kiryang Kung Fu. Wu Wai shouted a golden aura barrier emerged outside his body. The silver sword slightly trembled the golden cover violently shattered. But the silver sword also lost its offensive momentum. It only slightly grazed some skin and flesh, but it did not cause serious injuries to Wu Wai. Wu Wai caught the silver sword with his bare hands and threw it violently and it flew out a long way with the sword and the person. Just as Wu Wai was about to capitalize on his victory, Xiao Yuan Shan, whom he had just encountered, ran over again. Your Excellency have mercy. This is one of our own. Shenro is seldom in the mansion, so I have not seen the eunuch, and I shot out to injure the eunuch by mistake. I'm really sorry. Shenro is still not apologizing to eunuch Huai. Shenro reluctantly snorted coldly, turned around and left. Shao Yuanshan let out an awkward laugh. Don't blame the eunuch. This girl is rather stubborn. I'll go back later and teach her a lesson. Wu Huai didn't answer this time either, and with a cold snort as well he continued to walk forward. Only Xiao Yuan Shan, who watched Wu Huai's departing back with a playful smile at the corner of his mouth, was left behind. Wu Huai moved forward cautiously all the way, unfolding his divine sense with all his might, and finally made it all the way to the entrance of the royal residence safely. Going out, Wu Huai looked at the plaque with the three words Shu Wang Fu and let out a cold smile. Without cultivation let's see how I'll clean you up then. Wu Huai was about to leave by air, but just as he was running his aura suddenly a sound of breaking air came from far and near. A black shadow in the sky was getting closer and closer, aiming right at Wu Huai, who ran his spiritual power to block it. But, upon contact, a mouthful of blood sprayed out of Wu Huai's mouth, his expression filled with shock. The black shadow also fell to the ground, and it was clearly a sledgehammer. At the same time, a rough voice rang out from the royal residence, and even Wu Huai outside the royal residence could hear it clearly. Old Xiao, you've grown in strength. One shot picked off my meteor hammer. How bad would it be if it smashed into someone? Wu Huai was so angry that another mouthful of blood was sprayed out. The weapons of the Qiming continent were divided into six classes. From the bottom up, they are, Mortal Weapon, Spirit Weapon, Treasure Weapon, Xian Weapon, Spirit Treasure, Hotian Spirit Treasure, Innate Spirit Treasure, and Immortal Weapon. Apart from the lowest class of spiritless mortal weapons, even the lowest end spiritual weapons could attract a sea of cultivators of the Foundation Establishment and Jin Dan Realms to fight over them and Wu Wai recognized the hammer at a glance as a Hotian spiritual treasure. It was precious and unusual, even he only had one that wasn't a combat type yet. Looking inside the royal residence, a trace of aggravation surfaced on Wu Huai's face. With that, he no longer stayed, operating his entire body's spiritual energy to charge up into the sky, and in the blink of an eye, he disappeared into the sky. No one in the hall had spoken first since Wu Huai left. Kua stomach growling sound was the first to break the silence. Mother, I'm hungry. Hoomph, weren't you able to just now? Let's starve you to death. Yi Runin snorted coldly. Wang Chengyan looked at Yi Qingchen worriedly at this moment. Duster, how much certainty do you have in going to the capital this time? 98%. Dusty, the books you read some time ago were in vain weren't they? Second sister told you that you have to be humble in your speech or else the one who suffers will only be yourself. Yi Qingchen froze and was somewhat helpless. I did ah, otherwise it would be 10%. This was not said after all or Wang Chengyan would have to worry even more. In the end, Yi Qingxuan could only tell Wang Qingyan that he was a Taoist doctor, which made her slightly more relieved. After the evening meal, Yi Qingxuan came alone to the hidden scripture pavilion within the royal residence. Just as soon as he entered, Yi Qingduan discovered an old man sitting on the counter at the entrance who had long fallen asleep. Without caring much, Yi Qingxuan walked straight to the feats and techniques area. Without a Dantian, although he was unable to absorb the spiritual chi of heaven and earth, it didn't delay body refining at all ah. Before Yi Qingxuan had discovered that his sword intent was too overbearing and refuted. If there is no strong body, I'm afraid that when the time comes, 
I will only be able to utilize 7 or 8% of my strength despite having an empty heavenly sword intent. The art of body refining had nothing to do with aura, and mostly required polishing the physique as well as the assistance of many medicinal herbs to achieve something. This point of dispensing medicine is naturally easy for Yi Ching Suan, who is a Taoist doctor, and is not a problem at all. There were countless prescriptions for refining the body just from the Taoist medical legacy, and the spirit medicine would be enough for him to use for a long time. So tonight, Yi Ching Tsuan was planning to come to find out if there were any suitable body refining techniques. Moonlight hit the floor of the hideout through small holes in the window, creating scattered spots. Yi Ching Tsuan's feet moved slightly, each step stepping right on the spots, looking as if he was moving forward with the moonlight. Suddenly, he was on his feet. Xian Huang body refining technique. Yi Ching Duan picked up the technique and flipped it open. What he saw at first glance were five large and powerful characters. The eyes gradually moved down. All qi in heaven and earth are born between heaven and earth. Is the essence of heaven and earth? Shen Huang refining skill to take the special qi born in heaven and earth to transform the physique. Enhance the bloodline. Condense the Shen Huang Dharma phase. A total of nine weights. Nine weights of the Shen Huang Dharma phase can be a lone physical body across the pressure of the ancient world. Ten thousand laws do not add the body. Yi Ching Duan's first reaction after reading the Xian Huang body refining technique was disbelief. How could this kind of technique appear in a vassal king's hidden scripture cabinet? Suddenly, a ghostly voice rang out from Yi Ching Dao's ears, startling him. World son, are you sure you want to choose this one? Only to see that the old man who had just dozed off on the counter had somehow arrived behind Yi Ching Tsuan. What's not to like? Yi Ching Duan asked rhetorically. After all, this technique definitely surpassed all the body refining techniques in the hidden scripture pavilion. That's fine, but the old man will have to clear up the two drawbacks of this gong method with the world sun. Firstly, this gong method is mutilated. The complete one has nine levels, and there are only the first three levels in the hidden scripture pavilion. Yi Qingdao flipped through the secret book. Indeed a large portion of the content was missing from the back, when the old man continued on. But that's not the biggest problem. After all, even if one only cultivates three times the toughness of their physical body if one ignores factors such as flight and long-range arts is completely no weaker than a ferrying realm powerhouse. Mostly it's the second disadvantage of it. The chi required for this technique is either too overbearing or too bizarre. And it's hard for the average person to even see it. Not to mention refining it and turning it into Xian Huang Chi. And if one couldn't refine such a special chi, then there would only be one downfall for the cultivator. The Dantian is shattered and the Divine Sea is withered. So, does the world sun still want this Xian Huang body refining technique now? The old man stroked his beard, speaking as if he was determined that Yi Qing Dan would know what to do. It's going to be this one. That's right well. Young people still need to choose the right technique for themselves. Eh? You're not joking. Say Ho? Could it be that I just didn't make the consequences of failing to refine clear? Yi Ching Tsuan smiled blandly. Master, could it be that I'm still worried about a broken Dantian now? At those words the old man's eyes were filled with a bright light as he scanned Yi Ching one up and down. He he, the Dantian is shattered and there is chaos in the divine sea. How did you survive? Say Ho? The old man's words were full of astonishment. He had lived for so long or it was the first time he had seen someone who could still be alive after the Dantian and divine sea were like this. A piece of chaos? Yi Ching Dan didn't realize that his divine sea actually had the function of preventing divine sense from probing. Another great gain. I am a Taoist doctor. The old man nodded at his words. No wonder. No wonder you want the body refining technique. Then old master now can I take this gongfu away? Yi Ching Duan shook his hand that was holding the Xian Huang body refining technique. As you wish. Anyway, what I should have said has been said. You can take everything you want. Anyway, the whole building is your family's. As he spoke the old man turned toward the counter where he had previously slumped over, whispering something under his breath. As soon as Yi Qingduan returned to his room after getting the gongfu, he began to comprehend it, and it was only once he entered it that Yi Qingduan realized how obscure the Xian Huang body refining technique was. It was no wonder. The Xian Huang body refining technique even if it was only the first three repetitions was equivalent to a heavenly rank lower grade technique in the Qiming continent. It really deserved the difficulty. The Qiming continent is divided into five levels of heaven. Earth, Xian, Spirit and Yellow. In addition to the introductory body tempering realm, which simply refines Qi, all other realms require the assistance of gong methods to get twice the result with half the effort. As an example a cultivator of the third level of the foundation establishment realm who possessed a merit law would face a cultivator of the fifth level of the foundation establishment realm who didn't have a merit law, or whose merit law wasn't as good as his. The quality of their aura was probably about the same, and the quality of the aura determined the power of the martial arts aptitude. So the importance of feats was evident. Yi Ching Tsuan sat cross-legged. The moonlight shone on him, and an hour passed in the blink of an eye. Suddenly at a certain moment, 
The void around Yi Qingxuan began to fluctuate. A wisp of silver-white gas entered Yi Qingxuan's body from the air. This was the moonlight gas. As soon as the moonflower Qi entered Yi Qingxuan felt a stabbing pain in his meridians. He hurriedly ran his sword intent to suppress it, and the effect was surprisingly good. Not only did the moonlight Qi in his body stop agitating, the moonlight Qi outside his body also seemed to be attracted by the same kind of substance, and it madly surged towards Yi Qingdan's body, causing the moonlight around Yi Qingdan to be a little brighter. This sighting continued until dawn. Yi Qingxuan snapped his eyes open. In his perception at the original Dantian in his lower abdomen a chopstick thick and thin yellowish white gas was slowly flowing around the 18 eternal life orders. According to the introduction of the first level of the Xian Huang body refining technique, Yi Qingxuan needed to refine two different kinds of heaven and earth qi and convert them into the thumbthin Xian Huang qi before he could be considered to have accomplished it. And in the process of refining one type of heaven and earth qi, it was not allowed to absorb another type of heaven and earth qi. That is to say if the moonlight flower qi had not been refined into a thumbthin Xian Huang qi before, Yi Qingxuan was not allowed to absorb for example the early morning innate purple qi or any other qi of heaven and earth. Otherwise the two will collide and the consequences will be unimaginable. The sun's rays had already irradiated Yi Qingxuan's bed, and Yi Qingxuan raised his head with a few more points of confidence and masculinity in his eyes. After slightly squeezing his fist, he felt a sense of power that was far greater than before. Yi Qingdan estimated that at this point in time, he was already equivalent to a foundation establishment realm cultivator in terms of physical strength alone. Walking out of his room and stepping out of the courtyard, Yi Qingdan saw Wang Qingyan who had long since gotten up to prepare his luggage and arrange for his guards. In this regard, Yi Qingduan did not feel strange in the slightest. A mother's concern always comes earlier than the sunrise at the summer solstice and disappears later than the moon at the winter solstice, it's unexpected and as if you expect it, unobtrusive but never overt. After a hasty breakfast, again in front of the familiar Wang Fu gate, Yi Qingduan waved goodbye to Wang Qingyan and Yi Runan, taking two guards as well as a scribe. He headed north. In front of the Wang mansion, Wang Qingyi heart is very bad taste, just get together not enough a month, their own sons and daughters will be far away from the three, which makes her this when the mother of how good ah, Yi Runan gently took Wang Qingyin's shoulder and comforted, mother don't worry, Xiao Duan will be fine this time, I ordered the shadow guards to personally bring the news to Jelong Pass yesterday, I'm sure father will have a solution, not long after, Yi Runan entered the Wang mansion with Wang Qingyin on her arm, and just the moment Yi Qingxuan and his group stepped out of the northern gate of Shu City, outside the royal mansion, the wind suddenly rises from the ground, and the willow flakes fall and scatter into the wind into thousands of strands, without a trace. The hearse continued traveling north after leaving Shu City. Yi Qingxuan leaned against the car window, his gaze somewhat deep. This time to go to the capital Yi Qingduan did not bring peach. After all, this time to go to the capital and he is not really go to study. He is to go to the debt collection. After the capital may also want to go to other places to point out the debt. If you cannot hands to get of course the best, in case to do it is not dirty little girl's eyes, not very appropriate. Then there was the fact that Yi Qingxuan wanted to see if there was any distance or time limit for this everlasting order's hold. Isn't it true that once the predestined person is farther away from the host they lose the effectiveness of gaining longevity? Yesterday afternoon when Yi Qingguan told Xiao Tao that he would not take her with him on this trip to the capital, the little girl cried in Yi Qingguan's arms for a whole half hour. In the end, Yi Qingxuan promised to bring her along on all of his trips, and then he didn't come to see him off today. I guess I'm afraid I won't be able to stop crying when I see it. In fact, Xiao Dao's emotions towards himself Yi Qingdao was still able to feel. Most of them were feelings of moistening, but there was also a small bit of complex male and female feelings. However, it seemed that Xiao Tao did not distinguish between the two emotions. So much so that Xiao Tao was now making some intentional type of affectionate gestures towards Yi Qingduan. Yi Qingxuan had never dealt with this kind of thing nor did he know what to do, he could only leave it to time, but at least one thing was clear to him, that is, he himself had so far only had the caring feelings between brother and sister for Xiao Tao, and had no love for a man or a woman. Suddenly, Yi Qingxuan remembered something and took out a letter from his bosom. The letter is very ordinary and no exquisite packaging. Take out the letter paper. The letter paper is also no more than ordinary rice paper. Only a large sun with only half a wheel showing in the lower right corner of the envelope proves the identity of the sender. This was a letter sent by Yi Xiao. In fact on the second day of his return this letter had been placed on his desk by the people of Dark Shadow. However, there were more things going on during this period of time. And moreover, the envelope used his personal seal, causing Yi Qingxuan to forget about the letter for a while. Spread out the letter paper. A glance at the white space is very much, just in the center of a few large letters. The writing is still crooked as if it took a long time to stitch and put it together. Yi Qingduan looked at the few words and subconsciously read out. You live. Father is very happy. 
If you can live happily, then father will be even happier. This old soldier, Yi Qingxuan grumbled without a good mood on his lips. Then little by little, he folded the paper, stuffed it back into the envelope in its original position, and placed it back at the heart of Zhuo Huai. A couple of gentle pats through the shirt. Well, it's thick. On this trip to Luoyang, Yi Qingduan needed to pass through the entire territory of Qingzhou and most of the territory of Sun Yuan continent to reach it. Such a long distance even with a hearse would take six or seven days. So after reading the letter Yi Qingxuan sat in the carriage and rested his eyes, and at night he cultivated the Xianhuan refining technique. Along the way, Xiao Yuanshan and Li Xian, the scholar boy, had been fighting, and the journey had been fulfilling. The three people Yi Qingduan brought with him this time were Xiao Yuanshan, who was a half-step Mahayana stage commander of the Red Teeth, Li Xian, a book boy, and He Zihuan, a university scholar of the Shu King's house. These three people are the king's residence resounding figure. Xiao Yuanshan not to mention, alone this Yi Zihuan will make Yi Qingduan quite admired. After all, the entire royal family on his second sister Yi Runin can break the reasoning, although the loss of more than win less, but the victory and the courage is commendable. Besides, this little book boy Li Xian is also known far and wide talent. Listening to Yi Runin said that he seems to have learned a very magical gong method, as long as the daily reading cannot need to sleep. When asked about the source of this gong fu, little Li Xian always looked at the crowd with an innocent face and over time no one bothered to ask what this gong fu was. After all, as far as not needing to sleep was concerned, as long as one reached the Yuaning realm one could naturally do it, and it wasn't an impressive feat. It is for this reason that Li Shen, at the age of 12, has already learned a great deal, and last year he became the youngest member of the Shu State Council examination in the history of Shu State. As for why he brought a scholar but also a university scholar like he Zihuan, Yi Runin told Ji Qingchen this last night. I Shuzhou reasoning this more than 10 years have not lost, this achievement cannot be broken in your hands, I am inconvenient to go to the capital this time, you bring Yi Zihuan let him help you arm. Yi Qingduan recalled his second sister's words while looking at Yi Zihuan in front of the hearse, his eyes showing some doubt, he always felt that his second sister, who had always been a very good judge of people, really didn't have a good eye for choosing people this time, and could even be described as somewhat unreliable. What else can you pikers do besides fighting and whoring? Li Xian's crisp teenage brittle voice resounded on both sides of the official road. You little bookworm with no hair growing, do you know what a man's pleasure is? I'm afraid you haven't even touched a woman's hand. You're coarse. You're childish. Too too. Calm down. We are all family why are we still quarreling? We have to make peace and contribute to building my shoe state. You shut up. The two men bellowed in unison. Okay. He Z1 closed his mouth and the only sound left on the field was the bickering of a middle-aged man, and a teenager again. Yi Qingxuan shook his head as he looked at the scene, then lowered the curtain and closed his eyes again. Forget it, out of sight, out of mind. I don't know how long it took, but suddenly the hearse gave a lurch, and the bickering of the two men in front of it stopped. Yi Qingxuan slowly opened his eyes. A hint of surprise flashed in his eyes, counting the hours now is not up to mealtime ah. How come it's not noisy? Pulling back the curtain, Yi Qingdao discovered the reason for the stop, only to see a young monk standing more than 10 meters in front of the carriage. Xiao Yuan Shan and the three of them had all dismounted and stopped at this point, their eyes alert as they looked at the alternative monk in front of them. The young monk was roughly similar in age to Yi Qingxuan, with a very clean face, wearing a Buddhist alternative purple robe, with a gourd around his waist, and with the slight swaying of his body came a sound of water from the gourd. Amit Ba Buddha, the little Taoist is courteous, the monk spoke in a shocking way with Buddhist terms in one of his greetings, and called himself a Taoist priest. To know that now the Enlightenment continent Buddha, Taoism two families can be said to be like water and fire, and someone actually body both the characteristics of the two families. For a moment Yi Qingxuan couldn't even tell if this was a Taoist priest or a monk. Hey, little monk in front why are you blocking our way? Immeasurable heavenly honored one, the cultivator has called me wrongly. I am a Taoist priest. You who, you're quite a funny little monk. It's the first time I've seen a Taoist priest in a robe. Xiao Yuan Shan could not help but have a hint of playfulness on his face, and even the eyes of Li Xian, the young scholar at the side, were filled with curiosity. Just because he hasn't seen it before doesn't mean there isn't one. The monk's tone was calm, as if he was talking about a very rare thing. Xiao Dao was originally a Buddhist disciple, but by chance an epiphany suddenly realized that the Taoist way of nature is more in line with the Tao in my heart, so no longer keep the Buddhist eight precepts. Wine pots often hang around. Oh, hearing this Yi Qingduan couldn't help but be a little interested. Then if that's the case why is Taoist master still wearing a robe and saying the Buddha's Dharma name? Amit Ba Buddha. Although the little Taoist turned to a Taoist family, 
His reverence for the Buddha has not changed, the little Taoist or monk replied with a resounding voice, causing a flash of color in the eyes of all four of Yi Qing Dan. He Ziwan took a few steps forward and arched his hand. Then what is Taoist master's Buddhist or Taoist name? Upon hearing this that young monk took a step out, his brows filled with self-satisfaction. My Dharma name is Pu Zun, Li Xian, the little book boy, was straight talking and couldn't help but snort coldly at the words and scolded, originally thought to be a man of the way, but I didn't expect to be such a frivolous person, do you want the world to call you honored and call you an ancestor? You all have misunderstood, the path has no such intention, Pu is the Pu of universal sentient beings, and Zun is the Zun of the blessed infinite heavenly father. My greatest ambition in this life is to become a figure like the blessed infinite heavenly father to ferry all beings to the other shore. As the words fell, a hush fell over the field. Little kid, this monk, oh no, this Taoist priest you are more childish than. Xiao Yuan Shan inclined his head to Li Xian. Li Xian nodded, but quickly responded. What do you mean, you piker? It's clear that this Taoist priest is a barbarian who doesn't know the sky as well as you do. It was the two who had just made the booing noise, clearly not taking kindly to Prizuan's words. Yi Qingxuan always had a faint smile on his face. After listening to Pu Zun's self-registration number he became more and more curious about this young Taoist monk of the same age. Then I wonder what the governor's business is in stopping our party? Upon hearing Yi Qingxuan's voice, the arguingly and Xiao stopped. Pu Zun's face flushed slightly, his calm demeanor dissipated abruptly, and his tone seemed much weaker. Xiao Dao smelled a strong wine aroma over here from afar, and couldn't help but be compelled by his heart and wine bud to come and see what kind of wine it was. Wine, a ray of bewilderment flashed across the faces of the three people excluding Yi Qingxuan. Li Xian never drank, and he Ziwan and Xiao Yuanchan knew that this trip was a big deal and hadn't brought any wine on the road. So where did they get it? The gazes of the three people looked in unison at Yi Qingxuan on the carriage, who coughed lightly twice, casually taking out a jar of peach blossom brew. He just threw it over. Pu Zun treated the wine altar that flew over to him as reverently as if he were facing the supreme Buddhist scriptures and the incomparable Taoist teachings of the Taoists and he caught the altar with both hands. With a wave of his hand the ceiling paper ton fly. Pu Zun put his nose close to the mouth of the altar and inhaled deeply. A flush blinked up on his face, and a slight quiver ran down his throat. Just when Yi Ching Suan thought that Pu Zun's next move would be to drink or pour the wine into the gourd, Pu Zun lifted his face, which was filled with struggle. This Taoist friend's wine is indeed a rare and good wine in the world. But, but the little Taoist is now penniless. Can he make a mouthful of wine to drink? Yi Qingxuan couldn't help but be dumbfounded at his words. No harm done. The Taoist master will just drink. Before the words fell Pu Zun took the altar and directly poured a large mouthful of peach blossom brew into his mouth. And miraculously the mouth of the altar was so large but not a single drop of liquor had flowed out. Pu Zun drink wine is completely changed like a person. Completely unlike a person of monasticism. Head slightly tilted. Chest robe slightly open. The appearance is very bold. Looking at little Li Xian. He was again disgusted. Crude. Savage son. On the contrary, Xiao Yuanshan's face was filled with a look of recognition. A picture of really being a member of my generation. After one sip, the wine jar was half as light, and Pu Zuan burped comfortably. Yi Ching Tsuan and his group were also ready to move on, but he didn't expect Pu Zun to have the slightest intention of giving way. This Taoist friend wonders if Xiao Dao would have the honor of traveling with you all? The place we're going to could be dangerous. Are you sure you want to follow? Yi Ching Duan asked. Xiao Dao has traveled all the way east since the western regions, and the dangers encountered have long been numerous, so don't worry Xiao Dao will definitely not drag you behind. Li Xian sized up Pu Zun, what can you do? We don't want to bring a wasted man. Pu Zun pondered for a moment and said in a deep voice, Xiao Dao has read a lot of Buddhist teachings, and he has read a lot of Taoist supremacy. Get real, I can ferry people, and I can ferry ghosts. Oh, how do I cross over? The casual frivolity in Li Xian's tone was obvious. Pu Zun glanced at Li Xian. A hint of hesitation flashed in his eyes. The little Taoist can show the young master. After saying that, Pu Zun walked towards Li Xian, and Li Xian's eyes were full of provocation. A few moments later, the line of four became five. Xiao Yuan Shan, Pu Zun, and He Zi Wan walked at the front. Yi Ching Suan's carriage followed closely behind, and at the end followed Li Xian, whose eyes were somewhat confused and chaotic. Did the saints come first, or did the saints speak first? If there were saints first, what exactly were the books that the first saints read? Then what's the point of my reading if I can't become a saint? Yi Qingchen sat in the carriage listening to Li Xian's mumbling behind him and couldn't help but hold his forehead and laugh bitterly. Poor little bookworm, having to think at such a young age about things that others have never realized in their lives. But it's good to think about it. At least it's a lot quieter in the convoy now. Xiao Yuan Shan also silently moved away from Pu Zun after seeing his tactics, 
and couldn't help but draw a conclusion in his heart. People who read a lot of books have black hearts. Along the way, he Zihuan seemed to have found his soulmate, saying that after this trip to the capital, he must bring Pu Zun back to the royal family to introduce him to Yi Runan. It made Xiao Yuanshan on the side and Li Xian, who was walking at the end and had not slowed down yet, change their faces. The expression was as ugly as if he had eaten a large fly raw. That night, Yi Ching Tsuan, who had been rushing for a day, found an inn to stay at the border of Shu State. Others are okay, but Li Xian, who is physically and mentally damaged and has no cultivation, went into his room to rest without even eating. At the table, he Ziwan inquired about how Pu Zun had made it all the way from the western region's Buddhist state to the eastern wasteland safely by virtue of his cultivation at the second level of God refining. After talking for half an hour, Yi Qingduan summarized a total of two tips. When you meet a strong one, be reasonable. Hit the weak ones when you come across them, and then make some coins. Then if that's the case why did brother Pu meet us without even half a plate? He Ziwan had now taken Pu Zun as his closest friend and was much closer in his address. Upon hearing this, a touch of compassion surged on Pu Zun's otherwise clear face. Xiao Dao came from the western region, and when he was passing through the southern border, he met an old man who was being bullied by the demon clan, so he helped him to drive the demon clan away, then returned home to realize that the old man himself childless. His wife also died of illness two years ago, and now his own mobility has to take care of his three-year-old granddaughter. Life is really hard. Buddha once said, if I don't go to hell, who will go to hell? So I gave the old man all the coins I had left on me, and early the next morning they left to get on a ship back to their old home. That old man and her granddaughter stood on the prow of the boat waving at me constantly, their faces full of happy smiles, and at that time the path only felt that suddenly it was one step closer to the realm of the Buddha. After saying that, Pu Zun also looked at Yi Ching Suan and the others who were already shocked by his good deed with an excited expression. The three of them looked at each other, and Yi Ching Duan took the lead to get up and leave his seat. It's a great story and you made the right choices, but you probably really aren't very well suited to be a dowser. Yi Ching Suan slowly walked up the stairs, leaving behind Pu Zun who was full of doubts. What's wrong with fellow Taoist Yi? What do these words mean? Xiao Yuan Shan covered his mouth and nose with his hand, his face somewhat distorted as he looked at Pu Zun, coughed lightly twice, and end his voice. My son is right, but this kind of behavior by Taoist Pu is a rare act of kindness even in the Buddhist family. I am a little tired to take my leave first. For a while, only He Zihuan and Pu Zun remained sitting opposite each other on the table. Brother He, fellow Taoist Yi and fellow Taoist Xiao are praising me. Why do I feel a bit strange? He Zihuan wanted to say something, causing Pu Zun's frown to deepen. There's no harm in speaking up. Brother He, He Zihuan spoke in a very euphemistic tone. Has Brother Pu ever thought of a question? No children then where did this old man get a granddaughter? After saying that, He Zihuan also got up and left, leaving behind only Pu Zun whose eyes were violently wide and whose mouth was slightly open. The morning sun broke through, and a second before the first ray of sunlight pierced through the night Yi Qingduan opened his eyes. After another night of drawing an aura, the Xian Huang Qi in his body was quite a bit thicker than yesterday. According to Yi Qingduan's estimation, it would only take half a month for him to complete the condensation of the first Xian Huang Qi. Such an astonishing speed was of course due to the fact that his sword intent was able to constantly attract the special Qi between heaven and earth. Several of the men, all men, resumed their journey after a hasty breakfast. It was worth mentioning that little Li Xian looked much better today, only that he was still unwilling to get too close to Pu Zun, and was only walking side by side with Yi Ching Suan's hearse. Starting today they were leaving Shuzhou and entering the boundaries of Qingzhou, which was known as the land of grain and grass for the setting sun. Naturally, the affluence of the state is far better than that of Shuzhou, and it is the fiefdom of Lu Xian, the king of Qing. Yi Qingdao's most intuitive feeling is that even the official road has changed from 4 to 8 after entering Qingzhou. It's exactly twice as wide. Just after arriving in Qingzhou Yi Qingdan had Xiao Yuanshan go and find out if the King of Qing was in Qingzhou. But unfortunately the King of Qing had just left for a long distance not too long ago and didn't know where he had gone. Yi Qingduan could only stop for the time being. Meanwhile, on the official road in Huizhou, next door to Qingzhou, two hearse were traveling side by side on the official road. The direction that the two hearse were traveling forward was none other than Qingzhou. There were faint moans coming out of one of the hearse, but the surrounding guards turned a blind eye to it, without the slightest fluctuation on their faces. In the other car, an elegant young man in his prime sat side by side with a maid-like girl. Hearing the moans from the car next door, the young girl's face showed a strong look of disgust, turning his head to the youth on the side. He said, Your Highness, how can Prince Wee be so shameless as to do such despicable things in broad daylight? The youth sniffed and ignored just picked up the newly boiled spirit tea on the table and drank a mouthful of it, praising the handmaiden's craftsmanship with a big improvement. 
causing a blush to rise on the handmaiden's face. The maidservant only felt for a moment that the same son, his own son, whether it was his character or his talent, was many times stronger than the prince we in the next car. Lu Hongqiao looked at his maidservant's shy appearance, and the corner of his mouth raised a smile, but listening to the moans that kept coming from the left side, there was also a flash of killing intent in the eyes of the servant girl where she couldn't see it. As the eldest son of the king of Qing, Lu Hongqiao was given great expectations by the king of Qing at birth, so he was named Hongqiao, implying that he could be as ambitious as a Hongqiao, and over the years, Lu Hongquan had lived up to King Qing's expectations, and since he was a child, he had shown amazing talent in the art of power, especially in adulthood. Even if sometimes the king of Qing had something to do and was not in Qingzhou, Lu Hongguan was able to make Qingzhou run in an orderly manner without any mistakes. The officials and military generals of Qingzhou, both large and small, privately spoke highly of this son of the world. I don't know how long it took, but the moaning in the car stopped, followed by a rustling sound. The two spirit carriages had also just entered the border of Qingzhou from Huizhou, and were currently parked next to a lake to rest. Suddenly, the curtain in front of Lu Hongguang's car was pulled open by a pair of plain hands. Immediately afterward a beautiful young woman dressed in a long purple dress walked in with an undisguised flush on her face. The maidservant Xiao Qing shouted happily when she saw the visitor. Sister Fire how did you follow me up? Didn't you say that you were unwell and had to recuperate for a few days in the Hui Wang mansion? It's just a wind chill. It won't hurt. At that, the beautiful young woman's face became even redder, and the voice she made was also weak and feeble, which really seemed like a symptom of contracting wind chill. Lu Hongqiao also looked at Fire Shallow Mo with a concerned face. Shallow Mo, don't force yourself. Since you followed me up, just rest in the car. Hearing this, Fire Shallow Mo's face then barely managed to squeeze out a smile. Thank you for your concern, Shitsi. The slave girl is fine. Asimo, have you forgotten again that you still have to call yourself a slave girl in front of me? Here, sit with me to get warmer, while I go down and get some air. After saying this, Lu Hongqiao lifted the curtain and got out of the car leaving only the two women in the carriage. Xiao Cheng scowled at Fire Shallow Mo as soon as Lu Hongguan left, her face full of flirtation. Sister Fire, I told you that His Highness the World Prince rejoices in you. You see that now he has given up his position to you in order to make you more comfortable. Fire Shallow Mo nodded gently as she bit her lip at the words, only a strand of despondency flashed unnaturally in her eyes. Lu Hongguan, who had just gotten off the bus, happened to see King Huey's son, Lu Wu Du, also getting off the bus. Different from Lu Hongguan's full of bookish aroma, Lu Wudu's body is full of a hangdog temperament. Coupled with a pale face and floating footsteps at a glance know that it is a playboy. Cousin Han Xiao, Lu Wudu saw Lu Hongguang affectionately called out. Even if Lu Hongguang again do not like, again look down on this cousin. But considering their own plan's face it cannot help but pull up a false smile. Cousin Wudu, did you have fun on the journey? Happy. Of course I'm happy. It's all thanks to cousin's warm hospitality ah. I just don't know if you have many beauties in Qingzhou, cousin Hongquan? The corners of Lu Hongqiao's mouth twitched slightly, and he suddenly felt that taking Lu Wudu on a special detour to walk through Qingzhou to enter the capital this time might not have been a very correct decision. King Hui Lu Partridge lost his fertility after a battle with an unknown powerhouse earlier in his life, and Lu Wudu is King Hui's only heir, since childhood has been favored by King Hui, can be said to be but where the world has, Lu Wudu and Wata Lu Partridge will meet him. In this way it has developed Lu Wudu Playboy. Do not know the temperament, which C cannot be changed. Lu Partridge can only turn a blind eye. After resting for a few moments, Lu Wudu and Lu Hongquan continued their journey. Lu Wudu leaned on the window of the car in boredom. Lu Hongquan had just cautioned him to let him listen to his own arrangements in Qingzhou and not to pick fights at will. Suddenly, at a certain moment, the original laxity of Lu Wudu's eyes snapped open, and his breathing was slightly more rapid. Waving his hand, he recruited a guard to the side and after quietly whispering a few words in his ear, the guard retreated backward and then disappeared into the ranks. And in a small mortal city called Jingguan City in Qingzhou, Yi Qingxuan and his party of four encountered a very embarrassing problem at this time. Jingguan City was a small frontier city that Yi Qingxuan and his group had stumbled upon. It was more like a small town than a city, because even compared to the tiny peach blossom town, it wasn't much bigger, and not even a single cultivator had been seen in the city. At this time, in a remote tavern in Jingguan City, a group of people were surrounding five customers who did not look like Ching Zhou locals. Sticks in hand. Eyes full of mischief. Do you guys mean you want to get a bully lunch? No. No. Shopkeeper we don't mean that. We just don't have any silver with us. That doesn't mean one thing? We can pay with spirit stones. Bah. Fuck you. Take two pieces of broken stones that can glow and try to fool old me. Believe it or not I'll beat you guys to the point where you can't recognize your own mother. Come on. 
Someone with a word on how this should be resolved. For a moment, four of the five people looked in unison at a white-clothed youth in the center of the position. Yi Qingduan looked at the several people with helpless eyes and his forehead was filled with black lines. What are you looking at? Who has ever seen going out to play and needing his lordship to bring money? Ahem. Shopkeeper. Do you think this will work? Let's go out and see if we can change some silver in the city. Change the silver and we'll come back to pay the bill. Yi Qingsuan's silver has not been with him since he returned to the royal residence. It all went to Xiaotao. And now he is also penniless. Who knows that there is such a small town in Qingzhou that doesn't even recognize the spirit stone. This is not a farce. The owner of the tavern was a very thin middle-aged man. And he couldn't help but look Yi Qingsuan up and down at what he said. Perhaps he felt that Yi Qingsuan's appearance still had some credibility and did not reject Xiao Yuan Shan and the others as decisively as he had before. That's not impossible, but you have to have hostages left here or I can't trust you. It should be, Yi Qingduan nodded, and then turned his gaze to Xiao Yuan Shan's several people. All four of them looked down at their toes, silent and slow to move. Seeing that several people had not moved for a long time, Yi Qingdan could not help but raise his eyebrows upwards, and there was a hint of majesty in his aura. What? Do you still want me to go out and change silver? At that moment, the four of them dispersed as if they were birds of prey. The four Xiao Yuan Shan who went out of the door, looking at the unfamiliar streets and buildings around them, they really didn't know where to go to exchange silver for a while. Strangely enough, Jin Guan Chang was not on the official road of Qingzhou, but within a fork in the road. Originally, the group was walking on the official road, but Yi Qingxuan suddenly said that he wanted to walk on a small road, perhaps with different pleasures. So the group took a path roughly north fork in the road, and then came to this Jin Guan city. Whether it is the architectural style or the humanistic flavor of this city, it is completely different from Shuzhou, and can even be said to be completely different from any city in the Sunset Empire. Several people leaned towards the center of the city from different directions, constantly inquiring along the way, but surprisingly none of the people in the small city had ever seen a product such as a spirit stone, never heard anything about cultivators either. After some fruitless exploration, the four regrouped in the center of the city. Why don't we just go ahead and steal some? Xiao Yuan Shan suggested, but was directly opposed by the other three. No way. The sages say that a gentleman loves money and takes what he can get. Amit Ba Buddha. Theft is not allowed in the Buddhist sect. He Zihuan was much more lucid and said bluntly, His Excellency will not give us permission to do this. Xiao Yuan Shan couldn't help but roll his eyes when he heard this. Fine. Fine. You guys are noble. Then you should think of a way. And little Taoist. Haven't you turned Taoist? And what's the point of keeping Buddhist precepts? Pu Zun's face remained unchanged just said faintly. Xiao Dao said that my heart towards Buddha is unchanged. So naturally I have to abide by the rules set by it. Li Xian immediately seized the loophole and asked again in return. Then it seems that you can't drink alcohol in the Buddhist precepts either. Right? Immeasurable Heavenly Father. The little Taoist forgot to mention before that I still have half of my heart in the Taoist honor. The remaining three. Just then, a sudden shout of approval came. Several people except Li Xian were cultivators, their eyesight was naturally excellent, and they instantly saw the acrobatic performers in the crowd who were performing fire-breathing acts. Suddenly, He Zihuan slammed his hand. There, we can get silver by performing, and that would be considered acquiring wealth through formal means. A few people thought about it carefully and nodded. There didn't seem to be a better way at the moment, but they had never done acrobatics before and had no props, so what could they perform? Suddenly a brilliant light flashed in Li Xian's eyes as he thought of a traditional acrobatic skill that he had only seen in folk books. A few moments later, there were a few more objects where a few people had been standing before. There wasn't much in the way of stuff. Just two shoulder-width benches and a couple of smooth slabs of stone a man's height. Li Xian had read about this technique in a book titled Folklore Miscellany, which gave the acrobatics a very gimmicky name. Chest Breakers. Li Xian let Xia Yuan Shan lie on top of the bench as the book said. Then Pu Zun moved the huge stone to Xiao Yuan Shan's chest. After the boulder was lowered, Xiao Yuan Shan could only barely see Li Xian and the others on the opposite side by tilting his head upward with great effort. This made Xiao Yuan Shan slightly depressed. Why did he have to do this? But the explanation given by Li Xian made it impossible for him to turn back. First of all, Xiao Yuan Shan was the person with the highest cultivation among the four. So naturally his physique was also the strongest. The other three, a university scholar, a young scholar and a half Buddhist, half Taoist, clean cut Taoist priest did not look like people who could break a big stone in their chests in any way. So in order to wait for people to be convinced, can only Xiao Yuan Shan this military general to come. After they were all ready, Li Xian looked at the two of them, Pu Zun and He Zihuan, and asked, Did you guys find all the things you wanted? He Zihuan nodded and took out a freshly borrowed gong. 
But Pu Zun scratched his bald head and took out a Zen staff that was golden in color and asked with some uncertainty. I've looked all around and can't find a suitable hammer. I wonder if this will work. Li Xian glanced at the Zen staff. Is it heavy enough? Enough. Absolutely enough. Pu Zun's words were filled with confidence. That'll do. After arranging everything, Li Xian placed his hands on both sides of his mouth in a trumpet shape. Come and see. Come and see now. Chest breaking boulders. Stones taller than a man. See how my senior uncle breaks boulders with his chest without any obstacles. Knock knock. Folks folks walking by don't miss it. Today my division of four people first arrived in your place. Rich hold a money field. No money hold a personal field. Knock knock. Li Shen and He Zihuan were worthy of being well read. The two of them learned those yells from the books vividly. And in a short while the open space beside the four of them was already crowded with people. The crowd looked at Xiao Yuan Shan, who was lying on the bench, and pointed. Their eyes filled with curiosity. If it was someone else doing this for the first time they might be a little shy at this point. But Xiao Yuan Shan was not like this. Only to see that Xiao Yuan Shan not only didn't hide from the crowd's gaze, but also made an effort to tilt his head up and grin at the crowd. It immediately caused the cheeks of the group of women to blush slightly, and the slightest hint of pout flashed in their eyes. When Li Xian saw that the time was almost right he winked at Pu Zun, who took his Zen staff and walked over to Xiao Yuan Shan. Fellow Daoist Xiao, the little Taoist is about to begin. This Zen staff might be a bit heavy, so bear with it. Little Taoist don't be afraid. Knock with maximum force. I'm not even a good man if I scream, Xiao Yuan Shan said in a neutral voice. Upon hearing this, Pu Zun also no longer hesitated and raised the Zen staff, which was golden in color, high in both hands, and then fiercely dropped it down. Kaching, the boulder shattered in response to the sound, and Xiao Yuan Shan really didn't let out any screams, only his face was a bit strange. Yes, these guys are a bit of the real deal. Again, clang, clang. The residents of the small town bought Xiao Yuan Shan's performance so much that in the blink of an eye the plate in Li Xian's hand was full of copper coins. Li Xian roughly counted. Two more times should be enough. Bang. Click. Grunt. There were two more crunching sounds. Xiao Yuan Shan stiffly did not say a word. Even Pu Zun had to admit that he was a man. It was important to realize that in the past, when he was in the Buddhist sect, his senior brothers often screamed so much with a single stroke of the cane that they couldn't walk for days. The crowd slowly dispersed, and Li Shen and He Ziyuan's faces were filled with smiles. Behind him, Pu Zun's forehead was covered in sweat. It seemed that using this Zen staff was also quite exhausting for him. However, when the trio's gazes looked at Xiao Yuan Shan, they were all slightly stunned. Only to see Xiao Yuan Shan's complexion just slightly changed, his head slightly tilted up, the whites of his eyes rolled up high appearing to be very untamed. He Ziyuan could not help but exclaim from the bottom of his heart at this sight, Commander Xiao is truly a warrior. Li Xian, who was on the side, watched Xiao Yuan Shan listen to He Ziyuan's compliments and always felt something strange. Just at this moment Pu Zun was somewhat disengaged his palms loosened, and the Zen staff in his hands fell to the ground with a sound. Xiao Yuan Shan, who was then lying on the bench, also trembled, and the back of his head hit the bench hard. His eyes closed and he fainted. Not good, mister. He saved them, Commander Xiao is fainting from the pain. Pu Zun you son of a bitch, I'm going to beat you to death. Who taught you to knock people with a latter-day spiritual treasure? Was it said inside the Buddhist scriptures? Or did the Taoist ancestor entrust a dream to you? A loud roar rang out from one of the rooms on the second floor of the inn, and the shopkeeper who was counting the accounts downstairs frowned slightly. Thereupon another entry was added to the ledger, disturbing the rest of the other guests. Add three tails of grain silver. On the second floor, in compartment number three of the DZ, Yi Ching Dan and the other five people were gathered here. Li Xian and He Zihuan were standing at the head of the bed pulling Xiao Yuan Shan who had just woken up. Yi Ching Suan was sitting on the table not far away and Pu Zun was hiding behind him. Yi Qingdan pecked lightly at the tea and looked at Xiao Yuan Shan with some oddities in his expression. What exactly happened when you guys went out? How come you suffered such severe internal injuries? Farzan? Just now. Yi Ching Sun was inside the inn and was learning about the situation of the town with the owner when suddenly Li Xian and He Ziyuan came back dragging the unconscious Xiao Yuan Shan. Yi Ching Sun hurriedly checked Xiao Yuan Shan's pulse and found that he had actually suffered a considerable amount of internal injuries. So Yi Ching Suan hurriedly started to save the situation and was busy until a quarter of an hour ago before he wrapped up. Hearing this Xiao Yuan Shan, a man who has always been known for his rigidity, his face actually showed a touch of aggrieved color. My lord, you've got to do something for me. This little Taoist wants to harm me, knocking me with a Hotian spiritual treasure. And it didn't stop after one knock. Bam three in a row. Yi Ching Duan turned his head to look at Pu Zun who looked a little embarrassed, the corner of his mouth twitching slightly. This little Taoist's acting style is really tough as hell. Fortunately, 
Xiao Yuan Shan is a martial arts general usually will refine the body, and also have the cultivation of the ninth level of the harmonious body. Otherwise in exchange for a cultivator who only cultivates the spiritual qi now I am afraid that it will not be as simple as internal injuries. At this time, Li Xian also looked at Pu Zun with some reproach. Little Taoist is not just a piece of ordinary stone. Do you need to knock so vigorously? Pu Zun, who was hiding behind Yi Ching Suan, heard Li Xian scolding as if he had finally found a vent, and took a step across to walk out from behind Yi Ching Suan. Fart, you guys are the ones who didn't knock on that rock. Even if I had the 10 directions thunder gathering staff I would still have to put my best foot forward to break it. Otherwise why do you think I got off my feet after only 3 times? Only 3 times? Xiao Yuan Shan's tone changed as soon as he heard it, and his voice became very sharp. Seeing this, Pu Zun leaned towards Yi Ching Suan's side again. While at this moment, the other 3 were all gloomy. A Ho Tian spiritual treasure, along with a cultivator of the second sky of God refining actually had to use all his strength to crack a stone. Can it be that this stone is not a piece of Xianjin? It's really strange. Yi Qingxuan couldn't help but associate another incident at this time. When they had just entered the city they had encountered a mentally deranged old crone. The old woman shouted as soon as she saw them. And what exactly she said was not clearly heard by Yi Qingguan because her speech was not clear. Only a few words were heard, such as outsider and opportunity. He Zihuan and Li Xian also took out the canonical books and flipped through them at this time. And after flipping through them for two quarters of an hour, he Zihuan took the lead and closed the books. My lord, the Sunset Empire now has six states, and there is no record of Jingguan City as a city among the 3,000 cities, large and small. As soon as He Zihuan's words fell, Li Xian suddenly shouted, Found it! Rumor has it that during the period of the 10,000 races contest 700,000 years ago, the Sunset Empire had not yet been founded, and a very strong race existed in this territory, the Xianling clan. According to the ancient records, the Xianling clan is a small clan in the eastern wasteland with a population of only a few thousand people, and the cultivation talent is extremely poor at the end of the clan. But at the end of the ancient times, there was an amazing Xianling true lord, and the name of the group was later changed to the Xianling clan because of him. The Xianling true lord is extremely good at the divine soul, able to swim in the great void. The soul through the nine ghosts can be said to have great magical powers. This Xianling true lord only used 10,000 years to bring the Xianling clan from the bottom of the 10,000 clans to the top 100. There are even countless strong people within the clan, and it can be said that it is a strong race that flourished for a while, but perhaps the sky is jealous of talent this true monarch only lived less than 20, 000 years will fall. So the Xianling clan also slowly disappeared in the long river of history, and according to the ancient records, the Xianling clan's ancestral land at that time was precisely Jingguan city. Speaking of which a trace of doubt surfaced on Li Xian's brow. What's wrong? Yi Qingguan asked softly. Li Xian only raised his eyes slightly before continuing. But according to the ancient records, this ancient city disappeared with the fall of true Lord Xianling. Without the shelter of the ancestral ground, the Xianling clan could no longer give birth to strong people. And this was the fundamental reason for the demise of the Xianling clan. After Li Xian finished speaking, the room became dead silent, and threads of cold sweat seeped out from everyone's foreheads. Seeing that the atmosphere was so solemn, Li Xian couldn't help but mutter in a small voice, I can't say for sure. After all, the book doesn't say exactly where Jin Guan Cheng is located, so maybe it just happens to bump into the name. Yi Qingguan felt that this Jin Guan city might really be the legendary ancient city that disappeared in the Middle Ages, because the buildings and human customs here were too unlike modern times. Otherwise even if the small town was backward, it couldn't be that no one had even seen a spirit stone, right? After all, Spirit stones had existed since the medieval spirit meteor era. Yi Qingguan looked out the window. At this time the white moon was already hanging in the middle of the sky. Outside of the city it was dark again, and obviously not suitable for rushing. We'll leave town at first light tomorrow. Yi Qingguan made the decision. Xiao Yuan Shan and the others nodded. They also felt that it was better to leave this hellish place as early as possible. After determining the hour, everyone went to their rooms to prepare for bed. However, before Yi Qingxuan and the others could sleep, a long whistling sound that resonated through the heavens and earth came from the mountains outside the city. This was accompanied by the sound of wolf cries and the sensation of the ground trembling. Yi Qingguan pulled open the door of the room to meet Xiao Yuan Shan, Pu Zun and the others who were also awakened by the loud noise. However, the strange thing was that other than Yi Qingxuan and his group, the other guests in the inn were oblivious to the long whistling sound and the feeling of the ground shaking. None of them came out of their rooms to explore the situation. However, Yi Qingxuan and the others were also skillful and bold and the five of them directly exited the inn and rushed towards the direction from which the sound came. Xiao Yuan Shan carried Li Xian and stepped forward in the air, and Pu Zun also stepped on the subtle footwork in the air. 
and his speed was not much worse than Xiao Yuan Shan. As for He Zihuan, he is not without the slightest cultivation only lower, not up to the realm of Yuaning, and can only step on a brush-shaped spiritual weapon forward. The one who surprised a few people the most was Yi Qingguan, who was following closely behind Xia Yuan Shan and Pu Zun. As soon as he left the inn, he saw Yi Qingxuan gently leaping upwards, and in an instant he was a hundred feet away, and his figure was not much slower than that of Xia Yuan Shan who was carrying people at the moment. This was also the reason why Yi Qingxuan did not utilize his sword immortal strength, as the damage to his current physical body from the sword immortal power was not too big but not too small. So Yi Qingxuan tried his best not to want to utilize the strength of the sword Dao. Of course, if anyone messes with him, the big deal is just some damage to the physical body. You know he still has a Taoist medical heritage. The ancient city was small, and beyond it was a forest with no end in sight. However, it was fortunate that Xiao Yuan Shan, a cultivator of the ninth level of the harmonization realm, was present. Divine sense spread out. In just a few moments Yi Qingxuan and the others found the place where the sound came from, and several people slowly landed in the center clearing of a forest. What they saw in their eyes caused the pupils of several people to shrink, only to see a pair of scarlet eyes in the woods across from them at this moment as if they were bright lights lighting up the dimly lit woods. It was densely packed, estimated to be at least a thousand. And these eyes were still slowly approaching Yi Qingxuan and the others, and with them came a thick demonic aura. Few moments later, as the first pair of red-eyed masters entered the clearing, a sound of backward breaths rang out from the arena. He Ziyuan's exclamation of shock was even more out of place, his face filled with disbelief. I drop a saintly old man, how is this possible? The moonlight was like water, pouring down on the clearing, and the shadows of Yi Qingxuan's few people were stretched far away, and ten meters in front of several people, a wolf-shaped animal was staring at them menacingly. As time passed more and more wolf-like creatures came out of the jungle, but as if they were afraid of something, they just looked at Yi Qingxuan and his group and did not come forward to attack. Yi Qingduan thought that the ancient books he had read were not small, but he had never heard of any demonic beast that looked like this. Unlike ordinary wolf demonic beasts, these wolf-like animals have red and white eyes, with a thick layer of scale armor attached to their appearance, just like hair, which grows naturally and cannot be removed. After all, Li Xian is young and has not read as many books as He Zihuan, so he couldn't help but be a little confused after hearing He Zihuan's exclamation, Mr. He you know this kind of demonic beast? Why have I never seen this kind of demonic beast in the ancient books? He Zihuan, who had returned to his senses, gulped, of course I can't find it. After all, which ancient book would record a species that has never appeared before? A species that has never appeared before? Yi Qingduan couldn't help but be a bit puzzled at this point. Have you all ever heard of the two demonic beasts? The Tsunami Moon Wolf and the Tsang Mu Iron Wolf? Yi Qingduan nodded. Both of these two wolf species belong to the best of the wolf clan. The former is good at mental illusion, can make the opponent deep in the illusion, waiting for the slaughter, and the latter is good at physical. A body like iron armor like outer skin indestructible, often wait for the opponent's strength to run out cannot break through their defense. Yi Qingduan recalled the information of these two types of demonic beasts before looking at the wolf-shaped demonic beast with black armor attached in front of him, and his pupils contracted violently. It's hard not to. At this moment, a loud cry suddenly rang out behind Yi Qingduan. Can it be that this is the offspring of the Tsunami Moon Wolf and the Tsong Mu Iron Wolf? The voice came very suddenly and was particularly loud. Li Xian's thin figure was directly startled. Die, savage, Li Xian reacted with a disgruntled shout. He Zihuan shook his head. The wolf race is a pack animal, and the demon race places the most importance on bloodline inheritance, so it's usually rare for them to intermingle with other packs. And the most important thing is that, Whistling Moon Sky Wolf and Pale would Iron Wolf two kinds of demonic beasts, although all are wolf tribe, but the bloodline is reversed. The former is extremely quiet the latter is extremely dry. If imposed on the body of a beast is bound to die, immeasurable heavenly father. Then according to fellow Taoist he, these wolves are a new type of demonic beast? Not so. Gentlemen, please look at the eyes and outer skin of these wolves. Silver glints in the eyes. The skin covered with scales and armor is indeed a characteristic of both races without a doubt. And what species are these wolves anyway? Old he don't sell out. Hurry up and say it. He Zihuan also stopped showing off and looked serious. If it is the general method naturally cannot be two reversed bloodline of demonic beasts combined together, but legend has it that in ancient times there was a secret method called blood marriage can be completely reversed two bloodlines combined together. After combining, then placing the demonic beast in the place of yin and yang polarity to nurture it will do the trick. And the demonic beasts that are birthed are called blood beasts, and blood beasts are able to inherit all the talents of the fused bloodline intact, and their fighting strength far exceeds that of the original demonic beasts. Hiss. The crowd sucked in a breath of cold air, 
Then wouldn't that make everyone from every tribe use the secret method to create strong people? He he he. He Zihuan had a cold smile on his lips. What you all think is exactly the idea of the ancient period of the 10,000 races. So after the appearance of the secret method of blood marriage between the 10,000 races to fight for hegemony situation intensified, and even some racial talent biased in favor of auxiliary type of race so extinction. But according to wild history, this secret method only flourished for less than a hundred years before it was banned by the common order of all races. This matter was sealed by the most powerful races at the time joining forces in the entire Qiming continent, and all things related to the secret method disappeared in just a few years. Anyone who has practiced the secret art will either cripple themselves or be killed on the spot. Why? Yi Qingguan asked softly as he turned back. Because this secret method has an irreparable flaw. Demonic beasts created using the blood marriage secret method not only have a short lifespan, but most importantly, depending on the strength of their talent, they will lose their own sanity when they reach a certain realm, becoming a machine that only knows how to kill. And for every person the blood beast kills, his master gets a certain amount of blood chi, which can slow down the passing of life. Therefore, this secret method is also known as the blood refining forbidden art by later generations. After listening to He Ziwan's account, Xiao Yu and Shan's mouths could not close for a long time. The term blood marriage Yi Qingduan and others may not have heard of it, but the blood refining forbidden art this evil art as long as it is a cultivator or read a few books can be considered familiar. Rumor has it that in ancient times, there was a blood refining ancestor who practiced the very blood refining forbidden art specializing in killing young cultivators with thick blood and chi to take their blood to strengthen their own bodies. And this refining blood old ancestor not only strength as high as the fifth heaven of the tribulation, all the blood to escape the art is also very terrible. Only have a drop of blood and will be able to reborn. For a time, the entire continent's younger generation was afraid to go out of the clan to practice. In the end, it was the patriarchs of the top clans of the five continents who joined forces to round him up and kill him in the forest of all demons in the south because the five forbidden places of the Qiming continent's heavenly Tao were obstructed. Therefore even the life force as strong as the Lianxian blood old ancestor could only end up with a grudge. And just as the crowd was immersed in the shock that the blood marriage secret arts brought to the mind, the bright moon in the sky slowly changed, the canopy of the sky rippled like water, and the full moon swayed slightly like a shadow, eventually slowly vaporizing. He Ziwan looked at the blood beast in front of him that didn't launch an attack for a long time and frowned. However, the bloodline grafting between the Tsunami Moon Wolf and the Tsungmu Iron Wolf has never been recorded in the ancient books, and the evil art of blood grafting has been buried forever in the ancient times. How can there still be blood beasts surviving today? Suddenly, Yi Ching Tsuan, who had his head down in thought, turned back violently, only to see that the moonlight had disappeared from the empty space where the moonlight originally shone, and in its place was a silhouette. It's you. The visitor was dressed in outdated clothes. His body was stooped. Wrinkles piled up on his old face, and his eyes looked at Yi Qingsu and several people with a grim look. It was the crazy old crone that Yi Qingsu and his group had encountered at the city gates. But at this moment, where was this old crone still the slightest bit crazy? Those who trespass on the ancestral land, die. The old crone's voice as its appearance is very oozing. And when the old crone's words fell, the wolves in front of them that had not moved for a long time began to move. Protect the seiji. Although this wolf-shaped demonic beast was very swift, it was not yet mature and its strength was no more than that of a Jin Dan Yuaning realm cultivator. So Xia Yuan Shan and Pu Zun destroyed most of it in just a few moves. Yi Ching Wan stood quietly behind the two Xia Yuan Shan, and he keenly noticed that with the demise of the blood beasts, the appearance of the crone's figure in front of him began to change. A few moments later, when the thousands of blood beasts had been mostly dead or wounded, the old crone had turned into a woman with a plump figure, and while her appearance was changing her aura was also rising crazily, returning to the void 4 in V. Harmony 9. The contrast between the before and after image is bizarre. Xiao Yuan Shan and Pu Zhu looked at each other when they saw this and bullied their way up in two directions. Xiao Yuan Shan held the lance and stabbed it towards the vitals, while Pu Zhu chanted unknown spells and pinched lotus fingers towards the woman's face. The plump woman just pushed her palm forward. Instantly Xiao Yuan Shan's gun stopped in midair. Taking advantage of this gap, Pu Zhu printed a hand on the woman's face. In a flash, Pu Zhu's face changed drastically. He realized that this demonic woman's face seemed to have a piece of iron absorbing stone. Not only did his demon subduing hand seal not have the slightest effect, but his own spiritual energy was rapidly draining away. At this time, he Zihuan at the back shouted, Daoist Pu forgot to tell you guys. Although this blood refining forbidden technique is known as an evil technique, it doesn't belong to the category of devils. So the Buddhist demon suppressing avatar is useless against it. Pu Zun heard this and hurriedly withdrew his spiritual energy to try to retreat backward while Xiao Yuan Shan, who had flown out not far away, also immediately returned to Yi Qingzuan's body. 
the old crone turned into a beautiful woman also did not immediately catch up, but instead was interested in measuring a few people, eyes full of banter. And at that moment, the aura on the beautiful woman had already come to the seventh level of the Mahayana heaven, to her a peak harmonization realm, a second level of god refining plus a few people with almost no fighting ability were completely annihilated with the flip of a hand. The beauty woman looked at Yi Ching Suan and the others as if she was looking at a few freshly spotted mole crickets. Tell me how you got here, little ones, and I'll consider making your deaths easier. A few people looked at each other, speechless, for they themselves did not know how they had come to be here. All they remember is walking into a path and following the road to here. Looking at the silence of a few people, the beautiful woman also lost interest. Looking at the cultivation of a few people was obviously not the person the master was waiting for. Then it would be of no use. The beautiful woman slowly raised her palm and was about to strike to suppress the several people who had trespassed into the ancestral land. Yi Ching Suan. Yi Ching Dan took a slight step forward and was about to make a move. But at that moment a strange change occurred. Boom. A loud sound came from the ground and the ground began to shake violently. Even in the darkness of the night Yi Ching Wan could see patches of trees falling. Knock. 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 Suddenly. A vibration far greater than before came from the ground. Xiao Yuan Shan hurriedly pulled Li Xian before the young and uncultivated Li Xian did not fall to the ground. The shaking only lasted for about three breaths, followed by a ghostly cry coming from the depths of the woods. Suddenly, the plump beauty's face changed drastically, completely ignoring Yi Ching Su and several people and swept towards the depths of the jungle. Ha! Huh? Why are you leaving? Li Xian let out a light eep. Dong Zi let's go. This demonic woman and this place is too weird. I'm afraid it's dangerous to stay here. Xiao Yuan Shan's face was a bit gloomy. After the exchange of hands just now he did not have the slightest certainty that he would be able to solve this demonic woman. Yi Qingduan just wanted to nod his head when he heard Xiao Yuan Shan's words. After all, although there was nothing wrong with himself, the strength of Xiao Yuan Shan's few people was still a bit too low. However, a steep ray of silver light shone on the bodies of several people, and Yi Qingxuan tilted his head. However, the bright moon that had originally disappeared in the sky appeared in the sky again, still in its original position not moving at all. Soon Yi Qingduan and the few others discovered the anomalies of the bright moon. As time passed, only the originally white as jade moon surface gradually began to be tinted with a touch of red from the edges. Within moments, a silver moon turned into a blood moon. In an instant, the entire forest and the ground were colored with a layer of blood red halo, along with the sound of ghostly sobs that could be described as eerie to the extreme. This could not help but make Yi Qingxuan think of an account in the Inyang heresy. It is rumored that after death, a person's soul leads to hell and suffers before being reincarnated. However, there are some ghosts in hell who are too deeply attached to the idea of reincarnation. So the true lord of Yen Luo will let these ghosts return to earth in a special way at a specific time and place to fulfill their long-cherished wishes. And the sight of the opening of the gates of hell has been recorded in some ancient books, in which there are these words, when the blood moon is in the sky, hell opens up, and a hundred ghosts walk at night. Originally, when Yi Qingduan saw such a description, he only thought that it was a story created out of thin air by some people in the Yang Wang world who were attached to their dead relatives, but now it seems that he has really encountered it. The blood moon was in the sky, and the distant sound of ghostly sobs came again. This time the sound was even more ghostly and clear. Xian Ling, you've caused me so much pain. Xian Ling you bastard. I curse you Xian Ling clan to sink into nothingness forever. The mournful voice seemed to ring in the ears of the crowd, sending shivers down their spines. The land of two poles. I see. Suddenly. He Ziyuan Shriek pulled the crowd back from the sound of ghostly sobs. The two polarized places in the world are nothing but yin and yang. And if the Jin Guan city in front of us is regarded as the yang world, then the corresponding depths of the woods can only be the nether world. Xiao Yuan Shan let out a strange cry. Old he, don't scare me. Is it possible that there is really a hell in the world? Amit Ba Buddha. At this time, Pu Zun lightly recited a Buddha's name. Master Xiao, there is no such thing in the world. But it doesn't mean that there is no such thing outside of the world. As recorded in the Buddhist scriptures, the Buddha then entered the hell with his great magical powers. And in it, he preached with Yama and helped the wrong souls to pass on to the next life. And was personally entertained by the emperor of Yama. Xiao Yuan Shan did not refute Pu Zun's words, but only slightly inclined his face. His face slightly darkened as he skimmed his lips. Motherfucker, all monks can be jinshir these days, he Zihuan explained. Commander Xiao you have misunderstood. The land that the young world is against is not only the legendary hell that counts as the netherworld. For example, some secret realms filled with the power of Yin and evil are also considered to be the land of the most netherworld. Yi Qingduan's eyes were bright. As the saying goes, a man of great skill is bold. Yi Qingduan not only did not have the slightest fear after he knew that there was a possibility of the legendary hell's grand opening in front of him, 
but even had some small excitement in his heart. You guys stay here and don't move. I'm going to check out the front and I'll be back later. No, if Seiji wants to go, we have to go too. Yi Qingguan's words were stopped by the three of them in unison, saying that they would not allow Yi Qingguan to go alone. Yi Qingguan looked at Pu Zun again, and Pu Zun saw this and gave a Buddhist salute, his tone somewhat agitated. No one has entered hell since the Buddha, and the young monk has long had his heart set on it. After the decision was made, the crowd immediately got up and flew into midair, and Yi Qingguan also borrowed a breath of air to travel through the air, but just rose into the air in front of the scene in front of the several people as to see that the dead people come back to life. The river against the flow of shocked mouth cannot close to, only a silver light and a blood light stood side by side in the sky in the depths of the forest where no end could be seen. The line of sight sought along the silver light, at the end of which a half virtual, half substantial palace was suspended high in the sky, palace body silver white, half solid, half illusory like in a different world, and because too far away from the specific appearance cannot see clearly, can only vaguely see the palace is shaking violently. During this time the blood-colored moonlight in the sky became more and more demonic, and the mournful screams of the ghosts never ceased, and none of the voices were the same, and none of the words were repeated, but it all has only one meaning, the Xianling true lord shall not die a good death, and the Xianling clan shall sink for all eternity. This couldn't help but make Yi Qingguan wonder what kind of heavenly grudge this true lord Xianling had done to make so many people hate him so much. Yi Qingguan several people flew straight towards the direction of the silver palace, and the closer they got there the lower the temperature became. The distance wasn't very far, and it was only half a quarter of an hour before they arrived at the place where the aura fluctuations were the strongest. Before they even landed, several people sucked in a breath of cold air, both because the sight was so shocking and because the level of coldness in the place had reached a very extreme level, only to see that a forest originally full of trees had turned into a vacant lot. The trees fell to the ground as if they had been drained of nutrients, with a layer of ice ballast attached to the surface, and the leaves had withered and yellowed and in the air less than 20 feet above the clearing, there hung a pitch-black portal about the size of three eight imperial tables, with a void in the center of the portal. The sound of ghostly sobs came precisely from the portal, and vaguely Yi Qingguan could see several blood-red villains flickering over the door through the nothingness. These little people had hideous faces and desperately tried to rush out of the portal, but they were all stopped by a mysterious force. Following the line of sight downward, Yi Qingguan also saw the beautiful woman from before, only at this time she had turned into an old crone-like woman again. Although his appearance was restored, his aura increased instead of decreasing, and at this time, he had already reached the fifth level of the ferrying, the old woman's body breath surging, fingers pinching the mysterious magic trick a strand of aura toward the dark portal to fly, I think this is the reason why those blood-red villain cannot come out, at this moment, the old crone didn't have the time to care about Yi Qing Dan and the others, she just coldly spoke, if you don't want to die, get as far away as you can, feeling the rampant aura of this place. Xiao Yu and Shan's few people were a bit hesitant. They all looked towards Yi Qingxuan, but saw that his gaze was frozen as if he hadn't heard the old woman's words. Yi Qingdan had been staring at the pitch black portal since he landed. To be more accurate, it should be the pattern around the portal. These patterns were engraved with very thin gold threads, looking very abstract and strange in form, filled with some kind of inexplicable Tao rhythm. He couldn't recognize all of these patterns, but he recognized many of them because he had seen them before. Inside the mouth of the East China Sea, Yi Qingdan took a deep breath, withdrew his gaze, and suddenly turned around and bellowed. Everyone, back off, back off as far as you can. Although Xiao Yu and Chan's few people were not sure what to make of it but they still quickly retreated backward according to Yi Qingxuan's words. However, it was still a step too slow, only to see the portal carved with a golden thread pattern shake violently, and the golden threads on the pattern flowed slowly as if they were alive, and the red light pillar above his head grew thicker and thicker. In a flash, an unspeakable pressure and gloomy aura ran through the entire open space, and the crone's palm gave a violent lurch followed by instantly flying backwards. Xiao Yuan Shan and the others were even worse, fainting without even understanding the situation. With a wave of Yi Qingxuan's sleeve, the several people who had fallen to the ground were immediately sent away from the open space by a soft force, and appeared at the entrance of Jin Guan City in the next second. After doing so, Yi Qingxuan looked back at the pitch black portal, his hands slightly clenched as if he was facing a great enemy. At some point, the crone who had flown out backwards had returned to the field. The eyes glanced at Yi Qingguan full of surprise. I didn't expect that I was the one who looked away. To have the strength of the ferrying realm at less than the age of being a man, even in our time it would be worthy of the name of a proud son of heaven. Yi Qingguan did not comment on the old crone's words, neither acknowledging nor denying them. Does Senior know the origin of that palace above the void? Perhaps knowing that she would not make it through the night, the crone hesitated for a moment then answered slowly. 
That illusory palace is the true ancestral land of my Xianling clan, and the true Jingguan city. After saying this, the old crone closed her mouth, and Yi Qingxuan did not ask more questions on this topic, then asked about the origin of this pitch black portal. The old crone sniffed and turned her head to look at the portal full of bizarre atmosphere. At this time lost her break inside the red villain has been stupid. It's only a matter of time before it comes out. Ugh. The old woman let out a long sigh. I'm not sure of the origin of this portal either. It's just that in the master's last few years he had been studying this portal, to the point where he didn't sleep or sleep at night or day. In the end, my master sealed this portal under the ancestral land before he passed away, ordering me to reinforce the seal every 10,000 years. But as time passes, the seal gets shorter and shorter, shorter and shorter, to the point where I simply can't train enough blood beasts in time. Yi Qingduan suddenly interjected. Senior's master is that Xianling true lord who is closely related to the rise and fall of the Xianling clan is recorded in the ancient books, right? When the old woman heard Yi Qingzuan mention true lord Xianling, a touch of heartfelt admiration and a hint of a difficult to understand look appeared on her face. It seems like a complaint, but also like a long, long, long thought. That's right, my master is the Xianling true lord, one of the eight true lords at the end of the ancient era, who also led my Xianling clan to ascend to the top 100 race leaders of the 10,000 clans and even more so, is the spiritual pillar of our entire Xianling clan. But, the crone paused before continuing, but the decline of my Xianling clan is also really because of him. After saying these words, as if the crone had thought of something she did not want to remember, a pained look appeared on her face. After a long time, the old crone who had returned to her senses glanced at the dark portal that was shaking more and more frequently and adjusted her state, her voice returning to its coldness. Regarding this evil object, the master won't let me touch it or even let me get close to it. All I know is that it's a treasure left over from that unknown ancient period called the Door of Exile, and that behind the portal is a place of extreme in and evil. The master calls it the Land of Banishment, and according to the master, this Door of Banishment contains a higher level of power, which may be the key to his breakthrough. A higher level of power? Yi Qingduan asked rhetorically. Yes, my master calls that power the power of law, a power that is far higher than the spiritual power we cultivate now, a power that is nearly immortal. It's a pity that the master never realized the power of this law even to the end of his immortal life. Then dare I ask senior, what is the power of laws? Yi Qingduan's tone was a bit anxious. It was the first time he had heard of a power that was higher than aura. It is important to know that although the quality of spiritual energy changes as cultivation improves, or some people are born extraordinary, the cultivation of aura is different from ordinary people, but it is still the chi of heaven and earth. The crone herself had a half understanding of the power of laws. But based on the fragmented introduction, Yi Qingdao had a rough idea of the power of laws in his heart. This power of law belonged to the power of the ascension realm's previous realm or even the previous several realms. And this power has a characteristic that naturally restrains low-level power, such as aura. That is to say, people who do not control this power can only be crushed against this power. And just when Yi Qingxuan thought that he could only learn about this, the crone's next words made the light in his eyes shine brightly. My master discovered that someone had controlled such a power long ago in the ancient times by looking through some of the ancient books that had been mutilated for the most part. Because of the time that has passed, the master has not found any specific records about this power and the person who controls it. It's only from some ancient clan relics that I learned that ancient cultivators called those who controlled such power, saints. Saints. Yi Qingduan's body shook as he instantly remembered the bronze coffin within the East Sea Sea Mouth, which also mentioned this name. Up until now. Yi Qingduan had not been able to figure out whether this was a realm or an honorific. Yi Qingduan just wanted to follow the topic and ask what realm a saint was in, and what realms were divided above the ascension realm. But that pitch black portal suddenly made a strange sound at that moment. Click. Jab. A ripping sound came from the portal, followed by a tiny blood red arm reaching out. Following that, the entire body squeezed out, and then a hoarse voice rang out in the empty clearing, sending up a gust of echoes. Ha ha ha. Earth. I'm back. Is Xian Ling, you asshole, dead yet? Come out and die. The words spoken by the blood-colored silhouette were as if it was an overwhelmingly strong man who was able to stand on top of the sky and earth with great vigor. But at this moment, Yi Qingxuan looked at this but three feet high blood-colored villain, listening to his grandiose words but felt a little funny. For a moment did not hold back to make a sound. The blood-colored being turned its head to look at Yi Qingxuan. Its expression indifferent. No words were spoken. And there was no movement in its hands. It was just a breeze that picked up in the forest at night for no apparent reason. But in Yi Qingguan's eyes the whole scene has long changed. The trees, the open space have all disappeared. Only the blood moon in the sky still exists. The three foot tall blood colored being on the opposite side of the room also changed drastically. Its figure grew dozens of times taller and transformed into a giant. 
The wisp of breeze that had just blown up had transformed into a spear attacking towards Yi Qingsuan's sea of consciousness. The old woman watched from the wall. She was not familiar with Yi Qing Dan at all. Naturally, she would not make a move. In addition, now she is difficult to protect herself which has the time to care about Yi Qing Dan's death or life. Yi Qing Tsuan looked calm and allowed the spear to enter the sea of consciousness, then slowly closed his eyes. A hint of disdain flashed across the corners of that blood-colored being's mouth at the situation, and he also turned his head to look at the illusory palace high above. Right after the blood-colored beings turned their heads, four more beings of varying forms and height stepped out from the pitch-black colored portal. One being was more than a foot taller than the blood-colored being that came out at the beginning, and his aura was much stronger. The tallest being naturally also saw Yi Ching Tsuan, who stood motionless with his eyes closed, and the old crone with a wary face, but didn't care in the slightest, and also raised his head to look at the silver-white palace. Xian Yi, it seems your older brother doesn't intend to see us. Humph, he's still so self-righteous. The words of the several blood-colored beings behind the tall being were filled with resentment towards true Lord Xianling. Xian Ye's face was expressionless. Only a flash of memories as well as a strong resentment flashed in his eyes. This time, he would ask his elder brother back then himself why he had sealed her into this place where even ghosts didn't want to stay. It's caused me to become inhuman now. Cut the crap. Since he's not coming to see us, then we'll go up and see him. Xian Ye's cold voice came out. However, just as several people were about to move, Xian Ye's movements flashed a trace of surprise in his eyes, and then he turned his head violently, only to see that Yi Qing Dan, who originally stood motionless with his eyes closed at the tips, had opened his eyes and looked at himself with a smile at some point. The several figures beside him also noticed Qian Ye's strange appearance and followed his line of sight. Who are you? And who are you? Yi Qingduan asked rhetorically. How dare you? What qualifications does a mole with a broken dantian have to know our names? One of the shortest beings among the five figures shouted angrily at Yi Qing Suan. The smile at the corner of Yi Qing Suan's mouth slowly tightened. Then how do a bunch of you inhuman and ghostly things deserve to know my name and surname? Humph, I don't know what I'm talking about. Another being that was slightly shorter than Xian Yi spoke out sarcastically and turned to strike out brazenly. This being could only be ranked fourth among the five blood-colored beings in terms of height, but the aura when he struck out had already reached the eighth heaven of the transition. This makes the crone on the side of the heart even more cold. The fourth strongest person is already such a cultivation, that the front of the three people themselves how to deal with. The old woman couldn't help but look up at the silver-white palace hovering in the sky, muttering something under her breath. Master, Ruo you may not be able to wait for the person you're looking for. In the blink of an eye, the blood-colored being's attack arrived in front of Yi Ching Suan's eyes. Yi Ching Duan did not strike his sword, but instead, his right hand was merged into a sword finger and pointed at the center of the scarlet being's palm. Ah, a miserable scream came out, and the faces of the other five people in the field changed. Even the tallest blood-colored being frowned. Yi Ching Duan's hand movements did not stop. The sword finger then slightly forced forward a school-colored figure flew out backwards. Wherever it passed the blood-colored aura escaped. Eventually, it crashed hard against the door of exile, and its form dissipated. It was only at this time that Yi Ching Dan truly looked at the several people. The corner of his mouth slightly hooked up, and his cold voice resounded throughout the entire forest. Who else wants to come and try? As the words fell, a wave of Linyuns will instantly fill the entire heaven and earth. The old crone and the remaining four blood-colored beings sized up the young man whose bone age was just over 20 years old, and their hearts set off shockwaves. At this moment, Yi Ching Suan's surrounding aura was no longer as harmless and peaceful as it was just now. On the contrary, at this moment, he was surrounded by red aura on his side, with a sharp edge, and his sword intent was pointing directly at the remaining four blood-colored beings from afar. No matter if it was a blood-colored pillar of light or a silver-colored pillar of light at this moment, the light was not as dazzling as the wisp of red aura in this empty space. Ascension Realm Feeling this pressure that was still above the transitional juncture realm, the old crone directly lost her voice and looked at Yi Ching Tsuan with horror in her eyes. She had thought that Yi Ching Tsuan's strength at such a young age with the strength of the ferrying realm was already considered the pride of heaven, but she didn't expect Yi Ching Tsuan to be so stunning, and an ascension realm at the age of 25 was unheard of. Even as stunning as her master, true Lord Xianling, was only able to enter the realm of ascension when he was past his prime. The transition realm and the ascension realm were completely incomparable. Not only was there a gap between the realms, the two were completely two different levels of life. Immediately, a flash of radiance flashed in the old crone's eyes, and her gaze toward Yi Ching Suan was filled with fire and eagerness. She remembered the last time her master had spoken to her, in the silver and white palace above. Also at night, a man with a slender figure clad in nebula robes leaned on the railing, a strand of long hair swinging in the wind, so dashing. Behind him stood a young girl with a clear face, but her expression was full of jumping. Ruoyu, I might be targeted by certain people. 
they won't let me continue my research, and even the entire Xianling clan might be wiped out as a result. If it really comes to that time you release some of your clan members into the ancestral land, then immediately activate the Xianling Grand Formation to enter the void space and wait for the right time to come out again. Su Ruoyu, whose appearance was still clear and beautiful at that time, keenly noticed that her own master's tone sounded like she was explaining the aftermath, and looked at True Lord Xian Ling's back, with two more tear tracks on her face, and will the master die? When True Lord Xian Ling was silent and didn't answer, the young girl's cries became louder, and her tone took on a bit of madness. Master is so strong even if the other seven true lords join forces they can't leave master behind. How could master die? I don't believe it. Hearing the heartbreaking cries of the young girl behind him, the man in front of him let out a quiet sigh. Then he turned his head, revealing a very handsome face. The man laughed gently. Little Ruoyu why are you still crying? Who said that the master is going to die? It's just that the master is going to close the death barrier once, and we won't be able to see each other for a long time. Did the master ask you to look after the clan and you refused to help? The young girl sniffed and squeezed out a smile on her tear-filled face. Yes, yes, I will definitely help my master guard the ancestral land and wait for my master to leave the gate. Aha! The sound was followed by a long silence, and only after a long time did a slightly timid voice resound behind the man. Then, then when will master come out of the gate? I don't mean anything else ah. Even if master doesn't say anything Ruoyu will still take care of the clan to guard the ancestral land. It's just that. I also want to leave a thought. Hearing the young girl's words, the handsome looking man let out a light laugh and turned a small half of his face, his expression obscure. When you wait for a person whose qualifications are far superior to mine, I will come out to meet you. Breaking away from her memories, she didn't realize that the crone had burst into tears. It's him, it must be him. Master I've waited. Then, this old crone made a move that was completely unexpected to the others present, and the crone violently folded her hands. A circle of red aura also rose steeply beside her a moment later, but this wasn't sword intent, it was actual blood chi. She began to burn what little blood chi she had left, at the same time those blood beasts that Yi Qingxuan and the others had encountered earlier suddenly all collapsed. A light red blood aura converged on the crone in every direction, and her aura rose rapidly. In the blink of an eye her aura broke through the ascension realm and continued to strengthen at a not-so-slow pace, while the old crone's appearance also changed drastically. The skin on her body whitened and became smooth as far as the eye could see, and the wrinkles on her face disappeared in a few breaths. In less than a moment, a dying crone was transformed into a young girl in her twenties. Such a commotion naturally attracted the attention of several blood-colored beings, and the blood-colored being in the lead looked at the young girl with a cold expression. So it's venerable rain in person. I didn't recognize him just now. I didn't expect that the beauty that was famous in Qiming back then has now turned into an extremely ugly old crone. Hoomph. Luo Fong. Don't be complacent. No matter how you are now back then you were nothing more than a mole cricket in front of your master. The blood-colored being named Xin Feng did not get angry, but continued to speak to himself. The art of blood marriage. It seems that Xin Ling isn't treating you very well either, going so far as to allow you to cultivate such an evil art. But since you've practiced this secret art then I can't keep you. As the words fell, Luo Feng made his move without any warning. A palm fell from above the young girl's head. The strength of the aura far exceeded the transition realm. And even Yi Qingxuan felt that it was much stronger than the Ying Ling that Ao Defeat had summoned back then. A turquoise narrow blade suddenly appeared in the young girl's right hand, and she grasped the hilt of the blade with both hands and met it. Just as Yi Qingxuan was unsure why the old crone who had just watched from the wall suddenly made a move, a voice transmission entered his ears. The voice was crisp and clear, but the vicissitudes of the flavor in it couldn't be concealed in any way. I'll hold them off. You enter that palace quickly. Yi Qingdan heard a ray of confusion flash in his eyes when he heard the voice transmission but still did not immediately do what this so-called rain venerable meant. He just wanted to wait and see what happened until he knew what was going on. The sight returned to the battlefield. The young girl had already clashed with the blood-colored being, and in just an instant, a silhouette landed with a bang. The smoke and dust dissipated, only to see the ground just formed a large pit in the ground a young girl dressed in somewhat shabby clothes with one hand bare sword, one hand to cover the chest, mouth, nose, ears have blood flowed out. The young girl looked at the tallest of the blood-colored beings and said in a single word, Half-step true lord realm. The scarlet living spirit did not continue to strike after getting his hands on him, and sniffed faintly. That's right, this is also thanks to your master. If it weren't for him I probably wouldn't have been able to touch this threshold in my entire life. Su Ruoyu secretly sighed in her heart. Even in her heyday she was only at the great Dao realm, let alone now that she had long since lived up to her peak. Even using the blood marriage secret technique had only raised his cultivation to the peak of the ascension realm, and was still a step away from the great Dao realm, let alone taking on Luofong who was at the half-step true lord realm, but you can't beat it, 
Suddenly, the aura on Su Ruoya's body rose again, as if he had crossed into a new realm, while at the same time the originally deficient blood chi instantly filled up. Judas in his heyday, Luo Feng didn't do anything right away instead he turned his head to look at a few other figures. The rest of that brat will be given to you guys, don't get him killed. When the time comes bring him back to study him properly. In the blink of an eye, three silhouettes surrounded Yi Qingduan, one peak ascension realm, one transitional ninth level, and one transitional fifth level. A flash of a long sword emerged in Yi Qingsuan's hand with a greenish green blade, a sword he had randomly found in the royal residence. Listening to the old man guarding the treasure trove, he said it was a famous sword, but what it was called Yi Qingsuan forgot. Sword because of the person named. He always felt that the reason why the famous sword is called a famous sword in addition to its own forging process, and more importantly is to look at the person who holds it. The greenish long sword emitted a cold aura, and the three blood-colored beings surrounding Yi Qingsuan did not take it lightly. The moment they came up was thunderous. Even the two cultivators who had not reached the ascension realm took out a blood-colored bead and swallowed it, and their cultivation skyrocketed in the blink of an eye. Stepping into the middle of the threshold of the ascension realm, Yi Qingduan eyes some excitement, because since the enlightenment of the Tao he has never enjoyed a battle, when the evil spirit within the mouth of the East China Sea he was only unable to kill it, not how strong it was, but today he had a feeling that perhaps he would be able to fight to the best of his ability. Clang. The sword trembled lightly as if it knew its owner's intention and let out a soft chirp. Yi Qingguan took the lead. Wisps of red light lingered around the sword and went straight at Qian Yi. His grandma, one laugh and then make a move. Do you think I'm a contemplative Rohan? Swish. The sword tore through space. And in the next second Yi Qingsuan's sword tip was only an inch away from Xian Yi. Xian Yi retreated backwards and out, while a small hammer appeared in his hand, holding the handle with one hand and knocking straight towards the tip of the sword. Ding! Sparks flew in all directions, and a stretching and slender sword intent filled the exchange. Xian Yi's face was serious at this time. His free left hand had been resting on top of his right hand at some point, but even so he hadn't gotten the slightest advantage. On the side, the remaining two blood-colored beings who had temporarily reached the ascension realm through alternative means were not idle either, bullying their way up towards Yi Qingduan's sides. Yi Qingdan saw this and the tip of his sword slightly staggered, and his figure suddenly flew towards the blood-colored being with the relatively weakest breath on the left side. His body is like a swimming dragon, and he is unusually robust. Gulp! The tip of the sword entered the body, but there was absolutely no sound of blood and flesh piercing coming out. Instead, Yi Qingsuan only felt as if he had pierced into a puddle of water. The blood-colored being laughed grimly. Surprised, this is a power you can never imagine. Saying that he pushed his palm towards Yi Qingsuan's chest at his heart. Yi Qingsuan could only hold his sword in one hand and meet it with one palm. This time, the one who retreated was Yi Qingduan, who cut shallow traces on the ground for tens of meters, and looked at this blood-colored being with some surprise. Just at the moment when their palms came into contact just now, he only felt that the blood in his body was violently stagnant. His meridian seemed to have suddenly shrunk a bit, and his force was suddenly smaller by a large margin. At the same time, the blood-colored hole on the left shoulder of the opposite blood-colored being was healing at a speed visible to the naked eye. What a weird power. Without being able to think much, the attacks of Xian Yi and the other scarlet being had already arrived in front of Yi Qingsuan. Yi Qingsuan held his long green sword across his chest and violently pushed it forward. A sword intent full of violent intent meeting the attacks of the two. The strength of this sword was far greater than before. Even with the combined efforts of Xian Yi and the other man they still took dozens of steps backward. This was the method of using the red dust sword intent that Yi Qingduan had discovered during this period of time. And since the red dust sword intent contained all sorts of sword out intentions within it, it was natural that the intention could be switched at will. Then if one focused on a sword intent in a sparring match, the power of the outgoing sword could naturally be maximized. Having just tried it, the power was indeed quite a bit purer than the previous sword intent. So far, the only sword stance that Yi Qingxuan had realized on his own was the one Dao sword. And the sword intent contained in it was the Ling Yun intent, which was why it was so powerful when using one Dao. Of course it wasn't that purely one kind of intention sword stance was the most powerful. It still depended on the use in specific battles, and the depth of comprehension of various sword intentions decided. If you combine stopping water and fury sword intent together it is far better than a single sword intent. Seeing that his experiment worked, Yi Qingduan looked greatly energized and took the initiative to kill in the direction of the three blood spirits. And for a while, the three ascension realm immortals only had to avoid the front line for the time being. If Yi Qingsuan's side of the battle was quite a back and forth battle, Su Ruoyu's side was a completely different story. It's even completely lopsided. The young girl that the old crone had transformed into was completely powerless to resist. And if it wasn't for the fact that the blood colored being intended not to kill her, she would have died long ago. Bang! 
Another palm slapped the young girl's body, and the heavy impact could be heard even from tens of meters away. Boom! Su Ruoyu fell heavily onto the ground. This time the young girl has not stood up for a long time. Cough. A long time later accompanied by two coughs before a delicate figure slowly stood up. Su Ruoyu herself knew very well that she wouldn't survive today. Forcibly using the secret method to reverse her chi and blood and return to her peak period. But she was so upset. She still wanted to see him. Even if it was just for a glance. At least let yourself know that he was still alive. The leader of the Xianling clan was still around. One day. 100. 000 years after true lord Xianling's seclusion. 10. 000 years after Su Ruoyu crossed into the great Dao realm. The Xianling clan was attacked by several hostile races. And the visitors were so aggressive and ruthless that half of the clan was killed or injured. She followed true lord Xianling's original instructions to transfer some of the clansmen with stronger potentials to the ancestral land. Which prevented the scourge of extinction. At that time, it wasn't that she hadn't been to the place where true lord Xianling was in seclusion. But no matter how much Su Ruoyu shouted outside no one ever came out. At that time, she had a bad feeling in her heart. And later, because of her limited lifespan, she had to practice the secret art of blood marriage to renew her life. During this time the clansmen of the Xianling clan became especially depressed because of the loss of their leader. Su Ruoyu had once thought of intervening but she couldn't even convince herself and in the end she could only let it happen. This practice led to the present, hundreds of thousands of years later, leaving only her as the only cultivator in the entire Xianling clan, and in order to live out her days with minimal consumption of her qi and blood, she could only seal her spiritual energy in blood qi, turning into the appearance of an old crone, raising his head. He took one more look at the silver white palace high in the sky, and glanced at Yi Qingxun who was pressuring Xian Ye's trio to fight. Su Ruoyu's face flashed with a touch of despondency, but her eyes contained a sense of anticipation. Maybe death is another way to reunite, and that Luo Feng had obviously lost interest in continuing to fish for so long. Perhaps that person had really disappeared into the river of time. Luo Feng gently raised his palm, then slowly clenched his fist, after which he violently pushed it forward. Su Ruoyu closed her eyes and quietly waited for the destiny that belonged to her. But just as the fist was about to touch Su Ruoyu's body, which seemed as if it might fall at any moment, a silver white light dropped down from the heights, cloaking Su Ruoyu's entire person. The fist momentum came to an abrupt end. Then Luofone was like a mouse seeing a cat retreating hundreds of feet at a speed that could not be captured by the naked eye. On the other side, the three blood spirits who were fighting with Yi Qingdan also suddenly trembled. Their movements froze, and when they were not paying attention, they were chopped out by Yi Qingdan's sword by a distance of a thousand feet. But the three stopped their bodies ignoring their injuries and quickly converged with Luo Feng, all staring blankly at the silver white beam of light that descended from the sky. They sensed a familiar aura in it, which was very faint, but it caused them to throw in the towel and not have the slightest desire to continue. Shaking his arm, Luo Feng forced himself to calmly tilt at his head and shouted, Shen Ling, you give me out. The revenge of that year's banishment will definitely come to an end today. The moment the words fell, the golden lines at the border of the ancient treasure called the Door of Exile began to flow once again. Silky sounds emanated from inside the portal, and a faint wisp of aura was transmitted through the portal, causing Yi Qingdan to be shaken. Yi Qingxuan didn't use his full strength during the battle just now, and he was even confident that even if he couldn't win against Luo Feng, he would be able to escape gracefully. But at this moment, the wisp of breath revealed from the portal. He was very sure that even if he recovered the three layers of strength he had used to suppress that East Sea evil spirit, he would not be a match for the owner of this breath. The noise grew louder and louder, like the owner of the scent could come to earth through the portal in the next second. But suddenly in Yi Qingxuan and other people do not pay attention to a bead steeply appeared in the portal directly above. Strands of light halo pouring down, did not enter the portal in the center of the void. Shen Ling, you're bold. A bellowing cry came out from the end of the door of exile, like the first clap of winter thunder. It caused the bodies of the four blood-colored beings to tremble in unison and shrink their necks but there was no sound in response. Only the halo at the head of the exile gate grew more and more. The tremors of the portal became less and less audible, and the place of emptiness in the center became more and more solid. Do you really want to make an enemy of me? Do you know what kind of identity the person behind me has? The voice behind the portal seemed to have softened, and his voice could not help but whisper a lot, and his tone was not as grumpy as the one before. One breath, three breaths, five breaths, ten breaths before a disembodied voice came from high in the sky. This caused Su Ruoyu, who was enveloped by the light pillar, to raise her head all of a sudden, her eyes eager, looking around as if she was searching for something. So what if I know? What does it matter to you if the person behind you has a noble identity? Can it be that your hallowed true lord is just a loyal dog that relies on its master's power? The voice behind the portal stalled, then burst into a rage. 
Shen Ling, as a fellow true lord you have insulted me so much, today I will make you pay even if I have to spell Dao rule shattering, rumble, only to see the golden light around the portal that had just subsided reappear, and a big blood-colored foot appeared in Yi Qingxuan and the other's line of sight, followed by full feet, calves and thighs, just then an illusory light gathered three feet in front of the portal and slowly coalesced into a figure, a voice that was not as indistinct as the one before resounded in mid-air, he he, Su Shen Yu you still can't control your temperament like this, I've long said that this is not good. Su Ruoyu on the ground looked at the familiar back and covered her mouth with death, but there was still a trace of blood flowing out from her fingers. Humph, you're composed, but how much better are you than me now that you're half dead? The man with his back to Yi Ching Tsuan and the others didn't answer, he just waved his hand at the portal. Go back, or I'll have to get real. Crowd, why does this image always feel like an adult urging a child to go home early? I don't, I must return to earth today and you will not stop me, and being the same true lord what makes you think that your half-dead appearance will be stronger than the hundreds of thousands of years I spent honing myself in that hellhole, instantly half of the figures in the portal were among them, and the movement continued, ha, the silver lit man yawned, then there's no talk, the words did not fall, suddenly the man with his back to a few people suddenly made a move, a kick out, looking at the force is not big, but half of the body exposed to the blood-colored silhouette instantly disappeared, following that, a loud roar came out from the other side of the portal. How could it be? The peerless king realm. When did you break through? Su Qianyang's voice on the other side of the portal was much weaker. Not as neutral as before. It was thought that the previous kick was more powerful than the crowd thought. Yi Qingguan looked at the man high in the air with his back to the crowd. Dressed in nebula robes. And froze a little. Can a fight be that simple? After contemplating for a moment. Yi Qingxuan raised his head with a calm expression. Only a glint in his eyes grew brighter as if he had opened a new door. You all boost your strength. Wouldn't someone as normal as me? For Scarlet Beings and Su Chanyu, average killing power. Full of insults. Screw your grandma. It doesn't matter if your strength is true monarch or king realm. I only want to return to the earth this time I'm here. So let me or let me not. Back to earth for what? Meet someone and ask something. The person on the other side of the portal didn't seem to care in the slightest about the information, and didn't hesitate to spell out his purpose. Atmosphere at this time returned to the previous silence. The man just casually asked, also did not expect the silhouette to answer so dry, being so honest, it makes it a little hard for him to make a move, suddenly the man in the nebula robe's eyes lit up and slowly turned his head, what about you guys, are you here to get revenge on me, the several blood colored beings, with the exception of Xian Yi, froze at the same time, and then spoke as fast as they could, no, 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 we're just out to have some fun. Just playing around? True Lord Xian Ling turned his head to look at the several blood spirits while giving Su Ruoyu a glance with a soft gaze. The chi and blood in little Ruoyu's body is almost depleted by you guys. You said that you guys are just having fun, so do you want me to come and play with you guys as well? For the first time, the tone of True Lord Xian Ling's voice took on a wisp of anger, frightening a few people to the point that their hearts trembled. We'll help Venerable Rain replenish his chi and blood here. As the words fell, the three chi and blood forces converged into Su Ruoyu's body as if they didn't want money. Su Ruoyu's body was like a bottle filled with sponges, recklessly absorbing these uncountable blood chi. At the same time the bodies of the several blood spirits were constantly becoming illusory, and in the end one could even faintly see the scene behind the figures. Luo Feng and the other blood spirits. Ooh hoo, we just came out and had to bleed. We're suffering in our hearts. A blood red halo spread out from Su Ruoyu's body which was the overflow of blood chi that the body could not accommodate, but her face stayed staring at the face that she could only see in her dreams every so often, sobbing uncontrollably, true lord Xian Ling looked at Su Ruoyu and smiled gently, wait for me a little longer, aha, Su Ruoyu nodded her head fiercely, Luo Feng and the others were like, ah shucks, true lord Xian Ling did not know if he had intentionally or unintentionally turned his head several times without stopping for a moment on Yi Tsuan, as if he did not exist, after looking at Su Ruoyu the line of sight rested straight on Xian Yi, a wisp of complexity flashing through his eyes, how have you been all these years, he he, Xian Yi laughed coldly and said in a slightly deflated tone, thanks to you, it's good, now it's only half a step away from the great Tao realm, true lord Xian Ling nodded seriously, that's good, Xian Yi, forcibly suppressing the blood chi that escaped because of his fluctuating state of mind, Xian Yi asked in a hateful voice, why did you send me to that place in the first place, do you know how I've lived these hundreds of thousands of years? You know what? The last few words Xian Yi almost growled as he said them to True Lord Xian Ling, but True Lord Xian Ling did not react in the slightest. This caused Luo Feng, whose figure was somewhat illusory on the side, to curse in his heart. Asterisk 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 asterisk. This shitty connection is different. 
Only after a long time did True Lord Xin Ling let out a sigh and asked Xin Yi rhetorically, If you don't do so, do you think that with your strength you could have the slightest chance of surviving in that era? Don't be a hypocritical do-gooder here, you sent me to that hellhole and you must think I can survive? At least there's a glimmer of a chance. Bullshit, I got this by fighting for my life over and over again and you had nothing to do with it. True Lord Xin Ling always had a calm face, but if one looked closer one would find a touch of deeply hidden self-blame in his eyes. If he had a choice, who would send his own brother to that dark place? Back then, because he had touched something he shouldn't have, anyone with a bloodline connection to him couldn't escape the purge. That sweeping power not to mention Xin Yi and the Xin Ling clan. Even Xian Ling himself didn't have the slightest grasp to resist it and could only lead the entire clan to flee into the land of nothingness. But even so, he still ended up half dead. And the Xian Ling clan existed in name only. Suddenly, Xian's voice calmed. Alright, I don't want to bring up things from the past. If you still really think that you have me as your brother, you won't stop us from today's matter. As soon as these words came out, the several figures on the side of the room perked up and looked at True Lord Xian Ling expectantly. True Lord Xian Ling shook his head and said in a firm tone, It's not time for you guys to come out yet. As soon as the words left his mouth, Xian Ye's face turned ironic as he stared at True Lord Xian Ling with wide eyes. True Lord Xian Ling's sleeve swung violently, and the four blood spirits came to the side of the exile gate. And with another flick of his sleeve, he laid down a boundary. Yi Ching Wan only saw True Lord Xian Ling's lips move slightly, and then the faces of several people in Xian Ye kept changing. From anger, to doubt, to shock, and finally a touch of excitement even surfaced. A quarter of an hour later, the boundary dissipated and True Lord Xian Ling's words once again resounded in the field. But don't worry, at most 500 years, you'll be able to come back from that place, and at that time, I definitely won't stop you, and I'll even help you get out of the trap. This time, not only was Xian Ye's group silent, even the True Lord named Su Qian Yang on the other side of the portal was silent. After a long time, a somewhat hoarse voice came out, Good. The pitch black colored portal then emitted a suction force, and Xian Ye's few people allowed themselves to fall into it with only a little resistance. The portal then shuddered violently and flew upwards, eventually coming to rest in the sky directly below the silver white palace, like a pallet holding up the entire palace. At the same time the blood color on the blood moon in the sky slowly faded away, changing back into a round silver white full moon. Yi Qingguan watched the blood moon dissipate step by step to turn back into a silver moon. He felt that there was a divine power flowing in it but the time was too short for him to figure it out. Turning back, Yi Ching Tsuan was startled. At some point, that Xian Ling true lord who was originally still in the sky had now arrived in front of him, positively looking at him with a smile on his face, his gaze radiant and bright as a river of stars. Lord Sword Immortal, long time no see, eh? Yi Ching Chen froze, and Su Ruoyu, who was not far away, also froze. The Ascension Realm was the realm of immortals as understood by ordinary people. But in the eyes of some transcendent beings it was only just entering the door of the Great Tao. In the ancient times, there were still two realms above this realm, the Great Tao realm and the True Monarch realm, and the only way to be honored as a great power was to reach the True Monarch. And since his own master had stepped into the True Lord realm hundreds of thousands of years ago, his current strength was even more unfathomable. Yi Ching Tsuan but at Ascension realm of sword repair just, even if the strength of the sword repair in the same realm of the general rare enemy but also not so much that a true monarch to degrade their status to honor the word adults it. Yi Ching Dan bowed slightly and said in a deep voice, senior adult word Ching Dan really can't bear. Senior call me Ching Dan can. Yi Ching Duan followed up by asking, there are still seniors who claim to have seen me, but Ching Duan doesn't have the slightest impression of when and where he has seen seniors ah, hearing the doubt in Yi Ching Suan's words. Xian Ling just laughed. I'll see you. I'll definitely see you. Yi Qingduan was somewhat speechless as he listened to True Lord Xian Ling's somewhat perfunctory reply, but suddenly remembered something that had been troubling him all night. Dare I ask senior? This time we mistakenly entered Jingguan City was it senior's doing? Yi Qingtsuan had been wondering why he had improvised to take that goat path that was covered in grass ever since he had known about the uncomplicated nature of this ancient city. He wasn't sure whether it was the will of heaven in the underworld or whether someone was doing it on purpose. If it was the latter then the most likely person would be the Xian Ling True Lord. True Lord Xian Ling nodded without any concealment. I detected your aura within the ancestral ground, so I used a divine art to purposely lure you here. True Lord Xian Ling paused at this point and sighed, his tone slightly heavy. Alas, in fact, it is still a bit early to see you now. Only that this wisp of my residual soul can't hold out much longer. I'm afraid that I will immediately fall into a deep slumber. There are some things that I think about or have to talk to you about. Although Yi Ching Suan's heart was still full of doubts, he still straightened his face and hung his head. Senior, but there is no harm in saying so. Xian Ling nodded. 
and then with a wave of his sleeve a boundary that was many times more solid than the one he had just created enveloped the two of them. Feeling the strength of the boundary, Yi Qingduan had a clearer perception of True Lord Xianling's strength, and at the same time, he became more and more curious about why True Lord Xianling had been reduced to a wisp of residual soul. Sword, never mind it's better to call you by your name now, so as not to distract you. True Lord Xianling changed his name and asked Yi Qingsuan a question that had no boundary to answer. Yi Qingsuan, what do you think of this world? Yi Qingduan heard the words in his eyes blank. How is the world? Is it that the landscape environment? Or humanities and customs? Or is it wide or not? In the final analysis, he is just a young man who is less than a year old, and has not traveled to many realms despite his talent. In the past 25 years, the boundaries he was familiar with were only three places. Xu Zhou, Yin Yang Dao Sect and Peach Blossom Town, but compared to the entire Qingming world, the three together were only a corner of the world, which made Ji Qingdan how to evaluate how this world was. Perhaps sensing the disbelief of this amazingly talented young man in front of him, True Lord Xian Ling changed his question. In other words, do you think that there is more goodness or malice in this world, and that there are more good people or more evil people in all this red dust? Although this question was still very broad, it at least gave Yi Qingdao the direction to answer. After contemplating for a moment, Yi Qingdan wore a smile on his face and spoke confidently. What senior asked? Qingdan thinks that no matter if it's the intention of good and evil, or the number of good and bad people should be 50-50. Oh, why? True Lord Xianling waited for Yi Qingsuan's explanation with interest. Yi Qingsuan organized the language before continuing. The late generation believes that the world whether it is good and bad, or good and evil are relative. Not absolutely inclined to which side. My mother used to tell me a story called Lost and Found. A long time ago there was a hunter in the mountains, a family of three living deep in the mountains. In the cold winter of a year when the harvest was bad, the family had neither spare food nor money. In order to survive they had to go into the mountains to hunt. And likewise, an adult boar in a boar burrow in the mountains is planning to brave the snow to go out and forage for food to help his kids through the winter. As fate would have it, the hunter and the boar met, and both of them at the same time set their eyes on a hare, which was at that moment approaching the hunter's trap, and would soon fall into it. But at that moment the boar lurking on the sidelines saw the hare approaching, its body jumped up violently, and its forelegs pounced towards the hare, touching the trap and causing it to open prematurely, and losing all its efforts. As soon as the hunter was angry, he pulled his bow to full string and strung an arrow. Shoo! An arrow pierced the heart. The rabbit was frightened and ran away, and the hunter killed the boar with an arrow, which he brought back to keep his family safe throughout the winter. And that hare, in return for his kindness, gave a large portion of his grain to the boar's family, and the boar's family survived that winter. After the story was told Ji Qingduan paused. If for the boar's family, that hunter is undoubtedly not a vicious murderer, but for the hunter's family he is undoubtedly a hero who preserved the family's life. If this matter alone, the boar wanted to kill the rabbit is malicious, but in the end the boar family was able to survive the winter with the kindness of the rabbit, which is also considered malicious to bear good fruit. Therefore, I believe that one person is good or bad, one thing is good or evil is relative. Each person can be a good person or a bad person. Good intentions can change bad intentions, and vice versa. It is therefore evident that the good and the bad in the world are all 50-50. Yi Qingduan spoke faster and faster at the back of his speech, and his expression became more and more self-satisfied. Pa 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 pa, a burst of applause rang out, but true Lord Xianling didn't have any half-smile in his eyes. Yi Qingduan asked suspiciously, Senior, but is there anything that the late generation has said that is wrong? The Xianling true lord shook his head. No, the story is well told. But, it's bullshit. Yi Qingsuan you really have seen this incident with your own eyes. Are you sure that the rabbit will definitely fall into the trap? Are you sure the hunter didn't see the boar in advance and deliberately lured it over? Are you sure about any of this? If you don't know for sure, what makes you think that good and bad and evil in the world are 50-50? Is it hard to believe that all of your red dust sword Dao is from books, or epiphanies you've heard from others? True Lord Xianling asked five questions in a row his tone gradually increasing. Yi Qingdan's face turned white. A crunching sound was born in his heart for no reason, and a wisp of crack appeared steeply on the pure and flawless sword heart in his body, which was exceptionally conspicuous and piercing. A silence fell within the boundary, and Yi Qingduan actually had an urge to retreat in the face of true Lord Xianling's questioning, but it was suppressed by him. After half a pillar of incense, Yi Qingduan forced down the palpitations in his heart and looked up at true Lord Xianling, eyes solemn, hands folded, then made a deep bow a long time could not afford. A voice filled with the tone of begging for guidance came out. Light dust is stupid. Please teach me senior. True Lord Xianling looked at Yi Qingsuan who bowed his head and made a bow. A trace of appreciation flashed in his eyes, 
It is not easy for a young man to be exuberant but he is able to abstain from arrogance and impatience. For geniuses, it's even more difficult to do this dozens, hundreds of times harder than normal people. Good. Then Yi Ching Duan, listen carefully today. I'm only going to say it once. If you want to be enlightened in the red dust, you can't just say what others say about the red dust, or what others say about how this matter is. You have to see it yourself. Think about it, and then make up your mind. True Lord Xin Ling's tone was serious, and his voice was like a loud bell knocking on top of Yi Ching Suan's sword heart. In an instant, the sword heart that originally had a trace of cracks violently shattered, then quickly regrouped and pieced together into a new sword heart. The new sword heart was transparent, in which the sword's aura was gradually converging, flickering with the slightest hint of haze, like a piece of finely crafted fine glaze, glittering, looking at Yi Ching Suan who was caught in an epiphany. True Lord Xian Ling quietly wiped the fine sweat on his forehead with his sleeve. Grandma's four beasts, giving such a heavy job to Ben Jun, doing this hookup is more stressful than my own breakthrough. It was only after a full hour that Yi Ching Tsuan came to his senses. As soon as he opened his eyes, a considerable evening breeze suddenly kicked up in the woods. I don't know if it was an illusion, but true Lord Xian Ling felt that Yi Ching Tsuan's entire aura had changed. Although the previous Yi Ching Tsuan was not arrogant, the inner arrogance of the young sword immortal could not be concealed, which also belonged to the common problem of young people. But now Xian Ling Jun feels that the opposite side of the standing is not like a sword fairy but like it just practiced the sword of the child in general to all things are full of curiosity. There is no other characteristic of such a person, only the eight characters of being present and doing everything himself. Many thanks to Senior for helping me achieve enlightenment. Lightning Dust can't thank you enough, Yi Qingduan said very solemnly. Then Yi Qingduan took out a small sword seal. In the future, if there is an errand Senior as long as you crush the sword seal, no matter how far away it is, Qingduan will be there. This epiphany was no less important to Yi Ching Tsuan than that enlightenment in Peach Blossom Town back then. This gave him a minimum core principle for his Red Dust Sword Dao. When practicing in the Red World, one should encounter things personally, deal with things with one's own heart, and level things. True Lord Xian Ling's eyes lit up. He had done so much not just for the sword seal. Yi Ching Tsuan didn't know how heavy the weight of the sentence was, but he was incredibly clear. Good talk, good talk. Right, there's one more thing. I observe that your divine sea is withered and your dantian is broken why is that? Yi Ching Dan smiled helplessly, and then told the whole story of the battle of the dragon beheading and the use of the secret art broken army, the consequences, and the rampant sword intent after the enlightenment. True Lord Xian Ling pondered for a moment after hearing this, then his right hand lifted up and made a slight move, and a beat emitting starlight appeared in front of Yi Ching Duan's eyes. True Lord Xian Ling said softly, I can't repair your dantian, but I do have a way to restore this divine sea of yours. This divine sea of yours should not have injured its origin. It has only undergone some sort of mutation, requiring far more nutrients than the previous sea of sense, which is why it appears to be very withered. This bead is called the soul devouring bead. It is a defensive divine soul secret treasure. Usually if you put it in the divine sea it can warm up the divine sea. And when someone else uses a divine soul attack on you, unless their cultivation is far superior to yours it will be absorbed by it to provide nutrients for your divine sea. After saying that, True Lord Xian Ling handed the soul-devouring pearl towards Yi Ching Tsuan without the slightest bit of procrastination, as if he was throwing a stone from the roadside. Yi Ching Tsuan was stunned, then hastily caught it with both hands. Elder, this is too expensive. I, take that. Yi Ching Duan was blocked before he could finish his sentence. Seeing the look on True Lord Xian Ling's face that did not allow for rejection, Yi Ching Duan could only take the soul-devouring pearl. This was exactly what he needed right now and Yi Ching Tsuan could only silently remember this favor in his heart. Well, time is running out, and I have one last thing to say to you. Did you remember those patterns carved with golden lines on that pitch black portal before? True Lord Xian Ling inquired. Yi Ching Dao nodded. He was already meeting these patterns for the second time and was naturally very familiar with them. Okay, the third thing I'm going to say has to do with these patterns. If you see these patterns elsewhere in the future, remember, you must take a detour and hide as far away as possible. When True Lord Xian Ling said this, his expression was more solemn than even before, and Yi Ching Tsuan nodded seriously. After these two times Yi Ching Duan also found out, but all these in the word saint and the things with his current strength cannot help them, so it was with the dry branches of that eastern sea, and so it was with the pitch black portals of this Jin Guan city. However, Yi Ching Tsuan was still somewhat undeterred and asked, Then senior, what if I can't hide? True Lord Xian Ling froze, then put his hands on Yi Ching Tsuan's shoulders and solemnly said, then you'll just have to carry a marble with you, and remember to write your first name and birth date in advance. Why? Yi Ching Duan was a bit puzzled. I've never heard that this thing can also ward off evil spirits? 
so that when you die you'll at least have a monument to recognize who you are. Yi Qingduan, crying face, well, my mission is accomplished, is there anything else you want to ask? Yi Qingduan had been waiting for true Lord Xianling to say this, and immediately asked the two questions he wanted to know the most. Senior, what realm is above the ascension realm? Also, is Saint an honorific or a realm? True Lord Xianling looked deeply at Yi Qingzuan, his eyes filled with complexity and a touch of deep scorn. I can't answer you the second question, because it involves great karma, and it's not something you can know yet now. As for the first question, the Ascension Realm is actually also known as the Void God Realm is considered to have just jumped out of the mortal realm. Further up is the Great Tao Realm, which in turn is divided into the Great Tao Realm, the True Monarch Realm, and the King Realm, and in these realms what cultivators cultivate is no longer spiritual power but another kind of power, which we call the power of the Great Tao. The power of the Great Tao. Yi Ching Suan muttered. This was the direction of his future cultivation naturally he had to figure it out. Then what is the power of the laws? Elder? True Lord Xianling's face changed slightly as he said in a deep voice. You can understand that the end of the power of the Great Tao is the power of the laws. And the power of the laws has the magical power of regeneration and immortality. Yi Ching Duan spent a moment digesting the newly known information today, with a look of expectation and excitement surfacing on his face. Looking at the Xianling True Lord on the side with a smile in his eyes, as if there was a color of reminiscence flashing by. Well, the time is almost up. This token is for you. It will serve its purpose in due time. The words fell. Yi Qingduan hands appeared out of thin air a silver white token. The front side wrote the word Jin Guan. The reverse side engraved with the word Xianling. Handwriting on one side of the bold. On the other side of the beautiful obviously not from the hand of a person. Elder. This token should. Yi Qingduan was just about to open his mouth to ask how this token was used when a wisp of impatience appeared on true Lord Xianling's face. Casually, he perfunctorily said, You'll know when the time comes. With that, he waved his big sleeve. In an instant, space was reversed and Yi Qingdao's sight was plunged into darkness. When Yi Qingzuan's sight was restored again, he had already returned to the fork in the road where he had come from, and beside him were Xiao Yuan Shan and the others who were still unconscious. Yi Qingzuan walked towards the entrance of the path leading to Jin Guan City. His hands pushed aside the bushes and looked inward, only to see that the depths were covered with thorns, and he couldn't even find a place to land. It was as if this day and night had been a dream. Yi Ching Tsuan looked at the token engraved with the words Xianling, Jin Guan on his hand, hesitated a little, but still put it into the storage ring. At that exact moment, the sky lightened up, and a ray of sunrise fell in Yi Ching Dao's eyes, mirroring each other. At the same time, in the real Jing Wenchang ancestral ground, True Lord Xianling looked at Su Ruoyu with a very tender gaze, not withdrawing his eyes for a long time, causing Su Ruoyu to be somewhat at a loss for words. She asked in a slight panic, Master, has Ruoyu become ugly? True Lord Xianling laughed lightly, his mellow voice resounding, No, it's become even more flavorful. Master, you, you're a modest. After saying that, Su Ruoyu's face was colored with a touch of redness, just like the firstborn morning sun, which was beautiful. Agu. Which son of a bitch farted without covering up, almost shook me to death. A rough voice rang out, and several barricade-like men on the official road woke up in response. Ha, huh, it's dawn? Ah, evil Taoist, why are you on top of me? After a brief moment of hand-wringing, Xiao Yuan Shan and the others hurriedly got up and looked around to search. The party breathed a sigh of relief when his eyes landed on a large green stone. At this time, Yi Ching Suan's Xian Huang body refining technique was also completed, lightly squeezing his fist with a lot more force than before. The night before, Yi Ching Suan's power of moonlight had already met the requirements, and now he only needed to absorb the violet chi of the morning glory to gather the two heaven and earth chi to cultivate the first level. Yi Ching Duan estimated that if he cultivated the first level, his physical strength should be equivalent to a peak Yuan Ying cultivator. The crowd not far away naturally saw Yi Ching Suan's cultivation, and a thought could not help but pop up in their hearts at the same time. So it turns out that Prince Slash Highness Yi is practicing the method of body refining. In the Qiming continent there was no shortage of cultivators who had low aura cultivation talent but outstanding body refining talent. Similar to the cultivation of Reiki, physical cultivation also had realm divisions, divided into 11 realms of Wufu, which corresponded to the 11 major realms from body refinement to ascension realm. If it was a martial artist of the first four realms that would be laughed at even in an even smaller immortal Tao sect, because even if a martial artist's physique was strong, as long as he couldn't get close enough, he could only be consumed alive. However, starting from the fifth realm of Wushu, Wushu were able to travel through the air with their physique alone, and that's when the advantages of physical cultivation manifested, as long as they were close. Aura cultivators, unless they had magic treasures to protect their bodies, 
would be crushed when they touched them and would be powerless to fight back. If that nine realm and ten realm of martial artists to strike, lifting the fist will be like heavenly thunder rolling. A fist smashed down even if it is a magic treasure divine weapons cannot withstand a few hammers. Only Xiao Yuan Shan was slightly puzzled as he looked at Yi Qingguan who was not far away. Is the speed of a fifth realm martial artist faster than his own harmonization realm cultivator? But as a subordinate, Xiao Yuan Shan is very clear. Some things since the master does not want you to know, then even if you know, you have to pretend to understand. This is worldly wisdom. A few moments later, several people resumed their journey slowly, with Pu Zun traveling alongside the carriage. Fellow Taoist Yi what exactly happened last night? The poor Taoist lost consciousness after hearing a loud bang, and I don't know anything after that. Yi Ching Tsuan gently picked open the curtain and said somewhat helplessly to Pu Zun, Taoist Master Pu, you've asked me this question three times, how come it's still not over? I've told you that you think that if you, a cultivator of the god refining realm, have fallen, I, a person with a shattered dantian, will still be able to stand? Pu Zun pursed his lips, he also knew that Yi Ching Tsuan's words made sense, but Yi Ching Tsuan is the first of several people to wake up, Pu Zun always felt that he should know more. Silence returned to the group. Only a few sounds of Li Xian and Xiao Yuan Shan's bickering came from the front from time to time. I don't know if it was Yi Ching Tsuan's illusion, but he always felt that Li Xian had changed since the last time he was transcended by Pu Zun. I don't speak in so many words, and I'm much more open-minded. Yi Ching Dan did not ask more. This is a good thing. Reading is for reasoning, but cannot be used only for reasoning, so it is not read by the sages. Yi Ching Dan walked along the official road for another two days and two nights, not stopping much along the way except for three meals and sleeping. Finally, he arrived at the border between Qingzhou and San Yuan continent, Qingfeng City, early in the morning of the third day. A few people saw the Qingfeng City entrance from a long distance away, and there were many officials and soldiers sealing the road for investigation, as if some major case had happened. He Z1 pulled a just out of the city of middle-aged man after a few points to learn that the original Qingzhou in the past few days is really a big event. It turns out that in the past half a month, a mysterious assassin suddenly appeared in Qingzhou, and that assassin not only had high cultivation but also excellent concealment means, along the way specializing in finding those who roam the countryside, for the evil assassination, each shot without exception, are a move to kill, originally assassins this kind of thing from time to time, and is doing this kind of chivalry, originally the government did not care much, but yesterday this assassin stabbed out a big basket, that assassin even went directly into the Qing king's residence to assassinate him, and met the prince of Hui who happened to be a guest in the Qing king's residence, almost causing the king of Hui to become directly extinct. Now the king of Qing was furious and ordered the whole Qingzhou to find this assassin even if he dug up the ground, hence the scenario at this point. Li Xian's eyes showed astonishment after hearing this. This assassin is so powerful. Entering the king's residence to carry out an assassination can still be able to retreat in one piece. He Zihuan corrected. That's not true either. According to what that old brother just said, that assassin was hit by a slap from the guest secretary of the king of Hui and should be deeply and seriously injured. Xiao Yuan Shan cut his voice and joked, that Prince Wei is rumored to have done a lot of evil, it would be good if he really died. Commander Xiao, be careful what you say. He Zihuan stopped Xiao Yuan Shan with a loud voice. After all, this was the Green King's territory, and there were Green King's eyes everywhere, so it was better to be careful. Yi Qingguan waved his hand towards a few people. The carriage continued to move forward, and sure enough, when he reached the entrance of the city Yi Qingduan in the carriage heard a questioning voice. Where are you from? Who is sitting in the car? What are you doing in Qingzhou? And where are you going? Xiao Yuan Shan took out the identity information he had prepared long ago. This official. We are merchants from Shuzhou. This time we are going to Luoyang to purchase commodities. It's just a way to Qingzhou. Please also make it easy for the official. Said Xiao Yuan Shan as he quietly slipped a small bag of spirit stones to the official. The officer and soldier immediately smiled with joy and waved his hand as he was about to let go, but a sudden loud cry came from behind him. Wait! Xiao Yuan Shan frowned and turned his head to look, only to see a general in martial armor walking towards several people. Wang Lu was not discovering what was wrong with Yi Ching Tsuan and his party. It was just that after seeing Xiao Yuan Shan's generous offer, his heart could not help but rise with the thought of slaughtering the wrongdoer. Wang Lu stayed less than three feet in front of the carriage and looked at Xiao Yuan Shan's several people with some contempt. Qingzhou is not a peaceful place these days, so naturally the inspection should be stricter. Let the people inside the carriage come out. The corner of Xiao Yuan Shan's eyes narrowed slightly when he heard this, but Yi Qingzuan's voice came from behind him. Who is it that wants to see my lord? When Wang Lu saw that the one who came out was a handsome looking male with an extraordinary temperament, his mind became more and more active. Turning to the officer and soldier behind him, he scolded. How do you check this inspection? 
and dare to let go without even coming out. If you really let the assassin go, can you afford it? Then he turned back to look at Yi Ching Tsun unsuspectingly. This general may have heard that the assassin is a young man, whose age happens to be similar to that of this gentleman. Speaking of this Wan Lu did not continue, just inclined his head to look at Xiao Yuan Shan, his right thumb and forefinger constantly rubbing. The meaning was obvious. Xiao Yuan Shan glanced at Yi Ching Chen to see the latter nodding, so he took out another bag of spirit stones that was bigger than before and handed it to Wan Lu. Pretending to fawn, he said, General, please keep it, and I have to thank the general for his trouble in this matter. Wang Lu weighed the weight of the spirit stone. His face revealed a look of embarrassment. Aya, look at me I'm really old and don't remember. That assassin was clearly a woman. How could it be your son? Mistake mistake. Release. The carriage restarted slowly out of the border of Qingzhou. Xiao Yuan Shan changed his previous fawning. His face was a bit depressed. If it weren't for the fear of inviting assassins to threaten the duke's safety, my old Xiao would have to beat that petty general half to death. Coincidentally, Yi Ching Tsun pulled open the car curtain and smiled softly. Don't count. That general can't have intercourse for at least a year. The Pu Zun on the side was slightly puzzled by what he said. Why did you say that? Is it possible that the general has an incurable disease? Yi Ching Tsun raised his eyebrows between his eyebrows and said somewhat snidely. When did you, Taoist master, a monk, become so curious as well? Pu Zun scratched his head, smiled somewhat coyly, and stopped speaking. Instead, it was the three of them, he Zi Huan, who remembered Yi Ching Tsun's other layer of identity, the Taoist doctor. Medicine and poison are one and the same. Since it is a Taoist doctor that the means of using poison is certainly not bad. The three of them winced in unison, and secretly decided in their hearts. In the future, we must not upset his highness, or we might not be able to get a heart on when we use it. Catching up on the road is already very boring, and besides, it's still early for the January deadline. Thus, Yi Ching Suan and his party had been walking all the way since they left Qingzhou. In the afternoon of another day, in one of the reed swamps, Yi Ching Suan was holding a reed in his mouth. Lying in the reeds with his eyes closed, not far away was Li Xian, who was reading the sage book, and further away by the stream were He Zi Wan and Pu Zun, who were discussing the supreme principles of life. Brother He, what do you think is the greatest truth in this world? That's naturally the word rites and music spoken by the sages, He Zi Huan said without hesitation. Pu Zun heard but shook his head. Poor Taoist think otherwise. The saints' teachings will only be followed by those who have read the books and will not be very binding on the people of the city or the Buddhist monks, not considered the greatest truth in the world. Is that the supreme words of the Buddha or the Taoist ancestors? This time Pu Zun did not answer immediately, but pondered for a moment before responding. Not really. For example, the current poor Taoist does not know whether to believe in Buddha or honor the Taoist ancestor. Between the two allow desire to rage, is really treasonous. He Zi Huan. Feelings you also know ah, just as the two were still trying to discuss on this issue. A sudden cry of alarm from Ahanyu came from the reeds in the distance. My lord, come over here and see what I've found. A few moments later, Yi Ching Suan and the four of them arrived at the location where Xiao Yuan Shan was, but as far as the eye could see, there were nothing but reeds or reeds. Oh no, there was a puddle of yellowish white liquid that hadn't dried up yet. After seeing the people come together, Xiao Yuan Shan stepped on the liquid that had not yet dried up then pulled the reeds to both sides with both hands. The scene behind the reeds came into view only to see a figure dressed in black robes lying motionless in the reeds. The silhouette even wearing a loose black robe a luscious curve is also very conspicuous. Obviously this person is a woman with a beautiful figure. TSK TSK, Commander Xiao didn't realize that you've learned to hide your love. He Zi Huan scared and laughed, his tone full of snickering. Xiao Yuan Shan's face flushed red and he quickly changed the subject. Gongzi you are a Taoist doctor. Quickly see if this girl is still salvageable? Yi Qingdao nodded. Since receiving the Taoist doctor's inheritance he realized that he always had an unspeakable compassion for the dying. Yi Qingguan does not know if this is the so-called healer's parents, but knows that everything should be in line with the heart of the way to become the road. Yi Qingdan ordered Xiao Yuan Shan to first fight the woman back on top of the carriage, then dismissed the crowd and immediately began to take her pulse. In taking the pulse Yi Qingdan also couldn't help but observe the woman's appearance. A pair of willow leaf eyebrows, a delicate and flawless face, which can be described as a beautiful country especially now that a touch of sickly pallor had surfaced on his face. One could not help but feel a sense of pity rise. A few moments later, Yi Ching Tsun found out the reason for the woman's serious injuries. Her heart veins were damaged. If it wasn't for a special aura protecting the last core place, the woman would have already lost her life. This caused Yi Ching Dao to let out a sigh of relief. Damage to the heart vein alone was not a difficult task for Yi Ching Tsun, and only a heart-nourishing pill was needed. Half a quarter of an hour later, 
Yi Ching Tsuan helped the woman to take the heart nourishing pills and then went out of the carriage. Immediately, Xiao Yuan Shan was ordered to go and find materials to make fire to decoct the medicine, because apart from that fatal wound in her heart, that woman also had quite a number of injuries on her body, both big and small, which needed to be supplemented with spiritual medicine to nourish her. Otherwise, even if you save your life today, it will be difficult for you to cultivate in the future, and you may even die prematurely as a result. Just after arranging these, Yi Ching Tsuan felt that his longevity had increased by another month, which made him feel better again. The increase in longevity made Yi Ching Tsuan couldn't help but think of Xiao Hao. I wonder how this girl's wine store is doing now. Although Yi Ching Tsuan didn't know the specifics, it wasn't hard to guess that the wine store's business should be quite good through the daily increase in longevity. Because of the addition of the woman's injuries, Yi Ching Tsuan and the others didn't rush to depart, but waited in place for the woman to wake up. It wasn't until late afternoon that a faint moan came out of the carriage. Inside the carriage, Gu Qinghan slightly opened her eyes, and what she saw was a piece of bedding embroidered with a large python. She faintly recalled her experience before she fell unconscious. She was slapped by that leaning bullshit guest minister. Her heart and soul trembled violently, and then she fled all the way. On the way, I don't know how many rounds of pursuers were repelled before they fled to the reeds. Along the way if not the master left the true qi to protect the heart vein she would have been unable to hold on. But even with the true qi in, after entering the reeds she was also out of gas and collapsed. In the moment before Gu Qinghan passed out she steeply heard a rustling sound. In order to live, Gu Qinghan exhausted the last strand of breath to make some noise. Now it seems that one's actions should have been noticed and one has stepped in to save one's life. In between Gu Qinghan's memories, she suddenly felt a wind coming from her. With that, the curtain was lifted, and a youth with a handsome face and a hint of a gentle smile at the corner of his mouth walked in, and the youth had a bowl of soup medicine in his hand. Ha, girl you're awake, how do you feel? Yi Qingchen saw that Gu Qinghan had woken up, a hint of joy flashed across his expression, waking up would not require him to feed the medicine, which saved him a lot of trouble. Much better, thanks for saving me. Gu Qinghan's voice seemed to be born with a hint of refusal, and it remained so even when he was so weak. Yi Ching Tsuan smiled and put one hand to gently support Gu Qinghan's back, while handing the soup medicine to Gu Qinghan with one hand. Miss, this is the soup medicine to eliminate the dark disease in your body. You should drink it quickly. Gu Qinghan accepted the medicine bowl with a calm expression, then softly said, My name is Gu Qinghan. Immediately afterward, he drank the soup without hesitation. Yi Ching Dan looked at the double ten woman who dealt with things decisively. A hint of surprise flashed in his eyes, but it passed in an instant. My name is Yi Ching Suan. Then Miss Gu, you have a good rest. I won't bother you anymore. Yi Ching Chen took the medicine bowl and turned around to leave, but Gu Ching Han called out to him softly. Mister, Yi, may I ask if you have any clean clothes here? This was difficult for Yi Ching Suan. Their party was all men. Where did they get women's clothes? But with the mentality of trying, Yi Ching Suan still agreed to let Gu Ching Han wait for a moment while he went out to ask. From Xiao Yuan Shan's question to Li Xian, the three of them all denied without thinking. Just when Yi Qingdao did not express much hope, a flash of green in the night color caught Yi Qingdao's attention. He only saw that at some point, Pu Zun took out a long green dress in his hand, which shone with a shimmering light in the night. Yi Qingdan didn't know how to describe his feelings. Men carrying women's clothes with them were already rare, let alone a male Taoist priest. Pu Zun's face was a little blushing, and he said with some embarrassment, this is something the poor Taoist picked up on the road. So don't misunderstand. Pu Zun's words were instantly greeted with four pairs of blank stares. No matter what the problem of the clothes was solved, Yi Ching Tsuan handed the clothes to Gu Qinghan and then came out. There were no words in the night, and it was not until the sky turned fish belly white the next day that Yi Ching Tsuan woke up. Shortly afterward, Xiao Yuan Shan, Pu Zun, He Zi Wan, and Li Xian woke up in turn. After another half hour or so, a soft sound suddenly came from the carriage. Immediately after that, a beautiful face of a beautiful country appeared in front of the five people, excluding Yi Qingchen and Li Xian, who had already seen Gu Qinghan's appearance. The remaining three people were all wide-eyed and dumbfounded. Gu Qinghan ignored the dumbfounded gazes of several people and slowly got out of the car holding onto the board. She was wearing the very same dress today that Pu Zun had taken out last night, when they wore loose black robes before. The crowd just thought that Gu Qinghan's figure must not be bad, but they didn't expect it to be as good as this. Looking at the pain that flowed from Gu Qinghan's face due to her unhealed injuries and the three people who had already been put under a fixation spell, Yi Ching Tsuan shook his head in hatred, then went up to help to get off the car Gu Qinghan. Gu Qinghan has a helping hand, the body slightly bent forward, the left foot first stepped down to stretch, the whole body suddenly into a bow. The pair of innate spiritual treasures in front of his chest shook slightly, causing the corner of the eye of Yi Ching Tsuan, 
who was on the side, to jump, and then he slowly moved his eyes away. He Zihuan and Xiao Yuanshan and the others, on the other hand, kept secretly chanting in their hearts, Don't look at me if I'm not polite. Don't look at me if I'm not polite. Pu Zun, on the other hand, had his eyes completely in a daze, his eyes staring blankly, unseeing, and muttering under his breath. What a great reasoning. Poor Taoist, convinced. Gu Qinghan came down and first nodded to Yi Qingzun to indicate that she could let go of her supporting hand, and then walked to the center of the several people with light lotus steps, bowing slightly, her vermilion lips gently opened, and an ethereal, clear and cold one emanated from Gu Qinghan, not on purpose, but as if the temperament had been naturally developed by long habit. My little daughter Gu Qinghan thanks you heroes for saving her life. My little daughter will definitely keep this in mind and will return the favor in the coming days. No. No need. As soon as the words fell, a slightly stuttering voice rang out. Gu Qinghan looked up and met a pair of somewhat alarmed eyes. Pu Zun looked at the crowd looking at him and hurriedly pointed at Yi Qingxuan and Xiao Yuanshan to explain. What I mean is that the person who discovered the girl was fellow Daoist Xiao, and the person who saved the girl was fellow Daoist Yi. It has nothing to do with poor Taoist. There is no need to thank me. Gu Qinghan once again saluted Yi Qingxuan and Xiao Yuanshan, and then asked softly, Dare I ask which one of you is Mr. Pu? Hearing his name called, Pu Zun's face flushed with anxiety. Poverty, poverty is. Gu Qinghan turned her head to look at Pu Zun. Qinghan thanks Mr. Pu for the clothes. When Qinghan finds new clothes she will definitely return the original. Pu Zun waved his hand. No no no. Miss Gu this dress is for you. Anyway, it looks good on you. Yi Qingxuan quietly gave Pu Zun a thumbs up. Good job. At this rate this Taoist priest is afraid that he can only be a return Taoist son. Gu Qinghan froze as if realizing something, and his voice chilled a bit. Duke Pu is too kind. Qing Han is not worthy of such precious clothes. When the time comes, it will definitely be returned to the Taoist priest. Gu Qing Han had just put it on last night and realized the extraordinary nature of this green dress. It must be a valuable magic treasure. And she naturally couldn't accept it as she was not related to Pu Zun. Pu Zun didn't realize the steep shift in Gu Qing Han's address and continued to laugh foolishly. This made Ji Qing Xuan couldn't help but hold his forehead and sigh. It seems like there's still a long way to go. During the ensuing conversation, Yi Qingchuan and the others understood more and more about Gu Qinghan's nature. If I had to use eight words to describe it, it would be cool, unusual, thunderous. Gu Qinghan's words were few and far between during the conversation. Most of the time it was Yi Qingchuan and the others asking and Gu Qinghan answering. The usual response is just three or four or five words, or eight at the most. It's really a golden tongue, and I'm sorry for the words. Thunder and lightning. On the other hand, can be seen in Gu Qinghan's behavior and actions. In addition to the beginning of the sedan chair when the face had shown some pain, other times whether it is to drink medicine or walk like a normal person in general, not the slightest C is a seriously injured person. After simply fixing breakfast, Gu Qinghan got up and offered his resignation to Yi Qingxuan and his party. Pu Zun he Xiao Yuan Shan's eyes all flashed with a touch of disappointment as he sniffed, and his mood lowered. But when Gu Qinghan said that her family lived in the capital, and that several people could go to her if they had time to go to the capital. The two men's gazes lit up. Yi Qingguan was also a bit surprised. Things in the world really could not escape the word fate. And when he heard that Yi Qingxuan and his party were also going to the capital to do business, Gu Qinghan froze. In the end, facing the passionate retention of Pu Zun he Xiao Yuan Shan and Gu Qinghan did not make much of an excuse to stay and went on the road together. This changed into a situation where Gu Qinghan was sitting on the carriage, while Li Xian and He Zihuan rode a horse together. Yi Qingchen was riding alone. Yi Qingxuan didn't really care. Staying in the carriage Li he had long been tired of, and was looking for a different way to catch up. Pu Zun he Xiao Yuan Shan's two horsemen rode on both sides of the carriage, like two guards doing their duty. From time to time, he spoke out to inquire about Gu Qinghan's condition. Yi Qingchen, I didn't see you guys being so dutiful when I rode the carriage before. Miss Gu are you thirsty? How about I go get you some water? No need. Thanks to Senior Xiao. Then Miss Qinghan must be in need of some leisure objects. Poor Taoist here has a few volumes of supreme Buddhist scriptures to gift to the girl to relieve her boredom. No, I hate that Buddhist stuff. That's right, little Taoist who wants to read your Buddhist scriptures. I use it to pad the table feet are too thin. Xiao Yuan Shan interrupted on the side, not giving Pu Zun face at all. Hearing that Gu Qinghan hated Buddhists, he quickly changed his words. Yes extremely yes extremely, the poor Taoist is also not used to seeing Buddhists especially that Buddhist scripture. I won't read it even if I sell it. That's why poor Taoist turned to Taoism long ago, and now he's the rightful head of Qingxia Mountain. Gu Qinghan somewhat puzzled. Cool voice came out from within the carriage. Qingxia Mountain? 
When Pu Zun saw Gu Qinghan responding to him, his face was delighted as he hurriedly explained. The poverty clan was newly built not long ago. It's normal that the girl doesn't know about it. Oh, then Gu Qinghan seemed to have lost interest. No matter how Xia Yuan Shan and Pu Zun opened their mouths she didn't reply. As if she had fallen asleep, the two of them continued to sing a monologue without knowing how to stop. Yi Qingguan really couldn't watch anymore. His legs clamped together, and in one go, he ran to the very front to open up the road. Far away from this theater. A three-person theater? One person does not move. Two people sing each other. It is really not much fun. Yi Qingdan and his team were on an open plain. And as far as the eye could see, besides the grass that was no longer on the horse's legs, there were endless cows and sheep. Although the terrain of Sun Yuan continent was not as flat as that of Yuzhou, it was still much better than the barrenness of Shuzhou and the cultivated fields that roamed the hills of Qingzhou. Great for corralling some cattle and sheep. Yi Qingxuan and his party were not the only ones on the official road, but they were all in a hurry and didn't know each other, so no one was disturbing anyone for no reason. For example, Yi Qingduan found a carriage not far from the left front that was very luxurious, with some aura escaping around it. Yi Qingduan certainly wasn't interested because of a hearse, but rather the fact that there was a group of generals following beside that carriage. That general was also not an ordinary government soldier of a big family, or a guard, but a proper army of the hall. Dressed in golden armor with red spear tips, they were proper imperial guards. Yi Qingdan somehow felt intuitively that he and the person inside the carriage would meet sooner or later and would have quite a bit of contact. Just then, the curtains of that carriage were gently drawn up, revealing half of a young man's side face. The man's face was very mediocre. He looked around and looked around, and finally his eyes landed on Yi Qingxuan at the back, and when he saw Yi Qingxuan looking at him, he smiled brightly. Yi Qingdan also lifted the corner of his mouth lightly when he saw this revealing a friendly smile. After watching for a few moments, the man lowered the curtain as if he had lost interest in the scenery outside. Yi Qingduan also turned his sight back to the surrounding cows and sheep, slightly rubbing his stomach. Yi Qingduan shouted, Xiao Yuan Shan, coming, my lord. Before, the five of us men ate almost as well as we did, but tonight, with Miss Gu here, we can't eat that shabbily, don't you think so? Xiao Yuan Shan nodded, and then he saw the cows and sheep walking around, and his eyes lit up. You don't have to say much, my lord, I understand. Immediately afterward, Xiao Yuanshan steered his horse back to the carriage again, as if informing his servant to inform his master that he was about to go out. Miss Gu I'll go buy a few cows and sheep, we'll have a good meal tonight. There was still no movement in the carriage, so Xiao Yuanshan hurriedly gave a wink to Pu Zun. Ahem, Dao Master Pu, my family's son just asked me to call you over, saying that there's something he wants to talk to you about. Pu Zun was still trying to take advantage of Xiao Yuan Shan's absence to chat more with Gu Changhan, so he could only ride his horse closer to Yi Qing Shen when he heard that. A moment later, Yi Qing Suan looked at Pu Zun in front of him, who was also a bit puzzled, with a blank look on his face and tapped his head. Losing one's mind and a silly Taoist priest, Miss Gu you really don't have much luck. Even if Yi Qing Suan didn't ask, he could guess that Gu Qinghan's identity was not simple, and when he took her pulse, he found that she was actually at the god refining stage as well. Coupled with the fact that although the talk is a bit high and cold, but the knowledge of books and reasoning is not as bad, obviously a good family education. This kind of woman Yi Qingguan thinks that Pu Zun and Xiao Yuan Shan cannot be grasped by the two, most likely will be rejected mercilessly by the girl. But these two had one common advantage, and that was an extremely thick skin that had reached that point where it could guard against actual divine powers. If it was a normal rejection perhaps it really couldn't drive the two away, which was why Yi Qingxuan couldn't help but feel a bit of lamentation for Gu Qinghan. Returning to his senses, Yi Qingxuan was the first to speak. Daoist Pu, what kind of person do you think Miss Gu is? It couldn't be helped. As the same man, Yi Qingxuan still decided to point a little bit of Pu Zun. Don't let him fall too deep. As soon as Pu Zun heard that it was related to Gu Qinghan, his expression perked up and he touched his head, smiling somewhat coyly. I think so. Miss Gu is pretty insensible. She must be a great lady from a famous family. And Miss Gu is quite nice and doesn't lose her temper. I think she must be a person with a very gentle nature. Yi Qingduan couldn't help but think highly of Pu Zun in his heart as he listened to the pertinent comments in front of him, but when he heard the next few words, Yi Qingduan only felt, blindness is nothing more than that. Yi Qingchen pointed at Pu Zun's face for a long time without words, and at that exact moment Gu Qinghan also stepped out of the carriage to look this way. Yi Qingduan's face changed, and in the end, he could only breathlessly put down his hand. You're right. Gu Qinghan looked at Yi Qingchen who was looking a bit strange not far away, and her nice-looking willow leaf eyebrows were slightly wrinkled. Intuition told Gu Qinghan that Yi Qingxuan's reaction had something to do with her, 
Gu Qinghan placed one hand across his chest and carefully got out of the carriage, walking straight towards Yi Qingsun and Pu Zun. Sir Yi, Qinghan has something she wants to talk to you about. Can I borrow a step to talk? Yi Qingsun froze slightly, then came back to his senses and smiled. A beautiful person invited me. I dare not disobey. Please. When Gu Qinghan saw Yi Qingsun promise himself, a touch of joy surfaced on his face and his lips lifted slightly. His beauty was unbelievable. The Pu Zun on the side looked dumbfounded again for a while, looking at the backs of the two people who were far away. Pu Zun had no reason to feel that he might have to change to the division once more. This time, it wasn't divine spells or supreme words that he was going to learn. Rather, a city stood in the westernmost part of Shu State, very old, dating back even to shortly after the founding of the Sunset Empire. Originally, it was just a small, insignificant city, but since Feiyu was founded on the western side of the Sunset Empire, the importance of this small city was not the same. A small city that was less than one millionth of the Sunset Empire's territory actually ate up 5% of the entire Sunset Empire's total tax revenue every year. This is really some of the lion's share of the money. Historically has been the temple of the official masters as nothing to do but to find things when one of the main direction of attack. But after the war that nearly upended the nation's fortunes 30 years ago, no one dared to mention the reduction in appropriations, and the small town was transformed by that battle and was even given a name by his majesty today. The name is Jialong Pass. The gates of Jialong Pass are different from the usual left-right opening and closing, but are suspended above and below. And because the entire gate was made of the hardest golden stone, it was like a giant guillotine blade violently lifting up and then chopping down vertically between the opening and closing of the gate. The cold light is cold and powerful, so it can be said that it does not dishonor the word auger. And at this time, on the city head of Jialong Pass, a middle-aged man was looking out to the northeast with a surprisingly more than a hint of apprehension in his demeanor. The middle-aged man was tall, and his appearance could barely be compared to handsome, but the temperament is not really worthy of his identity, but more like a field crop man, filled with a kind of brutality. A few moments later, a young general came up the steps to the top of the city wall and clasped his fists in an arching salute. Great general, still worried about Shitsi's trip north? Hearing someone speak behind her, Yi Xiao slowly turned her head and answered after seeing the visitor. Aha! Then he added but I'm not dead yet, so I'm not really worried. The young general hesitated slightly before still voicing his doubts. Does great general really think that his majesty will make a move against his highness the world son? No, the middle-aged man's reply was quick and his tone was sure, but this could make the young pioneer, who was valiant in battle but lacked worldly experience, more and more puzzled. Then what is the great general worrying about? Is it hard to believe that it's his highness the Shitsi's living in life matters? The latter sentence was purely a joke and Gu Tanji was just trying to liven up the atmosphere. But I didn't expect Yi Xiao to first shake her head after hearing this, and then nodded heavily. Rhetorically, the young general asked, Tanzi, what do you think of me as a man? Without thinking, Gu Tanji said, a good general, an able fighter, and a good officer who sympathizes with his soldiers. Gu Tanji said while paying attention to Yi Xiao's face and realized that he looked even more forlorn. A long sigh, Yi Xiao waved his hand to signal Gu Tanji to leave to leave him alone so Gu Tanji could only go down the city wall with a full of doubts. All of a sudden, the middle-aged man was again the only one left on the city wall, continuing to look north. Yi Xiao knew that the current state lord was not a petty person, but his own identity was still too special, and he was always uneasy if he didn't do something about it. After a few more moments, the middle-aged man, perhaps feeling a little cold, tightened his clothes and walked backwards. The moonlight of the night struck the not-so-young man, only shadows operating, empty around him and in his lap. A few moments later, a wolf smoke rose and the ground trembled as the Feiyu army once again approached, 10,000 miles away in the city of Luoyang. Early this morning a scout came in from the south gate, rampaging along the way without a care in the world. The scouts finally stopped outside the Xuanwu gate, and an old eunuch with a serious face greeted them at once. Without too many words, the scout hand took out a wooden box and handed it over to the old eunuch before leaving the same way. The old eunuch see is not their most worried about the envelope or bamboo tube and so on. Hanging Heart also put down, stood in the Xuanwu gate quietly watched the scouts disappeared around the corner before slowly turning around, a foot step into the door. After half a pillar of incense, the old eunuch arrived at the entrance of a large hall with ancient colors, transferring the wooden box in his hand to another eunuch in red robes. His mouth spoke. This is something the King of Shu sent. The red-robed eunuch heard the word King of Shu's face stared a little bit, nodded and did not hesitate to turn around and enter the hall. A few moments later, the wooden box arrived again in the hands of a man wearing a golden dragon robe, who was scrutinizing the wooden box. Wu Sheng, what do you think that Yi Shao Kid will send me? The red-robed eunuch called Wu Sheng smiled faintly. I can't guess, 
I think it should be a rare treasure. Lu Xuanjin snorted lightly and scolded. Hoomph. This old kid has sent a pot of wine to me except when I just met him. Other than that, I haven't even seen a single hair. The old eunuch smiled but did not say anything. Clear-eyed people can see that at this time. Although Lu Xuanjin is cursing, but his face is full of smiles. Can this look be a real curse? Seeing that no one answered, Lu Xuanjin began to stretch out his other hand to gently pick at the switch, and the lid of the box opened in response to the sound revealing the objects inside. Lu Xuanjin couldn't help but reveal a look of dismay, staring blankly at the objects inside the box. Just see that the object is made of pure gold, exaggerated shape, open mouth and teeth, four legs lying down, long tail rolled up, like a crouching tiger, but looking at its side as smooth as a mirror, as if it is not complete. Lu Xuanjin hand appeared out of thin air a piece of gold talisman and the box and the gold talisman together, actually tightly. The old eunuch of the temple's face changed when he saw this, and he hurriedly fell to his knees, shouting under his breath, Congratulations, your majesty, congratulations. Lu Xuanjin's face was very calm as he nodded to the kneeling and crouching old eunuch. Well, go to the inner treasury and collect some reward money. After the old eunuch went out Lu Xuanjin still stared at the talisman that was already intact with a smile at the corner of his mouth. In his eyes, he looked as if he had seen some beloved object or solved a big problem that had been bothering him for a long time, and he was very happy. Suddenly, the light in the hall dimmed, and the face of Lu Xuanjin, who was sitting at the very top, was shrouded in a darkness that was obscure. Only one pair of bright eyes was exposed in the darkness, flickering like that candle in the wind. In the next second, the sunlight shone back into the hall, and Lu Xuanjin's face had regained its calm. The hand holding the tiger talisman also gradually loosened. Lu Xuanjin suddenly snorted. Useless thing. Is it possible that without this thing Yu Yixiao will call for no movement of troops? Immediately afterward, he added in a low voice. Also, how could I be so petty? Enlightenment continent, western region Buddha state. It is a large state whose terrain is dominated by deserts and mountains, full of Gobi and towering peaks, a holy land for ascetics. And because of that, there are very few outsiders here. So little that if you were a foreign cultivator coming here. It would be as conspicuous as a monk appearing on the streets of Luoyang, and if a Taoist priest had appeared in the western Buddhist states, it would have to be a sight only to be seen when a monk appeared in a greenhouse. But today was different. There was a group of people who crossed from the border of the western region and flew straight towards the center of the western region. There were casual cultivators, disciples of big forces, and even one or two Taoist priests in this group, although their identities were different, but their directions were surprisingly consistent. There are only two types of buildings in the west, a corridor bridge and countless temples. There are twelve ancient temples in the western region. The size of the temple is countless, and one of the most prestigious, the most incense when the Lei'in temple. It is rumored that the Great Thunder Sound Temple is the place where the Buddha attained enlightenment, and its surroundings nurture many indefinable Buddhist rhythms. If anyone who practiced Buddhist scriptures or Buddhist magical powers came to this place they could get twice the result with half the effort. Taoism preaches tranquility and inaction and Buddhism seeks to universalize all beings. So every morning, whether it's an ancient temple or a large or small temple, there's one thing you do. You have a morning class and recite the Heart Sutra. They believe that this is done both to abstain from the desires of the heart and to cleanse the sins from the body of the multitudes. In front of the Mahamudra Hall at Lein Temple, an old monk in a red robe at the very front was knocking on a wooden fish while reciting obscure scriptures. Behind the many disciples divided into 18 rows sitting on their knees. The mouth of the chanting sound like mosquitoes in the ear, although the vibration is not stopping, but just can not hear a word. Suddenly, the eyes of the old monk at the forefront widened, and the sound of the wooden fish lurched. Immediately behind them, the many disciples slowly opened their eyes and looked at the chanting elder in front of them with a puzzled expression, but soon they knew the reason why the elder had stopped moving, only to see a black cloud suddenly appear in the distant sky. Clouds are getting closer and closer. Good guy, is actually a human cloud vast and majestic towards the direction of the Lei'in temple flying. A few moments later, the black clouds landed and dispersed into dozens of silhouettes, led by a Taoist realist. The dress pattern on his body should be from the richest middle kingdom Daozhou. It was followed by a variety of cultivators, a sword cultivator, a knife cultivator, a loose cultivator who knew a little bit of everything, and a few Taoist priests. There is one thing that characterizes all of these men, and that is that they are penniless with nothing but a weapon in their hands. It was like a brat who was new to the world and very stingy with his master's elders. That real person first saluted the old monk, and then his eyes swept towards the many disciples behind him. After a moment of nothing, the Taoist realist slowly withdrew his gaze and said respectfully to the presiding officer, Elder, I'm here today on behalf of the five Taoist clans of the central state and the southern border to seek justice. 
The old monk who was still sitting on his knees opened his eyes and looked at this Taoist real person whose cultivation was on par with his own, and his breath felt like it was swimming. What kind of justice would bother a true person to come to my Thunder Sound Temple to retrieve it? Dare I ask Elder, does the Thunder Sound Temple have a monk named Pu Zun? Instead of answering the old monk's question, that Taoist realist threw out another question. Pu Zun? There was a hint of doubt in the old monk's voice. He knew all the monks of the Pu Zun generation within the temple, but there was no such person ah. And right in the middle of the second row behind the old monk, a young monk's face changed slightly when he heard this name. In the next second, the old monk's voice rang out, Pu Yuan, come here. The young monk got up in a hurry and arrived beside the old monk in a few steps. Pu Yuan, as the eldest senior brother of the Pu Zi generation, do you remember if there is a disciple in my temple whose dharma name is Pu Zun? The young monk pondered for a moment and answered truthfully. Reporting to Elder My Laying Temple 72 for Pu Zi Generation Disciples there is no disciple named Pu Zun. The old monk re-looked at that Tao sect real person. The real person is afraid that he is mistaken. There is no disciple of this Dharma name in My Laying Temple. The real person can go to other temples to take a look. That Taoist real person's face was a bit gloomy as he said in a muffled voice. But that monk knows your Laying Temple's Vajra Voodoo. How does that explain it? The old monk's face remained unchanged. His voice was still breathless. My Buddhist family's level of secrecy about avatar techniques is not like that of other sects, and it's not uncommon for one or two avatars to occasionally be circulated. This time the face of the real person directly became iron blue, but did not dare to do it in the territory of other people's homes, can only snort coldly followed by whisking his sleeve away. After the Tao sect real person left, the old monk once again looked at the young monk named Pu Yuan. Where is your second senior brother, Pu Shan? Why haven't we seen him in the temple lately? Pu Yuan didn't dare to hide it and replied, Senior brother has been absent-minded all day since the departure of Head Wukong and left Laying Temple half a year ago. What did he do? The young monk hesitated a bit, but still didn't dare to lie. Senior said that the Buddhist precepts are much more uncomfortable, and he's going to become a Taoist priest. The old monk's eyebrows, which were as long as hair, jumped for a moment, and some unnatural shaking appeared unconsciously on his face. After a long time to calm his mind, the old monk's tone took on some severity for the first time. You take the glazed rosary and quickly go down the mountain to bring back this evil bastard who deceived his teacher and destroyed his ancestor. I'm going to send him into the ancient temple of the shadowy spirit to stay for ten days and half a month. The young monk with his head lowered couldn't help but shiver when he heard the word Zin Ling ancient temple, and the movements of the many monks behind him were also neatly synchronized. Only a few young monks who had just been initiated this year were at a loss, but after being explained by the older senior brothers in front of them, they also looked pale. Pu Yuan trembled before hastily raising his head to plead for his senior brother. Elder, senior brother is a natural heaven's eye. Isn't this punishment a bit heavy? Humph. The old monk snorted coldly. No matter how gifted you are, you can't lose a Buddha's heart, or else you can only add to your sins. And how can you achieve Buddhahood in the future by ferrying all beings? Monk Pu Yuan didn't dare to talk anymore. Besides he might have to be sent into the Yin Ling ancient temple. That place? Even if the ascetic monk who was famous for his sufferings would last two or three days at most in it, is really not a place for monks to stay. Yes, disciples will go prepare now. Pu Yuan clasped his hands together and performed a salute, then prepared to retire. Wait, the old monk called out to Pu Yuan. Your senior brother said he wanted to join the Taoist sect. Is it possible that he also gave himself a Taoist name? Pu Yuan pursed his lips and simply broke the pot. Senior brother said that although he dislikes the Buddhist precepts, his respect for the Buddha has always remained the same, so he won't change the name of his Pu Zi generation of disciples, but he wanted to take a Dharma name that was both Buddhist and Taoist as one. The old monk listened to the first half of his face with a look of relief. That sinner still remembers the teachings of the Buddha after all, but when he heard the latter half of the sentence his expression froze and he fell into deep thought. After Pu Yuan finished speaking then he accelerated his pace towards the temple behind him. And after a few breaths only a voice filled with the majestic Buddhist sacred chi and full of anger could be heard coming from behind himself. Asshole. Simply an asshole. It's a waste of my hard work to teach him. Amit Bab Buddha. Pu Yuan murmured in his mind, not knowing for whom he was chanting. At the same time he had a smirk on his face that was very hard to see. Yi Ching Chen and Gu Ching Han rushed back to the group moments before Xiao Yuan Shan returned. It was just that both of them looked a bit odd. As if they had just known something heavenly. For some reason. Looking at this scene Pu Zun had no reason to be a little hard on his chest, and his head also seemed to be on top of a heavy object generally difficult. Miss Gu and Daoist Yi have a secret. A few moments later Xiao Yuan Shan returned, carrying a cow and a sheep in each hand. Seeing the three of them, he laughed. I'll go take care of it, and in an hour we'll be able to eat fresh beef and goat soup. For the next hour, the crowd was going about their business. 
Yi Qingzuan was not far away studying the Taoist medicine inheritance in his mind. He felt that in a short while he might be able to enter the third realm of Taoist medicine, the rejuvenation realm. This realm could already be considered to be at the top of the healing path, and this level of Taoist doctor was a respected position even in a great power like the Sunset Dynasty. Moreover, Yi Qingzuan had discovered a characteristic of the soul-devouring pearl in the past two days. That is, if he used his sword intent to urge it, the more pure the aura it emitted. This discovery was a great joy to Yi Qingzuan. The divine sense was a major pain in his ass. Since there was a method that could speed up the repair of the divine sea, then Yi Qingzuan naturally would not let it go. He directly transferred most of his sword intent to continuously urge the soul-devouring bead. But this sword intent could be used against the enemy at any time. Nor do you need to worry about your own safety. After all, with the identity of the son of the king of Shu and the presence of Xiao Yuan Shan, there were not many chances for him to make a move and he could completely use these sword intentions to repair the divine sea, helping it to recover early and even surpass the past. And it was also more conducive to letting him sense the red dust and sharpen his red dust sword intent, so that he wouldn't think of using the sword to solve everything. Gu Qinghan leaned against the side of the carriage. Her figure was exquisite, but her brows were a little sad as she stared blankly into the distance. This time when she went back, she didn't know if she could still return to the master's sect, and when she returned, she didn't know if the master was out of the gate or not. Perhaps by the time the master comes out of the gate, things will have long since changed and he himself, he Zihuan is on the sidelines to explain some book knowledge to Li Shen. When explained to the benevolent people do not take advantage of the danger to invite profit. In the corner where no one noticed Gu Qingxue had been out of focus abruptly darkened, and the sadness between her brows increased. Pu Zun was resting with his eyes closed in the other direction of the carriage, but the aura surging around him was very violent. Two different extremely light auras were constantly colliding behind him. But Pu Zun ignored them and continued to cultivate and eat and drink normally. Strangely enough, Yi Qingxuan had sort of seen many kinds of Buddhist techniques in books when they were practiced, but they were all different from Pu Zun's appearance. However, Yi Qingxuan never asked. In this world where the strongest were honored, everyone had their own secrets. Pu Zun was like that, Gu Qinghan was like that, and so was he himself. In fact, Yi Qingxuan knew that Gu Qinghan was the female assassin that was being sought by Qingzhou since he started seeing her. It wasn't because he had seen the portrait or made a bold guess, but because he had seen the spiritual energy that remained in Gu Qinghan's body. When he was a child, Yi Qingxuan had visited the Qing King's mansion with Yi Xiao, and had seen this kind of spiritual power in the Qing King's mansion at that time. Only this time, the aura that injured Gu Qinghan was far less powerful and domineering than the one that he had seen at the beginning. It must be that the cultivation was still not good enough, otherwise it would have been a bit difficult for Yi Qingchuan to save Gu Qinghan. As for why she saved Gu Qinghan, it was naturally because what she did was deeply pleasing to Yi Qingxuan. He had long wanted to kill that dude Lu Wudu, but he just hadn't had the chance to do so. Feeling the hostile aura emanating from his body for no reason, Yi Qingxuan frowned slightly and then emptied his mind before the hostile aura slowly dispersed. Since Jin Guan City, Yi Qingxuan realized a problem. The red dust sword intent was certainly powerful and embraced thousands of sword intent. But because of this this is extremely demanding on the sword master's state of mind. Once dominated by the will of the red dust, then he will not be called a sword immortal, but become a sword slave. Therefore, Yi Qingxuan decided that in the future, he must strengthen the experience of his state of mind. As true Lord Xianling said, see more, think more, and then do it. An hour later, dinner was ready, and the beef and sheep soup was colorful and fragrant. Even Yi Qingdao was surprised at the change in Xiao Yuan Shan. He remembered that when Xiao Yuan Shan was still in the barracks in the past, even if he was starving, he still ate dry rations and seldom did he cook for himself. I haven't seen you in ten years. You've come a long way. Between meals Xiao Yuan Shan deliberately sarcastic Pu Zun said, Pu Taoist, you are not a monk. How can you also eat meat dishes? At those words, Gu Qinghan also slightly raised his head to look at Pu Zun. The latter's face was embarrassed. For a long time before squeezing out a sentence, Xiao Dao at first wanted to worship the Taoist temple. People confiscated, ah, this is not poor Dao can only be a lay disciple. Besides, Wine and meat go through the heart, and the Taoist Buddha stays in the heart, so I'm sure they'll understand the poor Taoist. The crowd laughed, and in the light of the campfire Pu Zun, the little Taoist priest, turned even redder. As for Xiao Yuan Shan, when he saw the color of curiosity in Gu Qinghan's eyes subside and his eyes returned to being clear and cold, a look of gloating flashed across his face. After dinner, everyone was ready to rest, and Gu Qinghan got into the carriage early. Xiao Yuan Shan and Pu Zun stared wide-eyed for half an hour in order to compete for the title of flower protector, and finally tacitly chose a side to sit down on their knees. Miss Gu, you can sleep at ease. 
The poor Taoist is right by the side. No evil spirits can get close. Don't worry, Miss Ku. With me, Mr. Xiao. I definitely won't let unsuspecting people have a chance to take advantage of this. Ching Han, I'm coming up. Suddenly, a magnetic voice rang out, causing the two people who were showing off their own skills to stiffen their faces. Saiken, up where? Two questioning voices sounded almost simultaneously, followed by two figures stepping forward left and right to block the way to the car. Yi Qingdao glanced at the two men and answered as a matter of course. It was Miss Gu who told me to shout like this. Where to? To the carriage. Naturally. I'll rest in the wagon tonight. You guys put up a good guard and don't disturb us haha. <laughs> Fellow Daoist Yi, this isn't too good. You and Miss Gu are alone and the carriage doesn't have much space. Pu Zun stammered, attempting to make Yi Ching Suan give up on the idea. However, Yi Ching Dan was not moved in the slightest. A picture of I'm going to go up. No one can stop me. Pu Zun could only look towards Xiao Yuan Shan who still hadn't slowed down. His eyes filled with pleading. Xiao Yuan Shan only felt an extremely strong thought force affecting his godly wandering and looked back directly at Yi Ching Suan. Ghostly, my lord. The master mother and the second young miss could have said before they left the house that everything on the road should be reported to them, so you shouldn't want them to know about this either, right? Besides, Gongzi, you are the son of a big family. Going out is representing the face of the entire Shu. Yi House. Yi Ching Dan was infuriated and laughed. He he, Xiao Yuan Shan you've grown up. You can cook and you've even learned to threaten your young master me. No, no. My subordinate just wanted to remind your excellency of one thing, which is what second miss specifically instructed me to do before she left. Yi Ching Suan raised his eyebrows at the words and asked, What is it? At this point Xiao Yuan Shan also disregarded the consequences of finishing and said it out loud. Second miss said that when you go out, you should know your manners. Gongzi. Pu Zun stood on the sidelines could not help but recite the longevity sutra for the second miss of the Yi family that he had never met before. Such a person should have a blessed and prolonged life ah. Yi Ching Tsuan rubbed his eyebrows, but just a day and a night, the commander of one of the four guards of the Hall of Shu King's house had turned into this appearance. The word color is a knife in the head. The ancients are true to their word. At this moment, a cool voice came from within the carriage, directly stopping the three people who were ready to continue their voices. Taoist Master Pu, General Xiao, it was me who invited Lord Yi up to heal my wounds, so don't misunderstand. As soon as the words fell, Pu Zun and Xiao Yuan Shan could only resentfully get out of the way. Oomph, Yi Qing Dan snorted coldly and stepped heavily on the car bench, making a crisp ringing sound, as if the footsteps were not on the car bench, but the shoulders of Pu Zun and Xiao Yuan Shan. A flash of dejection flashed across his expression. In contrast, Xiao Yuan Shan and Pu Zun were like frosted eggplants, their spirits becoming depressed. After glancing at each other, each of them snorted coldly before making no more noise. Only the direction of sitting changed from sitting in the same direction to sitting opposite to each other with only a carriage separating the two pairs of eyes. Inside the carriage, Yi Ching Suan gently placed his hand on Gu Qinghan's small abdomen. Gu Qinghan blushed slightly and looked at the side of Yi Ching Suan's face and softly said, Mr. Yi please also be gentler. Otherwise I'm afraid Qing Han won't be able to withstand it if she hasn't recovered from her serious injuries. That's natural. Yi Ching Suan nodded. Although he had never done this before, he was confident that he could definitely satisfy Gu Qinghan. In the next second, Yi Ching Suan's palm slightly pressed downward. Although Yi Ching Suan had done his best to control the force, Gu Ching Han still couldn't help but let out a cry of pain. Aha! A grinding of teeth and the crunching of bones resounded outside the carriage, while at the same time two voices rang out from left and right. I Pu, originally thought that Taoist friend Yi was a gentleman, but I didn't realize that he was this kind of villain who took advantage of people's danger. Your Highness, since you're unkind you won't blame me for being unrighteous. I'm going to fix a book of 100. 000 words to report to madam and second miss. Yi Ching Suan and Gu Ching Han inside the car didn't have time to notice the noise outside. At this moment, both of them were sweating profusely. Yi Ching Suan also did not expect Gu Ching Han's physique to be so strong. Utilizing the medication masking technique on the Taoist medicine inheritance was actually a bit overwhelming. If Yi Ching Suan was really a Taoist doctor who only practiced medicine without any cultivation, or whose strength was lower than Gu Ching Han's, this spell would have really failed. Yi Ching Tsuan detached an extremely thin sliver of sword intent that didn't enter Gu Ching Han's dantian, and in an instant, the agitated aura avoided retreating and gradually regained its calmness. It was only after another half an incense stick that Yi Ching Tsuan slowly withdrew his right hand, which was placed on Gu Ching Han's belly, and wiped the fine sweat on his forehead. Miss Gu, I've temporarily covered up your Xi'an ice digressions, but the time is only three months, and you you can't use its powers during this time, or this masking spell will be ineffective. Gu Qinghan also slowed down at this time, 
and immediately wanted to get up to thank Yi Ching-tsuan. But Yi Ching-tsuan pressed one hand on her shoulder and waved his hand with a smile. You'd better get some rest. If you make any more noise, these two out here will have to come in and pull me out. Hearing this, Gu Qinghan's pretty face slightly reddened, gently nodded her head and no longer forced herself. One night passed, Yi Ching Tsuan has been helping Gu Qinghan to stabilize the art of concealment. The first time with not too skilled, he did not dare to guarantee that it will not go wrong. However, after a night had passed and the breath was very stable, there should be no more problems. Yi Ching Tsuan went out of the carriage after probing the situation one last time. Just as soon as he stepped out of the carriage, Yi Ching Tsuan noticed two ghostly and unusual eyes staring at him. Ignoring the two, after a hasty breakfast, the group resumed their journey. Another three days had passed. Even though Yi Ching Tsuan and the others were fishing for three days and sunbathing for two days, the speed of the hearse was truly not slow. So in the evening of the third day, their group finally arrived at the destination of their trip, the Kyoto city of Luoyang. Yi Ching Tsuan looked at the city wall that was as high as a mountain in black in color and narrowed his eyes slightly. This city wall even if a cultivator of the Mahayana stage came, he would not dare to say that he could destroy it. Looking in through the city gates, there were tall, gilded buildings and the streets were filled with wealthy families in brocade clothing and fancy dress. How prosperous, Yi Qingduan sighed. If Shuzhou's economy could be a third of this, it wouldn't be so sparsely populated. And the most ridiculous thing is that the prosperity of this place has to rely on that most sparsely populated state and county. It's as if the smaller the population there is, the more prosperous the place is, which is ironic. Just after passing through the city gates, Gu Qinghan asked Yi Qingsuan to take his leave and, after telling the crowd the address of his home, left without the slightest delay. Still looking, people are gone. Yi Qingdan didn't have the good sense to say that these two were like the kind of colorful people who couldn't walk when they saw a woman. Yi Qingduan felt a little strange sitting in the carriage. It was reasonable that when they entered the city that His Majesty the Emperor on high should have already known that he had already arrived in Luoyang, but at this time has passed a while but still not the slightest movement came, it will not be want to let their own line of people to find their own place to live it. Think what you want. Just a short distance away, suddenly a group of imperial guards came from the front to open the road, and finally stopped in front of Yi Ching Suan's group. Immediately, a captain-like imperial guard stood out and saluted Yi Ching Suan. Your Highness, His Majesty has already picked out a place for you to stay. Please move to Deng Yun Pavilion with my general. Lead the way. This time, it was Xiao Yuan Shan who answered the words, and Yi Ching Suan sat motionless in the sedan chair. Although Yi Ching Suan didn't like to put on airs too much, but as Xiao Yuan Shan had said, his visit to the capital represented the face of the entire Shu Wangfu, so he couldn't be too casual after all. Half an hour later, that team of imperial guards brought Yi Ching Tsuan and the rest of the group to a seven-story pavilion and left. It was as if their duty was just to lead the way. Yi Ching Tsuan slowly stepped down from the carriage, his gentle eyes surveying the imposing building in front of him. Dang Yun Pavilion to take the meaning of the green clouds, is one of the iconic buildings in Luoyang. Lu Xuanjin picked this place as a residence is also considered to have some deep meaning and it is said that the boss behind this Deng Yunge is also a not bad person, and very close contact with the palace. At this time, the front of the Deng Yun pavilion was not only Yi Ching Tsuan and his party, but there were also some young masters and young ladies in front of it who were also with guards and schoolboys. Even Yi Ching Duan saw the mediocre-faced male that he had seen on the plains a few days ago, and at this moment, he was standing in the crowd, with the surrounding guards tightly escorting him in. Seemingly sensing something, their eyes once again collided both nodding and smiling at the touch of a button. At the very front of the crowd, there were several graceful, colorfully dressed maidservants blocking the doorway, causing some young masters and young ladies to be displeased. What the hell? They let us come to study and now they won't even let us in where we live. Do you know who I am? My father is the second rank in the court, and my uncle is the prime minister. How dare you stop me? Those maidservants looked calm, as if they didn't care in the slightest about how those young masters and young ladies were born. They just guarded the door and waited for their masters to give the order. Suddenly a woman in a more luxurious purple dress came out from inside the pavilion. The woman looked at the many young masters and young ladies crowding outside and said in a clear voice without any fear, Gentlemen and young ladies, my housekeeper has said that the Dangyun pavilion has nine rooms on each floor. The seventh floor is not open, and a total of six floors can only accommodate 54 people, and is meant to be reserved for the rest of the disciples of the academy. The rest of us will have to go to the west side of the falling evening house to find a place to stay. There was a silence in the crowd, followed by a louder argument. Who does not know? The Dangyun Pavilion is one of the top high-rise buildings in Luoyang. Living in the above not only double the face but also a glimpse of the beauty of Kyoto. And although the falling evening house on the side was also considered a good place to stay, it was a world away from the view of the Dangyun Pavilion. Besides, 
It has always been expensive in the east and cheap in the west, and the evening house is in the direction of the west of the capital, which has always been the place where some low status triads live. Just ask these young masters and young ladies who would want to go to a place like that. Immediately, someone disdainfully said, Che, you this we do not live. I do not believe that there is silver I still cannot find a better. The one who spoke was a young lady from a family. Damask and silk in her body. Her face was medium to high, with a little bit of arrogance on her face. The purple skirted woman inside the door had a slightly colder look on her face as she slowly spoke. All of you may have missed my point. Since everyone wants to come to the academy to learn, it's not up to you to make your own choices. Either go up to the Dang Yun Pavilion or stay at the evening house. There's no other choice. Upon hearing this, someone angrily rebuked. Who is your shopkeeper? How dare you be so overbearing? We don't want to live. You still want to force us to stay. At this time, the woman inside looked slightly stunned, as if she was communicating with someone in a voice transmission, only to return to normal a few moments later, bowing slightly toward the crowd. My family's shopkeeper said that this is a rule set by his majesty, and that if there are those who do not follow it, they will cancel their chances of entering the academy. At these words, the noise dissipated into silence. As soon as the words fell, the many young masters and young ladies who had been spoiled by the arrogance of their families shut up. They were condescending, but they certainly weren't fools, or else they wouldn't have come here to compete for those few academy spots. Thus, a few moments later there were only seven teams left at the entrance of the Dangyun Pavilion, which had been a bustling marketplace only moments before. At this time that purple-skirted woman said again, His Majesty has decreed that each academy disciple can only rest in the small building on the side for the rest of the guards and attendants, except for bringing a book boy in. Upon hearing this, some people in all seven teams frowned, but they couldn't say anything more because it was an imperial decree. Xiao Yuanshan looked at Yi Qingchen and whispered, Your Highness, then I'll go over. Just shake that bell if you have something to do. Yi Qingduan nodded, signaling that he knew. While this was the same sight in all the surrounding teams, once again people came and went, and there were only 14 people left in the field, four men and three women in addition to the book boy, including the unassuming youth. The rest of the few people Yi Qingduan did not recognize. The two men were wearing black and white robes and looked similar. They should have relatives. And one of them has a very strong smell of blood, which should be caused by people in the line of duty or killing too many people. As for the women, two of them were of good appearance and had the temperament of a lady of the house, while the other one was full of heroic spirit. By the looks of it they should have known the two men from the line, as those two were always looking for the three women to talk to, except for the imperious woman. The other four looked like they were having a good time talking to each other. At this time, the purple-skirted woman inside that pavilion finally had a smile on her face. Noble guests, please also show us your enrollment invitations, so that we at Dang Yun Pavilion can record the number of people. After saying that, the servant girl's gaze went to the nearest youth with a mediocre face. The other six people's eyes also looked at the mediocre youth, wanting to see what kind of status he had, to be able to receive an enrollment sticker like them. The youth scribe was a very sunny 13 or 14 year old, who took out a paper of gold stickers from his storage ring and handed it to the servant girl. Pretty sister, this is my son's enrollment sticker. The purple skirted woman's eyebrows instantly unfolded when she heard this, covering her mouth with a light smile. This little brother's mouth is really sweet. When the time comes, come to my sister's place to get some candy to eat. The woman laughed while accepting the golden sticker handed over by the sunny teenager, and suddenly her face changed greatly. Her expression became much more serious, and she made a slight bow. Slave girl Z has met your highness prince you. Today your highness prince is here. The Dang Yun pavilion is full of splendor. Your highness please go up to the sixth floor. Greetings, prince you. The other few people other than Yi Qingduan also changed their faces when they heard that this person was the prince of the king of you, and they all cupped their fists and saluted the mediocre youth. I'm afraid that the revered status of a vassal prince's son in the sunset wheel, where vassal kings are prevalent nowadays, is only rivaled by a few of his majesty's most distinguished royal sons or princesses. Although the identity of these three women and two men is also honored, but far less than Lu Qingshan should salute. In the Qiming continent, between cultivators, unless it is between a ruler and a subject, or between an elder and a younger one, they will kneel. The rest of the time, they will perform a fist salute or bow slightly. This is also a courtesy that belongs uniquely to cultivators. A trace of surprise also flashed in Yi Qingwan's eyes. The prince of Yu Wang, Lu Qingshan, he had heard Xiao Yuanshan talk about this person and his upbringing could be considered a strange thing. Rumor has it that Lu Qingshan is the second son of the family, since childhood will love to paint. The paintings are fine, but no talent for cultivation. To the age of 14 years old has not yet entered the cultivation way, 
so that when it was set with the marriage contract of the two princesses at the expense of the king of the Yuan to withdraw from the marriage, but the turnaround began. Since the withdrawal of marriage Lu Qingshan was able to cultivate, not only able to cultivate but also showed an amazing talent for cultivation. He entered body refining at the age of 14, qi refining at the age of 15, foundation establishment at the age of 16, jin dan at the age of 17, and broke into yuaning at the age of 20. The most recent display of his cultivation was three years ago when he subdued an elk of the ninth level of the yuaning realm, and it was rumored that it didn't even result in a tangle of fights, and that the battle was resolved in just a few moves. That year, Lu Qingshan was only 25 years old, and he was made the son of the king of Yu. Lu Qingshan nodded at the several people's salute. His heart was unperturbed, and the corner of his eyes kept his gaze on Yi Qingguan, who was motionless on the side. Ever since the first time he saw Yi Qingguan on the plains, there was a voice in Lu Qingshan's heart that told him, they're both one of a kind. Without stopping much, Lu Qingshan took the boy into the building and pavilion, but did not immediately go up the stairs but sat on a stool on the first floor and looked at the remaining few people with interest. He was very interested in Yi Ching Suan's identity, and before he left, his old man, who was also one of the four feudal lords, the king of Yu, had specially explained a few people to tell Lu Qingshan to keep an eye out. For example, the Qing king's son, Lu Hongwang, the Shu king's son, Yi Ching Suan, the one from the Pingxi candidate's mansion who was born with a Taoist body, and the one from the chancellor's mansion who was taken away from her childhood as a heavenly daughter. Lu Qingshan wanted to see if there was anyone within these few people that his old man had mentioned. The two women with gentle temperament are the daughters of the two ministers, and after checking their identities correctly they entered the attic and sat behind Lu Qingshan. Seeing this scene, Yi Qing danced some tears and laughter. He had thought that the last to go in can be low profile, but look at this appearance. Stay to the end to want to not high profile are difficult ah. At that moment, Yi Qingguan no longer waited and lifted his feet to go forward, but then a slightly surprised voice came. Ha! there's even a pair of mortals. A few people were slightly stunned, then their gazes couldn't stop sizing up Yi Qingxuan and Li Xian. Indeed there isn't the slightest bit of aura. Can't it be that his cultivation is far higher than ours? The one who said this was the black-robed man. His words filled with mockery. Yi Qingxuan thought of his broken dantian after using the masking technique on Gu Qinghan and realizing that it worked well. Although Yi Qingxuan didn't mind people knowing about his broken dantian, he didn't want everyone to come up and taunt him. After all, Yi Qingxuan just wanted to keep a lower profile, and did not have the idea of pretending to be a pig to eat a tiger, he had always followed only one principle, people do not offend me, I do not offend, if a man commits a crime against me, then I will send him straight to the ascension realm, Yi Qingxuan froze at his words and laughed, it's true that I don't have any aura, but I still have some strength, the white robed elegant man beside the black robed man frowned at the words, somewhat displeased, people should have self knowledge, a mere mortal who even got a gold sticker even want to sit on an equal footing with me and others. Woe is me. Laugh. So what if you're a mortal? Everyone can realize the great Tao. Even though you're a mole cricket, you should have the will of a swan. Yi Qingduan's loud voice was like a heavy hammer hitting the hearts of the crowd. Especially Lu Qingshan's eyes glittered with a fine light as he looked at Yi Qingduan. For Lu Qingshan, this quote couldn't be more appropriate to his experience growing up. Humph. Just don't know the heights of heaven. The white-robed man snorted coldly but did not refute this statement. Yi Qingduan and Li Xian walked forward. Li Xian somewhat sullenly took out the gold sticker, and the purple-skirted woman's face, which was originally very calm, suddenly surfaced with shock. There were no words for a long time, and I don't know when the purple-skirted woman had an additional bloated middle-aged man beside her, and the man was dressed very plainly. However, the many maidservants in the field, including the woman in the purple dress, all kneeled down on one knee in unison and saluted. Greetings, boss. Deng Yun Pavilion boss. The white-robed man outside the door exclaimed in shock. He often lived in the capital and knew a little bit of information about this Deng Yun Pavilion boss. It is said that this shopkeeper can directly meet the saint, and that there are shadows of him in the business circle of the whole Kyoto and even the whole Sunset Empire. But no one knows his real name, only his surname Yu, nicknamed Yu San San. The middle-aged man took the gold sticker in the purple-skirted woman's hand as soon as he could, and after looking at it twice repeatedly, he raised his head to look at Yi Ching Suan, said a sentence that shocked Yi Ching Dao, according to seniority, you should call me uncle, of course you can also call me uncle, uncle, again, Yi Ching Suan only felt that even with the enlightenment of a sword immortal, he was still confused about this relationship at this moment, the middle-aged man didn't explain more, he just told Yi Ching Dan to come to the seventh floor when he had time, then he returned the gold sticker to the woman in the purple dress and instructed her to treat Yi Ching Dan well, in the blink of an eye, he disappeared again. 
and the people present did not even see how the middle-aged man disappeared except for Yi Qingzuan. Yi Qingduan, on the other hand, his pupil shrunk slightly, this stance was familiar to him, it was the stance of one of the four guards of the royal residence, the shadow guard, who exactly is this middle-aged man who makes him call him uncle or uncles, and why does he still have the shadow guard stance? Yi Qingdao fell into deep thought, and at that moment, the purple-skirted woman stood up, holding the golden sticker in both hands respectfully. Slave girl Z, on behalf of the entire Dang Yun Pavilion, welcome Prince Xu Wang to Dang Yun Pavilion. A black and white man outside the door instantly trembled dramatically, his face pale. Everyone in the Sunset Empire knows that among the four feudal lords, King Xu has the worst temper. When Yi Xiao was not the king of Xu, he dared to go to the court because of the military food. The pressure of the group of civil officials had to loose their mouths to the front line to send food. If it was only a poor temperament, it would be fine. The most critical thing is that Yi Xiao still has 300, 000 iron horsemen of Shu state under his command. And this is what all the forces are most afraid of. In the Qiming continent, it was not unimpeded for high-ranking cultivators to participate in a war if they were involved. The heavily Dao loses more than it can make up for. And when the number of armies exceeds 10, 000 or more it can produce a wave of heavenly Dao pressure to win. Suppress the enemy Mahayana. Transitional strength. That's why only a small number of cultivators would face thousands of soldiers alone as a last resort. In the hundreds of thousands of years since the founding of Sunset, there have been a few famous instances of one man fighting an army. For example, 80, 000 years ago, in order to prove that he was the best in the world in using poison, he had used his Mahayana cultivation to fight 80. 000 iron horsemen in the north alone, and eventually died of exhaustion. Recently, 50, 000 years ago, the eastern wasteland boxing cultivator Ouyang soon to save his beloved, only to break into Luoyang, a boxing intent across the world, but only killed 50, 000 forbidden troops will not be able to fight again. As for the most recent deed of one man fighting an army happened 30 years ago, the location happened to be in Jialong Pass, that was also Yi Zhao's battle of fame. At that time, Lu Xuanzhen, who had just ascended to the throne, was lured by the treacherous ministers in the court to go to Feiyu country to look for a breakthrough method, but he didn't expect to encounter an ambush by half of the experts in the entire Feiyu country. All of the accompanying escort experts stayed in the Feiyu kingdom, but this also caused Lu Xuanzhen to escape from the Feiyu kingdom border with serious injuries. But before Lu Xuanzhen could celebrate his escape from death, he encountered another person, the bastard blade sect sect leader, Gu San Blade a blade cultivator of the sixth sky of transition, the two exchanged blows, and with just one slash, Lu Xuanzhen nearly shattered his flesh, according to the development of this situation Lu Xuanzhen will definitely die, but at this moment when the survival of the Sunset Empire is at stake, Yi Xiao, who was only the guardian of Jiao Long Pass at that time, received a secret letter and directly led 200, 000 iron horsemen out of the pass to the west without reporting, it was just in time for Lu Xuanzhen's fight with Gu Sanjie, the details of the war may only be known to those who participated in the war, but the only part that the world knows is already very shocking. The world only knows that after that big battle, not only did Lu Xuanzhen return to Luoyang peacefully, but also not long after Lu Xuanzhen returned, the bastard sword Sek sent word to seal the mountain for three years. It wasn't hard to guess that it was definitely Yi Xiao who won that battle by associating it slightly. However, Yi Xiao was only at the beginning of the transition at that time. If he did not rely on the 200, 000 Iron Horseman how could he fight with a cultivator of the sixth level of the transition realm? The name Yi Xiao had thus spread throughout the entire eastern wasteland continent, and no one knew about it. After this incident, Yi Xiao became the only king with a different surname today, with the fiefdom of Shuzhou. At the same time because after this experience Lu Xuanzhen strengthened the defense of Jiao Long Pass, the garrison increased from 200, 000 to 300, 000 troops. Yi Xiao has since been in charge of 300, 000 Iron Horseman, becoming the vassal king with the most soldiers and horses in the Sunset Empire. The black robed and white robed men physically and mentally trembled when they heard Yi Qingguan's identity, while Lu Qingshan inside the pavilion also had a slight change of color. Lu Qingshan also didn't expect to bump into one of the few people his old man told him to keep an eye on on his first day here. Yi Qingsuan ignored the gazes of the crowd and walked slowly towards the threshold. It was then that the crowd reacted and respectfully saluted as Lu Qingshan's had done before. Yi Qingduan stopped as he passed by the white-robed youth, and the elegant man felt his breath stutter. Yi Qingdan slightly inclined his head to look at the white-robed youth and said aloud, How can a swallowed sparrow know the will of a great swan? The white-robed youth didn't dare to reply but could only lower his head, and the cold sweat on his forehead was like pattering rain dripping down his hair. Yi Qingsuan and Li Xian did not linger on the first floor, 
They just nodded towards Lu Qingshan before going up to the sixth floor. Lu Qingshan also lost interest in staying after knowing Yi Qingsuan's identity and left the first floor. The others entered the Dangyin Pavilion one after another. And in the end, only the black-robed youth and the white-robed youth who still had his head lowered remained at the entrance. Seeing that everyone else had left, the white-robed youth slowly raised his head. He was originally the son of the Minister of Rights, and his father had named him Fong Chilin, hoping that he would become a Chilin in the future. And Fong Chilin also lived up to his expectations. At a young age in the Palace of Fame, befriended a number of royal princesses, known as one of the contemporary Palace of Pride of Heaven. Fong Chilin had thought that he had already been among the most powerful circles in the Sunset Empire, but today Fong Chilin realized that he was wrong. There is a world of difference between being exposed to the circle, becoming a member of the circle, and then becoming a central figure in the center of the circle, completely incomparable. Yi Qingduan did not rush up to the seventh floor to find that middle-aged shopkeeper. Anyway, it was not just for one night, there was no rush. The next two days saw people checking into the Dangyan Pavilion one after another, but there were always only two people on the sixth floor, Yi Qingsuan and Lu Qingshan. And Lu Qingshan has been staying in the house since the first day of the meeting and not coming out, and meals are also sent to the room by the scribe. According to what Li Xian had heard from Lu Qingshan's scribe, his son was cultivating every day except for meals, which could be considered very diligent. Yi Qingduan's expression was slightly helpless when he heard this. Bitter cultivation was not the best way to cultivate for him who was a swordwalker. The enhancement of his strength or not lies in his ability to perceive the 10,000 feet of red dust. The deeper the perception the stronger the strength will naturally be. Therefore, Yi Qingxuan did not stay quietly in his room from the second day he stayed in the Dangyin Pavilion, but dragged Xiao Yuan Shan and the others to run around the capital. This caused Li Shen, who was a book boy, to keep chanting in Yi Qingdan's ear, Heavenly reward, heavenly reward, Pu Zhu naturally followed along. But whether the purpose was shopping or not Yi Qingduan didn't know. All I know is that whenever he sees a large family's yard he stops and looks away for a while. Pu Zun also knew Yi Ching Suan's identity now, and he had thought that Pu Zun would at least be surprised when he found out. But when the monk who claimed to be a member of the Taoist sect heard this, he just nodded his head and did not show any semblance of surprise. When Xiao Yuan Shan inquired about the reason, Pu Zun only asked two questions. Fellow Taoist you won't cut off my peach blossom brew and spring breeze drunkenness after he becomes the son of the world, right? Then again. Taoist you won't forcefully marry Misku based on his status as the son of the world, right? The two questions asked Xiao Yuanshan dumbfounded. There is not no monk who is good at wine, and there are many Taoist disciples who are good at sex, but so good wine, but also so good at sex Xiao Yuanshan is still the first time to see. This guy, whether it is Taoist or Buddhist, who wants to be left behind for 10,000 years. Yi Qingxuan certainly didn't walk casually, but walked with a purpose as he memorized the locations and names of some of the stores. All of these stores have one thing in common, and that is, none of them are local merchant stores in the capital. Yi Qingxuan strolled around for three days like this, noting down 44 stores, and at noon on the third day, Yi Qingxuan noticed a change as soon as he returned to Dangyun Pavilion. Originally, there were only two rooms on the sixth floor of the Dangyun Pavilion with occupied tokens hung up, but now there were surprisingly four signs already hung up. Just as Yi Qingxuan was about to enter the room, three door opening sounds rang out at the same time. One voice came from Lu Qingshan's room, and the other two voices came from the two rooms opposite Yi Qingsuan's room. Three silhouettes walked out in unison, and all three gazes froze when they saw Yi Qingdan. As for Yi Qingduan, when he saw the two youths dressed in python robes, he was also stunned, and then a cold smile spread out from the corner of his mouth. Yu Hu, delivered, if I'm not mistaken, this should be elder brother Lightning Dust and cousin Qingshan, right? Lu Hanxiao was the first to break the silence and smiled at Yi Qingsuan and Lu Qingshan. Lu Qingshan was not of a talkative nature, and just nodded his head to show his acquiescence, and Yi Qingdan finally waited for the person he was waiting for, and his mood was all over the place, with a sincere smile on his face, it's wonderful that you're finally here, after saying that, Yi Qingxuan clapped his palms heavily, looking very happy, only if someone who was proficient in pupil art was present, they would have realized that a handful of powder particles that could not be detected with the naked eye flew to the faces of Lu Hongguan and Lu Wudu through the strong wind, Lu Wudu and Lu Hongguan did not notice the slightest difference in this, and the two of them glanced at each other, full of puzzlement, because Yi Qingxuan went to the Yin Yang Dao sect at the age of 8, Lu Hongguan and Yi Qingxuan had only met once when they were children, and Lu Wudu had never met Yi Qingxuan, so there was no half-friendship between the three of them, not to mention, there might even be some grudges, so how come Yi Qingxuan would be so enthusiastic about the two of them, however, as the saying goes, reaching out is not a good idea, the two of them returned the salute, 
and then left first after exchanging a few simple pleasantries. As soon as the two left, Yi Qingsuan's face was no longer full of smiles but a look of gloating appeared. This was a medicinal powder that could only be refined after he had entered the rejuvenation realm, and it had the divine effect of relieving qi and detoxifying the body, only that it was usually used by the grain. Such a use of a large number of cases on the inheritance did not say what the consequences will be. As an experiment to collect some interest first, I think Lu Hong about two people as the vassal king's son refining qi kung fu should be pretty good. If you can't help it that can be. Ahem. Yi Qingdan lightly coughed twice remembering that there was another person on the sixth floor of the Dang Yun pavilion and turned his head to look. He only saw that Lu Qingshan was looking at himself with an odd expression. With a hint of dislike in his expression, Yi Qingsuan straightened his body and inquired. Brother Qingshan has used the lunch? No. Lu Qingshan shook his head. He was about to go out to have his meal didn't expect to meet Yi Qingsuan's trio. Based on the principle of not missing a good show, Lu Qingshan forced his hungry stomach and did not leave. Why don't we find a place to eat? Listening to Yi Qingdao's proposal, Lu Qingshan only hesitated slightly before nodding. The two of them went out of the Dang Yun pavilion together. Li Xian because he really couldn't stand Yi Qingsuan's laziness so he went to Xiao Yuanshan's residence at noon to read a book, only throwing Yi Qingsuan a sentence. Out of sight, out of mind. Lu Qingshan also didn't bring his sunny and cheerful scribe with him. So at this time it was the two sons of the world who walked alone above the streets of the capital. I heard that brother Qing Shan is a cultivation genius? Yi Qingdao asked one sentence without another. He was not a talkative person, but Lu Qingshan was really too silent. If Yi Qingsuan hadn't found a topic, he guessed that Lu Qingshan wouldn't have said a word. To be honest, although Yi Qingdao had never considered himself to be a world unrivaled genius, this breakthrough speed of Lu Qingshan was a bit too fast. In just seven years, he went from refining his body to Yuaning. And now that eight years have passed, no one knows to what extent Lu Qingshan has cultivated. To know that the entire Sunset Dynasty's top genius on the surface, that claimed that the Empire's Kirin body that was rare to encounter in a thousand years the latest news was only the fourth level of God refining. Of course this speed is not too fast, but cultivators who reside in treasure bodies have always been stronger than cultivators of the same realm. And naturally the precipitation required is also longer. This speed is already remarkable. Even the strength of Gu Qinghan, who possessed the Xian Ice Digidestined body, was only at the second level of God refining. The reason why Yi Qingwan was picked by Qian Yuanzi as a close disciple in the first place was actually because Yi Qingwan possessed a rare type of sword Dao physique. Innate sword soul. As the name suggests, this physique is born with a sword soul in the divine sea. And with this sword soul, no matter how difficult the sword Dao divine ability is Yi Qingwan can also comprehend it in a very short period of time. But with the battle ten years ago, Yi Qingdan used a secret method to spell out everything he had. The divine sea had dried up, and the sword soul was gone. The current Yi Qingzun was a real mortal body, and did not have half a bit of aura, a full mortal. Yi Qingdan doubted that Lu Qingshan had suddenly awakened some special physique to make such a swift breakthrough. Although such examples of awakening in their teens were not numerous, there were quite a few that appeared over the long years. Lu Qingshan pursed his lips and said, I'm not a genius, not when I was a child and still not now. Yi Qingwan was a bit speechless. This chat was dead in one sentence. How could he pick it up? In that case, there is only one thing to talk about. Then what kind of person does brother Aoyama want to be in the future? After asking this question Yi Qingwan's heart was all a bit bellyaching. How is this chatting so uncomfortable? But unexpectedly, when Lu Qingshan heard this question, a ray of unstoppable anticipation and hope flowed out of his expression. I want to be a painter. Paint all the mountains and rivers, walk to the end of the line. Sit and watch the clouds rise. But, said here Lu Qingshan Ai's hopeful color disappeared, turned to emerge a touch of gloom. But one man told me that if I don't become strong I'll never be able to choose freedom. So I'm going to become a genius and be strong enough to make choices. Yi Qingdao was surprised that Lu Qingshan, who had always been silent, would say so much to himself. Lu Qingshan's last tone is very firm. Yi Qingdan has a kind of inexplicable intuition. The future of the great Dao will be his Lu Qingshan a seat. After continuing to walk for about half an hour, the two of them found a very ordinary restaurant and settled down. The shopkeeper looked at the two temperament is not bad specially for the two people picked the best location for the line of sight. Ken glanced at the surrounding streets. At the dinner table, Lu Qingshan hesitated a few times or couldn't help but raise his doubts. Brother Yi, this cultivation realm of yours. Yi Qingsuan smiled. The cultivation went a bit awry, and I can't use my spiritual power for the time being. Lu Qingshan did not know whether he believed or did not want to ask more but also stopped talking about this aspect of the topic, and turned to talk about Yu Zhou and Xu Zhou, probably because Yi Qingsuan and Lu Qingshan were the same people who did not like to make a fuss. So after just one meal, 
The relationship between the two of them was as if they were close friends who had been friends with God for a long time. On the main street, the two were walking leisurely, when suddenly a sound of horses hooves rapidly approached from far and near. And in the middle of the road at this time is standing a pink and jade girl. The girl's elders at this time also do not know where, leaving her alone here. It looked like the carriage was about to hit the girls, but the carriage didn't have the slightest intention of stopping. Even the carriage driver who was driving the horse was looking at the little girl in front of him who was about to be knocked off her feet with a look of indifference. Just as Yi Ching Tsuan wanted to step in to stop it, a figure beside him moved first, only to see Lu Qingshan take a step across to the front of the little girl, and then a paintbrush consisting of black and white colors appeared in his hand. Lu Qingshan held the brush in his hand just gently pointing forward. A pure white invisible barrier appeared in front of him. That cart driver was subconsciously startled when he saw the person who suddenly rushed out. But after seeing Lu Qingshan's movements, the corner of his mouth revealed a touch of disdain. Turning to swing the horse whip with force, the originally fast carriage instantly went a few more notches faster. The horse's head was the first to collide with the pure white barrier. Boo! A sound of blisters exploding came out, accompanied by a hissing sound, only to see the huge carriage instantly flying backwards. The driver also had a big change in color, and then he hurriedly worked his aura, and his cultivation at the return to void realm was instantly exposed and the carriage also landed peacefully under this aura. After landing the driver looked at Lu Qingshan with bad eyes. At the same time, a word filled with arrogance came out from the carriage. Which one of you is the one who doesn't want to be killed and dares to block the way of the prime minister's residence? Lu Qingshan first looked at the little girl behind him unharmed before turning his head to look at the carriage. There was a shocking anger brewing in his complexion. At this time, Yi Qingduan also slowly leaned over and raised his voice. So what if the prime minister's office is not the king's land under the sky? The prime minister's office dares to kill the people at will at the foot of the son of heaven. Could it be that the prime minister has the intention of plotting a rebellion? The surrounding people didn't dare to gather around since they heard that it was the carriage of the prime minister's residence. But there were many who didn't want to leave. Look over here from a distance. After hearing Yi Ching Suan's words although he didn't dare to clap his hands in praise on the surface, he secretly gave a thumbs up in the bottom of his heart. That's a bold statement, but it's also a relief. After Yi Ching Duan finished that sentence, a 15 or 16 year old boy stepped down from the carriage. The teenager looked at both Yi Ching Suan and Lu Ching Shan with a look of arrogance, but the teenager did not dare to reply to Yi Ching Suan's words. If he said yes, he could not say that the folders for the prime minister's house would arrive at the imperial study room this afternoon. If you say no, then you have lost three points of momentum first. But who is he? Gu Yan Wu, the only young master of the prime minister's residence, one of the three masters of Luoyang. How can he lose face with two outsiders? The road is right here. Where do I go if not here? Lu Qingshan said angrily, Can't you just wait? Gu Yanwu snorted. Ha ha, what a laugh this young man. Is it hard to believe that this young man is going to waste my precious time because of a pariah? Do you guys think she deserves it? At this time, the old car driver slave beside the teenager stopped the teenager from continuing to argue, and said in a cold voice, Young master doesn't need to say anything more to these pariahs, the slave will take care of the cleanliness. The main thing is important. The teenager was about to say something, then fell silent, as if acquiescing to the carter's statement. Young master, you go back to the car first. After the old slave has finished with these eyesores, we'll hurry on. This old slave was not a blind person. Instead at the first glance he could tell that Yi Ching Tsuan and Lu Ching Shan's temperament was extraordinary. But based on his confidence in his own forces, he was fearless excluding those few. After saying that, the driver slowly walked towards Yi Ching Tsuan's trio and a strand of divine sense directly locked onto both Yi Ching Suan and Lu Ching Shan. Two milquetoast brats who think they have a few skills and dare to meddle in everything. Let me properly show you what happens when you meddle in things blindly today. The car driver who called himself an old slave slapped his palm at the two men, like a mountain collapsing with a rather bluffing aura. But Lu Ching Shan was not afraid to step out in the slightest, and his handheld brush drew a shield in the air at a very fast speed. As soon as the shield took shape, the palm slapped hard on it. Lu Qingshan immediately took several steps back and his shield cracked, but it never broke. However, through the contrast between Lu Qingshan's somewhat ironic complexion and that old slave's lightheartedness, it is not difficult to see that Lu Qingshan will not last long. Right at this moment, Yi Qingdan, who was originally watching the battle from the sidelines, struck out, only to see him take a single stride and arrive in front of the cart driver. Then something that caused the pupils of both the onlookers and the opposing sides to tighten occurred. Only Yi Qingtsuan flicked his arm. Then his right hand violently drew the bow and swung it forward. Pop. After that it was jerked back with the help of inertia. Pop. Yes. A silhouette flew out backwards and Lu Qingshan was able to catch his breath hurriedly taking a pill that replenished his spiritual energy. In the distance, the cart driver stood up. 
his cheeks swollen with two fist-sized bags, and looked at Yi Ching Suan with a vicious expression, especially after hearing the sound of the surrounding crowd covering their mouths and snickering, the eyes of that cart driver became more and more maniacal, Yi Ching Chen looked at the old slave with some embarrassment, I'm really sorry, this is the first time I've done this thing of pumping people, I'm still not too skillful, next time, next time I'll make sure to let you pass out, the coachman didn't say anything, only his eyes became very tyrannical, the chevron raised his arm again, his breath flowing far more than before, a river breaking momentum converging in his palm, just before the driver was about to make a move, Yi Ching Tsuan suddenly spoke, wait, the carter's hand moved, and he laughed sardonically, what, are you afraid, Yi Ching Tsuan shook his head, that's not true, I'm asking if you really want to kill us, aren't you afraid that there are people behind us that you can't afford to mess with, the old slave let out a loud laugh, determining that the two of them, Yi Ching Dan, were just scared, and a few moments of frenzy appeared in his demeanor, oh, today even if the king of heaven comes you guys will have to die, no one can stop you, I said, suddenly, at that moment, a path parted in the crowd and a group of city patrol soldiers walked in, at the head of the group was a young general in turquoise armor, with a look that was considered handsome, and a great majesty between his brows, who was brawling openly in the street, when that old slave saw the young general's expression change, he hastily withdrew his aura and replaced it with a sobbing look, Seventh Highness, you have to do right by my young master, not only did these two almost overturn the carriage of my prime minister's residence, but they also tried to make a move on my young master, after plotting against a minister, their hearts are punishable, the entire process was naturally articulated and natural, even Yi Qingguan could not find a single flaw, Lu Qianxu frowned slightly when he heard the three words prime minister's palace, these days, with the academy selection coming up, the dragons and fish are mixed up, that's why Lu Qianxu was sent by Lu Xuanzhen to patrol the streets to deal with things that ordinary officials couldn't handle well. Otherwise, how could he, as a royal son, condescend to conduct a street tour? But Lu Qianxu is not reckless. Naturally know how to say some things Father Emperor, but if you really do so certainly fall not good. The Prime Minister, as the head of the civil ministers, is powerful in the court. Lu Qianxu for the sake of the future plan of ascending the dragon. Naturally, he is unwilling to offend then we'll just have to delegate to the other side. As for what the other party should be penalized, Lu Qianxu turned his head to look, then froze violently and blurted out, Cousin Aoyama, he didn't recognize Yi Ching Suan, and it could be said that not many people in the entire Sunset Empire knew Yi Ching Suan. Looking at Lu Qingshan's mediocre face, which was exactly the same as when he was a young child, the corners of Lu Qianxu's mouth twitched slightly, this is great, the Prime Minister's office and Prince Yu's son are facing each other. As for Gu Yanwu's party who heard Lu Qianxu's address, their complexion changed, and they instantly arrived at Lu Qingshan's identity. Immediately, a master and a servant looked at each other, one with a terrified face, and one with pupils that shrunk slightly for a moment before returning to normal. Although the king of Yu is powerful, but in the capital, it is hard to say who has more influence between the prime minister's office and the king of Yu. Lu Qianxu on the side of the voice and then did not follow. The heart is a little worried. This any side of the power is not to be underestimated ah, Yu Zhou, where the king of Yu was located, was the livestock center of the entire sunset, and nearly 80% of sunset's meat came from Yu Zhou, moreover, the king of Yu is his own uncle, so it's not reasonable to offend him either in terms of the big picture or in terms of kinship, however, at the foot of the emperor, as a prince, they both have to give themselves a few points of face even if their status is no longer honorable, thinking of this, Lu Qianxu spoke with forced composure, Elder brother Gu, you were wrong in this matter first, why don't you apologize to cousin Qingshan first? The moment these words came out originally waiting for Lu Qianxu to ruthlessly punish Lu Qingshan Gu Yanwu did not do it, why should I apologize? The road was right there, they were the ones who got in my way and nearly overturned my carriage. Lu Qianxu's face stiffened slightly, and a wisp of anger flashed in his eyes, then he turned his head to look at Lu Qingshan again, and seeing that side was also full of anger, he suddenly looked even more melancholy. Suddenly. Lu Qianxu's eyes lit up, since he can't solve it then find someone who can solve this matter ah, ahem, cousin Qing Shan, elder brother Gu, since you're unwilling to reconcile, then I'll only have to take one last way to resolve this issue, as the words fell, four pairs of eyes looked at Lu Qianxu in unison, Lu Qianxu straightened his body, took out a dragon jade pendant, and said in a swift and loud voice, go to the palace and ask for a holy judgment, as soon as the words fell, a golden light shot out from the deepest part of the palace, the next second the golden light enveloped the place where Yi Ching Tsuan and the others were, and a moment later the golden light dissipated. Along with them, there were five other silhouettes that disappeared. 
The only thing left in the spot was the lone carriage, and a group of confused onlookers, the very center of Luoyang, the heart of power in the entire Sunset Empire. Five silhouettes appeared out of thin air, and it was clearly Yi Qingxuan, Lu Qianxu, Lu Qingshan, and Gu Yanwu's master and servant. After Lu Qingshan and Gu Yanwu both surveyed their surroundings, their faces were a little unsightly. When Lu Qianxu took out the dragon jade pendant, the three people including the old slave had already felt remorse, but Lu Qianxu's speed was too fast for them to stop it. Gu Yanwu actually didn't want to make a big deal out of it, or else once his father found out the reason why he went out, he definitely wouldn't be able to escape a severe beating. Lu Qingshan was different. He was afraid of meeting someone, someone he least wanted to see since his withdrawal. Lu Qianxu took a curious glance at Yi Qingxuan, then looked at the three people who were not looking good. Come on, come all the way. Yi Qingxuan was closing his eyes at the moment, and right in that golden light just now he felt an unseen will. This will was as high as the blue sky, and Yi Qingxuan thought that if he could incorporate this will into the red dust sword intent, then the pressure of his sword would be much stronger than it was now. But unfortunately the golden light lasted for too short a time. Yi Qingxuan simply did not have time to comprehend it in detail. Yi Qingxuan slowly opened his eyes and saw that Lu Qianxu and the three of them were all looking at him with a compassionate gaze. That gaze was like looking at the mud-blooded best friend next to the young master of a rich family. Five people divided into three rows. Along the way through Lu Qingxuan's explanation Yi Qingxuan also understand what is called to ask the holy ruling. Requesting the holy ruling is not requesting the holy spirit to personally rule. In which case then Lu Xuanzhen would not be busy to death. Rather, it says that the holy will of the sunset empire is invited to adjudicate a means of conflict resolution unique to nations and dynasties, and since the result of a request for a royal decree would be announced to the whole empire, with the cause and effect of what happened, very few people were willing to ask for a royal decree, but today Lu Qianxu is also no way, let him to determine if there is always one side will be offended, this will also incur some resentment from both parties, but it certainly won't reach the point of a grudge, the five of them passed through the heavy golden and brilliant halls, and when they passed a very majestic palace with a purple aura surrounding it, Lu Qianxu suddenly stopped in his tracks. A moment later, Lu Qianxu looked at the four people behind him with some bloating. Now what about I have good news and bad news? Which one do you want to hear? Looking at how uninterested the few people were, Lu Qianxu rolled his eyes before saying to himself, and the good news is that you don't have to ask for a holy ruling. After a pause, Lu Qianxu some cannot suppress the corner of the mouth of the smile can only be forced to hold back. As for the bad news, well, there is a person to personally deal with you guys in this matter. Gu Yanwu froze, what kind of bad news is this, as long as it is not known by his own old man, who dares not give face to the prime minister's office, the source of Gu Yanwu's bottom line for everything is his own father, his father Gu Yan, the prime minister of the dynasty, but also today's literati lineage of people in charge, their own cultivation is to reach the first heaven, in the city of Luoyang can be said to be the existence of one person and 10,000 people, it was important to know that throughout the entire sunset empire, there were only a handful of cultivators who were explicitly among the transition realm. The influence of the transitional realm with the literati and Confucians at its back was even more imaginable. So in general on small matters, even Lu Xuanzhen will give Gun Yan a few thin face. Besides, Gun Yan is not a mediocre, traitorous minister. On the contrary, his talent for ruling the country was appreciated even by the highly discerning Qi Tianyuan. For three generations of the Gu family, Gun Yan is only one person. And the empire's upper view for a thousand years is also Gunyan only one person. The five people's original northbound direction was suddenly changed to the east, and they eventually stopped in front of a not-so-big temple. As soon as Yi Qingxuan arrived here, he felt an aura that had the same root as the golden light from before. Lu Qianxu reported, and then he led several people into the hall in turn. Yi Qingguan walked at the very back, and by the time he entered, none of the people in front of him were standing. All of them bowed their heads in obeisance. Yi Qingdan looked up only to see a young man with a clear and handsome face, but exuding great majesty was sitting high above the golden-colored dragon chair. This person's identity had already been called out, and it was none other than the lord of the Sunset Kingdom, Lu Xuanzhen. This was the first time Yi Qingguan had seen Lu Xuanzhen, and it was a far cry from the monarch's face he had imagined. Yi Qingguan thought that Lu Xuanzhen should at least be about the same age as Yi Xiao, and even if he was younger, he wouldn't be so young. However, it wasn't particularly peculiar to think that some powerful people focused on face nourishing kung fu. Lu Xuanzhen was dealing with official business at this time, and didn't raise his head at all when he saw a few people come in. As for the other four besides Yi Qingguan, they bowed down since the first time they saw Lu Xuanzhen. Lu Qingshan, who was on the side, thought that Yi Qingxuan was not recognizing Lu Xuanzhen, and made an effort to make a wink at him, but Yi Qingxuan was unmoved and just smiled at him. 
causing Lu Qingshan to roll his eyes for a while. After about half a quarter of an hour or so, it seemed that he had finally finished dealing with a tricky matter. Lu Xuanzhen exhaled a mouthful of turbid breath. Without looking up, he asked, What's going on? Anyone? Gu Yanwu was just about to open his mouth, but he was violently tugged on the corner of his coat by an old slave at the side. Seeing this, Lu Qianxu on the side could only tell the original story himself. After speaking, Lu Xuanzhen merely gave a light him without any other indication, and the old slave on the side took a small step forward and respectfully said, Reporting to the lord of the country, my young master's horse riding is indeed against the law, and he is willing to be punished. As soon as these words came out, Gu Yanwu's face instantly became anxious and he was about to open his mouth, but it was stopped by a look from the old slave. With that, the old slave continued, but the fact that that white-clothed youth tried to make a move on my young master is undeniable. Saying this, the old slave looked up at Lu Xuanzhen, only to see that Lu Xuanzhen had already raised his head to look at himself at this point, with a slight smile at the corner of his mouth. So the old slave became more and more confident that the prime minister's office could not suffer for nothing. It is not appropriate to offend the house of the king of you but it is always possible to kill a young man who comes from a small place to study. Therefore, the old slave would like to ask your majesty to grant death to this youth who has violated the law below. Lu Xuanzhen finally opened his mouth and said his first words, Is this your intention? Or your young master's intention? Or the prime minister's office's intention? The old slave's heart thumped at the words. Immediately following Lu Xuanzhen's words caused him to fall into an ice cellar. The following offense, do you know who he is? With a fluttering sound, the old slave dropped to both knees and ruthlessly got high a few times on the hard floor. Your majesty is wise. The slave just made a slip of the tongue. A slip of the tongue. Although he doesn't know Yi Ching Suan's identity yet, the old slave believes that Lu Xuanzhen wouldn't make such a joke. The best thing to do at this point is to admit your mistake first. At this moment, all the gazes in the room were focused on Yi Ching Dao, who took two steps forward. In a loud voice, he said, Your majesty, just now this carter said that even if the king of heaven comes today, he will still kill me. I also ask your majesty to quickly grant death to this insignificant son of the king of Shu. The old green clothed slave from the prime minister's residence changed his face drastically. Turning his head, he started kowtowing towards Yi Ching Suan. Your son, this is the old slave's delirious utterance of nonsense. It can't be true. Yi Ching Duan laughed. Don't. I just reminded you. That green clothed old slave's heart shook as he suddenly remembered what Yi Ching Suan had said when he stopped him earlier. Aren't you afraid there's someone behind us you can't afford to mess with? The old slave was sweating coldly, and Gu Yanwu on the side was also a little pale. Messing with a worldly son, with Prime Minister Gu Nian's power in the capital could still be slightly better. But to provoke two of them at once, the Prime Minister's office is probably also difficult enough. At this time, Gu Yanwu really regretted that he hadn't read the yellow calendar when he left the house. How did he let himself run into these two fatal stars? Lu Xuanzhen looked at Yi Ching Tsuan with a smile on his face. This little guy is interesting. He's actually somewhat impervious. Lu Xuanzhen withdrew his gaze. Originally such a small matter was not worth his time. Even though the forces that both sides belonged to had a significant position in the Sunset Empire. But the Sunset Empire was a cultivation dynasty. And this was in Kyoto. Lu Xuanzhen, as the lord of a country, in this Luoyang city, even if the elders of these little ones arrived in unison, he was also not the least bit afraid. Fighting alone, in this Luoyang city even if an ascension realm immortal came, they would have to descend to the realm and face each other. But it was such a thing that one could say that replacing two people wouldn't even need to alarm the city patrol. Lu Xuanzhen transmitted his voice to Lu Qianxu and asked him to bring the person into the imperial study. Lu Xuanzhen sized up the two of them, Lu Qingshan and Yi Qingduan, secretly comparing the two to his eldest son. In the end, only one conclusion was reached that could not be considered a conclusion. In a battle of life and death, the winner is unknown. Junior of the Gu family, I have heard a little about your words and actions in the capital. These words came out like a thunderbolt, causing Gu Yanwu's pupils to tighten. A hint of fear that had never been shown before appeared in his expression. If Lu Xian really said a word about killing, his own father might not be able to save himself. Immediately after that, Lu Xuanzhen mumbled to himself as if he were nagging a family member. As the ancients used to say, dragons give birth to phoenixes. How could Gu Yan, such a calm, stereotypical person, give birth to a son with such a wild personality? Rather, it's strange that the son of that rough man Yixiao was born so handsome. The two sisters-in-law don't look like that either nah. The last sentence was so fine and inaudible that Lu Xuanzhen was only thinking about it in his heart field without ever uttering it. Lu Xuanzhen then shifted his gaze back to Gu Yanwu's master and servant. Your arrogance will sooner or later harm you. This time I will be a small punishment. If the next offense will not be lightly spared. Gu Yanwu listens to the decree. 
I punish you not allowed to go out of the Prime Minister's residence in March. Read through the Book of Rights a thousand times. All the sons of the hundred books a book is not bad to read before you cannot go out of the capital. I obey the decree. Gu Yan Wu's warlike voice echoed in the Great Hall. Lu Xuanzhen's gaze went back to the old slave. Family slave with the surname Gu committed the following offense. Abolished both arms and sealed his cultivation. When will your family's male son restore his cultivation after he finishes reading the book? My slave obeys the decree. After the words were finished, a golden light instantly enveloped the Gu family's old slave, followed by a miserable scream. Ah, in the blink of an eye, the old slave's arms were chopped off at the shoulders, and there was no more half aura fluctuation in his body. After doing so, Lu Xuanzhen's gaze once again fell on Lu Qingshan and Yi Qingsuan. Do you have any objections to this result? Lu Qingshan shook his head slightly, but Yi Qingdan took a step forward. Your Majesty, I have an objection. As soon as the words came out, Lu Xuanzhen frowned slightly. Yi Qingdan bowed slightly and said, I represent the Shu Wangfu. A single old slave from the Prime Minister's residence dares to bully me like this. If it is spread back to Shu Zhou, where is the face of my Shu Wangfu? Therefore I demand that the Prime Minister's office make amends for this matter. Lu Xuanzhen was looking at Yi Qingsuan with a very calm face at this moment, but everyone could feel the purple qi inside the room begin to slowly flow. Clearly, the monarch was a little upset. How are you going to make amends? Yi Qingdan pondered for a moment and spoke. My Shu Wangfu house soldiers have not replaced their weapons and armor for a long time, so why not let the Prime Minister's office compensate me with enough military materials to equip 3,000 armors? Lu Qingshan and Gu Yanwu on the side both had their faces changed. It is not that the amount is large, but the possession of private armies can be large or small. No courtier or general has ever dared to mention this matter to the monarch openly. As expected, once Yi Qingsuan's words fell, the atmosphere in the room steeply became serious. Lu Xuanzhen squinted his eyes at the Zhangji on the table, his mind recalling some past events. A look of guilt could not help but flash in his eyes. I only saw him say in a deep voice, Granted, but never again. Stand down. Lu Xuanzhen gave the expulsion order, and Gu Yanwu pulled the trembling old slave to get up slowly. After saluting once more, he left the imperial study. While Yi Qingzuan and Lu Qingshan were preparing to leave, Lu Xuanzhen's voice sounded again. During the period of study in the academy, if I find out that you are using your status to bully, don't blame me for abolishing your status as sons of the world. And in the capital is not like in the fiefdom. The dragons and fish are mixed. It's better to see fewer unnecessary people. Yi Qingdan and the two of them looked at each other before silently bowing in unison and leaving the hall. Both of them are intelligent people, and they know a thing or two. As a vassal king's son if he colludes with the capital forces, even if Lu Xuanzhen is more enlightened, he will not be stupid enough to let it develop. Yi Qingwan and the two of them parted ways after leaving the Vermilion Bird Gate in pairs. Yi Qingwan returned to the Dangyun Pavilion Room after making a trip to Li Xian. For the next two days, Yi Qingsuan did not take half a step out of his room and stayed in his room to realize the Tao healing inheritance. Every morning was spent cultivating the Xian Huang body refining technique, and in the past two days, the auditions for the disciples of the academy were also completed in full swing. The selection is simple. It's just a dream. Some woke up from their dreams and left of their own accord, while the rest invariably entered the schoolhouse. There were 49 people in total, plus the 9 people that Yi Qingzuan and the others had entered with their invitations at the beginning, making a total of 58 people. The seventh floor of the Dengyun Pavilion was not open and could only accommodate 54 people, so it was inevitable that someone would have to share a room. Just as the scene was about to get out of control, an imperial decree came. There are just two things the Holy Writs have to say. For one thing, the rooms are not fixed right now, and there will be a competition to decide where the rooms belong after the first half of the school year. In this way, the hearts of the disciples who came in later were instantly much more balanced. At least there was a chance. The second thing is that from now on, all people are equal in terms of birth and identity, and no one is allowed to use their power to suppress others during their studies in the academy, and no one is allowed to seek revenge for personal reasons after leaving the academy. Those who disobeyed the order were stripped of their titles and honors, and were barred from entering the imperial service for all eternity. This decree was met with cheers. This was tantamount to a life-preserving talisman on the way to heaven for the pride of the cold sect, enough to give them a lot less worries and concerns. Now that the disciples have been finalized, the academy should be opened. Just one hour after the arrival of Lu Xuanzhen's holy decree, another piece of news came out from within the palace. The academy has been completed. Tomorrow please have all academy disciples report to the academy palace. When this news came out, the entire Dang Yun pavilion and the academic palace boiled over at the same time. Disciple of the academy, this academy is surprisingly also in the academy palace. So what is the point of my entering the academy? 
Disciple of the Academy, the Academy was built to cultivate the pillars of the nation and is located in the Academy. And I am a disciple of the Academy. So doesn't that mean I am a pillar of the nation? In the academic palace, two men and a woman sat around a pavilion in a pavilion platform. One of the sickly looking men said breathlessly, cough, cough, it seems that we didn't really miss the academy disciple recruitment. Another young man who didn't look like he had a good temper snorted coldly, Humph. without us that academy can still be called a place to cultivate a pillar of talent? The beautiful woman who was sitting in the northwest corner of the pavilion looking at the lotus flowers in the pond at this time, softly said, being underestimated by the heavenly pride of the world, I heard that Prince Yu and that born Taoist body are among them. And I've heard that the one from the imperial palace is also among them. So don't underestimate it. All of a sudden, there was silence in the pavilion. At this time, a Confucian robed woman suddenly came from outside the pavilion. The Confucian robed woman's face wasn't considered good looking. It could only be described as durable. After the woman looked around at the three and found them all there, she said softly, Mr. Sacrifice has reserved four places in the academy for the four of us. So remember to report in the morning. After saying that, the Confucian robed woman turned around and left. The three people in the pavilion looked at each other, and a wave of resentment slowly dissipated in their hearts. The sunlight of a summer morning always gives a strong breath of life. Early in the morning, Yi Qingxuan left Dang Yun Pavilion with his book Boy Li Xian and headed to the school palace in Luoyang. Speaking of which, Yi Qingdao had already heard the words Academy Palace many times. Most of the time it was heard from two people. One was Yi Xiao and the other was Yi Runan. The former had only one sentence to say about the Academy. Since ancient times, the grassy fields have produced great men, and the academy is full of negative men. The latter was even more disdainful of the academy, calling it a place of fame and glory. That was why Yi Qingguan could never be interested in this school palace that was regarded as a holy place by the sunset students. Arriving at the entrance of the academy palace, the two guards checked the gold stickers and then watched Yi Qingguan and the two of them go away with envious gazes. Yi Qingguan walked on the avenue of the academy palace, lined with tall acacia trees listening to the second sister Yi Runan. These trees were planted by the first dean, and after tens of thousands of years of baptism by the Haoran Qi, they have long been integrated with the Qi of the Academy Palace. The acacia trees have become psychic, replacing their leaves every hundred years. It is said that by the leaves of the acacia tree you can tell whether there will be more or less talented people in the Academy for the next hundred years. If the branches and leaves flourish naturally is the pride of the sky, if the old acacia will die, certainly is the scene of the withering of talent. And the most recent leaf change for this group of acacias was just 10 years ago, and I'm told it was as good as it's ever been. The number of acanthus leaves even goes right back to that period of the first dean. Whether it was true or not Yi Qingxuan didn't know, but he did feel a strong how ran Qi on these acacia trees. In such an environment, it must be difficult for a disciple of the academy to not become a well-read scholar. The Tao of Heaven is invisible, and all the paths are created. History is not without precedence of ascension by reading. But compared to the number of cultivators who cultivated to the ascension realm by aura, it is almost negligible. After walking for a while, Li Xian raised his somewhat baby fat head to glare at Yi Qingduan. My lord, are you sure you know the way to the schoolhouse? Yi Qingdan looked confident. That's for sure. I've long memorized the map of the academy palace in my heart, so I'm sure I won't go wrong. Li Xian nodded with confidence. So the two of them continued to move forward. Along the way Yi Qingduan saw many disciples of the academy dressed as Confucians but with majestic breath. It seems that there are indeed many talented people in this generation school palace. Yi Qingduan thought in his heart. Suddenly, a pang of curiosity rose in Yi Qingduan's heart. What was second sister really like in the academy? Yi Qingduan casually stopped a youngster from the academy, who was a bit puzzled but still stopped. Yi Qingxuan first saluted according to Confucian etiquette before slowly opening his mouth to ask. My name is Yi Lightning. I'm new here. May I ask if there is a disciple named Yi Runan in this academy palace? That teenager initially looked calm, but his expression changed drastically when he heard the three words Yi Runan. It's like mentioning something taboo. The teenager looked around for a moment, then pulled Yi Qingdao to a remote place. You're crazy to dare mention that name in the academy. Yi Qingduan and Li Xian were confused and waited for the teenager's explanation. The teenager took a deep breath and said with some fear, Luckily, the one you met today is me. If you had met an older senior or sir, you would have suffered. Even if they don't get rounded up and taught a hard lesson, they're still going to be fingered as deviants. Yi Qingchen asked with some confusion. Why, can't it be that she's a poor learner and is disliked by others? The teenager shook his head in an old-fashioned manner and put his hands behind his back. In a particularly slow tone of voice, he said, Nonetheless, nonetheless, in terms of the level of learning, that woman with the surname Yi ranks in the top three even when looking at the thousand-year history of the Academy Palace. 
Not long ago, he even argued all the way through the entire school palace, from the chief priest to the teachers of each subject, without a single defeat, totally deserving of the words towel head. Speaking of which the teenager who was a disciple of the academy couldn't help but show a few strands of admiration in his eyes. This is a move that he is also fascinated by. Li Xian stood aside and asked in a brittle voice, then why did the people of the academy palace reject that woman so much? The teenager sighed, it's more fear and envy than rejection. The disciples of the academy are jealous that this woman is far more learned than they are, and the gentlemen fear that she is so learned. Li Xian suddenly interjected, isn't that a good thing? It means that the academy palace has produced another heavenly pride. Yi Qingduan and the teenager were both silent. Only after a moment did the teenager slowly say another thing about this Yi woman. In the beginning, the first day that woman came to the academy she threatened that if she became a priestess, then the academy would only accept female disciples in the future. And she's going to send all the current priests and gentlemen to the frontier to guard the gates of the country. That's why since the very beginning, the gentlemen and priests in the academy have not treated that woman well. Yi Qingdao suddenly realized that the cause of the matter was here. The position of scholar of the academy palace is not an official position, but the status is honored, and it is traditionally held by a gentleman or a great scholar who has great knowledge of the university. Now that Yi Runin had spoken out of turn, and had really outperformed the priest and a group of gentlemen in terms of learning, he was naturally very hopeful to become the new priest, and there are some in the schoolhouse who fear such a thing. Yi Qingdan didn't ask any more questions after thinking clearly. Any more than that was not something this teenager could know. Yi Qingduan continued to walk deeper into the academy palace after parting ways with the teenager. Because of the slight delay from the previous conversation, there were already many more people on the road. Just as he was about to arrive at the academy, Yi Qingtsuan ran into Lu Hongguan and Lu Wudu who had come together to enroll. The two men were pale and weak at this time, and even standing up required the assistance of the bookkeeper on the side. A look like he had fought all day and night without rest in the Excelsior. Yi Qingdan forced a smile and went forward to greet him. Aya, what's wrong with you guys, brother Hong Bird and brother Wu Du? Yi Qingsuan's loud voice instantly attracted the gazes of the people around him. The two of them, Lu Hongqiao, immediately looked a bit ugly. Lu Hongqiao said with some lack of breath, it's just a matter of eating a bad stomach, there's no need to worry about old brother lightning dust. That's good, the two elder brothers must pay attention to taking care of their bodies ah, don't fall sick at a young age, there's no harm, there's no harm. Old brother lightning dust go ahead. Let's rest for a while. Yi Qingdan stifled his laughter and nodded. Leaving first. After Yi Qingduan left, Lu Wudu looked at Lu Hongguan. Cousin, could he have poisoned us? Lu Hongxiao was silent for a while, then suddenly turned his head to the servant boy beside him and said, You asked Shenji to check Yi Qingsuan's whereabouts over the years. I want to know everything about him for the past 10 years. Yes. Yi Qingsuan and the two of them walked all the way and finally arrived in front of a courtyard with a plaque of the academy. Standing in the doorway and looking inward, there is a lot of space, although it is not comparable to the school palace, but it is more than enough to accommodate a few hundred people. Yi Qingduan handed the gold sticker to a female disciple wearing a Confucian robe, and the female disciple gave Yi Qingduan a strange look in her eyes after reading it. Then he gave Yi Qingsuan a token without saying anything more. The token was no different from the material of the Academy Palace Disciple token, except that not only was the word Academy Palace printed on it, but two more words were added on the reverse side. Schoolhouse. Unlike a schoolhouse, a schoolhouse does not have fixed hours of instruction. The time and place of the next lecture will usually be communicated at the end of the previous lecture. As for who the lecturer is, that will only be known when it comes to the official lecture. When Yi Qingguan took the token, the Confucian robed woman informed Yi Qingguan that the first lesson would be tomorrow morning. The location is in the middle of this compound. Yi Qingguan had already roughly surveyed the school palace when he came so naturally he didn't have to stay longer when he went out. In just less than a quarter of an hour Yi Qingduan brought Li Xian back to the entrance of the school palace. It was only then that Yi Qingzuan realized that this academy palace except for the name was printed on the main door towards the outside, but the couplets on both sides were actually carved into the stone walls inside. The handwriting on this couplet was very square, as if it had been carefully carved on with a single stroke. The brush is strong and powerful. It should be written by a calligrapher who combines talent with high cultivation. The left side of the couplet reads, The king has gifted me with a meritocracy. On the right side of the couplet, it reads, I return the community to be handsome. The site is further up. The four big words in the horizontal couplet are even more amazing in their penmanship. Gathering of the Magi. The style of the four large characters is different from the left and right couplets, and should have been written by someone else. If Yi Qingtsuan was right, the person who wrote the inscription did not use half a bit of aura, but the handwriting was already in the wood. After a long time of looking at it, 
People unconsciously sink into a state of mind similar to a state of mind as if it were still water. It wasn't difficult for Yi Qingxuan to do this with his current sword Dao cultivation, but if he were to infuse his sword Dao will onto it, even a stone twice as hard as the gate of the school palace would not be able to withstand a few strokes from him. At this time, Li Xian, who was on the side, shook his head and said with some disappointment, living in a corner and sticking to one's own ways. Yi Qingdan suddenly turned his head to look at Li Xian, only to see that the scholar boy looked calm and did not look different. But Yi Qingdao always felt that something was strange. The two of them walked out of the palace gates and ran into an old friend head on. Yi Qingduan looked at the blue skirted woman who was walking with her head down and shouted, Miss Qinghan, hello again. Gu Qinghan, who was originally walking forward in a mute manner, suddenly heard someone calling her and looked up. A handsome face with sword brows and starry eyes came into view. Mr. Yi, you're also here for enrollment? There was some surprise in Gu Qinghan's voice, not expecting to see Yi Qingsuan again after only a few days of separation. Aha! Yi Qingduan gently nodded his head. Gu Qinghan sniffed with some surprise on her face, and the corners of her mouth blossomed into a wisp of a very moving smile. Yi Qingduan looked at the cool beauty in front of him whose mouth was lightly raised. The heart could not help but recall the words of Puzuan. Miss Gu was actually a very warm person. Yi Qingchen smiled back and said, Then we will be fellow students from now on. Hurry up and get inside. There aren't many people now. Gu Qinghan nodded and said goodbye to Yi Qingxuan before walking quickly into the middle of the school palace. Yi Qingduan stood at the entrance of the academy palace for a long time. A color of contemplation flashed in his eyes. What shall I ask the Taoist to take in exchange for this news? Buddhist scriptures. Taoist scriptures? Or is it the same mortar and pestle? Yi Qingduan felt that he had to think about it. Anyway, no matter what this must be a surefire business. Of course it's a matter of ordering as much as you can. In the small building beside the Dangyun Pavilion, Yi Qingxuan sat in a circle with Xiao Yuan Shan and the others in the room. After Yi Qingduan spoke about the basic arrangements of the academy, Xiao Yuan Shan looked a little annoyed. Your Highness, you've gone off to study what are we going to do then? Yi Qingduan pondered a little, then revealed a meaningful smile. A fat one for you both. He Zi Wan suddenly looked at Yi Qingxuan with a wary face, while Xiao Yuan Shan blurted out with a straight face. Really? Definitely the world's first class fat job. Yi Qingduan then quietly whispered a few words in the ears of the two men, and both of their faces changed after that. Your Highness, is this really okay? Yi Qingduan had no choice but to move the killer. This is what my father said. You guys just have to say what I taught you, and you'll be fine. He Zi Wan and the two of them let out a sigh of relief and proceeded to get up. In that case, let's get on with it before it's too late. Yi Qingdao nodded and watched the two leave the room. Yi Qingduan was also ready to get up after the two left but was pulled back by Pu Zun who was at the side. Wait a moment, world son, the poor Taoist has something to ask. The corner of Yi Qingxuan's mouth, who was facing Pu Zun sideways, picked up a dark smile, bewildered. He said, what does the Taoist master have to ask me? Sure Zi just said he saw Miss Gu on the street? Exactly. Then can Seiji tell me where you saw Miss Gu? Yi Qingxuan sniffed and suddenly held her forehead. Oops recently the body is a bit weak and the memory is not too good. If only there was something to replenish the body. Pu Zun's face changed several times, eventually leaving only a touch of fervor, only to see Pu Zun flip his hand upwards. Two pure black beads suddenly appeared in his hand. I only have two Vajra relics left in my hand. Although the quality is not considered the best but it's also a treasure that is hard to find in 10,000 gold. Do you think it's okay? Shi Tsi? Yi Qing Dan was stunned. He originally only wanted a few body refining gold dawn. He did not expect Pu Zun to be so generous. It was important to know that this Buddhist Vajra's relics were known as the holy medicine for refining the body, with unimaginable benefits for martial artists. Ahem, Taoist master are you sure you want to give me this Vajra relic? Pu Zun's face flashed with a momentary hesitation at his words, then he fiercely gritted his teeth and said, Certainly, world son, please smile. A few moments later, Pu Zun, who had gotten the news from Gu Qinghan, jumped directly from the window to the opposite roof as if he had rushed to kill someone for thousands of miles. Immediately after that, with his strong Buddhist Vajra physique, he jumped tens of meters in one step between the eaves of the houses. Yi Qingdan estimated that if it wasn't for the no-fly martial arts suppression within Luoyang City, Pu Zun would even want to fly directly there. The word color is a knife in the head. Yi Qingduan stood at the window, listening to the shouting and cursing that came faintly, and could not help but sigh. At this time, Li Xian had gone to the Dangyun Pavilion ahead of time, and only Yi Qingxuan was left in the room at this time. Yi Qingduan looked at it for a while slowly taking out two things from his sleeves. Two letters, one a military letter sent at the same time as the one from Yi Xiao. There were four words written on it. The world's son himself. The handwriting on this letter was very neat. And at a glance, 
It was clear that it was not written by Yi Xiao. The content of the letter is probably that Jialong Pass in recent years, although fewer wars, but small wars constantly, the dynasty has been delayed in the grain and grass soldiers and horses, if there are more wars fear difficult to cope with, the soldiers pay has been in arrears for more than a year, and further delays are likely to lead to trouble. I hope that Yi Qingxuan can talk to his majesty about this matter when he enters the capital this time, so that he can gather all the military supplies as soon as possible, so that the hearts of the soldiers and people in Shuzhou can be restored. If the letter just ended there, Yi Qingdao would certainly not easily believe the contents above, but there was a small line interspersed at the end of the letter, safety first, do your best, and the second letter arrived this morning, also from the border army, the handwriting was exactly the same as the previous letter, except that it was obvious that the pen was being written a little faster than before, and the direction was supposed to be in a hurry, and the content on it is extremely simple, with only 8 words, it's hard to fight for long when you're out of ammo and food, Early the next morning, Yi Qingzuan slowly lowered his palms. It's done. Yi Qingduan's eyes were filled with joy. The first level of the Xian Huang body refining technique he had finally practiced. Yi Qingduan reached out and took out the two relics he had exchanged from Pu Zun yesterday. Begin to refine the smaller one of them with his blood qi. At once, the blood and qi in his body surged, and the Xian Huang body refining technique worked crazily. A drumming sound came out from Yi Qingdao's body and lasted for half an hour. Bang! Finally, after a crunch, the drums dissipated. A glazed luster flashed from Yi Qingdao's flesh. This indicated that Yi Qingzuan was officially in the sixth realm of martial arts, the Liuli realm at this time, equivalent to an aura cultivator at the alchemy stage. Apart from the marvelousness of the Xian Huang body refining technique, Yi Qingzuan's sword intent and Taoist healing art played a very important role in such a fast cultivation speed. The sword intent accelerated the absorption of the Xian Huang Qi, and the Taoist healing art nourished the flesh, and the combination of the two was what made it so rapid. After feeling it carefully, Yi Qingdao estimated that now if he used his sword strength should have minimal damage to his physical body. Yi Qingzuan simply packed up and then walked towards the academy palace alone. No one like Xia Yuan Shan or Li Xian was brought along. In just half an hour, Yi Qingduan arrived at the main gate of the academy palace. After familiarizing himself with the path, Yi Qingzuan arrived in the middle of the academy after only a few moments of walking, because the hour was still early. Only a few people were in the academy when Yi Qingzuan arrived. A Confucian-robed woman, a stout young man with a short sword at his waist, and a man who looked a bit effeminate in the past. These three people, excluding the Confucian-robed woman who had a meeting yesterday, the remaining two Yi Qingduan had never seen. Yi Qingduan did not hide his aura as he entered the courtyard, and the three naturally saw Yi Qingduan. The Confucian-robed woman nodded her head at Yi Qingduan, and the short sword man ignored it. In the end, that effeminate man also smiled at Yi Qingdao. Yi Qingzuan returned a smile to the two and casually found a corner in the last row to sit down. After a while, people started arriving in groups. People like Lu Hongqiao, Lu Wudu, and Gu Qinghan also arrived in turn. Even Yi Qingduan saw the seventh prince Lu Qianshu whom he had just met not long ago. There were a few people among these fellow students that interested Yi Qingdao. A young man wearing a Taoist robe with inexplicable Taoist rhythms lingering all over his body. A young man who was gorgeously dressed, with a godly internalization. There was also a gorgeous woman who was almost the last to arrive, but had extremely beautiful features and a superior demeanor. Now the entire classroom was left with only one empty seat beside Yi Qingzuan, and there was still one person who hadn't come. Lu Qingshan. Yi Qingduan's mind had just finished ringing when a mediocre-looking figure walked through the door. Sweeping around, he walked towards the seat beside Yi Qingzuan. Up late? Nope. Had a little trouble on the road and got delayed for a while, since the last time they went to the palace. Lu Qingshan and Yi Qingzuan had become much more familiar with each other. Speak as casually and succinctly as if you were a close friend. After a while longer, it was time for the lecture, but the lecturer had not yet arrived. Just as the crowd was getting a little impatient waiting and talking, suddenly, a figure with white hair and a duster in his hand appeared out of nowhere at the very front of the classroom. There was a violent silence in the tumultuous schoolroom, a sound of a cool breath being sucked and followed. Yi Qingduan looked at the figure and his pupils contracted as a hint of surprise flashed in his eyes. It's him, Lu Qingshan, who was on the side, heard Yi Qingzuan's mutterings and asked, You know Master Qi, Master of the State? Yi Qingzuan froze, then shook his head. I had just a one-sided relationship with that old man. Qi Tianyuan's gaze swept around the chamber, stopping slightly as he passed by Yi Qingzuan. Qi Tianyuan said aloud after withdrawing his gaze, Academy Qi Tianyuan, nice to meet you all. Student meets Mr. Xie. Everyone rose and bowed forward in unison. Qi Tianyuan nodded and gestured for everyone to sit down. After everyone sat down, 
Ji Tianyuan stretched out three fingers. There are three questions in this lesson that I would like to discuss with you. Next is the first question. As he spoke, Ji Tianyuan was seen using his duster as a brush and his spiritual energy as ink to continuously undulate in midair. A few moments later two large letters took shape. The way, Ji Tianyuan slowly opened his mouth at this time. Everyone here is a leading man of sunset. Who can explain these two words for the old man? The hall was silent, and many people's heads drooped, not daring to look directly at Qi Tianyuan's gaze. At this time, the Confucian-robed woman that Yi Qingdan had seen yesterday stood up and bowed with a flourish. Mr. Qi, the student believes that the Great Tao is intangible, so there are no words or vocabulary to describe the Great Tao. Qi Tianyuan looked at the Confucian-robed woman and nodded with a smile, scanning the crowd. Does anyone else have a different opinion? Because someone took the lead. Several people answered next one after another. Chi Tianyuan didn't even judge whether it was right or wrong, good or bad, and all listened to their answers with a smile on his lips. The student believes that the great way lies in the heart, and that a heart with the great way can break through all difficulties. Mr. Chi, disciple feels that the great Tao is high up on the other side of the cultivation that we cultivators pursue all our lives. The student believes that the way of the blade is the disciple's way. Suddenly, Lu Qingshan, who was next to Yi Qing Tsuan, got up violently. Mr. Shi, disciple Lu Qingshan believes that the great Tao lies in the painting. Qi Tianyuan still maintained his smile and asked, Why? A painting can accommodate heaven and earth, mountains and rivers and still not look crowded. Scrolls can also be made of birds, beasts, flowers and plants without appearing to be out of place. Something so vast and creative should belong to the way. Qi Tianyuan's gaze suddenly lit up, and for the first time, a satisfied look appeared on his face. What's your name? Student Lu Qingshan. Lu Qingshan's slightly subdued voice resounded through the middle of the school hall. It caused a sea of academy disciples to watch sideways and look down in contemplation. Qi Tian Yuan complimented. The Great Tao is embodied in things. Qingshan, you can enter the gate of the Great Tao as well. Lu Qingshan's face appeared agitated for a moment, but then quickly regained his composure and sat back in his position. After Lu Qingshan sat down, Qi Tianyuan's gaze steeply turned to Yi Qingduan on the side. I wonder what this young friend beside Qing Shan has to say about the word Great Tao. Yi Qing Tsuan, who was sitting peacefully in the corner, was stunned. This could even reach him? Yi Qing Dan gave Lu Qing Shan a grudging look and slowly got up. Little friend, this should be the second time we've met, right? Qi Tianyuan suddenly said. Yi Qing Dan slightly bent over and replied. Last time, I didn't know the identity of Sir. Please don't be offended if I was rude. Ha ha. No harm, no foul. Young friend can you tell us your understanding of the word Great Tao, or where you think your Great Tao is? Yi Qingduan sniffed and scanned the room for a circle of the many academy disciples who were looking at him. Some of them had a playful look in their eyes. Others had a curious look in their eyes. Yi Qingdan suddenly let out a light laugh, bringing a little bit of frenzy in his tone in a rare way. The students think what everyone just said is wrong. This statement was like adding a little spark to a woodpile full of vegetable oil, and instantly caused a hot debate. Who are you to say that our understanding is wrong? How old are you? What cultivation level do you dare to talk about the Great Tao? You're so powerful tell us what you think. Don't talk on paper here. Yi Qingdao listened to the scolding and abuse from all around and ignored it. Qi Tianyuan slightly pressed down with one hand, and the voices suddenly quieted down. If you can't even listen, how can you understand yourself and fight for the Great Tao? Qi Tianyuan's chiding voice resounded through the middle of the academy. And after he finished, he looked at Yi Qing Tsuan. The corner of Yi Qingdao's mouth pulled up a smile and raised a question. I would like to ask you all what is the point of the existence of the avenue? At these words, a large portion of the angry eyes fell away. Everyone in the hall began to think about this. Yi Qingduan gave a direct answer. Because of the existence of living beings, the Great Tao makes rules. Thus the Great Way is not on the other side of cultivation, nor in the heart, but in the 10,000 feet of red dust. At this time a disciple of the academy asked offhandedly, then where are we going to look for the Great Way? Immediately, someone else chimed in. Right. The red dust is so big. We can't just let us look around like headless flies. Right? Yi Qingdan's black hair at his temples fluttered without wind, and his eyes blossomed with an astonishing light. Since all the red dust is the Great Tao, the Great Tao is naturally at your feet. When these words came out, Qi Tianyuan's eyes shone with a brilliant light. Good. Very good. Qi Tianyuan was obviously satisfied with Yi Qingzuan's answer and used two good in a row. What is this little friend's name? Yi Qingchen. Qi Tian Dust's eyes flashed with a look that was surely so, but the other students in the seats were not so calm. After Yi Qingduan said his name, those sitting in the first row removed the Confucian-robed woman who knew Yi Qingduan's identity yesterday. All of them began to seriously measure up Yi Qingduan. 
Many of them were seeing Yi Qingguan for the first time though. However, the name of Prince Xu's son had reached their ears as early as when Yi Qingxuan entered the capital. Yi Qingdao faced the gazes of a group of his peers with a calm demeanor. With a clear sword heart, he naturally wouldn't have any stage fright or shyness. After surveying the area, most of the people withdrew their gazes, somewhat disinterested, because in their perceptions, Yi Qingxuan was nothing but a bit more handsome, with no semblance of aura to speak of in his body, just a mortal. The few remaining gazes, on the other hand, vaguely detected the surging blood qi within Yi Qingxuan's body. Suddenly, Qi Tianyuan's voice rang out once again, pulling the crowd's gaze back. All right, little friend Ye's remarks are exactly what the old man is going to talk about today. The way is in the doing. Qi Tianyuan asked the second question of the lesson. Do you guys know how many cultivation paths there are in the present-day Qiming continent? This time Qi Tianyuan answered the question directly. Take the three schools of Confucianism, Buddhism, and Taoism, which have the widest ripple effect in the Qiming continent today. As an example, the Dao sect family alone can be divided into the three great paths of cultivating soldiers, cultivating humans, and cultivating the heavenly way as well as the 18 lesser paths underneath. Confucianism is about cultivating one's body, aligning the family, ruling the country, and calming the world by nurturing one's qi. And the Buddhists are different. They honor karma and wish to work together. On top of that there are the cultivation paths that are not unique to the three families such as the way of the sword and the way of the fist, and minor paths such as the poison technique and the compassion technique. Therefore, it is only then that the world has rumored about the 3,000 paths. Speaking here, Qi Tianyu paused for a moment to give the many disciples some time to digest. Yi Qingduan was also listening with great interest. He used to focus on the sword road less attention to other cultivation paths. It was the first time I knew that there were so many ways to practice. Seeing that the time was almost up, Qi Tianyuan continued, and throughout the long history, but all those who have cultivated this path extremely deeply, none of them did it behind closed doors. They also need to walk the world and watch the tides rise and fall, the east rise and fall, the mountains and rivers. The most typical would have to be the Buddhist and Taoist schools, one speaking of leaving the world and then entering the world, and the other needing to enter the world and then leave the world. The Confucian sages also said that reading 10,000 books is better than traveling 10,000 miles. So no matter what the path of cultivation is, there is always a need to come to this red earth and experience it. The academy was silent as all the disciples pondered over Qi Tianyuan's words. Some eyes grew clear, while others remained blank. At this time the noble woman who arrived last stood up and asked, Then, Mr. Qi is it true that I can achieve the great Tao as long as I walk in the red dust? Naturally not. Qi Tianyuan denied without hesitation. The red dust is confusing, and not everyone can find their own path in the 10,000 feet of red dust. In this there are quite a few people who are tripped up by the red dust and end up with no access to the great Tao. Worse yet, they self-deny the way and die. The woman sat back a little glumly. Immediately after that, another person stood up to ask a question. And when Yi Qingxuan looked up, it was none other than the teenager whose body was drenched in Tao rhythms that he had paid attention to before class. There was a long-established confidence in the teenager's brow, and he spoke with a voice. Then dare I ask Mr. Shi, do you think I can enter the threshold of the great Tao now? Qi Tianyuan sized up the teenager and commented very objectively. The realm is more than enough. The heart is not enough. And I am afraid that I will encounter setbacks and form a heart demon. The young man's expression changed. But considering Qi Tianyuan's identity, he did not dare to say much. Sitting back after a soft grunt. Then which category does your cultivation path belong to? Mr. Qi, someone suddenly asked. Qi Tianyuan said smilingly. My cultivation path is a bit different. If I really want to categorize it should be considered Taoist. After Qi Tianyuan replied, silence returned to the school hall. Seeing this, Qi Tianyuan threw out the third question of the lesson. If you encountered an enemy of your own avenue on your way to cultivation, and the two of them were very different in strength, how would you respond? This time a person that Yi Qingduan was not expecting was actually the first to stand up. Disciple Lu Hongbao thinks that we should bide our time and wait until we are strong enough to kill this person. Hearing this, Qi Tianyuan asked rhetorically, then what if this person does not give you the time to bide your time? Lu Hongqiao hesitated for a moment and then said in a deep voice, Then, with the help of external forces, we will slowly plan for a suitable opportunity to kill them. Qi Tianyuan was slightly silent, then nodded, With the help of external forces, this method is feasible. Lu Hongqiao immediately sat back with some complacency, but Qi Tianyuan immediately added, Unfortunately, it's not the best plan. As soon as the words fell, another disciple rose. It was the same man from before who had a divine interiority. Mr. Shi, Chang Gong thinks that since he's an enemy of the Great Tao, 
he should be strangled in the cradle without giving him any chance to grow up. For this reason, Chang Gong has spared no means. Chang Gong? The corners of Yi Ching Suan's mouth moved lightly. He knew who this man was. The Sunset Grand Prince, Lu Chang Gong who has the body of a Qilin. It was rumored that he had developed the Qilin divine body to an appalling degree. Although he was still at the god refining realm, he was able to cross the realm and kill people. Chang Gong Ah, as a cultivator you are not to be faulted for this idea, but if you are a ruler in the future, this method will have endless scourges. Chang Gong is willing to listen to Mr. Teach, hearing that his method was rejected. Lu Chang Gong was not discouraged in the slightest, but instead, he humbly sought advice. Chi Tianyuan stretched out a finger to point at Lu Chang Gong and said with a solemn face, Have you thought about what your country, your people, will face if you can't get rid of this man once and for all? A massacre from a high-ranking cultivator. Upon hearing this, Lu Chang Gong's face changed, but he still asked rhetorically, Is it hard to let it develop and achieve great danger? Chi Tianyuan stroked his beard and smiled lightly, Naturally not. He will grow, won't you? But, Lu Chang Gong immediately picked up, and it was as if Chi Tianyuan had guessed what he was going to say. You're asking what if he grows too fast? What if you end up losing? Lu Chang Gong was non-committal. Chi Tianyuan signaled Lu Chang Gong to sit down and turned his gaze to look at the entire room once again. Gentlemen, the four words of the Great Tao struggle. The essence lies in the word struggle. Most cultivators fear that they have an enemy of the way. But I don't think so. If you don't even have an enemy on the path of cultivation, how will you have the perseverance to swim against the current and witness the Great Tao? Have you ever seen any Ascension Realm immortal who has never had an enemy of the Great Tao in his life and became an immortal by cultivating all the way? That's why the old man thinks that having an enemy of the Great Tao is not only not a curse, but should instead be a blessing. Gentlemen, can you agree? There was silence in the hall. Yi Ching Dan and Lu Ching Shan walked out of the academy side by side. For the lesson that Mr. Chi had just given, Yi Ching Suan didn't know how to evaluate it. It started silently and ended without warning. Yi Qingduan felt that this teaching skill was not as good as the private tutor in Peach Blossom Town, but there seemed to be something more in his mind, but it was indefinable and undefined. Where to? Yi Qingduan inquired with a sideways glance. As soon as class ended, Lu Qingshan pulled him out as if he was escaping, saying that he would take him to a place. You decide. Wherever makes people happy. Lu Qingshan looked very downcast and threw the question to Yi Qingsuan. Yi Qingsuan thought for a while and asked, Then go for a couple of drinks? I tried and I couldn't drink to forget her. She, Yi Qingchen froze, male or female? Lu Qingshan's face stiffened, and in the next moment he became furious. Of course it's a female. I don't have the dragon yang's favor. The voice got louder and louder as it went on, causing a crowd of pedestrians around them to look sideways. The eyes that looked at the two were filled with a color of curiosity and admiration. Ahem, take it easy. You'll have to let me think about that one. Yi Qingduan was a bit embarrassed. He hadn't encountered this kind of problem before. While Yi Qingxuan was in the middle of his contemplation, Lu Qingshan, who was on the side, suddenly looked inside the academy palace and his face changed drastically, deadly pulling on Yi Qingxuan's sleeve. He shouted in a panicked whisper, quickly knock me out, hurry. Yi Qingduan raised his head blankly and looked in the same direction, only to see a gorgeous woman in a long light blue dress walking towards the two. Lu Qingshan's entire body was very stiff as if he had been immobilized. The woman approached and Yi Qingxuan recognized her as the woman who had entered the academy one step ahead of Lu Qingshan. Yi Qingxuan's gaze wandered back and forth between the two men, remembering again a certain rumor he had heard before. A wisp of playfulness appeared on his face. The blue-skirted woman walked over and glanced at Lu Qingshan but spoke to Yi Qingdan first. Yi Shir Zi, this should be the first time we've met. I didn't expect Shir Zi to be so jade-like. Not like some people who have a bitter face all day. Introduce yourself, Lu Qingfang the eldest princess of the Sunset Dynasty. Greetings, eldest princess. Yi Qingguan nodded and did not deliberately curry favor. Lu Qingfang pursed her lips and said to Yi Qingxuan, Can Yi Shi Zi let me speak with Qingshan alone for a while? Yi Qingxuan froze at his words. Then he violently turned his head to look at Lu Qingshan whose face was filled with bitterness. A look in his eyes like that of an animal. Good fellow. The second princess has withdrawn from the marriage and you've hooked up with the eldest princess? So you're such a Lu Qingshan. I've looked away. With that, Yi Qingdan violently yanked open his sleeves despite Lu Qingshan's pleading gaze. Smiling at Lu Qingfeng, he said, Make yourselves at home. After that, he walked to the distance to continue observing the inscriptions on the gate of the academy palace. After about a quarter of an hour, Lu Qingshan walked towards Yi Qingsuan, his face getting more and more haggard. Let's go. To the Excelsior. Yi Qingdao looked at Lu Qingshan dumbfounded. In just less than two quarters of an hour, Yi Qingdan's senses towards Lu Qingshan had changed dramatically. 
Lu Qingshan looked at the somewhat shocked Yi Qingxuan and said in confusion, What's wrong? My guards and the others all say that this is the place that can make people the happiest, isn't it? Yi Qingxuan hesitated for a second, then said in a serious manner, That's right, let's go. Yi Qingdan swore with his sword heart that he would never want to go to such a windy place on his own, really worried about nothing Lu Qingshan. By the group of goblins to eat even the bones are not left up. Uh, along the way, the two were silent. One doesn't know how to talk, and the other doesn't know how to talk. The former is afraid of being laughed at and the latter is afraid of being counterproductive. Half an hour later, in front of a small third floor building that could smell the strong odor of rouge from the outside, the two vassal sons stood side by side. Yi, Yi brother, what is this, place? Excelsior. The Excelsior is a greenhouse? Or else? Two questions and two answers. Lu Qingshan's face has long been red. Just as Lu Qingshan wanted to pull Yi Qingduan to quietly leave, a pretentious voice came out. A Gu, two gentlemen, why are you standing at the door? Hurry up and come in. Little red, little green, why don't you two hurry up and call the two gentlemen to come in? As the words fell, two thinly clad, wonderful women walked out of the small building. One person hitched a ride on one of Yi Qingxuan and Lu Qingshan's shoulders. The woman beside Lu Qingshan spoke in a very soft tone. Does your son have any concerns? Lu Qingshan stammered and spoke. I, I just want to find a place where I can let go of my sorrows. The woman immediately laughed delicately. Then it's right for the gentleman to come to us. Most of the people who come to us are in a bad mood. But the ones who spend half a day and a night in there come out like they're sprouting a second wind. I wonder what sorrows you have. My lord? I want to forget someone. Woman? How do you know? Lu Qingshan was a bit surprised. While the red woman covered her mouth and laughed. The flirtatious geniuses who come to us all say they can't get a girl out of their minds. As a result, in less than an hour, she was affectionately calling so many of her sisters by their breast names that she could barely even remember what that girl looked like. Lu Qingshan sniffed and had the intention to open his mouth to explain, but the woman covered her mouth with one hand. Do you know what you can do to forget a girl the fastest? Lu Qingshan shook his head slightly. The woman suddenly glanced at Yi Qingduan's side and really couldn't hold back her laughter. That's natural to meet a new girl. Lu Qingshan and Yi Qingduan were pushed into the Yihong courtyard by two red dust women. The sound of wooziness was overwhelming. Yi Qingduan somewhat curiously surveyed the environment inside. I didn't expect the inside of the small three-story building to be so spacious. Perhaps it was because they could tell that it was the first time for Yi Qingsuan and the two of them to come. The two women led them all the way to a box on the second floor. Yi Qingduan took out a bag of spirit stones. About a thousand. Help this Lu. Gongzi to open up. The two women answered with a light smile before leaving with slow steps. Yi Qingduan looked at Lu Qingshan who had no fighting spirit and was somewhat lifeless. Not good-naturedly said. Spend my silver. Give you a pastime. You still have a bitter face. Lu Qingshan you face big enough ah. Just like the girl said. Lu Qingshan smiled bitterly. Brother Yi. Don't amuse me. That's my cousin. Yi Qingduan was puzzled. What's wrong with that? It's not like the Sunset Empire doesn't allow inbreeding. You misunderstand. I mean she's the titular imperial Rapunzel. Yi Qingchen frowned and asked. She can't see you? Lu Qingshan shook his head. Not really, it's my own problem. Yi Qingduan hesitated for a moment after hearing this, but he still couldn't help but ask. You, not very good? Yi Qingsuan you go to hell. As soon as Lu Qingshan flung the cup over, it was pinched by Yi Qingsuan's two fingers, while the former's face was filled with anger. The latter's face showed a look of pity. Qingshan, ah, a long illness needs a long cure. Don't keep it to yourself. I know a bit of medicine. Don't worry. Lu Qingshan was so infuriated that his chest continued to rise and fall, only to see him say word for word, I don't have problems in that area, and I won't have any in the future. All right, are you in a better mood? Yi Qingduan's faint voice rang out. At this time, Yi Qingsuan's complexion has long changed back to the appearance of the ancient wells. One hand picked up the wine cup and drank a mouthful. The flavor well. Genus is not very good. It wasn't as good as the wine he had brewed when he had just received the wine immortal's inheritance. Lu Qingshan froze at his words before a low, inaudible voice came out. Thanks. At this moment, a group of somewhat revealingly dressed women walked in carrying fruit trays and spirit brews. The two men's eyes shifted over at once, and for a moment both of them felt the temperature inside the box rising rapidly. Yi Qingxuan returned to his normal self in just an instant, but Lu Qingshan was somewhat unable to move his eyes. He was not the firstborn son and had no talent for cultivation, so there was only one maid who took care of him since he was a child. After that, when you were able to cultivate, you focused on cultivation. When have I ever experienced such a scene? Probably because of Yi Qingxuan's generous offer. The women who came up were all of superior appearance. Although it was not as good as Gu Qinghan, Lu Qingfang and other beautiful faces, 
it could still make people's eyes shine, especially the one in the center was only half a step behind Gu Qinghan, and this person is also the most high and cold, just in the periphery of a group of women, not in Lu Qingshan have half a bit of physical contact, under Yi Qingdao's eye gesture, five or six wonderful women all stuck next to Lu Qingshan, sir, have a drink, my lord, my slave has peeled the grapes for you, won't you try a bite? Lu Qingshan was a bit overwhelmed, however, Yi Qingguan did not speak out to remind or block, there are some things that, regardless of gender and talent, for the first time, they are a bit overwhelmed, it'll be okay after a while, this was not something that Yi Qingzuan himself had comprehended, it was just what was written in the book, today, however, he might be able to argue with the truth, red crisp, yellow vine wine, and a few turnovers, Lu Qingshan's movements were obviously much more skillful, and were starting to take the initiative to put his head over, Yi Qingzuan looked at it for a while and found the images really unbearable, a tanned young man, nestled in the middle of a group of white women, was too much to focus the eye on. Yi Qingduan came to the window of the box, which had a one-way boundary to look at the first floor. Yi Qingduan scanned the flamboyant gentleman coming and going, his gaze somewhat deep. He's been in the capital for a while. In the meantime he figured out a lot of things and did some things. It's just more subtle. In fact, as early as on the way to the capital, when he saw the letter begging for food, Yi Qingduan asked himself a question. Why does the capital refuse to send food to Yi Xiao and the others? Jealousy? Scruples? Or does Lu Xian really want to find someone to replace Yi Xiao? Lu Xuanjin might have had such thoughts in his mind, but this was certainly not the main reason. Yi Qingzuan then had an intuition that perhaps the root of the problem did not lie here in the grain and grass, so the last time he accidentally entered the palace, Yi Qingzuan deliberately mentioned a mouthful of the idea of adding armor to the house of King Shu. Surprisingly, Lu Xuanjin only hesitated for a moment before agreeing. This further confirmed Yi Qingzuan's speculation, so he rephrased his original question. Why did Lu Xuanjin refuse to conquer Fei Yu? The more rations on the front line, the more daring the generals will be and the more likely they will be able to build monumental feats. Do open up new frontiers and seal the deal. This is a great honor for both a country and a king. Besides, Fei Yu Gua had a previous case of trying to kill Lu Xianjin and almost succeeded. It is reasonable to say that it is impossible for him. Lu Xuanjin not to want to take revenge and not to want to enlist in the western expedition, so what's stopping him? When he thought of this, Yi Qingzuan instantly thought of what Lok Qianshan had told him. For the past decade, the Sunset Dynasty's economy has been largely controlled by the feudal lords, that's why Lu Xuanjin was simply incapable of making a western conquest, and there is only one way to solve this phenomenon, cutting the clan. However, if the clan is directly cut, it is possible that several other feudal lords will have to sit up and take notice, except for Yi Xiao. Who doesn't care much about the throne? The country must have been a mess. By that time, let alone a western conquest, it is possible to be conquered in the east. And if it is slow simmered and weakened step by step waiting for hundreds or thousands of years. Again, Lu Xuanjin was not willing to wait that long. Therefore, Lu Xuanjin could only choose one method, creating chaos and fire. That's what led to the move to open the academy, bringing together the outstanding sons and daughters of various local powers. What would happen in this was anyone's guess. Up to here was everything Yi Qingzuan had figured out during this time, which made him know at least a little bit. Lu Xuanjin and himself actually had the same purpose, so he didn't mind helping Lu Xuanjin out and making the situation a little more chaotic. It was only after that that Yi Qing Dan ordered the two of them, He Zihuan and Xia Yuan Shan, to secretly visit various forces. The move of, it's just that he's going to pull the entire dynasty, the capital and the local area into the bureau. Yi Qingdao's method was also very simple, disintegrating people's hearts. It must be because the prime minister's office gave military supplies to the house of the king of Shu, plus the lobbying of the two he Zihuan in the past few days. There should have been no small amount of looseness in the hearts of the various forces in the capital. Now it's just short of a trigger. Lu Xuanjin is not the only one who can take chestnuts out of the fire. Yi Qingduan can do it as well. Moreover, Lu Xuanjin was standing in the shadows and was not in a good position to make a move. But Yi Qingduan did not have this concern. He wants more than a simple cut in the clan. What Yi Qingduan was seeking was to memorize a little bit of all the people who had participated in the matter against Xu Zhou. Yi Xiao doesn't have the time to bother with them, but I, Yi Qingzuan, have all the time and strength to deal with you. After sorting out the events of this period of time, Yi Qingdao took a small sip of immortal brew, continued to look out over the first floor. It's still all about the paper and the music and the dancing. Suddenly, a male with a precious jade on his waist and a paper fan in his hand walked in through the gate. Behind them were two middle-aged looking guards. Seeing this person, that pimp immediately greeted him, and due to being too far away Yi Qingguan didn't hear what they said. It was just to see that the eunuch had a disgruntled look on his face. 
while the pimp had a difficult look on his face. In the end, the pimp left after pointing to the box where Yi Qingxuan and the others were. The male started up the stairs. Yi Qingdao frowned and looked at the direction that the male was advancing. It was the very box they were in. Lu Qingshan, someone is coming, pay attention. At those words, Lu Qingshan froze, and then violently returned to his normal appearance. The next second, a violent rumble came from the doorway. Only the door, along with the maid outside the box, was kicked in. Which ungrateful thing dares to touch the person I picked for little master? With a loud cry, the room fell silent. Yi Qingduan looked at the paper fan held in the visitor's hand and nodded thoughtfully. And after Lu Qingshan glanced at the visitor, a flash of displeasure flashed in his eyes. Arrow Ren swept around, his eyes lingering on Yi Qingduan with a very satisfied look. The son of the minister of the household, one of the three evils of the capital. He deserves this card. His gaze then landed on the high cold woman with top-notch looks and figure, pointing at Yi Qingduan with one hand. Yuma, how could you do this to me? Can't it be because of that little white boy at the window? Arrow Run thoughtfully skipped over Lu Qingshan, as he really couldn't see how Lu Qingshan's appearance was the slightest threat to him. Yi Qingdan frowned slightly, but immediately after Arrow Ren's next sentence directly caused a cold light to explode in his eyes. For a cheap bastard like him, even his family's 18 generations combined don't have one-tenth of my family's wealth, so how could you look at him? It's hard to believe that it's some shameless one from his family who's forcing you to do it. Tell me and I'll absolutely get him killed. Mr. Arrow, please respect yourself. Wan Yan Yan's face changed when she heard Arrow Ren shout, and she looked like she dared to speak. In the end, I could only say, please take care of yourself. Yi Qingduan coldly looked at Arrow Ren. I advise you to better take back your previous words. Arrow Ren sniffed and laughed ridiculously. You who? What are you? I'm inclined to say how are you? Arrow Ren gave an inch and stepped forward to try to pull Wang Yin Yin's hand, but was stopped by Lu Qingshan with one hand. Who are you? Dare to block my way. You kid is tired of living. Do you know who my father is? Scram. Lu Qingshan coldly spat out a word. Kid you seek death. Arrow Ren's face sank, and the left guard behind him stepped forward and struck out brazenly. Don't know what's good for you. Lu Qingshan let out a cold snort and then met him with a single arm swing. Boom! An explosive sound came out from the box, followed by two figures flying out from the front and back sides of the box respectively. The entire second floor of Yi Hong courtyard was almost instantly empty of guests. The pimp's face also changed drastically, and she hurriedly walked towards the backyard. Outside the box on the second floor, there was blood flowing from the corner of the middle-aged guard's mouth, and Lu Qingshan's face was even less bloody. Obviously, this purely physical collision Lu Qingshan was at a disadvantage. Yi Qingxuan looked at the guard with some surprise, the sixth realm of the martial artist. With that, Yi Qingxuan turned his head to Lu Qingshan and said, Leave this one to me, you go and take care of the other one. Lu Qingshan nodded, and the martial artist tried to chase after him, but was stopped by Yi Qingxuan's step. Get out of the way. You try. Two voices, one gloomy and one sunny, sounded almost simultaneously. All of a sudden, two thick blood cheese spread outwards crazily from where the two were standing. Pop. A sound of flesh touching flesh came out, followed by a series of similar collisions. Wooden chunks of flying debris flew up out of nowhere and stayed in the air for a long time. ka -ching. After another collision, a pillar in the center of the second floor collapsed. Yi ching blasted his fist at the middle-aged martial artist's face, and there was a vague purple and silver light flowing above the surface of his fist. The middle-aged martial artist was too late to block, and could only interlock his arms to protect his head. Buzz. A dull ringing sound came out and a gully as long as five or six feet away appeared above the ground. The middle-aged martial artist was no longer visible in the field. Yi Ching Tsuan frowned slightly. His martial realm was slightly lower than this martial artist, and the Xianhuang body refining technique was an offensive and defensive body refining technique, so the damage was not too high. This punch was reasonably unlikely to cause that middle-aged martial artist to die, and the possibility of serious injury was not even high. Suddenly, Yi Ching Tsuan's eyes stared and he jerked his head up only to see that above the beams of the room, the middle-aged martial artist placed his hands and feet on top of the beams, and his entire body took on the shape of a toad. In the next second, a white light flew towards Yi Qingduan with a swift momentum. This time, it was Yi Qingxuan's turn to be too late to block, and he only had time to mobilize all of his Xian Huang Qi on his right fist. A fist was swung out to meet the white light, and the entire e home courtyard was abruptly silent. Subsequently, the five pillars supporting the second floor, the remaining four cut across as many as they could. The cross-section is like a divine soldier's stroke, without the slightest unevenness. Yi Ching Tsuan only felt a sharp pain coming from his right hand, and his internal organs shook. But fortunately, with the Xianhuang Tu Qi protecting him, there was no breakage. After the collision, 
Yi Qingdao was knocked back into the distance gasping for air. This was the first time he had taken on an enemy in the realm of pure martial arts, and he had gained a lot. And the white light from earlier also revealed its original appearance at this time, only to see the originally excellent essence of the middle-aged martial artist, at this time like a puddle of mud lying on the already broken floor. There was no need to doubt that even an ordinary person could easily kill him at this point. In the distance, the fight between Lu Qingshan and another guard had also reached a white-hot stage. Lu Qingshan held the brush in his hand and kept sketching and turning the brush in the air. A pattern takes shape in a few strokes, and you can draw a pattern in barely three seconds. There were flying birds and beasts as well as flowers and trees within these patterns, and all of them flew towards the opposite cultivator in one brain. That middle-aged cultivator was originally a cultivator at the seventh level of the god refining realm, and had not fought much of these attacks. But in flight these patterns actually joined together one by one to form two larger scrolls, a picture of a landscape and a picture of fish and birds. And when it was about to fly in front of the middle-aged cultivator, the two diagrams were once again merged into one. It becomes a picture of a bird of prey fishing with movement and stillness. That middle-aged cultivator's face changed drastically the moment the diagram was formed, and his spiritual energy suddenly disappeared. The whole thing just stood there dumbfounded and bounding. Within moments, the two middle-aged guards fell to the ground in unison. Yi Qingdan and Lu Qingshan's gazes swept towards Arrow Ren, who had long been frozen. Arrow Ren shivered as his body was swept by the two men's gazes. Stay back, I'm warning you, do you know who the father of the family is? My father, Arrow Jiro, the minister of household. If you dare to touch me, there will be no place for you in the entire capital. Yi Qingdan and Lu Qingshan's faces remained unchanged. Yi Qingdan turned his head to Lu Qingshan and smiled. How about handing this person over to me? Lu Qingshan gently nodded. Waste one. Take it if you want. Aha! Yi Qingduan walked over to Arrow Run and lifted his collar with just one hand. Want revenge? Arrow Run shook his head frantically, but the moment he lowered his head a deep color of resentment flashed in his eyes. You're saying that my family's ancestors combined can't even compare to a tenth of your families? No, no, this big brother you must have misunderstood. That was just an unintentional remark I made just now. Heartless words? Yi Qingsuan wore a smile on his face, but it looked like a sneer anyways. Yeah, yeah. It's just mindless. Arrow Ren could be said to be trembling physically and mentally right now, fearing that Yi Qingxuan would kill him in one go, praying vigorously for the blessings of his ancestors. Perhaps the prayer actually worked. Arrow Ren felt a sudden loosening of his collar. With his feet back on the ground, Yi Qingduan slowly opened his mouth. Come on, take me to your house. I want to see how rich your house is. Arrow Ren looked stunned, then rejoiced. Fine, I'll take you to my house. My family will treat you well. Then why don't you lead the way? Yi Qingduan let out a cold shout, and Arrow Ren hurriedly got up and walked towards the door. Just as the two of them were about to walk out of the entrance of a home courtyard, a woman with a plump figure and enchanting face stopped the two of them. The two gentlemen smashed my slave's store and just left? The girl is joking. These damages were clearly done by the two guards of the household minister's residence. What does it have to do with me? Yi Qingduan's mouth contained a smile, a warm smile that was like a spring breeze, but at this time, Washing Hongsleeve only felt that this good-looking skin was so repulsive to the face. One clearly saw that the majority of the building on the second floor just now was caused by this man in front of him and that middle-aged man together. At this point, he's actually saying that it's not even remotely related to him, but businessmen seek profit, and as long as they lose money, it's the same for anyone. So Wash Hongsleeve looked at Arrow Ren, who immediately said, Miss Wash, I didn't bring that much money with me this time, so I have to go back to the mansion to get the money. Why don't you come with me? Washing Red Sleeve glanced at the two of them, a trace of curiosity flashed in her eyes, and she nodded, then followed behind a few people. And after a few people left Yi Hong Yuan, a figure suddenly appeared next to Lu Qingshan. Your Highness, how did you get hurt? Who injured you? I'll blast him. Lu Qingshan slightly waved his hand to indicate that there is no harm. Elder Yu, you quickly go and notify the people of the Shu King's house. His family's son may be about to do something big. The old man's expression was solemn. And then without hesitation, he disappeared once again. Only Lu Qingshan and the original group of women in the box were left in the original place. After Lu Qingshan looked back, laughing lowly and bitterly, he said, Master I was wrong, I won't dare to be like this again. But strangely enough no one else in the field responded to him. On the main street, two men and one woman were walking slowly as if they were shopping. Pedestrians on both sides of the street surveyed the trio with strange looks. The man in the forefront looked a bit lousy in the past. His body was tied up with twine, and several holes appeared in his gorgeous clothes. Even the jade pendant at his waist was nowhere to be found. Behind them, a man and a woman walked side by side, the man holding the end of the twine in one hand while the woman played with a jade pendant. Suddenly, 
The woman withdrew the jade pendant she had just obtained from her hand and looked at the man beside her. I know who you are, but I'm not afraid of you, and even if your father came, I'd still dare to say this. The reason why I'm not going to bother you this time is that I find you quite interesting. Yi Qingyuan smiled gently and did not reply. In fact, the moment the woman came out he felt an extremely familiar gongfu aura, Taoist Qin Kuan technique, and it should still be a complete and intact Taoist Qin Kuan technique. This was one of the few top techniques in the Tao sect, and had traditionally been controlled by several great sects. If Yi Qingxuan was not wrong, this girl should be from the Middle Earth Tao state, and the identity was at least a true successor. Otherwise it would be impossible to be able to cultivate such a top-notch Tao sect technique. Washing Red Sleeve looked at Yi Qingxuan's smiling side face, and the doubts in her heart intensified. The moment she saw Yi Qingxuan, Washing Red Sleeve's heart jumped violently. It is not the heart that moves, but what is conceived in the orifices of the heart that moves. And that thing was something that this top genius of the Tao sect had suppressed, and it was precious and extraordinary. The trio traveled slowly, as if deliberately dragging their pace. As a result, before he could reach the Shangshu mansion on Vermilion Bird Street, a group of people appeared to block the road. At the head of the group was an old man in the shape of a steward. The old man in charge came up and bowed to Yi Qingxuan in a respectful tone. Your Highness, my master is still in the palace and hasn't returned yet. My old slave will first apologize to you on behalf of my young master. I also hope that you will spare my young master once on account of the fact that my master and Prince Yi are officials in the same dynasty. Yi Qingdao was unmoved and only gave the old man a bashful look. Softly, he said, What are you? Your master has half a friendship with my father? With that, his footsteps moved forward without haste, crossing over the old man to continue toward the Shangshu mansion. The old man in charge had an ugly look on his face and waved his hand to recruit a young attendant. Go to the palace and call the lord back to the house. I'm afraid something big is going to happen. Time continued to pass, as Yi Qingxuan and the others walked on the streets. The entire high-level circle of the capital city almost knew about this. The son of the minister of the household is wandering the streets like a dog on a leash by the son of the king of Shu. At the same time, a middle-aged Confucian with a light red official uniform at the entrance of the palace got on a carriage with a gloomy face and drove towards the direction of the mansion on Vermilion Bird Street. On Yi Qingduan's side, ever since he met the Shangshu house steward, Yi Qingduan realized that there were many more cultivators with hidden breaths around him. Yi Qingduan's face was calm. The more people who came this time, the better. He needed to muddy the waters of the entire capital and local area at once. Finally after another turn, a street that was a hundred meters long and ten feet wide appeared in front of Yi Qingdao's eyes. The streets were empty. At the end of the street was a vermilion gate that wasn't too tall, but was painted in a very new color. In front of the gate was a group of government officials led by a woman. Yi Qingduan lifted his footsteps by holding Arrow Ren and took a step into the hundred meter long street. A woman's voice suddenly rang out. Prince Xu, please stop. Yi Qingduan's footsteps slightly lurched, and Arrow Ren was overjoyed to see the woman's face. Mother, help me. He's trying to kill me. The woman looked at Yi Qingxuan with a gloomy face at the words. Yi Qingxuan, you are just a son of the world. While my husband is the Shangshu of the dynasty, what authority do you have to dispose of my family's renner? As soon as these words were uttered, some of the surrounding forces that were hostile to the king of Shu in the shadows had a look of satisfaction on their faces. Shangshu? Yi Qingdan let out a light laugh and asked. Then do you know what your son said? As the words fell, Yi Qingxuan violently pulled the rope again causing Arrow Run to let out a cry of pain. The woman took a deep breath and said, Even if Renner has offended you with his words, but that belongs to a personal grudge. Now you're marching through the streets directly holding him. Where does that leave my Shangshu house? Can you bear the consequences of this as a mere son of a vassal king? The woman snapped and drank, and in her words she tried to emphasize that her son was unintentional. But He Ching Tsuan was seizing on personal grudges to insult the Shangshu house. This would seem like He Ching Duan didn't know what was important. He he. The Shangshu mansion is so powerful. Yi Qingduan snorted. Then he said aloud, My mother consort had told me when she went out that when I go out, I represent the face of the entire Shu Wangfu, and the entire 300, 000 generals of Shuzhou who are hard at work guarding the borders. If I am humiliated, it will be the king of Shu's residence, but also 300, 000 border generals are humiliated. The consequences of this small a Shangshu house can bear it? As soon as the words fell, the woman's face changed. And even the people watching from the dark places throughout the streets all changed their faces slightly. Yi Qingduan continued, My father is fighting with 300, 000 soldiers at the border. And some people in the capital are not only intentionally dragging the grain and grass, but also publicly insulting the son of the king of Shu as a cheap bastard. Do you think this is reasonable? If that's the case, it's fine if the son doesn't become the son, and the border will not be defended. The moment these words came out, 
The hearts of the entire capital city watching here were all in awe. When these words were exited, it could be more than just a grudge between the two forces of the Shu King's house and the Shangshu's house. Even the one who sits high in the nine heavens is involved. And the second half of the sentence is to be able to take this as a rebel words to set the king of Shu's crime. Set the king of Shu's crime. The woman's face was overjoyed. And she immediately tried to seize the loopholes in Yi Qingxuan's words to counterattack. But the next second a carriage suddenly appeared on the street. And a slightly anxious male voice came out from the carriage. Don't be angry. Shitsi. Everything is negotiable. 